everyone. You're watching News Epicenter and we are starting with some piece of breaking news that is coming in from Telangana. And ahead of the Manugode Bipole, the Cyberabad police have raided a farmhouse in the Moinabad area and seized cash to the tune of 15 crore rupees. They have taken three people into custody for allegedly trying to bribe four TRS MLAs. The police also say that the tip-off in fact came from one of the TRS MLAs. Police is saying that one suspect is from Faridabad, another one from Delhi and one is from Tirupati. All the four TRS MLAs are now going to meet KT Rama Rao who is the working president of TRS and may also meet Chief Minister KCR. Let's first listen in to the political reaction and also the reaction that has come in from the Commissioner of Police. BJP is known for toppling state governments across India. But one thing is clear out today that KCRG's MLAs are not for sale. Using Swamiji's and many other political brokers, Bharatiya Janata Party leaders were caught red-handed today by pressurizing MLAs, four MLAs of TRS to shift sides to Bharatiya Janata Party offering hundreds of crores and contracts just before the Munugod by-election. KCRG's MLAs informed police that BJP has been pressurizing them and today police has caught them red-handed. Swastika is now joining me live from Hyderabad. Swastika, the TRS is alleging that this was some kind of Operation Lotus which was happening. What really has happened given the nat serious nature of allegation? Have you got a reaction from the BJP and when did these raid happen? Well, we're still awaiting a reaction from the BJP but to give you an exact sequence of events, this evening, rather, there was a raid by the Cyberabad well, police where they went to a farmhouse in Moinabad area, outskirts of Hyderabad, where they found three leaders, three identified persons uh, uh, by the name which the TRS alleged belonged to the BJP and four MLAs uh, holding negotiations. This was done based on the tip-off of the TRS MLAs who said that these three individuals who came from Delhi, Faridabad, and one from Hyderabad, identified as Mr. Nandu Kumar, uh, were trying to A, bribe them with cash, with government contracts, and also means at the central level and cabinet positions at the state government level if the BJP comes to power next year. Now, in the evening, the raids were carried out by the cyber police, where we are learning through our sources that Cash to the tune of almost 15 crores were seized along with some other documents. Now, the allegations, in fact, put forth by the TRS side is that all the three leaders are linked to a union cabinet minister. Not just that, they have been thoroughly holding negotiations with not just these four MLAs, but other leaders from the TRS as well, trying to buy them off by offering them cash and government contracts. And based on that tip off after holding negotiations for almost a month, uh, one of the MLAs have told me that they finally met today and they gave a tip off to the police to come and crack down on all the three accused who have now been taken into police custody. Okay, so talking about these three accused as a... Uh, uh as you're picking up from the police that they are from different cities, also uh, from Delhi. Um, is this linked to, you know, how is the link with the BJP being established here by the police? That is an allegation, remember, which is being put forth by the TRS side. The police so far has not established any links with any political parties. They say that they have, in fact, taken three individuals into custody. For the questioning is underway, they did raid the 
farmhouse in Moinabad area acting on the tip off of the TRS MLAs, but the a police commissioner there of Cyberabad did not really mention what party or which party or which organization these three individuals were associated with. That allegation is in fact coming in from the side of the TRS. Remember, a senior TRS leader told me that all the three are associated with a union cabinet minister who is also a prominent face from the state of Telangana. But all of these are unfounded allegations at this point in time if you talk from an investigation point of view. Swastika, stay with us. Let's listen in to what uh, the sound bite of the police commissioner of Cyberabad is, and then I go back to Swastika for the final comments. So, manaki MLA le manaki information vidam jari kindi. Yara sa MLA sa ikar mamal ne oru ochi, ante mukur ochi mamal pralo bo pedda onaru, double era ju pedda onaru, contract le era ju pedda onaru. मरी मध्यवर्ल कोड़ा इरजू पेटी मामले पार्टी के रंग के चेयर ने इलाज़ बालों पर पड़ता है ना रानी आ पर्टिकुलर इनफॉरमेशन मान के चारो दान के सामान नहीं ची ये रोड रोड चेक चेस तो मान के ये डिटेल्स मान के हो चारो। Have you managed to speak to the BJP to get a reaction from them? Swastika, if you can hear me. Swastika, if you can hear me, my question is, since these allegations are being leveled against the BJP, have you got a reaction from them? Well, Maria, we've reached out to the BJP and they have uh, clearly told us that there is no involvement from their side because the police itself has not clarified who these leaders are associated with. They say that allegations put forth from the TRS side is completely baseless and unfounded at this point in time. They say none of the three uh, individuals identified in that particular video that we are play playing out on our screens right now, Nandu Kumar, Simha, who are said to be uh, individuals who have flown in from Faridabad, Delhi, as well as one from Hyderabad, uh, have no authority or positions within the party. So at this juncture, the BJP definitely says it's not a setback, A, it's okay. not an embarrassment. These are the cheap tactics they say are being adopted by the TRS side because they are sensing defeat in Munugodu and they are also sensing defeat in the upcoming 2023 assembly elections. It will be interesting to see how the BJP counters several allegations. We also have to wait on what the police investigation has found so far. But to put out facts simply, okay. a farmhouse raided, 15 crores cash seized, four TRS MLAs alleged that they were holding negotiations with members of the Bharatiya Janta Party who were okay. trying to allegedly, allegedly buy them uh, with cash, government contracts, as well as ministerial positions at center and the state level, provided the party comes to power next year. So all of this completely based on allegations. Remember, because of Munugodu Bipole, which is turning out to be one of the costliest Bipoles in a recent collective memory, okay. it is turning out that cash seizures have been happening on a regular basis. And the police say this could be linked to one such incident as well. So further investigation still okay. underway to ascertain who these three individuals are who allegedly tried to buy off the four TRS MLAs. All right, Swastika Das, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for getting us that piece of breaking news that it was coming from Telangana. Shifting focus to our top debate this evening, the majoritarian debate raging in India over the rise of Rishi Sunak to the post of Prime Minister has taken a fresh twist with the statement of MIM Chief Asaduddin Owesi. After multiple opposition leaders said that India must take lessons from Britain over the appointment of the member of the minority community to 10 Downing Street, Owesi said he wishes to see a hijab-wearing woman as the Prime Minister of India one day. The BJP hit back at Owesi, accusing him of duplicity, saying he should first appoint a hijab-wearing woman as the president of his party and then discuss the post of the Prime Minister. This comes just a day after the BJP countered the opposition listing members of the minority community who have held the post of President, Prime Minister as well as top positions in the judiciary and the armed forces. As the war of words continues to escalate, the big question emerges, has the debate 
gone out of hand and deteriorated into provocative political pot shots. Before I get the guests, here's what happened today. British Asian Rishi Sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the UK has triggered a massive political storm in India. A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, EIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi has added fuel to fire. I said that after my life or after my life, a hijab pen will become a prime minister of India. Uwesi's remark was immediately criticised by the BJP, who asked him to look no further than his own party. नफरत के जो एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं, उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोजी रोटी है। अपने परिवार के अलग, परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाएं और जीताएं। Let's have the charity from home. When will a hijabi woman become the president of MIM party? There is a Bharat Badnami brigade which has a sunky sunup to use even Rishi Sunak issue. Even the opposition steered clear of Obasi's pitch for a hijabi as prime minister. Why do you why do you think of this as being a communal thing? Anybody in this country, no matter what community, what religion. Can aspire to be prime minister. There's no problem at all about that. OBC also accused the BJP of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country. But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs, or even office bearers in his own party. So is it politics or provocation? Joining me now, Shantanu Gupta is an author, Waris Patan, national spokesperson of MIM, Dr. Zina Shrokat Ali is Director General of Wisdom Foundation, Waris Patan, a hijabi M, uh, Prime Minister. Is this not pure minority push for getting merit? <clears throat> well, Maria, first and foremost, let me congratulate Mr. Rishi Sunak for being appointed as the Prime Minister of United Kingdom. And uh, I feel that if a minority person wearing a kalawa in his hand, a Hindu, can become the Prime Minister of uh, UK, why can't a Muslim woman become a Prime Minister of India? A hijabi woman can become a Prime Minister of India. Inshallah, Ta'ala, we have faith in the Constitution. We live in democracy and anything can happen. Tomorrow she might become Prime Minister. Hmm. So what wrong did we say? And that day India will be declared truly secular, the day a Muslim Prime Minister is made in the country. But what has the BJP done? There are so many states where the BJP is in power. Show me from data available to you before the country hmm. how many ladies, women, they have given the uh, post. How They don't even give tickets to Muslim women to contest the elections. Okay. They don't even give, forget about Muslim women, even Muslim men are not given any okay. opportunity uh, to contest the elections. So how do we come before forward? I bring and how can they talk about secular? Before I bring in Shantanu Gupta, I, I will remind you of the data that I actually have of MIM, women representation. You have not given a place of yes. pride to the women in your party. And Telangana 2018 assembly polls, you contested eight seats, one seven seats, women candidates zero. Bihar 2020 assembly polls, contested 20 seats, women candidates uh, zero percent, one five all male. Maharashtra 2019 assembly polls, contested 44 seats. Uttar Pradesh uh, 2022 assembly polls, contested 95 seats, women candidates five. My, my point, you know, and the Lok Sabha elections 2019, you contested three women candidates, zero, one, two seats. This is also a data that, that is before you. So, shouldn't you practice what you preach? Well, yeah, kindly I look into the data also. I will speak about Maharashtra. Maharashtra, we have a Muslim president lady of Maharashtra. In Mumbai, we have a lady president. She is a uh, lady for MIM. We just now we are contesting elections in Gujarat for the first time, the ML elections are upcoming. Hmm. We have declared till now only four seats. 
out of that four seats the first seat which our party president asad obviously declared was of a lady she is a dalit lady our dalit sister from amdavar dani limda and she is campaigning it kindly see the crowd which she is gathering the muslims dalits hindus gujaratis everybody is accompanying her not only women but men are accompanying her so out of three seats declared till now when the gujarat election is yet to be declared we have already given ticket okay. to one of our Sha- sisters Shantanu, and let the coming Shantanu, days Shantanu. we have we have got corporators we have got Corporators from other community as well okay. in our party. Shantanu, so you, you cannot know, just point, say that. Show me okay. from the BJP how many women so have they if, given tickets. So if the if if the MIM is making the point that the real inclusive diverse India would be a hijabi prime minister, that can be given a thought by various political parties. Why object to it and call it communal? I think nobody is objecting to it. I think it sounds like a utter frustration of a Hindu becoming uh, uh, the prime minister of UK. Oh. Uh, and you already Let's have Varis Patan and Shantanu Gupta on the screen now, please. Yes, yeah, go ahead. And you've hmm. already shown, Maria, the data that how the representation of a hijabi woman in the cadres of AIM, AIMM, their MLAs, their MPs, the various can- candidates. And Varis Patan has given some extra examples, one here, two here. <laughs> that doesn't mean the uh, woman representation. Why didn't from tomorrow? If you want to walk the talk tomorrow, from As- instead of Asaduddin Owesi, someone else, a hijabi woman should be the president. Right, and then only he can talk about someone becoming the 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 prime minister. Point number one. Point number two. Let's not take it from Rishi Sunak. He's not become the prime minister of UK because only he's a Hindu. Because only he's uh, uh, wearing kalava. He's a second generation uh, Brit. He went to best of the schools. He fought hard. He's a MP for, uh, from there, and he lost in fact a month back. And now finally the Tory MPs elected him. So don't 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 take it from from merit. that because he is a hindu because he is a he is a dalit because he is a muslim i think come out of this come up i think narendra modi has shown meritocracy from last 7 years try to live in the era of merit- meritocracy it's a very different era okay okay Val- varis pathan but did we ever thought that prime minister narendra modi will become a prime minister some day of the country just 8 years back we nobody knew we were having advani ji now they have sidelined him but narendra modi became the prime minister of the country and why can't why can't a woman become the prime minister of this country why can't a muslim woman become a prime minister why can't she become the chief minister is there any embargo to that no nothing they can but the target of the bjp is always to see that the muslims are kept back there is a war created there is a war waged by the bjp against the muslim take it from hijab take it on madrasa talk about the prayers hey, everything the it is against the muslim even the food habits we want to eat halal food they are objecting to that not only that even the festivals are objected to even see if garba is played ram leela is played on airports we have no objection you can play it's a festival time but if a muslim man offers namaz anywhere in the corner of a airport or a station there will be a fire against him police will question him and so many things will go against him so, so why why they are trying to destroy the secularism of our great nation that is why we say that the bjp is killing they are destroying the diversity of our great nation no, no, but, they but are but not Varis following Patan, the constitution i am just looking at what, what kind of analogies that are being drawn in the first of. place if if something has happened in uh, uk just look at what we have achieved in india the f- third president of india was who zakir hussain we have had a minority yes a, you know I... minority prime minister for 10 years a sikh prime minister for 20, 10 years we mm-hmm. have had a long list of constitutional heads who have been mi- from the minority community why can't that be appreciated rather than giving this kind of spin varis patan see the appreciation that what i said that day india will become fully secular when they appoint a muslim prime minister of the country that day we will say that yes the secularism pluralism but still presidents fakhriddin ali so ahmed all of BJP them have era, been. such kind of thing could happen yani zail singh from the sikh community they, they are president i am talking about you show me from data available yes, at your yes mohammed hidayatullah the many, the Women. You had a Forget former chief justice Muslim. as well. How many Muslims during the BJP era? How many women have been given portfolios? Forget about it. How many ministers are there today? Muslims in the BJP government in the cabinet? Hmm. None. After Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi went, nobody is there. Shah Nawaz Hussain is nowhere to be seen. So they don't want the Muslim representation. How do they succeed? So okay. we are the minority, largest minority. We live in democracy. We have a right. We have a okay. right to become prime okay. minister. We have okay. a right to uh, become chief Dr. minister. Dr. Zina Shakatali, how are you looking BJP at this push, by, this push by this push by MIM? 
quite surprised that, you know, when this question of uh, a prime minister for the country is raised, the first thing is that the most popular leader, there's an election. And whoever is elected as the most popular leader, as the most well-known leader, it becomes the prime minister of a country. Hmm. Now, any woman can uh, opt for that post, whether she is a Muslim woman, whether she is a Dalit woman, whether she is a Christian woman, whoever it is, can contest that post. There is absolutely no denying it. But what surprises me is that the qualification of a prime minister, which should be, uh, you know, which should be meritocracy, which should be, which should be, uh, you know, professionalism, which should be expertise, which should be competence, should be qualification. These are the requisites. Hmm. You make hijab a requisite. That is what is surprising me. Okay. Had, uh, you know, uh, I, I was quite surprised that, of course, a, a woman can contest. Of course, a Muslim woman can contest and she would be very welcome to be the prime minister of this country because we are a, a, a you know a multicultural nation and nobody has to give us any examples or any lessons in that we are the oldest in the field here but the you know, the surprising part of it is that when you say that she has to be hijab clad and you make that into a prerequisite that is surprising what should be your prerequisite is her education is her you know is is her clarity is okay her clarity, Pran, did her, did uh, did the party go yes, too far in saying hijab clad it could have been just a muslim woman or just I a woman argument but the whole point is that you know why, why do you well, make hijab well, well just women? now yeah. there are muslim women cutting across uh, india well, just all now zina shaukat ali was uh, to congratulate just, May I make my point, Madam, please? Madam, if you lower her fader, I will be able to make my point, Maria, otherwise... Yes. I, I think that is extremely important. Well, well, but well, Madam. That, you know, a hijab-clad Muslim woman, that is very surprising hmm. because, uh, you know, that is not a prerequisite. The prerequisite okay, fine. Is, fine, you have made your point, ma'am. You have made your point. Yes, Varis Pathan, quickly. Yes. Well, well, just now I was listening to what Zina Shokatali was saying. She was speaking about the qualification. There has to be a qualification. Now, may I ask her, what is the qualification of our present Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi? We don't know his degree also. And what problem does she have for hijab? If a hijab wearing woman, we say, Modi said, Betty Bachao, Betty Padao. That time we said that our daughters wants to study, but you don't allow them to study. Uh, we want our daughter to have in one hand a computer, a laptop, in other hand, she should have a Quran and all her head she must wear a hijab and one day she becomes a good lawyer doctor engineer and why not become a prime minister of the great nation india what stops what prevents why why is the problem with the hijab hijab is just covering of the head we have not riding our brains the brain is acting it is only heading the head if she will become prime minister muslim representation you are talking about you show me what is the muslim representation in the bjp uh, era Okay, what is how many know, Shantanu Muslims Gupta, this question of Muslim representation made, is the BJP finding it difficult to explain? To contest elections? See, every party put candidate based on their availability. I think same similar question should be asked. How many Buddhists, how many Jains, how many Sikhs? Every party, including AIMM, make to contest, right? Uh, uh, Waris ji is saying that uh, Indian India will become completely secular when a hijab wearing female with the will become the prime minister with the same logic AIMM, AIMIM will become fully secular when a Hindu female become the president of AIMM what kind of logic is that let's talk merit if the person is popular if the person is what popular kind of people, logic is that here she gets, she gets I'm talking about the country you are talking about my party she can be the prime minister India India has never stopped anyone did, with did I say be it Maria Shakil, be it Azim Hazan Premji, be it, uh, be it uh, Mohammed Azuruddin, someone who is married always reached in top in India. So I think India doesn't have a problem. Yeah, Varis Patan, his Akas want to create a session, uh, sensation or want to come on TV debates. I think that's their claim to fame in every TV debate. That's all. Varis Patan, I'll give you the final words. Please go ahead. Well, these are nothing but conjectures and surmises they are coming up with. We say that, I did not say that from our party. We say a hijab wearing Muslim woman from our country, she will become the prime minister. Did anybody expect that Rishi Sunak will become the prime minister of Britain? No. Minister, ask, ask, ask. You forget, you forget about it. Our party has got women representations, enough women represented better than the other parties. Start from your home house. Charities Our party with... have got a huge number of Muslim women representation as well as other uh, well, from our sisters it, it also, asked, Hindu sisters also. We gave asked, ticket to seven Hindu asked, sisters asked, in Ahmedabad to contest election in Gujarat. Out of that, four of them won the election. Asked, See, barely been.
I was silent when you were making your point. I know truth is bitter, but you will have to listen. Don't just make a statement to come. See, I was very quiet and silent when you were making your foolish submissions. Okay. I was very quiet and silent when Shantanu was making his foolish submissions. But when I am making some thirty seconds, just trying to interject because I know the truth is bitter. Thirty seconds quickly. I have to move on to the next issue. Yes. Thirty seconds. Ha. Quickly. Well, I, well, I am making a simple point that what we have, what we need to say that huh. in India we live in democracy, follow the constitution, okay. and one day a Muslim woman wearing hijab can become the prime All minister right. of the country. All right, Varish Patan, Doctor Zina Shaukat Ali, and Shantanu Gupta, thank you so much for joining us. Shifting focus to debate two, as the rupee continues to slide, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has made a unique pitch to the central government. He wants the centre to introduce currency notes with Lord Ganesh and Goddess Lakshmi's. image along with mahatma gandhi giving the example of the indonesian rupiah which boasts the image of lord ganesh kejriwal said the move will help the economy recover and end its continuous decline while calling the proposal laughable the bjp has hit back at the aam aadmi party calling kejriwal a chunavi hindu accusing him of making the pitch just for the elections namely the fight in gujarat and himachal pradesh the bjp has accused him of trying to shed his aurangzeb image accusing him of trying to send hindus to jail for bursting crackers on diwali damadi party has stuck to its stand calling the delhi chief minister a true thug but is is this nothing more than an election gimmick by a party trying to expand its political footprint भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो वैसे ही रहनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी तरफ श्री गणेश जी की और श्री लक्ष्मी जी की तस्वीर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर लगाई जाए किस प्रकार से यू टर्न किया जाता है आज ही हमारे सामने पूर्णतः उतर के आ रहा है जनता उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा ये तो एक फेस सेविंग प्रोग्राम है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी चूंकि इन लोगों ने इतना गाली दिलवा दिया है अपने मंत्रियों से अपने गुजरात प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से हिंदू देवी देवताओं को कि अब इनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि हम कौन सा चेहरा लेके जनता के बीच में जाए मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है हम तो आस्तिक लोग हैं हम ये मानते हैं कि भगवान के आशीर्वाद के बिना बड़ा काम तो छोड़िए कोई छोटा काम भी सफल नहीं हो सकता And joining me now, Shahzad Poonawala, national spokesperson of the BJP, Priyanka Kakkar, Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson. Priyanka, the Indonesian rupiah that Kejriwal talked about is doing very badly, and the Ganesh photo on it hasn't helped arrest its slide. So why bank on superstition? Maria, good evening to all of you. But before I begin this, Maria, I I am not sure if I can debate with Shahzad ji since his own party MP. has asked that inka bahishkar kiya jaye either he calls up his mp and seeks permission before he sits before me in the debate and then we can proceed this is very confusing for me i'll uh, create help you resolve aapka bahishkar karna hai shahzad ji aapka priyanka ji aapka sawal samajh gaya aap sawal ka uttar bhi le lijiye parvesh verma ji ne to kisi samuday ka naam nahi liya tha wo to aatanki dangai aur aataiyon ka naam le rahe the parantu aapne ek aatai aatanki aur dangaiyon ko ek samuday se kaise jod liya to main aapatti darj karta hu ki aapne ek samuday vishesh ko aatanki aur logon se joda hai dusri baat par main sawal kyun kiya unhone meri baat kar hi di hai let's put the focus back back on this discussion nahi par iske alawa main apna point kar lu fir priyanka ji sir consolidated jawab dete hain dekhiye aaj kitna acha divas hai ki jo log kal tak aurangzeb hi mansikta se 
ग्रसित होकर पटाखों पर प्रतिबंध लगा रहे थे हिंदू पर्व पर प्रतिबंध लगा रहे थे आज ऐसा चुनावी यू टर्न किया है सियासी धर्मांतरण उसका ऐसा हुआ है कि जिस पार्टी में गोपाल इटालिया मंदिर और कथा को गाली और अपमान दे रहे थे जो मंदिर का विरोध कर रहे थे राम मंदिर का विरोध कर रहे थे ये कहते हुए कि नानी ने कहा है मस्जिद तोड़कर मंदिर बनाया जाना नहीं है मंदिर के बदले राम जन्मभूमि पर जो बिल्डिंग बनाने की बात कर रहे थे और जो कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के नरसंगार पर ठहाके लगा लगा कर हंस रहे थे आज वो लोग कह रहे हैं कि मां लक्ष्मी की और गणेश जी की तस्वीर होनी चाहिए करेंसी नोट पर मैं स्वीकार करता हूं ये जो चरनी है मैं इसका स्वीकार करता हूं एक ही सवाल है मारे जी ये तीन बिंदुओं पर मुझे स्पष्टीकरण दे दे कि ये जो नोट बनेगी लक्ष्मी माँ और गणेश जी की तस्वीर के साथ वो किसी शराबी घोटाले और हवालाबाज घोटाले के हाथ में नहीं आएगी दूसरी जो कसाई हाथों से खून से सने हाथ होंगे जिसके और जो जानवरों को काटता है उसके हाथ में नहीं जाएगी जो भ्रष्टाचार करता है विजय नायर से मनीष सिसोदिया जैसे लोगों के उनके हाथ में नहीं जाएगी और ताहिर हुसैन जैसे आतंकियों के हाथ में नहीं जाएगी इसका मुझे आप गारंटी दे दीजिए और हमारा समर्थन ले लीजिए अन्यथा यह बताइए कि यह सीजनल हिंदू वाला कार्ड जैसे सीजनल फ्रूट होता है और आखिरी बात मारिया जी आखिरी बात एक आखिरी बात मैं आपको आप बड़े हिंदू होने का दावा कर रहे हैं ना जटाटवी गलत जल प्रवाह पावित स्थले गड़े व लंब लंबितम भुजंग तुंग मालिकम ये शिव तांडव श्रोतम के पहले श्लोक की दो लाइन है आगे की आप कंप्लीट कर लीजिए मुझसे बड़े हिंदू है ना आप बताइए प्रियंका प्रियंका चलिए सवाल का जवाब दीजिए आपका बहिष्कार करना है आपके साथ आपको ऑब्जेक्शन है इस बात से जवाब दे देता हूँ मैंने तो कहा मुझे कतई अब आपका सवाल मैंने ले लिया है मारिया जी मैं जवाब दे दू मुझे कतई कोई ऑब्जेक्शन नहीं आप मुझे केवल इतना गारंटी दे दो कि ये माँ लक्ष्मी और गणेश जी वाली नोट शराब माफिया विजय नायर मनीष सिसोदिया के हाथ नहीं आएगी कसाई जिनके हाथ में खून सते हुए हैं गौ माता के खून से उनके हाथ नहीं आएगी तायर हुसैन जैसे दंगाइयों के हाथ नहीं आएगी इसका गारंटी मुझे दे दीजिए ना यस 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 प्रियंका हाँ बोलिए प्रियंका आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस वर्बल आपको नहीं समझेगा हिंदी हिंदी कंफर्टेबल है तो इंग्लिश में बोल देता हूं नहीं 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 शहजाद यू हैव स्पोकन प्रियंका हैज टू स्पीक नाउ प्रियंका इज दिस इज दिस इज दिस नॉट एन इलेक्शन स्टंट आर यू नॉट प्लेइंग द हिंदुत्व कार्ड बिफोर द ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट गुजरात इलेक्शंस कम इलेक्शन यू डिसाइड टू टर्न हिंदू मारिया आई एल अटेम्प्ट आंसरिंग बट इट इज वेरी कंफ्यूजिंग फॉर मी दैट आई हैव टू सिट बिफोर अ पर्सन जिनका बहिष्कार करना है and then he's talking about he has some uh, he's putting some conditions attached ki aisa kar denge to hame problem nahi hai inko ma lakshmi aur ganesh ji se kya problem hai patakon ke upar bhi laga hota hai in currency notes ke upar bhi lag jayega ek achhi shuruaat karni hai arthvyavastha to aapne bilkul dagmaga di hai 25000 kamane pe aap top 10% mein aate hain country ke agar the blessings le lenge bhagwan ji ki to usme aapko conditions kyun lagani hai theek hai मैं इसका जवाब देता हूँ नहीं बट 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 नो नो बट आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट सम फैक्ट्स आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट सम फैक्ट्स बिफोर वी मूव ऑन द इंडोनेशियन रुपया वन यूएस डॉलर इक्वल्स टू फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट नाइन फाइव इंडोनेशियन रुपया वन इंडियन रुपी इक्वल्स टू वन हंड्रेड एंड एटी नाइन पॉइंट फोर एट इंडोनेशियन रु and are you saying our currency is strengthening i mean it's a very it's a demand that we are saying that why don't you put these pictures because we believe that these the, the, lakshmi ji and ganesh ji symbolize wealth and prosperity and right now we need blessings we we want to start this work with the blessings auspicious blessings of accords theek hai maria main jawab de du dekhiye एक तो गजब की बात है हमारे uh, अभी एक एक करके आपके डिबेट में मैंने एक बीच में नहीं बोला मैं अपनी बात रख सकता हूँ मारिया जी क्या मैं अपनी बात रख सकता हूँ मैं आपसे अनुमति चाहता हूँ कैन आई स्पीक मारिया विदाउट बी इंटरप्टी नहीं प्रियंका 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 प्लीज लेट्स पुट फोकस ऑन दिस डिस्कशन दिस एंटायर डिबेट प्रियंका 
me an opportunity. Started by the Aam Aadmi Party chief, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal was the one who started this discussion with his press conference today. So you should be able to listen to all the responses that are coming. No, Maria, no. Let me come in. She has spoken her turn. It's my turn. Let me speak. Maria, you have to ask them to now step in. It's quite disturbing to me because of their bahishkar. Okay. Now, now all we are saying is what is the objection? Maria, this is my opportunity. The time of the debate is running yes. out. Yes. Okay. Share that quickly. Yes. Not two, three points. Let's address ah. them very quickly. First of all, I am saying that I have no objection to this idea at all. But because we revere Mal Lakshmi, no uh, please, uh, Maria. No writers. Maria, this the debate won't, okay. audience okay. won't be able to hear. Okay, okay, okay. Can you please ask your technical yes, team to please, allow no, one no, one at no, a time? No, Shahzad, make, make your point. Shahzad, make your point. How do I make my point if she's yes, interrupting? Yes, Shahzad. I did yes. not interrupt anyone. Yes, 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 yes. May I make my point without being interrupted? Yes, please go ahead. Because we revere Mal Lakshmi and Ganesh ji, I spoke to a large number of religious people. टुडे एंड दे टोल्ड मी बेटा आप जब डिबेट में जाओगे तो इस केजरीवाल को बोलना कि मां लक्ष्मी की तस्वीर नोट तो गल जाती है फट जाती है टूट जाती है कहीं और लग जाती है उसको किस प्रकार से चोरी के लोग यूज करते हैं टेररिस्ट यूज करते हैं हम नहीं चाहते हमारी मां लक्ष्मी का इस्तेमाल ऐसे हो तो केजरीवाल से पहले गारंटी ले लेना तो मैं उनकी बात कन्वे कर रहा हूं दूसरी बात इतना ही इनको अगर लक्ष्मी मां का आशीर्वाद चाहिए तो अपने दफ्तर में सरकारी पीछे लगा देना मां लक्ष्मी की तस्वीर जिसमें कि वो कमल के वाहन पर बैठी हुई है और हाथ में कमल लेकर बैठी हुई है आपको किसने रोका है पर जब मौका मिला सरकार में तो पहला निर्णय क्या लिया मौलानाओं की पगार बढ़ानी है दूसरा निर्णय क्या किया धन मन धर्म समर्पित है किसको वक्फ को और तीसरा निर्णय क्या लिया कि राम मंदिर में कतई नहीं जाना है क्योंकि मंदिर क्यों बना है मस्जिद तोड़ के बना है और चौथा निर्णय क्या लिया गोपाल इटालिया को गुजरात का चेहरा बनाया जिसने कहा कथा और मंदिर जो है वो शोषण के अड्डे अब ये सही मायनों में हिंदुत्व के इतने बड़े ये प्रकारक और प्रवर्तक है तो बताइए कि गोपाल इटालिया पे क्या कार्रवाई करेंगे राजेंद्र पाल ने कहा विष्णु ब्रह्म महेश का कोई अस्तित्व नहीं अब वो कह रहे हैं कि लक्ष्मी जी को अब नोट पर डाले अरे भाई पहले बताइए कि उनको क्या पार्टी से निकाला है अरे मनीष सिसोदिया ने कहा कि राम मंदिर बनाना नहीं उसके जगह पर आप बना दीजिए कोई बिल्डिंग बताइए उस पर क्या कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए और स्वस्तिक हिंदू विरोधी पार्टी है इन्होंने तीन सौ पचास मंदिर वाराणसी में तोड़े उसमें से एक मंदिर टू फिफ्टी ईयर ओल्ड प्राचीन मंदिर था Only to build a shopping mall. Your party has written to us, जिन्होंने आपका बहिष्कार करने को बोला है उन्होंने फिफ्थ जुलाई अभी चिट्ठी लिखी कि डेली गवर्नमेंट परमिट अस टू ब्रेक फिफ्टी थ्री टेम्पल इन डेली इनको शायद पता नहीं होगा बहिष्कार करने के बाद आज इनको इतना बोलने में इसलिए दे रही हूँ बिकॉज आई फीलिंग सिंपथेटिक टू वर्ड्स हिम आपकी सिंपति मुझे नहीं चाहिए परंतु एक चीज का जवाब जरूर दे दीजिएगा प्रियंका जी इसको थोड़ा सुन के दीजिएगा और आप जरूर दीजिए जेके अपन खबर छे कैसेट घसाई गई छे अरे मतलब फालतू वा तो मा कथा मा जेन हिजड़ा नी जेम ताली हो पारे छे कथा में जाकर आप डैश डैश की तरह ताली मारते हैं ये गोपाल इटालियन एक एक करके भाई आप सबसे बड़े अरे भाई मारिया प्लीज मारिया मारिया मेरा समय है बोलने का मारिया प्लीज मुझे संरक्षण दीजिए मारिया यू हैव टू इंटरव्यू शी इज टॉकिंग ओवर मी लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट इट्स माय टर्न टू स्पीक मारिया लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट द टाइम इज ऑन लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट शी इज इंटरप्टेड मी ऑन एवरी टाइम यस यस शहजाद गो शी हैज इंटरप्टेड मी एवरी एवरी टाइम आई हैव टू स्पीक शी इज इंटरप्टेड मी द चैनल कैन आल्सो अलाउ वन मिनट चलिए 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 हाँ, मैंने अभी गोपाल इटालिया का स्टेट ये कह रहे ना हम तो बहुत बड़े फर्जी हिंदू हैं चलिए ठीक है हमको क्या क्या जो हिंदू मंदिर भाई तो मारिया ऐसे कैसे डिबेट हो सकती है मैंने उनकी बात सुनी ना मारिया आई एम बेगिंग यू फॉर माय टाइम दिस इज जस्टिस यू हैव टू गिव टू गोपाल इटालिया इटरेशन दैट मंदिर और कथा में जाने वाले शोषण करते हैं कथा में जाने वाले डैश डैश की तरह तालियां बजाते हैं ये बड़े हिंदू हैं हम तो नहीं है 
सिर्फ तांडव श्रोतम का तो इनको एक लाइन नहीं आता वो तो पहले ही शुरुआत में साबित हो गया मैं इनसे पूछता हूं कि अरे बड़े हिंदू आप बताइए गोपाल इटालिया ने जो बोला वो हिंदू विरोधी है या हिंदुओं के पक्ष में है जो राम मंदिर के विषय में केजरीवाल ने बोला उसका स्टेटमेंट भी मैं सुना सकता हूं कि नानी ने बोला है मंदिर नहीं जाना है राम जी वहां नहीं बसते उसके विषय पर आपका क्या स्टैंड बता दीजिए तीसरी बात जो वक्त के लिए आपने तन मन धन समर्पित किया था क्या किसी हिंदू पंडित को पांच रुपए भी दिया है आपने सरकारी कोष से इसका जवाब दे दीजिए ना क्वेश्चन फाइनल वाज यस यस वो पार्टी है जिनके मुंह पे राम और बगल में छुरा है और आपके मुंह पे तो राम अच्छा ही नहीं लग रहा आपका बहिष्कार भी हुआ है दूसरा आपने क्या किया आपने अयोध्या में भी अयोध्या में भी स्कैम किया राम मंदिर में वहां पर आपने सुल्तान अंसारी जो एक भगोड़ा है पीओ डिक्लेयर है उससे आपने दो करोड़ में जमीन खरीदी थी और अठारह करोड़ में ट्रस्ट को बेची ये करते आप चंदा चोर है आप आप स, आप बताइए कि वो जो जिन्होंने मंदिर तोड़े 350 सौ पचास वाराणसी में काशी में शॉपिंग मॉल बनाने के लिए उनके लिए आपने क्या किया सीआर पाटिल जी के क्षेत्र में एक मंदिर तोड़ा गया अभी किसी बिल्डर को फेवर करने के लिए आपने क्या किया और आप बहिष्कार होकर यहाँ बैठे मुझे बहुत ज्यादा कंफ्यूजन हो रहा है ये क्या चल रहा है अब पांच सेकंड ले सकता हूँ मारिया जी मैं एक भारतीय मुसलमान हूं पर मैंने राम मंदिर के लिए चंदा दिया केजरीवाल ने कितना चंदा दिया जरा बता दीजिए चुनावी रिसीट जो चंदे की रिसीट आप चंदा चोर हैं मैं अब छोड़ दीजिए अब जाइए और बहिष्कार आतंकियों का करना है आपने आतंकियों को पूरे मुस्लिम समुदाय से कैसे जोड़ा ये परवेश वर्मा जी ने नहीं पर आपने जरूर मुसलमानों का बहुत बड़ा अपमान किया है मुसलमान देख रहे हैं मुसलमान देख रहे हैं आपने कैसे अपमान किया है आप अपमान करते हैं उनका रोज दिन सुबह शाम ऐसी पार्टी में होकर जो आपका बहिष्कार कर आप परवेश वर्मा ने कहीं पर भी समुदाय का नाम लिया तो बता दीजिए परंतु मुझे बताइए की राम मंदिर का अपोज करना है राम मंदिर नहीं जाना है गोपाल इटालिया के बयानों पर एक वाक्य आप नहीं बोल पाए गोपाल इटालिया के अलावा स्वस्तिक की चिंता अपमान करने वाले केजरीवाल के ट्वीट पे एक वाक्य नहीं बोल पाए कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के नरसंहार पे हंसने वाले केजरीवाल पे एक वाक्य नहीं बोल पाए और आप शिव तांडव स्त्रोतम को भी कंप्लीट नहीं कर पाए जाकर पढ़ लीजिए श्लोक पढ़ लीजिए फिर आप इस तरीके का दावा कीजिएगा चलिए आपको बहिष्कार करना है आप केवल बीच में बोलने के अलावा कोई डिबेट नहीं कर पाए is this not hindutva card that you are playing keeping purely and purely gujarat elections in we mind we are Say one yes party or no we are one party which are sending our people to to buzurgon ko teerth yatra inke yahan par pm cm tax payer ke paise se jaate hain teerth yatra pe hamare yahan par tax payer ke money se hum bechte hain logo ko teerth yatra pe All right. what is that priyanka ka we are doing we are constantly and, and, and shahzad punawala here Bhad. in the studio really appreciate your time thank you so much for joining us on that note we are slipping into a short break after that I'll be getting you an exclusive interview with Lord Meghna Desai on the new team Rishi Sunak. What does it actually mean for India and for Great Britain? Any other party? Uh, the same Aam Aadmi Party you refer to has an Amanatullah Khan. They have a Tahir Hussain who used to be an MLC. But yes. I, I want to get to the larger point. Both uh, Ratan yeah. Sharda and Suman also refer no, to one, this. One, so one I want to ask Mohammad Fa Farhan. No, no, just give me, just give me ten one, seconds. Yeah, Mohammad yeah. Farhan is the spokesperson of the MIM Party. Mohammad Farhan Saab, who uh, your Rashtriya Dhyaksh Shri uh, Asaduddin Owaisi has said, that is a good thing. No one has any complaints. All right, we've lost him. Let's go to Ambar Zaidi. Uh, Ambar, you know, no one has a problem with what Mr. Owaisi said. The problem is. his own double standards when it comes to his own party everyone uh, you know has no problem with a hijab wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country but in mr ovc's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they are all men all mlas that they have across five or six states where mim has mlas they are all men uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men So where is a woman hijab wearing or otherwise in Mr Owaisi's party in any position of leadership Absolutely right uh, uh, because uh, as they say charity uh, begins at home and whatever uh, Owaisi ji is preaching he doesn't practice that so he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation we need to like uh, in our country if we talk about the muslim women especially their literacy rate is so low he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women he doesn't care about the health care of muslim women he doesn't give that equal rights that the muslim women as uh, the islam or sharia are given even uh, the constitution for that matter but they they never talk about the equal right or basic human right 
the Muslim women should get. But he is just preaching what is like, uh, he should also like, uh, he, I mean, I just want to ask one question to uh, OSAG. Uh, he should at, at least give up on his MP seat from Hyderabad and nominate at least a woman from his party. And he should give a chance to uh, be the more prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least. And then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and uh, yell out to, to the people what he's just trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that uh, in India Muslim are being targeted just because because of their religious identities for hijab for topi for beef or for for all these things which is absolutely not right he needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue the work on ground. Okay, Amina Sherwani, you know, I'm, I'm taking ahead what the point that Ambar Zedi was making. That again, I have no quibble with Mr. Uh, Mr. Ovesi wanting to see in his lifetime a burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the Prime Minister of this country. Surely if that person is capable, if that person has uh, electoral majority, the support of the majority of the people of this country, absolutely that person should go on to become Prime Minister. But in Mr. Ovesi's case, not just this leadership issue in his party, but more importantly, how do you get there? We are talking about Rishi Sunak. It's his capability. He went to the best schools uh, in England and the best universities in the world. Uh, it is about his education. As, as an old man once said, the greatest leveler that we have in this country is, is quality education. If you get a good education, that is a sure shot route to success. What has Mr. Oasis party done about uh, education and, 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 for, uh, and for women? Uh, who is the party who said, agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanyangika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala and as we know the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijab. Welcome back. United Kingdom where team Rishi Sunak is taking shape with a mission to stabilize the economy is our next focus. Rishi Sunak has filled the top posts in his cabinet with Jeremy Hunt and Ben Wallace continuing in their positions as Chancellor of the Exchequer and Defence Secretary. James Cleverly has been given the post of Foreign Secretary while Robert Jornick is Immigration Minister. But Sunak is already under fire over the reappointment of Suela Breverman as the Home Secretary. Remember, she resigned over the breach of ministerial code for handling confidential information through her private email. However, beyond the domestic turmoil, where all opinion polls cite a labor sweep, if elections are announced, Braverman has raised an alarm in India. She is known for her anti-immigration politics and even said that Indians overstay their visas the most. She has also opposed the free trade agreement with India claiming it will increase the number of Indian migrants. Naturally, Sunak is having a hard time defending her. Here's a look at an interaction from the parliament. Was his Home Secretary right to resign last week for a breach of security? Yeah. Prime Minister! Well, Mr Speaker, can I thank the uh, Ronald Wood gentleman for, for his kind and indeed generous uh, welcome to the dispatch box. I look forward to Prime Minister's question time with him. And I know that we will have, no doubt, robust exchanges, but I hope that they can also be serious and grown up. So I look forward to it. Well, he, he, he asked about the Home Secretary. The Home Secretary made an error of judgment, but she recognised that. She raised the matter and she accepted her mistake. And that's why, that's why I was delighted to welcome back into a united cabinet that brings experience stability to the heart of government. And let me tell you, Mr Speaker, what the Home Secretary will be focused on. She'll be focused on cracking down on criminals, on defending our borders, while the party opposite remains soft on crime and in favour of unlimited immigration. 
And joining me now is Lord Meghna Desai, member of the House of Lords. Lord Desai, really appreciate your time. You have a new Prime Minister in Rishi Sunak. The process of choosing his ministers has begun. Some have been reappointed, some have been sagged. How are you looking at this new team, Rishi Sunak? Well, you know, what that means is that he is trying to maintain all the factions in the party happy because the party is very divided between different factions and different, and they have to now agree at least until the election time so that the party can continue to rule in, in an orderly fashion. Otherwise, they'll have to face an election and they're not ready for that. So the first step of having a cabinet of all parts is a good, good move. Now his other problem he'll have to begin to solve. One concern is of Suela Braverman, who quit the government few days before Liz Truss's resignation and is back in Sunak government as Home Secretary. Braverman is known to have controversial view as far as India is concerned, uh, particularly to do with Indians overstaying their visas and also regarding FTA. So what does this appointment mean for India? Well, you know, Suela Braverman is from India. She's of Indian origin. As much as uh, you know, people say Rishi Sunak, but Rishi Sunak was born here uh, in Britain. I think basically Priti Patel, who was the Home Secretary before Suela Braverman, she was also tough on immigration. But I think you have to make a distinction between people who try to arrive in UK without a visa, without a passport, as refugees and against them. What she said about Indians, the Indians, when they come to UK, overstayed their welcome beyond the visa limits. That's all she pointed out. And that is not anti-Indian prejudice. That is basically a statement of fact. So I think people should give Suela Braverman a little bit more time to settle down in her job and do her job. Okay, so you are of the opinion that she should be given more time. Uh, but looking at overall immigration policies, which include visa for Indians, is the key contentious point in the FTA, uh, which India-UK had hoped to sign by this Diwali. But Indian origin Home Secretary Suela Braverman uh, is being seen as largely responsible for derailing it. The question then is, can Rishi Sunak give FTA a fresh push? Basically, one has to understand that Rishi Sunak is a British Prime Minister. He is British-born. Yes, he is from an Indian ancestry, but he will not particularly favor India just because he is supposed to be Indian. He has to look after British interests. And in Britain, immigration happens to be a controversial topic. Under Preeti Patel, it caused a lot of controversy because she wanted to, uh, you know, to export all the legal So I give the Brahman a bit more time. Let the FTA be negotiated properly. And I think when the FTA is negotiated, India can make its demands and then UK will will respond. So I don't think people should imagine that, oh, because Rishi Sunak is uh, Indian, uh, India will have an easy ride in the FTA. No country gives another country an easy ride when it comes to FTA. FTAs are very important for both countries. And I think a little bit of patience and, and uh, India should defend India's interest and UK will defend UK's interest. I don't think anybody should expect that Rishi Sunak will just let uh, let India walk all over. Lord Mignan Desai, uh, let's look at this team. Ben Wallace as the Secretary of Defence, uh, he was also in Liz Truss's cabinet. He has been retained. Penn Modern uh, has been made law, a leader of the House of Commons. Several uh, such reappointments have happened. Many are of the opinion, and I've been reading a lot of analysts who have commented on it. They are of the opinion that this, this is perhaps old wine in the new bottle. Well, as I was saying, he has to have a cabinet which is a combination of all the different factions. So people who are under uh, Boris Johnson, some of them are here. Some of the people, Boris Johnson sect, are back, like Michael Gove. Some of the people who are under uh, 
Liz Truss are also back. He's trying to make as little change as possible so that he doesn't end up fighting the inside cabinet battles, but concentrates on other problems. I mean, right now, what matters is that the cabinet works harmoniously and begins to solve the really big problems we have, which are about inflation and possible recession, and of course, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, which is very, very serious, and of course, energy prices. So I think here's a lot of problems and the FTA with India is not a major issue. It will be solved, but it is not urgent. It will be solved, but it's not urgent. Uh, let me ask the final question, and this is about Suela Braverman. Uh, she had linked the riots in Leicester post-India-Pakistan match to uncontrolled migration of people from subcontinent who failed to integrate into the host country. Her views on migration has been very, very controversial. In matter of deportation, she follows the footstep of her predecessor, Preeti Patel, who wanted to deport illegal migrants to Rwanda. Uh, so, what will be it now? Should How should India be viewing uh, with her being someone who will be helming the Home Department? As I was saying before, Preeti Patel was against people who arrived on boats in the channel, pretended to be refugees, and once they arrive on British soil, they may qualify to be citizens. She wanted to stop that flow. Other immigration, which happened regularly, was going through the standard routine uh, laws. Now, Sula Brown, I, I don't know why everybody is making such a big fuss about Sula Browman, because she is new, but, but she, as, as a minister, she is of Indian origin, but she is also, like Rishi Sunak, a British person. And I think she has been good enough uh, and noticed well enough to have been made cabinet minister by two prime ministers. I think have patience with Sura Browerman. Don't, as it were, make a fuss about it. And in the FTA negotiations, these problems can be brought up in a proper technical way. Don't say, oh, Sura Browerman is against all Indians. She is not. All that she said was that some people do not obey the law mm. of the land and overstay their welcome in UK. Now, that's a per uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed, say, in US or Canada or anywhere else. So she is not saying anything which is out of, uh, out of uh, uh, the standard rules. All right, uh, Lord Meghna, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. We are putting out all those interviews on news18.com. That's all for me. Thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. If you don't have a hijab, then you don't are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanyanyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala. And as we know, the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world. And yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world, and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster, and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us, to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwesi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now, women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze, and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs, and he should stop staring at women in hijab, and he should stop bothering about women, and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. 
we know how to become chief justice of the indian supreme court we know how to join the hague we know how to go to the united nations we really don't need him to comment on us he is a nobody and he should understand that uh, ratan shahda let me start with you first there are 1.5 million people of indian descent persons of indian origin uh, in the uk it's the largest ethnic minority in that country and one among them uh, a british asian of the third generation rishi sunak has become the prime minister of that country shouldn't indians and people of indian heritage all over the world celebrate that instead you have mr chidambaram and now mr ovc saying you know when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister are they trying to poke holes in the sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now actually it's very amusing diwali eve uh, discussion and are really enjoying all these discussions because hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly first of all the hijab was never part of our dress in, for indian muslims there was no burqa it became prominent just last 20 years back back and hijab has been introduced as an arabic celebrity sign only in recent years now whether they want hijab or burqa first point secondly would they support iranian iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so so this patriarchy they have to clarify mm. if they say islam is what what the best part of islam is they, if they follow sharia with the continuously claim that sharia is above constitution many debates then as per islam a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her if not a male at least a child so how can a woman a muslim woman can become a prime minister in a, when the islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere and okay. the next if you say islamic nation next door to us in pakistan there was bambeedra ji bhutto she lost her life she was not a hijab wearing Hello and welcome to the late night edition with me Ayushman Singh Jamwal our top focus in the late night edition is Thursday or October 27th which is yes which is tomorrow which marks accession day when the maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir Hari Singh signed the instrument of accession uniting Jammu and Kashmir with the rest of India it took place in the middle of Pakistan's first invasion of India in 1947 where a force of 5000 tribals descended on the Kashmir valley after sacking Muzaffarabad Now, while India was facing the chaos of partition, the Pakistani force looted, raped, and pillaged their way across the valley on the road to Srinagar. But before they could reach the capital, Maharaja Hari Singh signed the, the historic document and allowed the first Sikh regiment to land in Kashmir and push back the invaders. Now, for decades now, this day has been marked by protests by separatists, but now it is a day that marks India's unity and unbreakable bond with Jammu and Kashmir. That's. the top focus on cnn news 18 i'm joined by nirmal singh former deputy chief minister of jammu and kashmir on this historic moment as we mark 75 years of accession now dr singh uh, thank you so much for joining us on cnn news 18 now many for many years um, this entire day was uh, treated as a very important uh, day for jammu specifically because it was when the indian forces uh, saved jammu and kashmir from the first invasion of pakistan it was also the day when maharaja hari singh signed the instrument of accession how essential is this day for the rest of india uh, when it comes to this entire notion of naya bharat that we talk about uh, actually uh, maharaja hari singh signed this instrument of, of accession on 26 october and it was accepted on 27 mm-hmm. by the government of india jawarla nehru this was the instrument of accession which was applicable to all the princely states there were 562 princely states out of which 555 joined india and uh, jammu and kashmir was one of them moreover there was no deadline to sign this instrument of accession that it has to be signed before uh, 15th august it was not uh, 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 obligate uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, this important so maharaj hari singh signed it we became the part of the largest democracy of the world and we are a part of the vibrant democracy today when it was signed the circumstances were such that uh, pakistan had invaded jammu and kashmir pakistan occupied one uh, third of the uh, uh, territory of jammu and kashmir which is uh, still under illegal occupation of pakistan which is known as pojk and uh, 
uh, afterwards we see that uh, uh, other things they followed whether 370 or other things but this day is very important because uh, we became a part of india which was uh, constitutionally very uh, important for us because maharaja hari singh gave that opportunity to the people of jammu and kashmir that we became the part of india that that's the uh, uh, importance of this day right and uh, dr singh for many uh, for many years we had the huriyat conference uh, uh, in uh, namely the srinagar uh, the city of srinagar calling this the day that india occupied kashmir and that entire sentiment of separatism was given oxygen for many years why do you think that was the case and why do you think india's victory in uniting jammu and kashmir with the rest of the union was sidelined for so many years it's nonsense on the part of such people who are questioning the instrument of accession. If we look at the history, we see that a long process has been uh, followed. Between uh, the British Indian go uh, uh, British government and the Indian uh, leaders, Indian political parties, round, three round table conferences were held in which uh, all the stakeholders they were involved. Then uh, we see that Crips, uh, Crips Commission came, Cabinet Commission ca came, then ultimately the Independence Act came. So, this instrument of accession and the powers uh, given to Maharaja Hari Singh that emerged out of these all these uh, uh, discussions and uh, agreements to question that. And it was the sole authority of the Maharaja or the king to accede to either of the two unions, whether it's Pakistan or uh, India. We see that Umar Court, uh, Amar Court, which are basically Amar Court, they joined Pakistan, which is still a, a Hindu majority area, and Hindu Raja joined Pakistan. Nobody questioned that. Because it was the sole authority of Maharaja uh, uh, Amar Court. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Jammu and Kashmir, the Kashmiri leadership, especially the separatists, and even National Conference and other Bukhar people, they question it. They say India exceeded, but uh, uh, they start, uh, uh, it's not uh, emerged. This is the uh, debate that they, uh, uh, you can say, sometimes they enter into, which is nonsense. Right. But because the uh, whole of, uh, of the world, this, that was the, uh, you can say, consensus of the whole of the world. If you look at the history, not only British, uh, 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 colonial uh, power, but other powers also. They are also involved uh, directly, indirectly on this in this process. So to question that, it means that to question the very existence of Pakistan, I'm saying it with authority. If we, you are questioning the, uh, the instrument of accession, uh, the, the, the Jammu Kashmir joining India, you are questioning the very existence of uh, Pakistan because there were a large number of people who never wanted Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and yeah, we continue. have to look at uh, from that point of view. Right. And Dr. Singh, uh, my uh, final uh, question is that uh, now the entire normalcy drive after the abrogation of Article 370 continues to hit certain roadblocks. If we look at the Vikas drive, even if we look at the security of Kashmiri pundits. Now, recognizing the history of what happened in 1947, where you had the Indian forces, you had the Dogra forces also defending uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, from Pakistani invaders, while the Pakistani invaders were calling themselves liberators. They were butchering, raping and pillaging uh, across the valley, but they called themselves liberators. Recognizing this history is very central to the post-abrogation of 370 agenda. Now, how many strides have you made, in your opinion, when it comes uh, to Jammu and Kashmir post-Article 370? Because one thing that is central to this entire campaign is winning the winning the battle of hearts and minds, winning the sentiments of the people of Kashmir. Recognizing history is very important, but to attain victory in the battle of hearts and minds, where do you think the BJP stands today? Uh, Ayushman, if we look at the history of Jammu Kashmir, since uh, 1947, we see, see that the three generations of Kashmiris, they were uh, given the message by its leadership that though you are in India, but you are not 100% Indians. You are special. 
so that was the the kashmiris were at the cross road now that uh, is over now the kashmiris average jammu person of jammu and kashmir who was not not uh, believing in indianness uh, because he was taught like that so now he feels that i have to live in the system and they are reaping the you can some uh, uh, these benefits of indian democracy and you see that within 3 and 1/2 years what's the change which you are uh, you are elaborating these are uh, some of the chief ministers they were saying whether it was farooq dullah or mahbooba mufti that 370 if uh, you touch 370 not all the hands but even bodies will burn there what is shall be there are to uh, you can say even uh, uh, carry uh, this uh, tricolor but you have seen in the uh, this uh, last uh, independence day the kashmiris they were carrying trang uh, the tricolor on their heads so that's the change now the enemy has changed its strategy by uh, 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 resorting to target killing because they have defeated they have been defeated on the on the uh, on the ground now they are uh, uh, resorting to this uh, cowardly acts killing innocent people whether it's a hindu muslim or a sikh even kashmiri muslims are being killed by them it shows that kashmiris they are not uh, following their dictates that's a change right thank you dr singh for joining us on cnn news 18 and giving us your perspective as we mark this historic moment in indian history accession day when jammu and kashmir united with the rest of india but we bring you the story of the first recipient of the mahavir chakra in independent india his name was brigadier rajinder singh who just weeks after independence led a small force of 100 dogra soldiers to defend jammu and kashmir from a 5000 strong pakistani invasion force ladies and gentlemen it was a four day operation that secured jammu and kashmir with the indian union this is a scene in news 18 special report October 27th commemorated as a black day in the valley The day separatists claim Kashmir was taken by force by India But what they forget is that 70 years ago at the same time a brave Indian general and his band of soldiers died defending the valley from a Pakistani invasion His name Brigadier Rajinder Singh Jamwal immortalized as the savior of kashmir in the wake of the partition violence pakistan sniffed its first opportunity to invade jammu and kashmir over 5000 pakistani tribals and troops swooped into the valley after there was a mutiny in the 4th jammu and kashmir infantry where the muslim officers turned on their dogra brothers they attacked their own brethren they attacked their commanding officer and the adjutant and they killed them and suddenly the way to shirnagar ray wide open on the night of october 22nd the pakistani forces sacked muzaffarabad and began the march towards shrinagar maharaja hari singh turned to brigadier rajinder singh jamwal the chief of the armed forces of jammu and kashmir <laughs> dr karan singh remembers that day vividly when the brigadier was given his orders he came in he saluted my father saluted me sat down and daddy said to him as far as i can remember he said to him you know situation is very difficult uh, you have to go and fight to the last man and the last last bullet he said your highness of course i will do that he got up again so little both of us ye mere hamare paas hai yograj singh jamwal the brigadier's nephew was a college student then and remembers the final jeep ride with his uncle before he went to fight the enemy no he picked me up away to main to ghar tere ho gaya i am on my way तो श्रीनगर तो जो स्कॉड था ना वो इंचार्ज ऑफ दी स्टेट फोर्सेस उनसे टेक ओवर करना था गे फेयरवेल दैट इज द लास्ट आई सा आई द ब्रिगेडियर गैदर्ड अराउंड 100 मेन फ्रॉम द बादामी बाग कंटोनमेंट एंड लेफ्ट श्रीनगर टू मीट द इनवेडर्स हेड ऑन एट उरी ही डिड नॉट इवन ऑर्डर एनी ऑफ हिज सबऑर्डिनेट्स टू गो फॉरवर्ड ही कुड हैव सेंड अ मेजर अ कैप्टन टू डू दिस डिलेइंग एक्शन ही वाज द चीफ ऑफ स्टाफ but the man decided to go himself barber roti pakane wale ye wo arsa mother along the pilots and other thing wo he collected that to be able to rally such people whom you have not even seen to fight a war 
under such adverse conditions speaks volumes for his leadership qualities. The brigadier and his brave soldiers delayed Pakistan's advance by four days, making them bleed at Uri, Mahura and Bunyar. But the size of the invasion force was too overwhelming. They made their last stand near Baramula. They put roadblocks in the rear so that they could kill Brigadier Rajinder Singh and his men. He got through one roadblock, then he, there was a second roadblock. They had dropped trees on the way and they started firing, they started firing on the drivers of the convoy. He was badly wounded in the arm and the leg. He ordered the troops there that he must be picked up and put under a sort of a culvert with a pistol. The reason that he gave was that I told the king that if Pakistanis get across me, it will be over my dead body. On October 26, 1947, Maharaja Hari Singh signed the instrument of accession. On the morning of October 27th, the 1st Battalion of the Sikh Regiment landed in Srinagar and pushed back the Pakistani invaders. The sacrifice of the Dogra warriors giving them the tactical advantage. If you have Jammu and Kashmir today, it's because of one man, Brigadier Rajinder Singh, MVC. The idea of India involves uh, Kashmir. And if, if it had not been for his action, we would not have had Kashmir. Brigadier Rajinder Singh Jamal was awarded the first Mahavir Chakra in independent India on December 30th, 1949. Not only did he defend Jammu and Kashmir, he also protected the independence of a newborn nation. In his sacrifice lies the most potent challenge to the separatists, propelling the idea that Kashmir belongs to India and India belongs to Kashmir. He remains a timeless example of duty and service. In New Delhi, Ayushman Jamwal. And breaking news coming in, Britain has completed the majority of sections of a free trade agreement with India, but will only sign off on the deal once it's happy that it's fair and reciprocal. This statement has been made by Trade Department Minister Greg Hans. That's the piece of breaking news that's coming in as Rishi Sunak takes charge of 10 Downing Street. What we are learning is that the free trade agreement between India and the United Kingdom Final sections of that agreement seem to have been completed. But what we are learning from the Trade Minister is that they will only sign off on the deal once they are happy that it's fair and reciprocal. I'm joined by my colleague Siddhant on the phone line. Siddhant, give us the details. Well, interestingly, as a Chancellor of the Exchequer, Mr. Sunak had expressed support for the FTA. And in fact, now he is uh, Prime Minister-elect. Uh, so the possibility of uh, the remaining chapters getting closed uh, increases. And this is perhaps the reason that the trade community in both the countries are optimistic. Now, the total trade between India and the UK, uh, it stood at $7.5 billion in 2021 and 22. And, you know, uh, uh, this FTA will open up, uh, you know, uh, uh, free trade agreement between the two ca countries and going to eliminate or significantly reduce custom duties or maximum number of goods traded between them. So uh, the main aim uh, to uh, to renegotiate this FTA claims uh, FTA uh, agreement was uh, to bring down the custom duties and in exchange for those custom duties, reduce custom duties to offer more visa to Indians uh, in uh, in Great Britain. So it all started in January. Uh, the deadline was the, before Diwali, but it couldn't uh, it couldn't be completed before Diwali because there were some uh, some disagreements, and both the sides couldn't come uh, to a mutual conclusion on in several uh, issues. But uh, uh, as Mr. Sunak was always in favor of this F uh, this FTA. A negotiation and since he is going to be the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom so there is a high possibility that uh, uh, that this is uh, this, uh, this, uh, the remaining chapters are going to get closed as early as possible. Back to you. Right, thank you Siddharth for getting us that piece of breaking news. More breaking news coming in. Now, the Telecom Minister has asked WhatsApp for a report on the recent outage which took place. So, to say, the government wants to know whether security was compromised due to that outage which hit WhatsApp. Now, what was the reason for the outage for over two hours and what was the impact on India? Those are the questions that top sources 
from the central government are telling us that they want to know from WhatsApp. I'm joined by Pallavi Ghosh, who's getting us this piece from Breaking News. Pallavi, give us the details. So basically what the government wants to know through the IT ministry is that what was one, the reason for this outage, was the maximum impact fell on India and was there a security concern or a security compromise? As you know, Aishwa, in the past also, India has been periodically writing to WhatsApp, raising concerns over... Uh, you know, the secrecy norms being violated, and it may not be encrypted completely despite the claim. These kinds of security concerns have been frequently raised by India and the Indian government, specifically, of course, with the uh, uh, WhatsApp management. The, what happened yesterday, we saw the maximum outage took place in many countries across the world, but India was also badly hit. And that's what the IT ministry really wants to know. The reasons behind it, what was the impact, was there a compromise on security and what could have been the conclusion? Right. Thank you, Pallavi, for joining us on the phone line and getting us that piece of breaking news. So the uh, telecom ministry seeking that report from WhatsApp. We'll take a short break. More news and updates on the other side. Route to success. What has Mr. Ovesi's party done about uh, education and, 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 for, uh, and for women? Uh, who is the party who said, Agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanganyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala and as we know the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world and yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world and they will be educated, they will certainly become Prime Ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster, and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us, to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwesi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze, and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. Uh, Ratan Shadha, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country. And one among them, uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the prime minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as Prime Minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back. And hijab has been introduced as an Arabic slavery sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian... Welcome back. Any your wrap of all the other news. An argument over a parking space in Gazibar led to a murder of a 35-year-old man last night. The bone-chilling video of the crime has now gone viral on social media. In the pictures, you can see that the car of the car is broken. They are also seen here. And the car is here. And the car is here. 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 जो युवक है उसके पिता ने पुलिस को तहरीर दी है तहरीर के आधार पर पुलिस ने मुकदमा पंजीकृत कर लिया है और पांच टीमों को गठित किया गया है 
और आसपास के सीसीटीवी फुटेज की तलाश की जा रही है जल्द ही युवकों की गिरफ्तारी कर ली जाएगी and the delhi lg allows holding chhat puja at designated ghats at the yamuna and has urged chief minister kejriwal to ensure clean ghats and water for devotee and you can see these workers are working on this particular artificial ghat that is on the bank of river yamuna as far as the preparations are concerned so total 1100 chhat ghat will be prepared by different agencies in the national capital and in fact delhi government is spending at least 25 crore rupees here on this chhat puja for these chhat ghats we have seen whole lot of politics around the particular occasion Congress President Manakshan Kharge took charge as the Congress President today. He took charge of the top post today. Kharge defeated Congress MP Shashi Tharoor by securing over 7,800 votes in the presidential race. He is the first non-Gandhi leader in 24 years to assume the top office. Ireland beat England by five runs in a rain-affected game in Melbourne. After 11 years, Ireland again upset England by a famous victory. Ireland set a target of 158 runs. In reply, England were reduced to 105 for the fall of five wickets when rain interrupted the match. Sports brand Adidas has terminated its partnership with rapper Kanye West over his anti-Semitic comments. The move is estimated to impact its bottom line by $246 million. The company put out a strong message saying that they shall not tolerate any form of hate speech being propagated and that West's recent actions have been highly unacceptable, hateful and dangerous, violating the company's policies of inclusion. And in entertainment news, director James Gunn is in the news for both comic book movie universes. The director, popularly known for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is now joining Warner Brothers. CNN's Rick Tamigla brings us this report. It's got to be me. I've got to do this. James Gunn powers up DC. Warner Brothers has announced the director, known for his Marvel Cinematic Universe movies with Disney, is joining Warner's as co-chairman and chief executive officer of DC Studios, overseeing filmed entertainment alongside Peter Safran, known for his work producing the Conjuring movie verse. I just saw on the calendar that right now on Earth it's almost Christmas time. More from James Gunn as Disney Plus unveils the trailer for the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Gunn wrote and directed the Yuletide adventures of Marvel's misfit heroes, which brings Kevin Bacon into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, playing Kevin Bacon. Yes, you heard that right. The festivities begin streaming November 25th on Disney Plus. And in non-James Gunn news, Imagine Dragons have released a new version of Bones just in time for Halloween. The new spin on the Dragon song was remixed by the electronic duo Two Colors and is accompanied by a black and white version of the song's zombified music video. It is onwards. I think the last one was Anwar Taimur uh, in Assam. After that, I, I don't really think we've had a Muslim chief minister. So, where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it? We are not. And the rise of the BJP has meant that even political parties, which quote unquote claim to be secular, are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the bjp with their hard hindutva line and they are running scared you see mr kejriwal statement today yeah. you have to put uh, 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 lord ganesha and lord lakshmi uh, goddess lakshmi on the notes you know so every now it is now a question of who is more hindu than the other no, because no. So, so electoral so much, so much. success I, I, fair seems enough to i'm, be I'm not yeah yeah i'm not i'm not uh, arguing against that but the fact is also that uh electability and winability has become now the bottom line uh for political success whether it's in the bjp or any other party uh the same aam aadmi party you refer to has an amanatullah khan they have a tahir hussain who used to be an mlc but yes. i i want to get to the larger point both uh, ratan yeah. sharda and sumant also refer to this so one i want to ask mohammad Fa farhan point, no, no, just give me just give me 10 one. seconds yeah. mohammad yeah. farhan is a spokesperson of the mim party mohammad farhan saab Uh, जो आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष श्री असदुद्दीन ओवैसी ने बोला वो अच्छी बात है को, को, किसी को कोई ऐतराज नहीं है और राइट वी लॉस्ट हिम लेट्स गो टू अंबर जैदी अंबर यू नो नो वन हैज अ प्रॉब्लम विद व्हाट मिस्टर ओवैसी सेड द प्रॉब्लम इज हिज ओन डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स व्हेन इट कम्स टू हिज ओन पार्टी 
everyone uh, you know has no problem with a hijab wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country but in mr ovc's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they are all men all mlas that they have across five or six states where mim has mlas they are all men uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men so where is a woman hijab wearing or otherwise in mr ovc's party in any position of leadership absolutely right uh, uh, because uh, as they say charity is at home and whatever uh, ovc ji is preaching he doesn't practice that so he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation we need to like uh, in our country if we talk about the muslim women especially their literacy rate is so low he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women he doesn't care about the health care of muslim women he doesn't give that equal rights that muslim women as uh, the islam or sharia has given even uh, the constitution for that matter but they they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the muslim women should get but he is just preaching what is like uh, he should also like uh, he i mean i just want to ask one question to Good evening. AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Owaisi has weighed in on the Rishi Sunak is a minority candidate becoming Britain's Prime Minister. That entire debate that's been stirred off. Owaisi says he dreams of a day when a hijab-wearing woman can and will become the Prime Minister of India, which is all very well. It's a noble intention. No one has a quibble with that. But shouldn't charity begin at home? In Mr. Owaisi's party, for example, there are no women in any senior leadership position. either as party president secretary or even mlas that the mim has in different states so should ovc be preaching about gender rights when his own party's record is so patchy british asian rishi sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the uk has triggered a massive political storm in india A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi has added fuel to fire. मैं तो बोला कि इंशाल्लाह मेरी जिंदगी में या मेरी जिंदगी बाद एक हिजाब पहनने वाली बच्ची भारत की प्राइम मिनिस्टर बनेंगे बोले। Owaisi's remark was immediately criticised by the BJP, who asked him to look no further than his own party. नफरत के जो एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोजी रोटी है अपने परिवार के अलग परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाए और जीताए लेट्सिटी फ्रॉम होम वेन विल हिजाबी वुमन बिकम द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एम आई एम पार्टी देर इज अ भारत बदनामी ब्रिगेड विच हैज अंकी सनक टू यूज इवन ऋषि सुनक इशू Even the opposition steered clear of Ovesi's pitch for a hijabi as prime minister. Why do you why do you think of this as being a communal thing? Anybody in this country, no matter what community, what religion, can aspire to be prime minister. There's no problem at all about that. Ovesi also accused the BJP of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country. But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs, or even office bearers in his own party. So, is it politics or provocation? All right, on the big talking point this evening, Ratan Sharda, RSS researcher and author, Suman C. Raman, political analyst, joining us. Mohammad Farhan, a spokesperson of the MIM party. Amber Zaidi is a social activist, and Amina Sherwani, women's rights activist, joining us as well. Uh, Ratan Sharda, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin, uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country, and one among them. Uh, a british asian of the third generation rishi sunak has become the prime minister of that country shouldn't indians and people of indian heritage all over the world celebrate that instead you have mr chidambaram and now mr ovc saying you know when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister are they trying to poke holes in the sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now actually it's very amusing diwali eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly first of all the hijab was never part of our dress in, for indian muslims 
there was no burqa it became prominent just last 20 years back back and hijab has been introduced as an arabic slavery sign only in recent years now whether they want hijab or burqa first point secondly would they support iranian iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so so this patriarchy they have to clarify Mm. If they say Islam is what what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates. Then, as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her. If not a male, at least a child. So, how can a woman, woman become if Muslim woman can become a prime minister in uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere? And okay. The next. If you say Islamic nation next door to us in Pakistan, there was Bamezdeh Bhutto. She lost her life. She was not a hijab wearing politician. In Bangladesh, we had two ladies who became head of the state, prime ministers. They they have they are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it especially Islamic, where you have women becoming head of the state. So this either you are you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then, if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years? 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular governments all through. Why they could not get a Muslim pr- prime minister is elected? No, and so why in Punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu, le- or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be uh, can be chief minister? So this hypocrisy of entire gang is so funny. Le- and Sunak did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. he became a prime minister because he worked hard he worked through the party he rose to the top and we must compliment him for that yeah Not no no i absolutely agree with you i think you hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because suman si raman mr rishi sunak got chosen not because he's a hindu or because of his indian heritage he got chosen for two things number one uh to fix the british economy and he has a proven record of that as chancellor of the exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking so on and so forth so he's capable his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked and the other reason is england as is india a parliamentary democracy whoever has the support of majority legislators majority parliamentarians goes on to become the leader of that party it is not a a post of tokenism the prime minister of a country like india or england is elected by majority so tomorrow and nothing stops a hijab wearing woman the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab wearing woman if she gets the support of a majority of the people of india to go ahead and become prime minister so this whole debate around sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are first of all uh, zaka um Uh, should mr chidambaram or uh, mr uh, yc have the do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying uh, within their parties the answer is no that is a, a different issue i don't think that they are actually saying that mr rishi sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job i don't think that that is their point at all their point is there the atmosphere in the country is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community belonging to a minority faith in his country to become the prime minister of the country i think that that's the point that's being made should oic be making that point uh, is he having uh, uh, you know uh, the the same freedom to the uh, to the um, women and other groups in his own party yeah. all that of course is 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 com- is definitely a valid point but and i think that this is important see we have to understand that this applies to all political parties look we have not had a muslim chief minister of a state in 40 years from uh, from the uh, mm. early 80s onwards and i think the last one was anwar taimur uh, in assam after that i i don't really think we've had a muslim chief minister so where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it we are not and the rise of the bjp has meant that even political parties which quote unquote claim to be secular are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the bjp with their hard hindutva line and they are running scared you see mr kejriwal statement today you yeah. have to put uh, uh, lord ganesha and lord lakshmi uh, goddess lakshmi on the notes you know so every now it is now a question of who is more hindu than the other 
because no, so, so electoral so much, so much. success I, I, fair seems enough. to I'm, be I'm assured. Not, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, arguing against that. But the fact is also that uh, electability and winnability has become now the bottom line uh, for political success, whether it's in the BJP or any other party. Uh, the same Ahmadmi party you refer to has an Amanatullah Khan. They have a Tahir Hussain who used to be an MLC. But yes. I, I want to get to the larger point. Both uh, Ratan yeah. Sharda and Sumant also refer to this. So I want to ask Mohammed Fa Farhan. No, no, just, give me, just give me 10 one. seconds. Yeah. Mohammed yeah. Farhan is a spokesperson of the MIM party. Mohammed Farhan Saab, who uh, your Rashi Adhyak Shri uh, Asaduddin Ovesi has said, that's a good thing. There's no one who has any interest. All right, we've lost him. Let's go to Ambar Zaidi. Uh, Ambar, you know, no one has a problem with what Mr. Ovesi said. The problem is, his own double standards when it comes to his own party. Everyone, uh, you know, has no problem with a hijab-wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable, as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country. But in Mr. Ovesi's party, despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations, the national president is a man. The different state presidents that they have in five or six states, they're all men. All MLAs that they have across five or six states where MIM has MLAs, they're all men. Uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men. So, where is a woman, hijab wearing or otherwise, in Mr. Ovesi's party in any position of leadership? Absolutely right, Chika, uh, uh, because uh, as they say, charity uh, begins at home, and whatever uh, Ovesi ji is preaching, he doesn't practice that. So, he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation. We need to, like uh, in our country, if, if we talk about the Muslim women especially, their uh, literacy rate is so low. He doesn't care about the literacy rate of women. He doesn't care about the health care of Muslim women. He doesn't give that equal rights that the Muslim women has, uh, the Islam or Sharia has given, even uh, the constitution for that matter. But they, they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the Muslim women should get. But he is just preaching what is like, uh, he should also like, uh, he, I mean, I just want to ask one question to uh, OSAG. Uh, he should at, at least give up on his MP seat from Hyderabad and nominate at least the women from his party. And he should give a chance to uh, become a prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least. And then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and uh, yell out to, to the people what he is trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that uh, in India. Muslims are being targeted just because because of their religious identities for hijab, for topi, for beef, or for for all these things, which is absolutely not right. He needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue, the work on ground. Okay, Amina Sherwani, you know I'm I'm taking ahead what the point that Ambar Zedi was making. That again, I have no quibble with Mr. Uh, Mr. Ovesi wanting to see in his lifetime. A burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the prime minister of this country. Surely, if that person is capable, if that person has uh, electoral majority, the support of the majority of the people of this country, absolutely that person should go on to become prime minister. But in Mr. Ovesi's case, not just this leadership issue in his party, but more importantly, how do you get there? We are talking about Rishi Sunak. It's his capability. He went to the best schools uh, in England and the best universities in the world. Uh, it is about his education. As, as an old man once said, the greatest leveler that we have in this country is, is quality education. If you get a good education, that is a sure shot route to success. What has Mr. Ovesi's party done about uh, education and, 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 for, uh, and for women? Uh, who is the party who said, agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanyanyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala. And as we know, the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world. And yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world, and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster. And that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwesi 
keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now, women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become Chief Justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. <music> to escape the male gaze and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs. And he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. Uh, Ratan Shadha, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country. And one among them, uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the prime minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that? Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as Prime Minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing. Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back. And hijab has been introduced as an Arabic slavery sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab? Or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so? So this patriarchy, they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution in many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, a Muslim woman can become a prime minister in uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere? And okay. the next... If you say Islamic nation next door to us, in Pakistan, there was Mehdi Bhutto. She lost her life. She was not a hijab-wearing politician. In Bangladesh, we had two ladies who became head of the state, prime ministers. They they have they are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it is especially Islamic, where you have women becoming head of the state. So this either you are you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years, 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 12, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular government saw through. We had no less than a, a justice of the Supreme Court uh, who was a hijab wearing woman, uh, Fatima Bivi. And when she used to go to court to perform her public official duty, she used to remove the hijab. That is what Mr. Ovesi should be encouraging in young girls. No, Mohammed Farhan is back in uh, on the justice, on the discussion. Sir, Mohammed Farhan, sir, ye bataiye. Aapke jo rashtriya adhyak Shri Ovesi ji ne bola hai, achhi baat hai. Koi ko usse koi etraz nahi hai. Lekin charity begins at home. Ek kahavat hai Angrezi mein. To aapke party mein bataiye. Kaun aise mahila hai jo hijab pehne ho, hijab na pehne ho, jo leadership position mein hai. क्या क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष महिला है क्या आपके जो प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं काफी सारे प्रदेशों में क्या वो महिला है कोई एक जन ऐसा है महिला जो आपके पार्टी में लीडरशिप पोजीशन में है जी सर मैं आपकी बात को बत कह रहा हूं सर हमारे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिला विंग की जो प्रेसिडेंट है नजमा फातिमा जी वो हिजाब भी पहनती हैं और क्या नाम है पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिलाओं को जो महिला विंग के प्रेसिडेंट तो महिला ही बन सकती है ना सुनिए ये बात तो आपको भी पता है 
नहीं नहीं मैं आपको बता रहा हूं ना मैं आपको गिनवा रहा हूं कि हमारी पार्टी के अंदर कितनी महिलाएं हैं जो हिजाब पहनकर क्या नाम है आज की डेट में काम कर रही हैं सर महिला विंग की प्रेसिडेंट तो आदमी नहीं बन सकता है ना वो तो महिला ही बनेगी ये क्या लॉजिक है आपकी अरे सुन लीजिए मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ बोलिए करा रहा हूँ कि हमारे यहाँ कितनी महिला बोलिए बोलिए कौशिका परमार जी हैं जो कि क्या नाम है गुजरात में उनको टिकट दिया गया है वो पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही हैं आपके तमाम टीवी चैनल्स पर भी ये खबर चली है रिया सिद्दीकी जी हैं जो क्या नाम है मेन बॉडी में हमारे यहाँ प्रदेश सचिव है और क्या नाम है पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही है और पूरे प्रदेश में पार्टी को मजबूत करने का काम कर रही है इस तरह की तमाम एक सिंपल सी चीज मैं आपसे पूछ रहा हूँ Uh, क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष मुस्लिम महिला हैं प्रदेश के जो अध्यक्ष हैं पांच सात प्रदेशों में आपके प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं क्या वो uh, महिला हैं एम हैं आपके काफी सारे तेलंगाना में हैं महाराष्ट्र में हैं बिहार में भी थे क्या उसमें से एक भी महिला थी तो आप अगर लीडरशिप पोजीशन अपने खुद के पार्टी के अंदर नहीं दे रहे महिलाओं को तो फिर क्या ये हसीन सपने देख रहे हो वैसी साहब की एक दिन हिजाब पहनी हुई लड़की बनेगी भारत की प्रधानमंत्री ये तो हसीन सपना ही है नहीं हसीन सपना नहीं है महात्मा गांधी जी ने भी जब अंग्रेजों के सामने ये बात कही थी कि एक दिन आप देखिएगा कि धोती और कुर्ता पहनने वाला इस देश का प्राइम मिनिस्टर होगा तो अंग्रेजों ने उनका उपहास उड़ाने का काम किया था वही आज बिल्कुल वैसी साहब पर लागू हो रहा है चाहे भारतीय जनता पार्टी वाले उनका जितना भी उपहास उड़ा लें हमें ये फर्क नहीं पड़ता अगर विधि को लिखा होगा कि इस देश में भारत की एक ऐसी महिला प्रधानमंत्री बने जो हिजाब वाली हो तो विधि हंड्रेड परसेंट वो बन फ्रांस साहब कि, किसी को कि कोई ऐतराज प्रकिप... नहीं है अगर वो उनमें काबिलियत है नहीं नहीं उनमें काबिलियत है और वो आ, देश को कन्विंस कर सकेगी कि उनको मेजोरिटी क्यों देना है वो बिल्कुल आ, 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 आगे आना चाहिए और उनको पब्लिक ऑफिस में पोजीशन मिलना चाहिए लेकिन किस पार्टी ने बोला अगर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं ये तो बीजेपी ने नहीं बोला ना किस पार्टी ने बोला जो हिजाब के मुद्दे को लेकर आप बात कर रहे हैं सर कर्नाटक में जिन बच्चों ने कहा कि अगर हिजाब नहीं तो हम एग्जाम नहीं देने जाएंगे या हम पढ़ने नहीं जाएंगे तो वो बच्चों का मुद्दा था वैसी साहब ने तो कहा नहीं कि हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं 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 आपके एम, 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 आपको, आपको आपको वो पोस्टर्स याद नहीं है साहब मैं याद दिलाता हूँ तो क्या जो जो औरंगाबाद में आपके जो गढ़ माना जाता है गढ़ नहीं मतलब आपके एम एल वहां से आते हैं औरंगाबाद में पोस्टर पोस्टर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं किसने लगवाई बाकायदा एम आई एम पार्टी के फ्लेक्स बोर्ड लगे थे वहां पे हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं देखिए क्या नाम है हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं ये जो है ये पर्टिकुलर उन बच्चों का अपना स्लोगन है जो आज हिजाब की लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं कोर्ट से लेकर जमीन तक अंबर जैरी ये बच्चों की लड़ाई नहीं थी ये तो बिल्कुल हंड्रेड परसेंट राष्ट्रीय राजनीतिक तरीके का एक लड़ाई था और आपके पार्टी भी इसमें एक अंग था लेकिन एनीवे लेट अंबर जैदी रिस्पॉन्ड टू इट एंड आई कम टू रतन शारदा आफ्टर दैट या absolutely it has been proven in the supreme court also because it has been politicized uh, by the some so called uh, political parties and also uh, pfi and uh, we all know that how they have been politicizing this particular matter for at least 8 9 months now and nobody is focusing on the prime uh, education of young girls they are only politicizing this matter just to gain some political brownie points i want to ask one question here He, a girl, a Muslim lady in uh, AMI. He, if they want to join, if I want to join AMI hmm. today, hmm. like this, with the, without not wearing hijab, I can't be a member of uh, AMI. Covering my basic requirement is to cover that. Uh, I, I'll give you an example of uh, uh, Sayda Falak. She used to be without hijab, a normal girl, like a normal any Indian girl. and after join even before joining amm she started wearing a hijab and covering her head so this is the basic requirement to become no this is a great point let let uh, farhan respond to this and i'll go back to ratan sharda after this mohammad farhan sahab ye bataiye ki mahilaon ko aapke party mein sadasyata milne ke liye kya hijab pehne pehne ki zarurat hai bina hijab pehne hue auraton ko nahi denge aap sadasyata नहीं बिल्कुल देंगे अगर अंबर जैदी अंबर जैदी जी अगर हमारी पार्टी ज्वाइन करना चाहती हैं और इस शर्त के साथ कि वो बिना हिजाब में रहेंगी तो हम उनका स्वागत करते हैं कल आए पार्टी ज्वाइन करें उनको नहीं उन्होंने अच्छा एक उदाहरण दिया।, दिया एक एक महिला के जो हिजाब पहनते नहीं, नहीं थे लेकिन जैसे आपके पार्टी में ज्वाइन किया उन्होंने तो हिजाब पहनना पड़ा उनको क्या ये सच है ऐसा कुछ नहीं सर देखिये हिजाब अगर कोई व्यक्ति पहनता है तो वो उसकी च्वाइस है नहीं नहीं सिर्फ आपके पार्टी में सदस्य मिलने के लिए उनको पहनना पड़ा नहीं नहीं सर आप उनसे सैयदा पलक सर तमाम टीवी चैनल्स डिबेट करती हैं 
आप भी उनसे बात कर सकते हैं कि उनको कभी एम पार्टी ने ये नहीं कहा कि आप क्या नाम है सदस्यता लेने से पहले okay. आप हिजाब पहनी तभी आपको सदस्यता ओके अंबर क्विक रिबर्टल रतन शारदा यस क्विक रिबर्टल राज्यसभाटी Uh, out of the entire union council of ministers 70 75 of them not a single one is from the muslim community why is the bjp so against uh, muslims uh, and and it's not like there aren't capable muslim candidates uh, in uttar pradesh for example where there are 400 tickets that were given by the bjp party couldn't they find one single muslim candidate see the sakai already pointed out that this is something to winability as far as bjp is concerned is branded hindu nationalist bigot party so don't expect the, you know they have don't have a responsibility to promote the muslims but why all these secular parties who have been there in the power for 60 years out of 75 years what have they done for the muslims that is the bigger question when somebody like abdul kalam becomes the president the most popular president we ever had the secular parties did not allow him to have a second term because he was not muslim enough because he played veena because he respected geeta then we have arif mohammad khan who has made a scapegoat for fighting for the rights of poor india being a muslim woman for shabano and she was put on the he was put on the side you know on the sideline not promoted anywhere in the political parties now the larger point is that since 1921 khilafat or caliphate movement the the all secular parties are thrown away modern forward looking muslims who who are who want to be based in the mainstream and they brought all kind of maulanas maulvis orthodoxy who believe in 7th century ideology who doesn't believe in democracy to come and lead the muslims and okay. that is a tragedy if we had modern people like zaidi and sherwani we would find muslims leading on so many fronts unfortunately no secular party promotes uh, modern forward looking muslims and we have Zara. all kind of uh, bigots who who throw all kind of vague statements and vague kind of constitutionalism to prove their point i'll i'll wrap up by simply saying that uh, while it may be a noble idea and no one has an issue with mr ovc asking for his dream of you know a hijab wearing woman becoming prime minister the least he can do is to begin by making his own party a little more inclusive having more women in leadership positions that's a wrap thanks very much for your time good night minority in that country and one among them uh, a british asian of the third generation rishi sunak has become the prime minister of that country shouldn't indians and people of indian heritage all over the world celebrate that instead you have mr chidambaram and now mr ovc saying you know when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister are they trying to poke holes in the sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now actually it's very amusing diwali eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly first of all the hijab was never part of our dress in, for indian muslims there was no burqa it became prominent just last 20 years back back and hijab has been introduced as an arabic celebratory sign only in recent years now whether they want hijab or burqa first point secondly would they support iranian iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so so this patriarchy they have to clarify mm. if they say islam is what what the best part of islam is they, if they follow sharia if they continuously claim that sharia is above constitution many debates then as per islam a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her if not a male at least a child so how can a woman a muslim woman can become a prime minister in uh, when the islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere and okay. the next if you say islamic nation next door to us in pakistan there was bamezdeh bhutto she lost her life she was not a hijab wearing politician in bangladesh we had two ladies who became head of the state prime ministers they they have they are all without hijab show me one country islamic or any other it is especially islamic where you have
evening. Thanks a lot for staying with us here at CNN News 18. You're watching The Right Stand with me, Rudhima Bhatnagar. Now, there is no denying the fact that the Indian rupee has been falling. With the rupee falling to a new low of 82 against the US dollar, which is a fall of 12% in the calendar year of 2022, the cold comfort that it has held up better than other currencies actually no longer holds. And anyone who understands the basics of economics knows the value for currency depreciating is because of both internal as well as external factors. Since little can be done about external factors, the key is to focus more on internal factors or the macroeconomic fundamentals. But the Aam Aadmi Party and Chief Minister of Delhi, Arvind Kejriwal, seem to have found a new solution to tackle this economic crisis. Now, according to the Aam Aadmi Party, the solution is simple. All you need to do is to print images of Hindu gods and goddesses like Lakshmi Ji and Ganesh Ji on currency notes along with that of Mahatma Gandhi and that will bring prosperity to the country. The BJP on expected lines has now slammed this move, calling it a soft Hindutva push and a U-turn by the Aam Aadmi Party, which they believe has been seen as anti-Hindu. So is there any optimism with what the AAP is suggesting or is it just appeasement politics? भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो वैसे ही रहनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी तरफ श्री गणेश जी की और श्री लक्ष्मी जी की तस्वीर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर लगाई जा रही है जिस प्रकार से यू टर्न किया जाता है आज ही हमारे सामने पूर्णतः उतर के आ रहा है जनता उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा ये तो एक फेस सेविंग प्रोग्राम है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी क्योंकि इन लोगों ने इतना गाली दिलवा दिया है अपने मंत्रियों से अपने गुजरात प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से हिंदू देवी देवताओं को कि अब इनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि हम कौन सा चेहरा लेके जनता के बीच में जाए मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है हम तो आस्तिक लोग हैं हम ये मानते हैं कि भगवान के आशीर्वाद के बिना बड़ा काम तो छोड़िए कोई छोटा काम भी सफल नहीं हो सकता What is the rationale that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party or why are they making such an argument? Let's break down those details. The first reasoning that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party is this, that the country will prosper if the currency actually has images of god and goddesses like Lakshmi and Ganesh. The other rationale that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party is that our efforts actually won't yield any results if the gods are not blessing us. The other reasoning that has been given by them is that we do need the Almighty's blessings to stabilize the economy, something that has actually rattled a lot of economists across the country. The other rationale that has been given and a comparison has been drawn to what takes place in Indonesia. They're saying that when a Muslim nation has picture of Lord Ganesha on its currency, then why can't India? Why is this problematic? I'll just tell you about that in just a bit. The other reasoning that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party and as I said, the comparison that is being drawn by Indonesia, that if Indonesia can go forward and do such a thing, why can't India? But as I said, this is where the big problem lies. When you give the example of a nation like Indonesia, we need to see where its currency actually holds. Today, Indonesia's currency is one of the worst performing currencies. Let me give you some statistics. It fell to its lowest level against the dollar since April 2020. It fell by almost 3% by the end of August against a forceful dollar. It slid almost 2.5% in the month of September 
which means it was its largest monthly fall this year. It has lost 9.3% against the dollar from December 2021 to October 2022. Thus, the larger question that we're going to take to our guests this evening is this. Is the Ahmadmi party just cashing in on the Hindutva pitch because of state elections? Let me also now bring in our guest to take this discussion forward. We have the national spokesperson of the BJP, Sanju Varma. We have political analyst, Varun Singh. We have spokesperson of the Aam Aadmi Party, Reena Gupta. And we also have author and activist, Rahul Ishwar. Good to have all of you on the broadcast with us. Reena Gupta, I want to begin with you. And I'm not going to mince any words because this is something that has a lot of significance whether political parties would want to believe it or not. As I said when I started the show, the economy is going through a turmoil. Yes, India has done a lot better vis-a-vis -vis other currencies, but a lot still needs to be done. Are political parties like the Aam Aadmi Party today thinking that voters or citizens on the ground are that gullible that will, they will just believe absolutely anything? What is the rationale that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party as a fix to the economy? So, Ridhima, as you correctly said, that the economy is in bad shape. We have high inflation. We have unemployment at 40, 45 years high. The rupee is just sliding down. In the past 12 months itself, there's been a depreciation of 10%. So, at this time, we need divine intervention. We need the gods to come and save us from the mismanagement and misgovernance of Bharatiya Janata Party. And that is the reason why the Honorable Chief Minister of Delhi has made this proposal. But Ridhima, what I don't understand is a, a party like Bharati Janta Party which says, Hamare to kan kan mein Ram hai. Why are they opposing this proposal? We are saying we don't want any credit out of this. Why don't you go ahead and announce it? And if there is any political benefits, any gains to be made, you so go ahead. So Reena and... Gupta, with the logic that the Aam Aadmi Party is putting forward, with that rate, all economists in the country should take retirement. The central bank should shut down because we found a solution as far as the falling rupee and the failing economy is concerned. All I'm trying to understand is, and you're smarter than that, where is it going wrong? Are you actually taking the voters or citizens on the ground for granted that they will buy anything because it is going to be seen, quote-unquote, as a Hindutva push? What have uh, what has the government and all the officers of the government who work on the economy, what have they been doing for all the past 7-8 years? Why is it that even today, 80 crore people are dependent on free ration? What is it all these smart people have been doing? When they have not managed to do anything, what we are saying is that it is time now where we need to pray to gods and goddesses to help us survive this mismanagement and misgovernance. So and rather than coming with concrete solutions of where we are going wrong with our macro economy, economy, you know, economics, the Aam Aadmi Party literally is saying it's all Bhagwan Bharose because we can't do anything more than wait for divine intervention. Sanju Varma. Ritima, you did not let me complete. You Ritima, complete. you know, she can't have a monologue. May I come in? Sanju Varma. Yes, thank you. You know, Ritima, I don't want to sound pompous, but I am an economist. I have been voted amongst the 30 best globally by the global think tank Asia Money. So I think I, I know a lot more about economics than some of the panelists who are trying to give a certificate to the Bharatiya Janta Party. Uh, you know, first and foremost, let's be very clear, the economy is in fine settle. We grew at 8.7% last year and we are likely to grow at anywhere between 6.8 to 7.5% in the next one year despite Bloomberg saying and IMF saying that China, US, UK, Germany are on the brink of a recession. Point number one. Point number two, when it comes to Indonesia, I think it's a very fallacious comparison. The entire population of Indonesia is barely 28 crores, which is equal to the population of two states in India, Uttar Pradesh no, no. and Gujarat. So that's why I wanted to give and, it to the Aam Aadmi Party that even if we take that comparison, that currency hasn't gone anywhere. So that comparison either way doesn't hold. What I'm yes, essentially trying to understand is how should we see this soft Hindutva push by the Aam Aadmi Party, a party yeah, I'm coming to in that. the past Rindima. that has been seen as anti-Hindu. It is the same Arvind Kejriwal who didn't want the construction Rindima, as far as the Ram Mandir is concerned. 
Ridhima, you did not interrupt the earlier panelists. Please, I request you. I am letting finish. you only respond, Sanju Verma. Ridhima, can you stop heckling me? Let me complete. I don't need you to keep intervening. Let me finish. But I'm you letting. But I'm letting you only complete, Sanju Verma. I'm letting you only make the point. Okay, can you stop talking? Can you stop talking for a bit? Let me make my point. I am the anchor. I'll have to You're moderate right? the show, Let right? Me. Yeah, stop moderating when I'm in the midst of making a point. Now, please, can you stop interrupting? Let me make my point. Thank you so much. The most important What? point is this. The most important point is this: that be it, be it Germany, be it UK, be it the European Union, every single economic zone or country's currency has depreciated by anywhere between 15. 20 27% the pound has depreciated by 27% against the dollar this year alone the euro zones currency has sunk to a 24 year low japanese yen has sunk to a 32 year low so please don't single out the rupee this is my request to aam aadmi party and coming to the hindutva bit do you remember ridima after the ram janmabhoomi judgment had already been announced by the supreme court Arvind Kejriwal had the audacity to say this, and I'm quoting him at verbatim. He said, "Mere Ram kabi us mandir me nivas nahi kar sakte jo ek masjid ko tor kar banaya gaya ho." So he was actually running foul of even the Supreme Court verdict. And then Manish Sisodia, I remember after the Ram Janma Bhumi verdict, said, "Mandir ki jagah yaha university bana dete to zada acha rehta." यूनिवर्सिटी ना बनाकर मंदिर बनाने से क्या राम राज्य वापस आ जाएगा एंड दिस इज द सेम मनीष सिसोदिया टुडे हु इज अक्यूज नंबर वन इन द दिल्ली एक्साइज लिकर स्कैम एंड व्हाट डिड संजय सिंह से अबाउट हिंदू मिले मुलायम कांशी राम हवा में उड़ गए जय श्री राम ओके दिस इज द मैनर इन विच सीनियर आम आदमी पार्टी लीडर है and hindutva we don't sanju you'll appreciate i i have let you made your point now can i continue at least moderating the show now but reena i want yeah. to bring you back in the conversation this is where it becomes problematic for even the voters on the ground i want to go back to our time when arvind kejriwal was sworn in for the first time that speech was actually seen as a game changer that will he actually bring change at that time he invoked gods of all religions because he said that i take pride in the fact that we have diversity and we represent various religions in this country somewhere down the line where has that changed is it simply because the aam aadmi party today realizes that the state elections which are coming which is gujarat and himachal pradesh is not going to turn around for them until unless this hindutva push is seen by the aam aadmi party Ridhima, first of all, you must not interrupt me. Please allow me to complete my thought. So, I want to first respond to some of the uh, the wrong statements that Sanju Verma was making. First of all, the per capita income of UK and Germany and France and America is nowhere compared to the per capita income of India. So, please do not compare these economies in the same line. Point number one. Can you define per capita income? You do not even know the definition of per capita income. Do you know what is the definition of per capita income? Do you know the difference between GDP and GNP? Do you know the difference between Aadhaar card okay. and Ration card? Sir, you are my like. Let the Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson make a point, and we'll appreciate if this I is. I challenge you. Tell me the difference between let, let GDP her, and GNP. Let her GNP. make a point. Let her make a point. GDP and GNP के बीच का difference मालूम नहीं यहाँ पर आकर economy पर भाषण. Sir, you are my. Let's keep this civil. You expected uninterrupted time. I'm assuming the Amadmi Party spokesperson also wants the same. Go ahead. So let me tell Sanju Verma that she has been rated best economist by some third-rated magazine. I used no, to watch. No, Asia Money is a global think tank, madam. Asia Money is a global think tank. Which people like you wouldn't know. Asia Money is a global think tank. Okay. Okay. Which party like that? Okay. okay. Sanju Verma, I unfortunately will have to ask you to not interrupt because I want Reena Gupta to make a point. I have other panelists waiting as well. Reena, go ahead. Madam, you have to mute her. This is not fair. I must get a chance to respond. Just because she is from the ruling party does not mean that she can, you know, uh, just keep interrupting. 
So for Sanjay Verma's information, I have had a long career at the World Bank and I have not been rated the best economist by some third-rate magazine. So now coming back to the economy in this country, if the economy is doing so well, why is it that 80 crore population of this country is dependent on free ration of the government? Okay, no, Reena, what answer that specific question. Why are we seeing a change in stance by the Ahmadmi Party? Is it only because they fear they're losing ground in the state elections? Answer that. There is no change in stance, Rudima. We are still saying that we are still talking about schools, we are still talking about hospitals, we are still talking about roads. We are still talking about having access to basic services for every citizen of this country and this is how we define our Ram Raj. Hamare Ram Raj mein koi bhooka nahi rahega. Hamare Ram Raj mein sabko shiksha milegi. Hamare Ram Raj mein sabko aspatal milega. Agar Bharatiya Janta Party ne 27 saal mein kuch kiya hota, to aaj Gujarat mein Ram Raj hota. Ek party 27 saal tak ek state mein kaam kare, तब भी उस स्टेट में इतनी बुरी हालत है ना स्कूल है ना अस्पताल है ना सड़कें हैं यही कारण है कि आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी इस सोर रैटल तो वी आर नॉट चेंज द स्टैंड वी आर स्टिल टॉकिंग अबाउट स्कूल्स एंड हॉस्पिटल्स एंड रोड्स बट वी आर सेइंग एट द सेम टाइम आल्सो टॉकिंग अबाउट द फैक्ट � Corruption has put this country into. Varun, I want to bring you in the conversation, and you and Rahul Ishwar have been patiently waiting. I'm sorry I couldn't come to you earlier. But Varun, what I'm trying to understand this is a question, as I said, at the cost of sounding repetitive, voters and citizens are asking these questions quite loudly. That there has been a clear shift as far as the comments that we've seen from various leaders of the Ahmadmi Party. The BJP is saying you don't have to go back a lot in time, just see what happened on Diwali. There was a cracker ban in place which the BJP is seeing as anti-Hindu. Harish Khurana of the Delhi BJP has also put out certain advertisements of newspapers which has Arvind Kejriwal wishing Diwali to people at large. They are saying even if your Diwali greeting doesn't have images of god and goddesses like Lakshmi and Ganesh, what are you talking about fixing the economy? Do you buy that argument? You know, Rithima, First of all, I give you free liberty to interrupt me and moderate this panel because you are the moderator. And secondly, let me tell you, I was expecting uh, better from an uh, IRS officer who is now the Chief Minister of a state that he would know the rules and regulations and what are passed in the parliament. This is not the first time that something like this sort of replacing an image or bringing in more images in the currency note has come up. But in October 2010, the then government had set up a committee, the RBI had set up a committee to deliberate whether new images can be brought in. And I'm reading from the answer to the reply that late finance minister Arun Jaitley gave when, in the house when this question was raised. I would just read one line, the committee after due consideration decided that no other personality could better represent the ethos of India than Mahatma Gandhi and hence it was decided that no other image will be brought in. So, so expecting an IRS to know these basic things was one of the basic facts that I think everyone was expecting but no as a Hindu, I feel good that a party which till now was not so Hindu-Hindu and atheist who has recently converted into a devote Hindu is now asking for an image to be brought in of Ganesha and Lakshmi. But as a Hindu who is learned and educated, I don't think these things work to bring the economy back on track. The economy is not derailed when compared to other nations. The economy is fine, doing good. but. Here it is clear. See, you know, the moment you see elections coming in, in material which political party it is, they run to they run to temples, they run to see and take seek blessings of God. Ahmadi Party is a political party, and Arvind Kejriwal is its come, uh, you know head. Obviously, he is also trying to seek in the same thing. He has realized that his leaders have made blunders in Gujarat. And uh, you know the kind of statements I do not want to even repeat what the state president had even said earlier in Gujarat. Those things are not working in favor of Ahmadi Party. And obviously, as a political party which wants to win elections, he is choosing something. Just say Mulayam Singh Yadav ji ke bete Akhilesh ji ko Krishna dikhai de rahe the. All of a sudden, we see Arvind Kejriwal seeing gods and goddesses, and he wants them back. So it's a clear political and election-winning uh, agenda. I think so right now. But my only concern is that the people are more smart from this. And Rahul, I want to bring you in here. Do you feel that this is really unfortunate that we are seeing the religion card being used by various parties in the state of Gujarat? Yes, Rithima, I think we are seeing the religion card being used by various political parties when it becomes convenient to them. 
The sound by that Sanju Verma was quoting is there for all of us to see. Arvind Kejriwal had said exactly this. Mera Ram kisi ki masjid tod kar nahi bas sakta. But today we are seeing that same Aam Aadmi Party have this soft Hindutva push. Is it now becoming convenient for political parties to use this card when elections are nearing? And more the important, real... and more importantly, Rahul, are citizens actually buying this? Ma'am, the reality of politics everywhere is of two spectrums. One, a right identity-oriented spectrum, and on the left, there is a left economic spectrum. In India, usually the winning formula is uh, left-wing economics plus right-wing identity flashing, or right-wing identity flashing plus uh, Gandhian socialism followed by BJP and the other parties. So this has been a winning formula. Arvind Kejriwal, as we all know, is a populist who is populist, you know, who has a center-left economic plan. Who is inclusive in economics? At the same point of time, he would like to recite Hanuman Chalisa. He would like to invoke Hindu gods because he know that is the majority. He has been a very craftful politician. So you know this is the winning formula. What I really believe still fits the boats. On one hand, they will you know it's something like Ram and Roti. Usually regarding BJP, the analysts will say BJP usually follows a Ram and Roti policy. So these are the various combinations that people are trying. And second, I think what Arun Kejriwal said is symbolic, not substantial. He, you know, nobody seriously believes by invoking any god or hmm. any deity, in, you know, to, to bring economics. But rather, it was a cultural flashing point uh, to substantiate the point of the Hindu majority vote bank. That see, I am also along with you. Maybe some bad comments in the past by his hmm. ministers. Other people might have invoked this, but it is a matter of fact that in Indonesia and the other nations, or even in America, if God be trust, such kind of divinity or sacredness is, you know, attributed to wealth. So, you know, as a suggestion, you can consider it. As we all know, it is not okay. practical. You already okay. have it. Sanju Verma, I want you to respond to the criticism that's now coming in from the Aam Aadmi Party, and they're saying this: that till now, the BJP had been using the Hindu Twa push or the Hindu Twa card when it was convenient to them. Today, if we are beating them at their own game, why is the BJP rattled? They are saying the BJP stands exposed today when they object the wanting of printing of images of gods and goddesses. Okay, you know, Ridhima, uh, I just want to lay a couple of facts for your audience. First and foremost, last year when the local body elections in Gujarat were held, out of 572 seats, BJP won 486. That is a strike rate of 85 percent. The Aam Aadmi Party got 27 seats, which is a strike rate of 4.7 percent. I am surprised. Actually, I am amused. A party with a strike rate of 4.7 percent says that a party with a winning rate of 85 percent is rattled. No, we are not rattled. Then again, in October 2021, you had the Gandhi Nagar local body polls. Out of 44 seats, BJP won 41 seats. That is a strike rate of more than 93 percent. Do you know how many seats Aam Aadmi Party won? It won a princely one seat. That translates into a pathetic strike rate of 2.2 percent. But I know economics is not something which is uh, easily understood by the likes of uh, Reena Gupta or her party bosses. And madam, this debate is not about Sanju Verma, but Asia Money rankings are given by Fortune 500 companies. Hence, next time before blabbering, go and read Wikipedia and then come and debate with me. And I want to tell you one more thing, Ritima. No, but sir, you know, look at Rajendra Pal Gautam. Hmm. Look at just ten seconds. Look hmm. at Rajendra Pal Gautam. I was on your channel, and hmm. I remember that an Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson was there, and yes. the person refused to apologize despite Rajendra Pal Gautam saying. कि हम गणेश में विश्वास नहीं रखते हम गौरी माता में विश्वास नहीं रखते हम दुर्गा माता में विश्वास नहीं रखते हिंदू धर्म इज इक्वल टू डेविल इन कार्मेट डिड अरविंद केजरीवाल अपार्ट फ्रॉम रिमूविंग हिम और यू नो वेदर ही रिजाइन दैट इज डिसाइड द पॉइंट हैज ही बीन एक्सपेल्ड फ्रॉम द आम आदमी पार्टी अ मैन ओपनली अब्यूजेज आर गॉड्स एंड गॉडेस एज अरविंद केजरीवाल ने क्या राजेंद्र पाल गौतम को एक्सपेल किया है द आंसर इज नो अरविंद केजरीवाल इज अ Cutter Hindu Pravadi on odd days, on even days, he becomes anti-Hindu. He is playing Reena, the doctor. We now respond to the allegations and that the BJP. I. It's not just the BJP today. Even the Congress, the Shiv Sena, they've all hit out at you, saying one, this is something that is unimaginable that you. Putting a solution to the failing economy with printing images of God and goddesses, and more importantly, the question that is being raised is: Has Aam Aadmi Party forgotten its original identity today? 
Rizima, we have not forgotten our identity. We are still talking about good schools, good hospitals, good roads, and we are going to seek votes in the name of the good work that we have done in Delhi and Punjab, and the good work that we plan to do in in uh, in Gujarat. But How Rizima, many hospitals have you set up in Delhi? How many schools have you set up in Delhi? Okay. How many colleges did you set up okay. in Delhi? Sanju Verma, no, I am running out of time. I want to give the final no, words to Rina. Rina, you make your point. Delhi. Make your point. No, one hospital that you one set up in Sanju Delhi. Verma, let her make her point. I am running out no, of time as well. Rina, you set up in Delhi. I San challenge you. Sanju Verma, I you made your point. It was uninterrupted. Sanju Verma, let's have no. the same courtesy to the other panelists as well. Rina, make your point. I'm running out of time. Vidima, the point is that BJP has misgoverned Gujarat for 27 years. Now they are realizing that they are losing Gujarat, so they they want to tell us who is a better Hindu and you know how what Hinduism is all about. But Vidima, the question that I want to ask them is that a party which talks about Ram has has even made corruption and has made siphon of money in the in the construction Ram, construction of Ram Mandir temple. So a party like that, how can they come on TV now and question my Hinduism against their Hinduism? I don't need Sanju Verma or the Bharatiya Janata Party to tell me what is a good Hindu. I know what is a good Hindu, and I know what Ram Raj is. And Ram Raj is 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 a state where people have access to good health, good education. People have enough food to eat. There is employment, and this is all that we are talking about. This is what we have done in Delhi, and this is what we are going to do in Gujarat. Absolutely, Rina. Nobody was questioning your faith or your asta. And as Rahul Ishwar was also saying, the intent might be right. The only question is, is it actually a solution to the depleting economy? That question is still out in the open. Unfortunately, I've completely run out of time. I'd like to thank all our guests, Sanju Verma. I've completely run out of time. I appreciate all our guests joining us this evening. We are slipping into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back with another debate. Welcome back. Thanks a lot for staying with us. We're now going to talk to you about the big story that we're tracking this evening. There has been a big development in the Coimbatore blast case. The Tamil Nadu government today has decided to recommend the transfer of the case to the NIA or the National Investigation Agency. Remember, this in the backdrop of a cylinder explosion in a car that happened near the Kottai Iswaram Temple on Sunday. Five people have been arrested so far and the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act of the UAPA was also invoked against the five accused. Now, the Coimbatore police had identified the arrested accused as Mohammad Dala, age 25, Mohammad Azruddin, age 25, Mohammad Riaz, age 27, Firuz Ismail, age 27 and Mohammad Nawaz Islam, again age 27, all hailing from Coimbatore district. It later emerged that Mubin, the man who died in this blast, was already examined by the National Investigation Agency way back in 2019 for suspected ties to a radical network related to various activities. The BJP, remember, had already alleged that there was a cover-up by the state government resulting in delay of action. So the question is, is there a lot more than what meets the eye? case of a suicide bomber uh, because he makes his intention clear the way he was driving that vehicle the nature of the instant everything points out to the fact that this guy is a very radicalized youth <laughs> We're now going to 
bring you some very crucial details of what top Intel sources are telling us here at CNN News 18 or why it looks like a failed terror attack. Look at these details very carefully. The plot was to conduct a Fidein style attack. What we're also picking up is the attack planned to spread havoc during the festival of Deepavali. The terror suspect Nubin was drilled in 2019 by the NIA, as I already pointed out. A lot is being said about his last WhatsApp status message as well. I'll talk to you about that in just a bit. 78 kgs of explosive material was found at Mobin's home. What was it doing there? That's the question that's being raised by the BJP. The plot to replicate a 2019 Easter Sunday attack in Sri Lanka. A lot of parallels being drawn to that. A lot of parallels being drawn to the 1998 bomb blast as well because of the usage of cars and similar explosives. Mubin met ISIS terrorist Azuruddin in prison. What was the meeting all about? Azuruddin has been linked to the Easter attack planner Zaran Hashim as well. So a larger nexus at play. One suspect linked to al Umar terrorist Basha as well. Now remember Basha was behind the 1998 Coimbatore blast, which remember at that point had killed almost 50 people. The cops are now calling this a cylinder blast, not a suicide attack. CCTV visuals are also showing how explosives were actually loaded in that car. And all of this happening at the time of Deepavali and outside a temple, the timing cannot be missed. There is clear proof that ISIS cells are active in the state of Tamil Nadu evidence of efforts by state police to play down the attack that's the allegation that's coming in from the bjp as well let me bring in our newsmaker this evening we have the tamil Nadu bjp state president k annamalai now joining us this evening sir we appreciate you taking our time and joining us here in this edition of the right stand i want to understand from you on day one itself you had said there is a lot more than what meets the eye. How were you so convinced on day one itself? Madam, when the blast happened, immediately a lot of our karyakartas and everybody were there in the morning. They have observed nails. They have okay. observed nails and ball bearings in that area. And then only we knew it is not, it is something sinister. It is not a simple thing. When they were the, the, our party functionaries were reporting, the local public were reporting. When the state police called that as a cylinder blast, uh, it was not only worrying, it was very shameful, madam. When there is a ball bearing inside, when there is a nail inside, a classic case of uh, an explosive thing, how can you call that as a cylinder attack? Then we put pressure on the government with a statement saying, please be open. This is a terror incident. Yeah. The government started to demean us. We waited for 48 hours. When we did not have any other recourse, when the government still called that as a cylinder blast, then we had to call a major press conference yesterday, release out some details and say when all those things are happening, when you have seized explosives in the home more than 40 kg, when you are not disclosing, you have arrested five people but not booked them under UAPA Act, which is the Terrorist Act, your Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. You call all this, it's a shameful, you are trying to cheat the Tamil Nadu public. It is a very serious issue that is happening in Coimbatore. Why do you want to do it? Then the police were forced to book an UAPA then transfer to NIM. The whole thing looked suspicious from moment one. Because how did nails and ball bearings come there when it is a, when it is a smear cylinder blast? I also want to talk to you about what you had spoken about Mubin, the one who actually died in this blast and the last WhatsApp message of him that was actually seen. Are you convinced this was a Fidayin attack? Madam, this uh, message apparently he has apparently changed his uh, status of uh, hmm. the WhatsApp uh, sure. message two days before. And the wording is very clear. In the wording, he clearly mentions that the news about my death reaches you. Forgive my mistake. Hide my shortcoming. Participate in my janasa, which is funeral, and pray for me. So, this is a very clear statement where he is inviting people to his funeral. And the state police hiding that also. We, we, we were never interested to go and harm any investigation. 48 hours, when you are refusing to book UAPA, initially we called a terror attack, waited for two full days before calling this as a suicide attack. Sure. The police still not responding. We didn't have a choice, madam. When it is very clear, the message, the way it was framed, 
everything looks suspicious because this guy was investigated in 2019 by mm. the nia during the easter bombing attack also correct coimbatore that area which was instrumental in the 1998 coimbatore bomb blast where more than 60 people died the area in which the bomb originated the car originated mm. everything points to a very telltale sign that this time it is much more deeper than what the police were talking about I want to understand how are you seeing the move by the state government today. Today, the state government has finally said that we want to make a recommendation for the case to be given over to the NIA. Do you think it's coming too late in the day? I mean, firstly, I'm happy that the case. We are happy, uh, Tamil Nadu people. The case is going to NIA because sure. it's a professional agency. They can go to the root of this case, find out the real accused, the modules. which might be active in tamil nadu which is still might be dormant also we want everybody to come out <coughs> madam for a kind information madam 3 months back one person was picked up in e road he was plotting a paris style truck attack unheard of tamil nadu uh, the central agencies have picked up he has brought a truck he wanted to take the truck in a ganapati procession and kill people but due to the sensitivity nature of that instant we never disclosed it out Okay. In the last month, when the PFI got banned, in 32 places, the functionaries of BJP's houses, properties were bombed, including BJP office, the office in which I am sitting and talking to you now, ma'am, the head mm. central office in Chennai. Okay. This got bombed five five months before by a person. So Tamil Nadu, in the last 16 months, we are seeing this kind of telltale signs across the state. So that is why we are very worried. It is becoming a heaven for the anti-nationals, whereby they are operating at will. we are more worried about that we hope nia ma'am for your kind information madam we had a nia in tamil nadu hmm. for two years it was not given a police station status we have written three letters in the last 16 months saying please give a police station status in 2019 when nia picked up somebody the fir was registered in kochi okay because only kochi nia had an fir sure. only last week cm has given permission for the police station status because they are very clear nothing resembling a central government should come inside the state you know what i want to talk to you specifically is about the manner in which this blast happened the timing of it all it happens a day before diwali it happens outside a temple do you think there was a deliberate attempt to stoke communal passions of course ma'am there was a deliberate attempt to stroke communal passions in fact uh, the day uh, the blast got reported at 4 am when we got to know at 6 am only we told our party functionaries very clearly nobody should speak okay except the state president and the designated spokesperson nobody will speak anything so that an unrest gets created in coimbatore which mm. is right for a communal tension we stopped our people from reacting though okay. it was very tense in that morning but having said it madam a day before deepavali a car Uh, I don't think temple was the attack, ma'am. The the more they want to get into a shopping area, since okay. the police check post starts at nine o'clock in the morning, they want to reach that area before nine and park the car. So luckily there was a speed breaker outside the temple. When the car was running over, uh, the cylinder head came out and car got stopped. So the plan was to go deep inside the city, probably target a shopping area where people are more crowded a day before the public. So the plot is very sinister. Man. So we hope NIA will get to the root of the issue. You're saying there was a larger sinister plot at play. So, are you then worried about a pattern that is emerging from Tamil Nadu because of the various ISIS links that are also emerging from the state? Yes, madam. Uh, uh, because Kerala, the neighbouring state, had sent a lot, lot of people to ISIS when ISIS was declaring a state. From Tamil Nadu, also a handful of people have gone to Turkey, Syria to join ISIS. So. Uh, powder cake. So Easter bombing. Some of the link uh, uh, came to Tamil Nadu Palakkad. They picked up. Then uh, the police was trying to control. Now, now continuously for 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 the last few months, we are we are we are seeing uh, federal agencies picking up somebody who wanted to do a truck truck style attack like Paris in Eero. Okay. Eero is a place you never hear communal tension. Though though in the Congo region, Salem is a place you never hear a communal tension because you are picking up radicalized youth from those areas. At at one end, the state government no agent to come to the state. You cannot have any station. The state will manage. When you don't deny the taxes, also hmm. uh, everything is coming out now, madam. Lastly, sir, before I let you go, I want to understand the DMK has taken a couple of days to react. Why do you think that has happened? 
it's very shameful man when dmk jumps the gun and they go to reputed national televisions like you and give all kinds of statement about hindi this that so from yesterday such a serious nature if they couldn't answer any of the allegations we raised yesterday and there, there is a total ban of spokesperson going to national media like you and to the state media nobody is coming nobody is talking which clearly shows they have got lot of things to hide they are trying to hide i think in the nia NA investigation not only they should investigate who did it they should also investigate the investigation that happened in the 48 hours how did the investigation happen what there was, was was there a deliberate omission was there a deliberate way to uh, sidestep the investigation even that should be taken care by the nia that is our new request okay kian namalai always a pleasure speaking to you thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here on cnn news 18 So the question that we are asking this evening is this as far as the Coimbatore terror plot is concerned was there a cover up Let me also now bring in our guest to take this discussion forward we have the vice president Tamil Nadu of the BJP Narayan Tirupati from the DMK we have their spokesperson Salem Darani Dharan and former dgp of uttar pradesh vikram singh good to have all of you on the broadcast with us selam i want to begin the conversation with you the bjp from day 1 has been saying that there is a lot more than what meets the eye they are saying there was a deliberate desperate attempt in form of a cover up by the state government why no no, no see the bjp is doing cheap politics bjp tamil nadu uh, president is doing cheap politics bjp tamil nadu president is not the investigating uh, investigating officer is not even the in the union government's uh, organization such as nia or the ip the tn police is not hiding from anybody the job of intelligence is to not leak information whatever uh, in, investigation we do should remain within us that has happened and that was communicated with the nia, NIA and ip when nia uh, investigation will proceed it will be clearly shown that tamil nadu government has acted with alacrity in fact we have acted with alacrity it is only because of the efficient law and order situation in tamil nadu and proper checking that no untoward incident happened the extremists could not leak the target because of the tn police checking immediately after the incident tn dgp visited the spot with senior uh, senior officials and for example for any crime the first 24 hours is very important True. immediately after the incident tn police viewed the cctv camera and under secrecy only because we maintain secrecy we were able to view the camera and make sure that five people were arrested if you had leaked the information those people would have gone elsewhere no and but the bjp is asking of- this they are saying why isn't the dmk coming on record and calling this a failed terror attack because that's exactly what it was and the examples yeah. that i gave when i started the show of the parallels that are being drawn to the easter bombings or even the 1998 blast and the evidence that has been found on the ground in form of nails and others so is the dmk going to go on record and call this a failed terror attack is the question that the bjp is asking No, 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 no. See, the question is, why should we tell to the BJP opposition party in Tamil Nadu with less than five percent vote share, or to the news media? Our job is to communicate with the NIA, or hmm. NIA, or the IB, or the relevant organization. If we have not done it, then they will come back and tell us. Right? It's not our job to go and tell the media or anyone else. Proper work has been done. With six teams were formed. Within twelve hours, the houses were raided and people were arrested. So, so no, no state government in Indian history has acted with this much agility and presence of mind. and i would also go further and say that there is there is some rumors that foreign hands were also involved in this if that okay. is the if that is the case then it's clear intelligence failure with the union government r and ib raw and ib these they need to provide intelligence has raw and ib come and told uh, that uh, we are providing in, in, uh, intelligence information no they have not said uh, pulwama happened did prime minister modi uh, honorable prime minister modi resign in 2020 uh, delhi riot it was very clear that it okay. was indian government's uh, intelligence failure right narayan tirupati uh, responds to the criticism uh, that's coming in from the dmk and he's making a valid point he's saying when the investigation is such a in in such a nascent stage why should we put out all the information and look we already acted five people have been arrested and the investigation is now taking its own course why should we disclose all the information to the bjp see uh, what all about the incident uh, my uh, president sir anamalai has very clearly said now there is only one question i want to ask the dmk the chief minister of tamil nadu mr stalin today has ordered recommending the transfer of coimbatore incident to nai but in his in his letter or the order 
it is mentioned it is very really surprising that the entire statement of the government mentions that this terror incident as a car cylinder blast that's all the absence of words like terrorism or an act of terror terrorist act at any place it has it, there is it is it is absent so it is it has very clearly exposed that the tamil nadu government is treating this incident as an ordinary incident of a cylinder blast in the car so the questions what then after that in the letter also they say my question is that why should you transfer uh, an ordinary uh, uh, cylinder blast case to an nia why so what is the need to strengthen coimbatore district security in lieu of this just a cylinder blast if the tamil nadu government considered to be a case of an ordinary car cylinder blast then why and how the state government speculates a possibility of uh, as uh, my friend dharanidharan said a cross state dimensions or international links to the blast what is the need to immediately set up three police stations mm. in coimbatore for a simple cylinder bust why was it designed to create a special force for an ordinary cylinder bust Why Mr. Dharanidharan, would you want to take that before I bring in Vikram Singh as simple, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That on one hand, the state please, government please, is saying this finish, is just okay. a cylinder blast. No, on the other hand, finish. you're increasing vigil on the ground, and let you also want the one second, Narendra Pati. And on the other hand, you also want the case to be shifted to the NIA, which means the state government is also realizing there has been an intelligence failure at the state level as well. Ma'am, if there was an intelligence Please. failure, how do you think these five people would have been arrested, in, immediately investigated, and UAP would have been filed? There was no, no intelligence failure. Intelligence job is to maintain secrecy. Ah, not before police. Just not. Ah, if you have not, it's not mean that we have not maintained. We have not done the uh, proper work, right? It's baffling that an IPS officer, ex-IPS officer, could not understand the SOP of a terrorist act. I'm not even saying that investigation will say what it is, but across the world. Information in such situations is kept secret. Even the High Court and Supreme Courts have urged the state governments to keep secrecy. If the supposed uh, extremists are caught, it's only because of the DMK government. We are doing our job unnecessarily. BJP is doing really? politics and okay. helping this terrorist to escape. That is the problem. They should keep quiet, cooperate with the state Let government. Let me let you. You are not allowed to finish. Okay, okay. okay. Narayan Tirupati, make your point. Yeah. See all these things. We need to understand that the government, the Tamil Nadu government, the DMK, does not want to show to the world that this is an act of terror. Why it is missing? See, suppose in case that as as Mr. Anamalai had said, uh, this uh, incident has not happened. What would have happened? This car had reached some other place in the morning, crowded place before before the Diwali day. Mm. What would have happened? And that was the plot. That that what was that that is what we are saying. and they are not bothered why the dmk president mr stalin has not condemned so far why, what is the intention of the government why it is covering up that is what we are asking you are not bothered about the people of tamil nadu you are not bothered about the lives of the people that is what we are asking vikram By singh God, i want no, to no, understand no, no. from the one sec one sec one sec vikram singh, one sec, one sec. Vikram singh has been patiently happened. waiting let me bring in him vikram singh what i want to understand is what was essentially being seen as a cylinder blast but with the details that are now emerging of the man who has died who was already interrogated by the nia in 2019 and all the links that are emerging of those five who've been arrested is it fair to call this a failed terror attack rajima with my experience i can tell you this is nothing but a failed terrorist attack all the ingredients are shaking from the rooftops the recovery of 75 kilograms of explosives from the house of the deceased mobeen the shrapnels the marbles the iron nails the aluminium nails the ball bearings they all go to indicate that they were weapons of massive offense and mass destruction and collateral damage that it did not happen is a matter of tremendous good luck for everybody and these actions and these incidents governmental harmony and national security are best left aside and politics it does not penetrate into these sensitive issues there is business known as right to know and need to know of course there cannot be any premature disclosures when it comes to such sensitive investigation but yes the people have a right to know that there is a terrorist attack with international ramifications azharuddin was not a child he was interrogated by the nia in 2019 True. and if he was hobnobbing with mobile then it was something that he should have been flagged his movement should have been flagged he should have been in a constant watch well it is a matter of satisfaction that the government has chosen to write to hand over the investigation to the nia but the fact of the matter is that it is a failed terrorist attack 
because there's a world of difference between an ordinary cylinder blast and such a blast wherein it was almost a killing machine that has been rigged up by a potential terrorist. Look what his last words were. They are indicative of the fact that he was a fidai sure. and he had programmed and chosen mm. his words so that he becomes immortal and for posterity. That did not happen for him. But yes, the people have a right to know okay. what international ramifications are there and where they are living and what precautions they need to take. Tell him two this things that I want to understand have. from you and this is what the BJP is asking. One, they're asking that you are the party in power, you have the state government. So why was there complete silence over the last two days? More importantly, there is a big allegation that is being made by K. N. Namalai, who is the BJP president as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned. He is saying the temple wasn't even the main target. It was a shopping area close to the temple and if that went through, God forbid, we don't know how many casualties would have followed. I think the ex-IPS officer should be a novel writer. You can't uh, uh, no, speak on illusion, me. right? Don't listen, you can't speak on illusion. How, on no, 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 listen, I'm not saying. Shame I'm not saying. Like you do not know what was the target. How do you know what was the target? How do you know what was the target? How do you know what was the target? How, how can he know? How does he know? Is he, is he part of the uh, uh, union government like intelligence? This. Have some responsible talk. What? No, one second, no, no, no. Narayan Okay. So, so make your point. Why the, the silence by the state know? government? How does he know? And did we no, miss the original target, which was actually an area nearby? Only the DMK people. Okay, Narayan Tirupati, let him make his point. No, no, I'm saying, how does he know? You see, the intelligence of the union government, he was just a middle level officer, ex officer in Karnataka state. Nothing to do with the intelligence. Has he ever worked with the intelligence? No. How does he know? No, I'm not, say, I'm not saying yes or, or denying. I'm saying we do not know. Let the investigative officers do their job. Like the DGP sir who spoke earlier said, these are matters of national security. The DGP said we should not do politics that, with them. There was no terror angle. Only to this because case. of politics we are discussing this. Ah, do you mean Let the state the government and the why, union government respect government to organization do the job. Of, uh, this is uh, cheap politics done by Tamil Nadu. You know, Narayan Tripathi, what I want to understand is between this blame game, aren't we doing a disservice to the investigation? Because he thinks when there is communal divide, communal harmony disturbed, he will have few chances. This whole percentage will increase from two to three. Narayan Tripathi, I'm running out of time. I want to understand this from you. While the DMK is saying we've done everything in our part, we were ready with all sort of proof, we wanted to take it slow, we didn't want to jump the gun either, arrests have already been made and now we're saying transfer it to the NIA. I'm trying to understand between this political back and forth, aren't we doing a disservice to the investigation? See, we have to understand this first. The people of Tamil Nadu should have been alerted because it was uh, the, the sir, day previous the uh, day to sir? Diwali. The so the people should have known this. So you have right. totally hidden everything from the people of Tamil Nadu. The DGP sir, said even, that there is no terror angle to this issue. The first that day, why oh, you have not done that? Five or people, or uh, the CCTV is very clearly exposed. Five people carrying explosives. The, you, have, you have definitely, you should have told that. The three days have gone. After 72 hours, you are uh, Did anything happen? NIA. You should have done this on 21st, 23rd itself. This is what we have been saying. You have detained more than another 8%. Narayan Tirupati, but this is what the DMK is now saying that yes, you wanted the case to be transferred to the NIA. That's exactly oh no, the recommendation that no has been go. made by the state government today. They and they're no saying on our part, we've already made some arrests. The investigation is already taking place. And unfortunately, we'll have to leave that conversation there. I appreciate all our guests taking our time and joining us on this edition of The Right Stand. With that, it's a wrap from my side. Brass Tacks with Zaka Jacob is up next. Good evening, this is Brass Tax, I'm Zakhar Jacob. The Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival is a rather novel way of dealing with the falling rupee. He's made a suggestion to the Indian government and to the Prime Minister to have the images of Goddess Lakshmi and God Ganesha along with the images of Mahatma Gandhi on the Indian currency notes. His justification is that a country like Indonesia, which has less than 5% of its population as Hindu, has done so with its currency notes having the images of Goddess Lakshmi and God Ganesha. Of course, Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth, but the fact remains that all currency, and particularly in Asia, the Indonesian rupiah and the Indian rupee, 
have been doing badly against the dollar. Both have fallen 9 and 10% respectively since the beginning of this year. Now, the question is, will having pictures of gods and goddesses on currency notes actually flip the economic story of India? Or is this just Arvind Kejriwal's attempt to try and beat the BJP by outflanking it from the right? Remember, all of this is happening before the Gujarat elections where the AAP claims it's making a serious attempt to give an alternative to the electorate of Gujarat between 35-40 years of having to choose between the BJP and the Congress. So, is this Mr. Kejriwal's attempt to try and outflank the BJP from the right? Because he believes in a state like Gujarat, you can't beat it from the left. If the currency on the right side, Gandhi ji ki tasveer hai wo as it is rahe dusri taraf agar Lakshmi ji ki aur Ganesh ji ki tasveer hogi to isse pure desh ko unka aashirwad milega That's the advice put forward by AAP convener and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to reverse the fall of the rupee He has appealed to the Prime Minister to print new currency with the images of Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Ganesh on the notes बहुत सारे एफर्ट्स करने की जरूरत है लेकिन वो एफर्ट्स तब फलीभूत होते हैं जब देवी देवताओं का आशीर्वाद होता है केजरीवाल साइटेड द एग्जांपल ऑफ इंडोनेशिया व्हिच हैज लॉर्ड गणेशस इमेज प्रिंटेड ऑन द 20000 रुपया नोट अगर इंडोनेशिया कर सकता है इंडोनेशिया ने भी श्री गणेश जी को चुना तो हम हम भी कर सकते हैं हमारे देश में भी हो सकता है अभी जो नोट्स हैं वो एज इट इज रहे हैं लेकिन जो हर महीने फ्रेश नोट छपते हैं वो फ्रेश नोट्स के ऊपर the BJP accused Kejriwal of appeasement politics in the run-up to elections in Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh. Video ko dekhe jisme Kejriwal ji keh rahe the ki main to kisi bhi kiamat pe us Ram Mandir me aradhana karne puja karne nahi jaunga kyunki us Ram Mandir me puja jo hai wo Bhagwan prapt nahi karenge. Arvind Kejriwal ji ne U-turn liya hai. Ye wahi Arvind Kejriwal ji hai. जिनके बहुत सारे मीन, जिनके बहुत सारे हिंदू विरोधी फोटो प्रसिद्ध हैं उनके ट्वीट में। जो इंसान कभी कहता था मेरी नानी कहती है अयोध्या में राम मंदिर नहीं बनना चाहिए वहाँ हॉस्पिटल बनना चाहिए मेरा राम लाला वहाँ नहीं रहेगा। जो कभी स्वास्थ्य पुत्र निशान के पीछे झाड़ू वाली फोटो अगर कोई गणेश जी को लक्ष्मी जी की पूजा करेगा पटाखे चलाएगा इनको मारने का तो जेल में डाल दूंगा गुजरात के लोगों ने क्या पटाया उसको क्या उसके मुंह के ऊपर चांटे लगाए उसको अपनी राजनीति से धर्म की मजबूरी समझ में आ गई फेसिंग फ्लैग आप ट्राई टू टर्न द टेबल्स ऑन द बीजेपी मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है आज मुख्यमंत्री जी ने एक विचार ये रखा है और भाजपा सुबह से इसके विरोध पे उतरी हुई है मुझको समझ में नहीं आता इनको इतनी प्रॉब्लम क्या है इतनी चिड़ क्यों है इन रीसेंट इयर्स केजरीवाल हैज नॉट शाइड अवे फ्रॉम वेयरिंग हिज रिलीजन ऑन हिज स्लीव वेदर इट वाज चांटिंग द हनुमान चालीसा और कॉलिंग फॉर अ राम राज्य एंड गोइंग ऑन टेंपल रब्स but is his divine intervention fix for the falling rupee simply an election stunt? All right, is this an election stunt? Uh, joining us on the talking point, R.P. Singh is BJP national spokesperson. Vivek Bansal of the Congress Party joining us. Siddharth Sharma is spokesperson of the Amadmi Party. Dushan Sridhar, Vedic scholar. And uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, sophologist, will also be joining us. Siddharth Sharma, let me start with you first. Is this not a plain election stunt? Please explain to our viewers how having the pictures of Goddess Lakshmi and uh, Lord Ganesha is going to actually help the Indian rupee get strength against the dollar. After all, all currencies, almost all currencies in the world are losing against the dollar since 2022 began. Uh, yeah, Zaka, very happy Deepavali to everyone, all the viewers of CNN News 18. Uh, uh, the point here is that uh, the BJP, I'll start with a little bit of a satire. The BJP, which revels itself in body line bowling, it should not shy away. It should not, it should be brave enough to face a few bouncers on its own. That said, in satire, the serious point is that 
we don't understand why the BJP today is going against Lord Ganesha and uh, Goddess Lakshmi. Because what we are asking, it's just an appeal from Arvind Kejriwal. And when you say it's an election stunt, it is not an election stunt because the BJP can always say that all, okay, we are not, we are not asking it to be done tomorrow. They can always go ahead and do it after the Gujarat elections, uh, election results are declared. The point here is that the BJP, which speaks uh, itself about cultural nationalism, Mm. And we are speaking today about Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi, who are also cultural icons across India. We are just asking, and we, in fact, we are not asking, we are appealing to the Prime Minister that these motives can be etched in the currency of no, India. No, Mr. That's Sharma, uh, I'll go to R.P. Singh in a second, but please explain to our viewers how having the uh, symbols or emblems of gods and goddesses is going to strengthen the Indian currency. The Indian currency has fallen almost 10% uh, to the dollar compared yes. to where, where it was at the start of this year. The, just this, this year alone in the last 10 months, the Indian rupee has fallen almost 10% to the US dollar. How will having Ganesha or Lakshmi or any gods and goddesses on the currency help save that? Yes, uh, very nice of uh, Zaka to accept that the Indian rupee is falling against the dollar. And the falling rupee against the dollar has to be arrested by the government through its yes. policies. Yes. Obviously, the government's policies are failing. That's what you're saying. When the government's policies are failing, what do we do as a last resort? We ask for the blessings of the uh, supernatural. That's what we are asking for. That these supernatural powers like Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi are being revered across India, not just in India, across South Asia and many countries, including Netherlands and uh, West Indies in south america so these are gods which 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 uh, spiritual gods which help people come out of their problems and as you very okay. rightly said for the first time i think uh, cnn news 18 and the bjp is accepting that the dollar is for uh, rupee is falling no no let, let's ask rp singh falling. that because the, the finance minister say, uh, says she has a different take on it she says the rupee is not falling it's actually fallen less compared to other currencies, the dollar is strengthening, that's right? That, yeah, that, that's that her take. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I want, oh, no, no, one second. I want to ask R.P. Singh, no, no, I want, one second, ma'am, uh, sir, sir, sir. I want to ask R.P. Singh, fact of the matter is, R.P. Singh, that uh, Aam Aadmi Party is saying, BJP is today rattled because for the first time in the last eight years, a political party in this country is attacking the BJP from the right. All of the attacks so far on the BJP have been from the left, from Congress Party, RJD, Samajwadi Party, all, all our opposition parties are trying to attack the BJP from the left. This is the first time that here is a party who is trying to prove there is more Hindu than the BJP. Therefore, the BJP is rattled. Jawab dijiye. Well, well, Dhaka, do you think people of the country are foolish? They will accept the poor carbon copy, who is trying to be poor carbon copy than the real. The fact is that this party has been anti-Hindu throughout. I will give you two, three examples. In Delhi, sorry to say that Imams, Malvis get monthly involvement from Delhi government. Almost in 2 to 32,000 rupees per, per masjid. But a similar thing being paid to Pujaris in temple who do prachana every day, who do archana every day for Ganesh and Ganesh ji and Lakshmi ji or to the Granthis in Punjab where they are the elected government. No, it's only because they want to appease certain vote bank, they have been following their policy. Now keeping in mind the Gujarat election, especially the way they were being battered on Diwali issue uh, because they said even a six year old child if uh, burst a cracker he'll be arrested and will be sent for six months to the jail there's, and then there's so much strong social uh, reaction on that that people went ahead i'm sorry to say that people went ahead and and uh, burst crackers and they couldn't do anything but the fact is that to cover up that they they, they came up with this they had no other they had no other option they no, no, but rp singh saab rp singh saab the fact but of the, the matter concern, is can no, I, no, can no, no, complete, eight seconds. Can give me can give me ten, give me 10 seconds Fact of the matter is that uh, even in Uttar Pradesh, Maulanas and Malvis from the recognized madrasas across the state get uh, a token amount from the Sarkar every month. So it's not just the <laughs> Delhi government. Also in the case of Punjab, in the case of Delhi, wherever it is, those Gurdwaras which are uh, taking a grant or, a, or, a, or an aid from the government, are uh, they are paid some, some amount of money. You can... You can always, you know, debate about how much money should be paid, what, what the, this thing is, remuneration is. But 
those those religious institutions which take aid from the government are paid a normal amount of money i'm i'm sorry jaka uh, you ask i I'll, we'll be in the debate for another 20 minutes ask your research team to search for it not a single penny goes from the state exchequer here the state pays no state government pays to religious institution uh, the priest of the religious institution or imams of the uh, religious institution this only in delhi which happens but that point aside sir 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 that's Indra not Pal true Gautam? sir sir He's sir we did a debate on madrasas yesterday pay. up government has 500 plus almost 550 plus madrasas that are recognized by the up government to whom the in fact the up government's budget for madrasas last year is 470 crores agar wo paise nahi de rahe maulvi ko to kisko de rahe wo 470 crore वो 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 एजुकेशन के लिए जा रहे हैं ना कि मस्जिद के लिए नहीं जा रहे वो एजुकेशन मदरसा में एजुकेशन के लिए जा रहे हैं और एजुकेशन को अपग्रेड करने के लिए जा रहे हैं हेयर इज नॉट बिंग गिवन टू मदरसा इज ओनली गिवन टू मस्जिद स्पेसिफिकली ओनली फॉर मस्जिद विच विच हैज नो मदरसा अटैच टू इट एनीवे वी आर वी आर डिविएटिंग वी आर डिविएटिंग फ्रॉम द टॉपिक टॉपिक इज अबाउट पुटिंग द इमेजेस ऑफ गॉडेस लक्ष्मी एंड लॉर्ड गणेशा ऑन रुपी एंड हाउ दैट्स गोइंग टू सेव द इंडियन करेंसी तो लेट मी आस्क विवेक बंसल ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी उसके बाद यशवंत देशमुख के पास जा रहा हूँ विवेक बंसल साहब ये बताइए कि इंडोनेशियन रुपया जो अरविंद केजरीवाल ने एग्जांपल दे दिया आज इंडोनेशियन रुपया हैज फॉलन 9.3 परसेंट अगेंस्ट द यूएस डॉलर सिंस जनवरी ऑफ 2022 इंडियन रुपी हैज फॉलन नाइन टू द यूएस डॉलर सिंस जनवरी ऑफ ट्वेंटी मतलब बराबर है नाइन पॉइंट तो कोई इतना ज्यादा फर्क नहीं है ऐसा नहीं कि इंडोनेशियन रुपया मतलब डॉलर से आगे बढ़ चुका है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है सो फैक्ट ऑफ द मैटर इज कि लॉर्ड गणेशा के इमेज डालने के बावजूद अगर इंडोनेशियन रुपया भी गिर रही है जैसे इंडियन रुपी गिर रही है तो ये सब तो बेबुनियाद बातें हैं आई मीन दीज आर नॉट इकोनॉमिक आर्ग्यूमेंट्स दीज आर पोलिटिकल स्टंट Vivek Bansal sir can i make one very small point another i'll come back to you sir sir i'll come back to you two, two minutes very yeah. small point i completely agree with you these are all political gimmicks and i think this is making a mockery of our 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 our, our beliefs and our, our beliefs our sanatan beliefs uh, the, the belief of the the gods of the hindus uh, this is this is not done this is very unethical and this is as i said this it is somewhat i feel that it's a mockery mockery of our beliefs and uh, because money is used for all sort of purposes underhand dealings and all i fail to understand either uh, the logic behind mr kejriwal's suggestion or he is just trying to play a game of one one up manship as far as um, uh, uh, as far as uh, beliefs of the bjp party is concerned or trying to uh, prove this that we are uh, we are bigger hindus than you so this is i think when Then we have to draw certain line lines in political, despite the vote okay. for bank politics. Our religion should not be dragged into it. We should try to avoid that. And uh, the, the, I fail to still comprehend, despite stretching my brains, and uh, um, that how how the uh, pictures of Lord Ganesh or Lord uh, or Lord uh, Goddess Lakshmi. is going to no, so the you know the, the funny the part is and i'll ask dushan sridhar this after that uh, yashwan deshmukh about the electoral so, reasons or electoral so, compulsions so, so, for this so, but dushan so, sridhar so, 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 fact of the so, matter I, is dushan sridhar that I, I, the dollar has strengthened I, I, to I, virtually I, every currency I, in the I, world I, since I, this year I, began whether it's yeah, uh, british pound I, sterling I, whether it is euro whether it is the saudi real whether it is the dirhams in dubai indian rupee every almost every currency the dollar has strengthened against now going by the logic of arvind kejriwal and the aam aadmi party uh, the dollar then should have jesus christ picture not george washington and not uh, uh, you know theodore roosevelt and abraham lincoln's picture right if, if that's the argument he's being he's putting forth yeah. uh namaskaram zaka and namaskaram to all my panelists i am the only uh, non political person in this debate so i hope i'll get some into uninterrupted time uh so while we are at a stage where we are talking about the digital currency picking up the digital payments picking up we should find intelligent ways of going into all classes of people to spread the good message about digital payment and rather we are talking about which deity's picture should come on the printed note that said 
the first point that I would like to make is, um, uh, as per the beliefs of uh, Sanatana Dharma, yes, Goddess Lakshmi is the one who grants wealth. Wealth could be wealth could be of any form, be it gold, be it currency, or be it even knowledge, or, or even Ganesha, who is the one who removes all the obstacles. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Zaka. Uh, Lakshmi has been adored as the goddess of water. Ardram Jvalantim says Sri Suktam. So if at all any government, just not up, if it is BJP or Congress, if they have to bring some prosperity to the country, the civilization states clean the rivers first. Make Yamuna and Ganga so prosperous, so clean, that will bring prosperity to the country. One. Second point with respect to printing of deities on the currency notes, I don't know where such ideas do come. Because uh, as a religion that believes that formless form of worship is important, we also believe in forms. It doesn't mean the forms of gods should be taken to printed notes, plastic covers and bags. So this is a very ridiculous idea to whomever it has struck. And okay. the third part, if at all we want the uh, economy of the country to strengthen and the currency to not fall so much against the dollar, in that case, probably we should pray to Lakshmi and Ganesha that the war stops between Russia and Ukraine. We should pray to gods that uh, there is proper logistics happening all over the world where the fuel prices are not going to rise. These are the ways that we have to pray and putting them on notes will be uh, a, a matter of ridicule. Uh, I wouldn't say it's hurting any religion. For that matter, Zaka, mm. if even BJP had come up with this idea and you had called me on this debate, even if Congress had come up with this idea and you had called me on this debate, I would have opposed stood the nail to this idea because this is a very ridiculous idea. To impress upon a certain section of people, maybe there are better ways. Probably Hindus are not uh, so easy to be fooled like where you can bring the photos of Ganesha and uh, Lakshmi on the rupee note and say that the economy is going to improve. Okay, let me ask uh, 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 Yashwan Deshmukh, how much uh, hard politics is there in this because in Gujarat for example, the electorate is almost 88-89% Hindu. Muslims are less than 10% of the population of Gujarat and it's been a Hindutva laboratory for the last 3-4 decades now. So the only way the Amadmi party or any political party can hope to beat the BJP or at least make inroads into the BJP's vote bank there is by trying to be more right of the BJP. You can't be left of the BJP in Gujarat because there's only 10% electorate there. Is this an attempt to try and be more Hindu than the BJP, more Hindutvavadi than the BJP, more right of the BJP? And will this at all succeed in a state like Gujarat? Well, first of all, Rata, I don't think this is limited to Gujarat. I think uh, what Amadi Party is trying to do is to uh, basically look at a map, road map which uh, can go beyond Gujarat and, and uh, for, for much bigger appeal. Uh, will this work in Gujarat or not? That only the time will tell. But what I feel is that right now, Amadi Party, with or without the notes of Ganeshi and Lakshmi Ji, uh, you know, is uh, is making a significant dent in Gujarat as far as the Congress vote share is concerned. Mm -hmm. So the contest is likely to be quite keen. Uh, in our trackers, which we run for the ABP, we do not see their graph going down like it went up in Uttarakhand and then it went down very quickly. So uh, it is not looking like at this point of time. Uh, we'll keep a keen eye on that. But what looks like Zaka is that, you know, uh, going beyond Gujarat and Ahmadi party, there is something uh, uh, serious that is, is for all the analysts to look into. And that is the entire idea or entire narrative of the Indian politics, which has changed in the last uh, eight or years. And, uh, it's just not about, you know, for six decades in this country, people competed with each other as a sec champion of secularism, uh, you know, in order to become, uh, you know, electorally significant and, and winnable strategies. But it seems that in the last eight years, particularly, this entire equation has changed. And uh, India, for all practical purpose right now, I believe that... Uh, uh, electorally speaking, each and every party would be on the right of the right as well. No, but uh, so, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, uh, uh, can I ask one, 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 one small question? At least in the last election, and, and this is true for the last many elections, as far as the Congress vote is concerned in Gujarat, it's predominantly uh, of a rural vote, largely from Saurashtra. And because of the last election, the dynamics of the partisan registration and so on, it was a largely uh, Patel vote. Uh, the Aam Admi Party, though, 
is a urban party whether it's in delhi or gujarat or any other uh, state in this country it's largely seen as an urban phenomenon so how is it that by denting the congress's vote bank the aam aadmi party is hoping to make a dent and frankly by saying that let lord ganesha and lord uh, i mean uh, uh, goddess saraswati be on currency notes i don't think they're denting the congress's vote bank uh, first of all uh, this idea that aam aadmi party is only an urban phenomena i think uh, Uh, doesn't hold true anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. As far as data is concerned, they are getting significant tractions even in the rural areas. Of Number one. Okay. Number two, if this traction continues and the data shows that out of every hundred votes that they are kind of influencing right now, seventy-five is approximately seventy-five are coming from the Congress and approximately twenty-five coming from the BJP. So all in all, if Aam Aadmi Party, even if they poll only about ten percent. that will increase the gap between the congress and bjp by about 5% and the like last time the gap between the congress and bjp was 10% approximately 10% vote okay even though on the seat wise it looked much closer 77 and 99 largely because of the fact that you just mentioned that you know bjp swept uh, the urban areas with huge majorities and they lost to the rural areas uh, many seats with a smaller much smaller Uh, you know, uh, markets. Okay. So that is where why I say, uh, you know, if Aam Aadmi Party is given the smallest of the possible traction in the rural areas, I'm just giving you a hypothetical. Suppose they are polling about twenty five percent in the urban areas and only about five percent in rural areas. You know, that twenty five percent vote will not make much of a difference. What is happening to the BJP in the Congress because BJP has huge leads in urban areas, but that five percent vote in rural Gujarat. Is going to create really okay. big dent in Congress because of the smaller okay, parties that the Congress so, has made. So, so let me ask Siddharth Sharma. The, you know, one of the points that's been made uh, by R P Singh and others is that you have just recently denied Hindus in Delhi N C R from bursting crackers, saying that you will go after even little kids who burst crackers. Uh, so, in order to counter that. You are now coming up with this uh, Hindu twa sort of philosophy. Have the images and iconographies of. Uh, gods and goddesses on currency notes because you are on the back foot as far as the cracker issue is concerned and uh, Diwali has just passed. So how do you respond to that? Yeah, three points in three thirty seconds. Point number one: this is a total fallacy about the cracker thing. Not one kid, not one person was arrested. Point number. Point number two: the fact of the matter is that we are there is a lot of halabu about everything. Uh, in december in january of 2014 when mr manmohan singh was the prime minister india came out with a coin which had uh, uh, a dt which had a dt vishnu devi on its as its motif so there is there is a precedent to this in india so that point number 2 Point number three and very interesting. Uh, the very erudite Hindu scholar for, in this panel has very clearly said, and that is what we need today in India. Today, after a very long time, there is a debate on national television that yes, the dollar and the rupee, rupee is falling against the dollar. There is a very very good debate going on on national television that what is the philosophical tenets of Hinduism. That erudite scholar very clearly said that Hinduism also accepts formless gods. whereas for the last 8 years we have been living in we have been living in symbolism so these are the kinds of the debates that aam aadmi party is forcing upon bjp today not just the debates the okay. prime minister of india had to sit in a classroom after 27 years of ruling gujarat he had to sit in a classroom that is the change that is the narrative okay. that we let me want. ask rp singh that rp singh the fact that you are having to defend a falling rupee the and fact that point, prime minister point, goes to a classroom yeah, in gujarat after 30 okay, years in power president. this the aam aadmi party claims is because they have forced you to address these issues please rp singh saab response sidar sharma please yield i have given you enough time let rp singh respond thank you thank you thank you please yield rp singh rp singh ji zaka i'm sorry you should have stopped the gentleman there and then when he said the prime minister went to the classroom after 27 years prime prime minister uh, modi ji when was a chief minister used to regularly visit schools and take care of the school education and school education is the best uh, of uh, gujarat is the best in the country i'm sorry when, and then you can check on the uh, you, uh, you you can check on your the cert team to tell you the details but that point aside who is talking 
रजिंदर पाल गौतम सेट दैट हम तो किसी देवी देवता में मानते नहीं हम तो लक्ष्मी में गणेश जी में मानते नहीं जस्ट इसे डेन स्टिल पढ़ा थी आम आदमी पार्टी यार गुजरात प्रेसिडेंट वट डिड से इफ वुमेन गो टू टेम्पल्स देर बी मोलस्टेड देर बी हरस डोंट गो टू टेम्पल्स डोंट गो टू भजन कीर्तन मंडलीस दिस इज जस्ट सैन एंड ही स्टिल दी पार्टी प्रेजेंट देयर बट अगेन आई रिपीट लेट मिस्टर भगवंत मान गिव ए रिक्वेस्ट इन राइटिंग Mm-hmm. following mr kejriwal's footstep saying that this should be done one secondly again when will they start paying allowances to which is not being done in delhi and then don't mix up madrasas with the masjids only for masjid similar to that to temples and gurdwaras okay uh l- let me go back to uh, dushan sridhar again the the idea of uh, literacy or the school model and i just want to bring in this data as well Uh, as per the last uh, census of india the literacy rate in delhi is 86% in the uh, urban areas in gujarat in the urban areas it's 78% so you know i'm just making that distinction of course one is a 4 5 crore population state the other is a 1.5 crore population state but fact of the matter remains that today you are having a debate by two mainstream political parties on putting insignias on the currency notes which you know we all agree may not be the best or, or most scientific way of strengthening the uh, uh, the rupee fact of the matter is that the finance minister is on record said that the dollar is not uh, getting strong uh, sorry the rupee is not getting weak but it's the dollar getting strong that's what she said so uh, what is the question that uh, uh, that you have zaka no so my my question dushan sridhar is i mean is the is this the level of discourse that we are going to grind down to in this country uh, at a time when you know again uh, this, this uh, debate okay. this debate oh, just give me 10 seconds you know people are going on and on about rishi sunak rishi sunak rishi sunak rishi sunak became prime minister of britain not because he is hindu or not because he hails from indian origin he became prime minister because he has one job to do and that one job is to fix the british economy he's qualified to do that his past record correct shows that he's capable of doing that that's why he's got the job uh zaka on a very lighter note all our politicians are blessed immensely by lakshmi all that they need is saraswati they need education to even come up with statements such as this now getting back to this particular point of printing deities on the notes as my in my humble opinion i am ho i feel it's a very ridiculous idea and coming to one more point if if at all any of the politicians i'm not talking about one any of the politicians believe that printing uh, the deity on an indian rupee notes could help solve the problem then krishna statement that do your duty karmanyeva adhikaraste goals falls so every individual every citizen of this country should do their duty well okay. should follow the rules well the government should frame policies well these are the ways that probably we can get out of whatever economic uh, muddle that the world is in okay Rather i'll, I'll give you something from the final this, word i'm really out of time just last 30 seconds uh, what i want to know is has this become the new normal yashwant deshmukh that parties can't be seen as uh, catering to the left or catering from the left or attacking the bjp from the left you have to if you have to beat the bjp you have to beat them outflanking them from the right that's why the aam aadmi party is doing what is doing well pretty much yes i mean if you if you will ask about the political positioning i think pretty much yes. but more than the beating the bjp or anything like that like i believe that uh, this country's political discourse has changed so much that earlier you could get more sounding anti hindu then came at a time when you were electorally unviable if you sounded anti hindu and now it is a time where it is going in a direction where you have to sound pro hindu all the time in order to get the votes so basically the political narrative this of this country has kind okay. of changed in a very very affirmative way all right. where maybe 20 years down the line you are looking at india uh, which has a political landscape of far right is far right versus the right rather than the right versus center or okay. certainly not the right versus all right we'll leave it at that uh, i'm just borrowing something that somebody said on twitter today and i think it was pertinent that if you look at the iconography in uh, in hindu religion in hindu tradition uh, goddess lakshmi sits on a lotus it's a flower flowers sometimes bloom sometimes wilt uh, that's how money is sometimes you get money sometimes money goes out of your hands it is not a permanent feature in our lives 
So let's leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much to all our guests. Quick break. We'll see you on the other side. Good evening, AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Owaisi has weighed in on the Rishi Sunak as a minority candidate becoming Britain's Prime Minister, that entire debate that's been stirred off. Owaisi says he dreams of a day when a hijab-wearing woman can and will become the Prime Minister of India. Which is all very well, it's a noble intention, no one has a quibble with that. But shouldn't charity begin at home? In Mr Owaisi's party, for example, there are no women in any senior leadership position either as party president, secretary, or even MLAs that the MIM has in different states. So should Ovesi be preaching about gender rights when his own party's record is so patchy? British Asian Rishi Sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the UK has triggered a massive political storm in India. A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, EIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi has added fuel to fire. I told that in my life, I will become a child of a hijab in my life. I will become a prime minister of India. Owesi's remark was immediately criticised by the BJP, who asked him to look no further than his own party. एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं, उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोजी रोटी है। अपने परिवार के अलग, परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाएं और जीताएं। Let's start the charity from home. When will a hijabi woman become the president of MIM party? There is a Bharat Badnami brigade which has a sunky sunak to use even Rishi Sunak issue. Even the opposition steered clear of Ovesi's pitch for a hijabi as prime minister. Why do you why do you think of this as being a communal thing? Anybody in this country, no matter what community, what religion. Can aspire to be prime minister. There's no problem at all about that. OBC also accused the BJP of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country. But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs, or even office bearers in his own party. So is it politics or provocation? All right, on the big talking point this evening, Ratan Sharda, RSS researcher and author, Suman C. Raman, political analyst, joining us. Mohammed Farhan is spokesperson of the MIM party. Amber Zedi is a social activist and Amina Sherwani, women's rights activist, joining us as well. Uh, Ratan Sharda, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country and one among them. Uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the Prime Minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that? Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as Prime Minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back and hijab has been introduced as an Arabic celebrity sign only recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to further right of freedom? who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so. So this patriarchy they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, woman become, if Muslim woman can become a prime minister, in, uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere. And okay. the next, 
if it's an islamic nation next door to us in pakistan there was bambeda ji bhutto she lost her life she was not a hijab wearing politician in bangladesh we had two ladies who became head of the state prime ministers they they have they are all without hijab show me one country islamic or any other it is specially islamic where you have women becoming head of the state so this either you are you support sharia and islam or you say we are a secular country if you are a secular country then don't oppose triple talaq then if you are secular okay. then what did you do for 60 years 50 years prior to 90 2000 uh, year 1996 10 years from 2004 to 2014 secular government saw through why they could not get a muslim pr- prime minister as elected no and so why in punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a hindu le- or in jammu kashmir where minority can be uh, can be chief minister so this hypocrisy of entire gang is so funny le- and sunat did not become prime minister because he was a hindu he became a prime minister because he worked hard he worked through the party he rose to the top and we must compliment him for that yeah Not no no i absolutely agree with you i think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because suman si raman mr rishi sunak got chosen not because he's a hindu or because of his indian heritage he got chosen for two things number one uh, to fix the british economy and he has a proven record of that as chancellor of the exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking so on and so forth so he's capable his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked and the other reason is England as is India a parliamentary democracy whoever has the support of majority legislators majority parliamentarians goes on to become the leader of that party it is not a a post of tokenism the prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority so tomorrow and nothing stops a hijab wearing woman the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab wearing woman if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India to go ahead and become prime minister so this whole debate around sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are first of all uh, zaka um, uh, should mr chidambaram or uh, mr uh, yc have the do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties the answer is no that is a very different issue i don't think that they are actually saying that mr rishi sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job i don't think that that is their point at all their point is their the atmosphere in the country is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community belonging to a minority faith in his country to become the prime minister of the country i think that that's the point that's being made should ovc be making that point Uh, is he having uh, uh, you know uh, the the same freedom to the uh, to the um, women and other groups in his own party yeah. all that of course is 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 comp- is definitely a valid point but and i think that this is important see we have to understand that this applies to all political parties look we have not had a muslim chief minister of a state in 40 years from uh, from the uh, mm. early 80s onwards i think the last one was anwara taimur uh, in assam after that i i don't really think we've had a muslim chief minister so where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it we are not and the rise of the bjp has meant that even political parties which quote unquote claim to be secular are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the bjp with their hard hindutva line and they are running scared you see mr kejriwal statement today yeah. you have to put uh, 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 lord ganesha and lord lakshmi uh, goddess lakshmi on the notes you know so every now it is now a question of who is more hindu than the other no, because no. Sir, so much so much fair, fair enough i'm, I'm not yeah yeah i'm not i'm not uh, arguing against that but the fact is also that uh electability and winability has become now the bottom line uh for political success whether it's in the bjp or any other party uh the same aam aadmi party you refer to has an amanatullah khan they have a tahir hussain who used to be an mlc but yes. i i want to get to the larger point both uh, ratan yeah. sharda and sumant also referred well, to one, this one so i want to ask mohammad Fa- farhan no, no, just give me just give me 10 well, seconds yeah, mohammad yeah. farhan is a spokesperson of the mim party mohammad farhan saab Uh, जो आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष श्री असदुद्दीन ओवैसी ने बोला वो अच्छी बात है कि, कि, किसी को कोई ऐतराज नहीं है और राइट वी लॉस्ट हिम लेट्स गो टू अंबर जैदी अंबर यू नो नो वन हैज अ प्रॉब्लम विद व्हाट मिस्टर ओवैसी सेड द प्रॉब्लम इज हिज ओन डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स व्हेन इट कम्स टू हिज ओन पार्टी 
everyone uh, you know has no problem with a hijab wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country but in mr ovc's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they are all men all mlas that they have across five or six states where mim has mlas they are all men uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men so where is a woman hijab wearing or otherwise in mr ovc's party in any position of leadership absolutely right uh, uh, chika because uh, as they say charity uh, begins at home and whatever uh, ovc ji is preaching he doesn't practice that so he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation we need to like uh, in our country if we talk about the muslim women especially their literacy rate is so low he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women he doesn't care about the health care of muslim women he doesn't give that equal rights that muslim women as uh, the islam or sharia are given even uh, the constitution for that matter but they they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the muslim women should get but he is just preaching what is like uh, he should also like uh, he i mean i just want to ask one question to uh, osag Uh, he should at, at least give up on his mp seat from hyderabad and nominate at least a woman from his party and he should give a chance to uh, become a prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least and then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and crack, uh, yell out to, to the people what he is just trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that uh, in india muslim are being targeted just because, because of their religious identities for hijab for topi for beef or for for all these things which is absolutely not right he needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue work on ground okay amina sherwani you know i'm i'm taking ahead what the point that ambar zaidi was making that again i have no quibble with mr uh, mr ovc wanting to see in his lifetime a burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the prime minister of this country surely if that person is capable if that person has uh, electoral majority the support of the majority of the people of this country absolutely that person should go on to become prime minister but in mr ovc's case not just this leadership issue in his party but more importantly how do you get there we are talking about rishi sunak it's his capability he went to the best schools uh, in england and the best universities in the world uh it is about his education as as an old man once said the greatest leveler that we have in this country is is quality education if you get a good education that is a sure shot route to success what has mr ovc's party done about uh, education and 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 for uh, and for women uh who is the party who said agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education muslim girls getting an education nothing is more important than getting a good education and if a hijab is an impediment in that then the hijab should go not education absolutely and let me tell you about rishi sunak he even has african blood he's got an african grandmother from tangyangika so he is a punjabi khatri from gujranwala and as we know the khatris are of greek origin and they travel from europe and came this side he is truly a world citizen he did not hide himself in hijabs he got the best education in the world he has done businesses all over the world and yes if muslim girls will go out and travel africa india europe reach every country in the world and they will be educated they will certainly become prime ministers not just of india but of any country in the world that they choose to become so the world is our oyster and that is exactly what islam and the quran tells us to travel to do business to be educated the word hijab is not mentioned in the quran the quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up so i don't know why mr uwaisi keeps dreaming of muslim women in hijabs now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze and mr uwaisi is seeing them in his dreams i think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone he needs to be stop just stop being obsessed with us women leave us alone we know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers we know how to become presidents we know how to become chief justice of the indian supreme court we know how to join the hague we know how to go to the united nations we really don't need him to comment on us he is a nobody and he should understand that we had no less than a, a justice of the supreme court uh, who was a hijab wearing woman uh, fatima bivi 
and when she used to go to court to perform her public official duty, she used to remove the hijab. That is what Mr. Ovesi should be encouraging in young girls. Well, Mohammed Farhan is back in uh, on the Justice on the discussion. Mohammed Farhan, sir, ye bataiye. Aapke jo Rashtriya Adhyaksh Shri Ovesi ji ne bola hai, achhi baat hai. Koi ko usse koi etraz nahi hai. Lekin charity begins at home. Ek kahavat hai Angrezi mein. To aapke party mein bataiye koi aise mahila hai jo hijab pehne ho, hijab na pehne ho, jo leadership position mein hai. क्या क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष महिला है क्या आपके जो प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं काफी सारे प्रदेशों में क्या वो महिला है कोई एक जन ऐसा है महिला जो आपके पार्टी में लीडरशिप पोजीशन में है जी सर मैं आपकी बात को बत कह रहा हूं सर हमारे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिला विंग की जो प्रेसिडेंट है नजमा फातिमा जी वो हिजाब भी पहनती हैं और क्या नाम है पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिलाओं को जोड़ने का काम महिला विंग के प्रेसिडेंट तो महिला ही बन सकती है ना सुनिए ये बात तो आपको भी पता है नहीं नहीं मैं आपको बता रहा हूं ना मैं आपको गिनवा रहा हूं कि हमारी पार्टी के अंदर कितनी महिलाएं हैं जो हिजाब पहनकर क्या नाम है आज की डेट में काम कर रही हैं सर महिला विंग की प्रेसिडेंट तो आदमी नहीं बन सकता है ना वो तो महिला ही बनेगी ये क्या लॉजिक है आपकी अरे सुन लीजिए मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ करा रहा हूँ की हमारे यहाँ कितनी महिला बोलिए बोलिए कौशिका परमार जी है जो की क्या नाम है गुजरात में उनको टिकट दिया गया है वो पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही है आपके तमाम टीवी चैनल पर भी ये खबर चली है रिया सिद्दीकी जी हैं जो क्या नाम है मेन बॉडी में हमारे यहाँ प्रदेश सचिव हैं और क्या नाम है पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही हैं और पूरे प्रदेश में पार्टी को मजबूत करने का काम कर रही हैं इस तरह की तमाम फरहान साहब फरहान साहब एक एक, एक सिंपल सी चीज आ, मैं आपसे पूछ रहा हूँ क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष मुस्लिम महिला है प्रदेश के जो अध्यक्ष हैं पांच सात प्रदेशों में आपके प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं क्या वो महिला है एम हैं आपके काफी सारे तेलंगाना में है महाराष्ट्र में है बिहार में भी थे क्या उसमें से एक भी महिला थी तो आप अगर लीडरशिप पोजीशन अपने खुद के पार्टी के अंदर नहीं दे रहे महिलाओं को तो फिर क्या ये हसीन सपने देख रहे हैं ओवेसी साहब कि एक दिन हिजाब पहनी हुई लड़की बनेगी भारत की प्रधानमंत्री ये तो हसीन सपना नहीं है नहीं हसीन सपना नहीं है महात्मा गांधी जी ने भी जब अंग्रेजों के सामने ये बात कही थी कि एक दिन आप देखिएगा कि धोती और कुर्ता पहनने वाला इस देश का प्राइम मिनिस्टर होगा तो अंग्रेजों ने उनका उपहास उड़ाने का काम किया था वही आज बिल्कुल वैसी साहब पर लागू हो रहा है चाहे भारतीय जनता पार्टी वाले उनका जितना भी उपहास उड़ा लें हमें यह फर्क नहीं पड़ता अगर विधि को लिखा होगा कि इस देश में भारत की एक ऐसी महिला प्रधानमंत्री बने जो हिजाब वाली हो तो विधि हंड्रेड परसेंट वो बन रहा कि किसी को कोई ऐतराज नहीं है अगर वो उनमें काबिलियत है उनमें काबिलियत है और वो देश को कन्विंस कर सकेगी कि उनको मेजोरिटी क्यों देना है वो बिल्कुल आ, 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 आगे आना चाहिए और उनको पब्लिक ऑफिस में पोजीशन मिलना चाहिए लेकिन किस पार्टी ने बोला अगर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं ये तो बीजेपी ने नहीं, नहीं बोला ना किस पार्टी ने बोला जो हिजाब के मुद्दे को लेकर आप बात कर रहे हैं सर कर्नाटक में जिन बच्चों ने कहा कि अगर हिजाब नहीं तो हम एग्जाम नहीं देने जाएंगे या हम पढ़ने नहीं जाएंगे तो वो बच्चों का मुद्दा था वैसी साहब ने तो कहा नहीं कि हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं 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 आपके एम, एम, आ, आपको आपको वो पोस्टर याद नहीं है फरहान साहब मैं याद दिलाता हूँ तो जो जो औरंगाबाद में आपके जो गढ़ माना जाता है गढ़ नहीं मतलब आपके एम एल से आते हैं औरंगाबाद में पोस्टर पोस्टर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं किसने लगवाई बाकायदा एम पार्टी के फ्लेक्स बोर्ड लगे थे वहां पे हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं देखिए क्या नाम है हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं ये जो है ये पर्टिकुलर उन बच्चों का अपना स्लोगन है जो आज हिजाब की लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं कोर्ट से लेकर जमीन तक अंबर जैरी ये बच्चों की लड़ाई नहीं थी ये तो बिल्कुल हंड्रेड परसेंट राष्ट्रीय राजनीतिक तरीके का एक लड़ाई था और आपके पार्टी भी इसमें एक अंग था लेकिन एनी लेट अंबर जैदी रिस्पॉन्ड टू इट एंड टू रतन शाहिया Absolutely, it has been proven in the Supreme Court also because it has been politicized uh, by the, some so-called uh, political parties and also uh, PFI. And uh, we all know that how they have been politicizing this particular matter for at least eight nine months now, and nobody is focusing on the prime uh, education of young girls. They are only politicizing this matter just to gain some political brownie points. I want to ask one question here. He, uh, a Muslim lady in uh, AMI, he, if they want to join, if I want to join AMI hmm. today, hmm. like this, with the, without not wearing hijab, I can't be a member of uh, AMI. Covering my basic requirement is to cover that. Uh, 
I I'll give you an example of uh, uh, Sayada Falak. She used to be without hijab, a normal girl, like a normal any Indian girl. And after join, even before joining AMI, she started wearing hijab and covering her head. So this is the basic requirement to become. No, a this is a, a great point. Let let uh, Farhan respond to this, and I'll go back to Ratan Sharda after this. Mohammed Farhan Sahab, ye batayiye ki mahilaon ko aapke party mein sadastha milne ke liye kya hijab pehne pehne ki zarurat hai? Bina hijab pehne hue auraton ko nahi denge aap sadastha. नहीं बिल्कुल देंगे अगर अंबर जैदी अंबर जैदी जी अगर हमारी पार्टी ज्वाइन करना चाहती हैं और इस शर्त के साथ कि वो बिना हिजाब में रहेंगी तो हम उनका स्वागत करते हैं कल आए पार्टी ज्वाइन करें उनको नहीं उन्होंने एक उदाहरण दिया एक एक महिला के जो हिजाब पहनते नहीं थे लेकिन जैसे आपके पार्टी में ज्वाइन किया उन्होंने तो हिजाब पहनना पड़ा उनको क्या ये सच है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है सर देखिये हिजाब अगर कोई व्यक्ति पहनता है तो वो उसकी च्वाइस है नहीं नहीं सिर्फ आपके पार्टी में सदस्य मिलने के लिए उनको पहनना पड़ा नहीं नहीं सर आप उनसे सैयदा फलक सर तमाम टीवी चैनल्स डिबेट करती हैं आप भी उनसे बात कर सकते हैं कि उनको कभी एम पार्टी ने ये नहीं कहा कि आप क्या नाम है सदस्यता लेने से पहले आप हिजाब पहनी तभी आपको सदस्यता ओके अंबर क्विक रिबर्टल देन देन रतन शारदा यस क्विक रिबर्टल मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी why is the bjp so against uh, muslims uh, and, and it's not like there aren't capable muslim candidates uh, in uttar pradesh for example where there are 400 tickets that were given by the bjp party couldn't they find one single muslim candidate see the sarkar already pointed out that this is something to winability as far as bjp is concerned is branded hindu nationalist bigot party so don't expect uh, you know they have don't have a responsibility to promote the muslims but why all these secular parties who have been there in the power for the 60 years out of 75 years what have they done for the muslims that is the bigger question when somebody like abdul kalam becomes the president the most popular president we ever had the secular parties did not allow him to have a second term because he was not muslim enough because he played veena because he respected geeta then we have rf mohammad khan who has made a scapegoat for fighting for the rights of poor india being a muslim woman called shabano and she was put on the he was put on the side you know on the sideline not promoted anywhere in the political parties now the larger point is that since 1921 khilafat or caliphate movement the the all secular parties are thrown away modern forward looking muslims who who are who want to be mainst in the mainstream and they brought all kind of maulanas maulvis orthodoxy who believe in 7th century ideology who doesn't believe in democracy to come and lead the muslims and okay. that is a tragedy if we had modern people like zaidi and sherwani we would find muslims leading on so many fronts unfortunately no secular party promotes uh, modern forward looking muslims and we have Zara. all kind of uh, bigots who, who throw all kind of vague statements and vague kind of constitutionalism to prove their point i'll i'll wrap up by simply saying that uh, while it may be a noble idea and no one has an issue with mr ovc asking for his dream of you know a hijab wearing woman becoming prime minister the least he can do is to begin by making his own party a little more inclusive having more women in leadership positions that's a wrap thanks very much for your time good night watching news epicenter and we are starting with some piece of breaking news that is coming in from telangana and ahead of the manugode by pole the cyberabad police have raided a farmhouse in the moinabad area and seized cash to the tune of 15 crore rupees they have taken three people into custody for allegedly trying to bribe four trs mlas the police also say that the tip off in fact came from one of the trs mlas police is saying 
that one suspect is from Faridabad, another one from Delhi, and one is from Tirupati. All the four TRS MLAs are now going to meet KT Rama Rao, who is the working president of TRS, and may also meet Chief Minister KCR. Let's first listen in to the political reaction and also the reaction that has come in from the Commissioner of Police. BJP is known for toppling state governments across India. But one thing is clear out today that KCRG's MLAs are not for sale. Using Swamiji's and many other political brokers, Bharatiya Janata Party leaders were caught red-handed today by pressurizing MLAs, four MLAs of TRS to shift sides to Bharatiya Janata Party offering hundreds of crores and contracts just before the Munugod by-election. KCRG's MLAs informed police that BJP has been pressurizing them and today police has caught them red-handed. Swastika is now joining me live from Hyderabad. Swastika, the TRS is alleging that this was some kind of Operation Lotus which was happening. What really has happened given the nature, serious nature of allegation? Have you got a reaction from the BJP and when did these raid happen? Well, we're still awaiting a reaction from the BJP but to give you an exact sequence of events, this evening, rather, there was a raid by the Cyberabad, well, Cyberabad police where they went to a farmhouse in Moinabad area, outskirts of Hyderabad, where they found three leaders, three identified persons uh, uh, by the name which the TRS alleged belonged to the BJP and four MLAs uh, holding negotiations. This was done based on the tip-off of the TRS MLAs who said that these three individuals who came from Delhi, Faridabad, and one from Hyderabad, identified as Mr. Nandu Kumar, uh, were trying to A, bribe them with cash, with government contracts, and also means at the central level and cabinet positions at the state government level if the BJP comes to power next year. Now, in the evening, the raids were carried out by the cyber police, where we are learning through our sources that Cash to the tune of almost 15 crores were seized along with some other documents. Now, the allegations, in fact, put forth by the TRS side is that all the three leaders are linked to a union cabinet minister. Not just that, they have been thoroughly holding negotiations with not just these four MLAs, but other leaders from the TRS as well, trying to buy them off by offering them cash and government contracts. And based on that tip off after holding negotiations for almost a month, uh, one of the MLAs have told me that they finally met today and they gave a tip off to the police to come and crack down on all the three accused who have now been taken into police custody. Okay, so talking about these three accused as a uh, uh... As you're picking up from the police that they are from different cities, also uh, from Delhi, um, is this linked to, you know, how is the link with the BJP being established here by the police? That is an allegation, remember, which is being put forth by the TRS side. The police so far has not established any links with any political parties. They say that they have, in fact, taken three individuals into custody. For the questioning is underway, they did raid the farmhouse in Moinabad area, acting on the tip off of the TRS MLAs. But the a police commissioner there of Cyberabad did not really mention what party or which party or which organization these three individuals were associated with. That allegation is, in fact, coming in from the side of the TRS. Remember, a senior TRS leader told me that all the three are associated with a union cabinet minister who is also a prominent face from the state of Telangana. 
but all of these are unfounded allegations at this point in time if you talk from an investigation point of view swastika stay with us let's listen in to what uh, the sound bite of the police commissioner of cyberabad is and then i go back to swastika for the final comments ఇప్పుడు మనకి ఎమ్మెల్యేలే మనకి ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఇవ్వడం జరిగింది టీఆర్ఎస్ ఎమ్మెల్యేస్ ఇక్కడ మమ్మల్ని ఎవరు వచ్చి అంటే ఈ ముగ్గురు వచ్చి మమ్మల్ని ప్రలోభం పెడతా ఉన్నారు డబ్బు ఎలా చూపెడతా ఉన్నారు కాంట్రాక్ట్లు ఎలా చూపెడతా ఉన్నారు మరియు పదవులు కూడా ఎలా చూపెట్టి మమ్మల్ని పార్టీకి ర్యాంక్ చేయరని పర్టికులర్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ మనకి ఇచ్చారు దానికి సంబంధించి ఈ రోడ్ రోజు చెక్ చేస్తే మనకి ఈ డీటెయిల్స్ మనకి వచ్చారు Swastika, if you can hear me, my question is, since these allegations are being leveled against the BJP, have you got a reaction from them? Well, Maria, we've reached out to the BJP and they have uh, clearly told us that there is no involvement from their side because the police itself has not clarified who these leaders are associated with. They say that allegations put forth from the TRS's side is completely baseless and unfounded at this point in time they say none of the three uh, individuals identified in that particular video that we are play, playing out on our screens right now nandu kumar simha who are said to be uh, individuals who flown in from faridabad delhi as well as one from hyderabad uh, have no authority or positions within the party so at this juncture the bjp definitely says it's not a setback a it's okay. not an embarrassment these are the cheap tactics they say are being adopted by the trs side because they are sensing defeat in munugodu and they are also sensing defeat in the upcoming 2023 assembly elections it will be interesting to see how the bjp counters several allegations we also have to wait on what the police investigation has found so far but to put out fact simply okay. a farm house raided 15 crores cash seized for TRS MLAs alleged that they were holding negotiations with members of the Bharatiya Janata Party who were okay. trying to allegedly allegedly buy them uh, with cash government contracts as well as ministerial positions at center and the state level provided the party comes to power next year so all of this completely based on allegations remember because of munugodu bipole which is turning out to be one of the costliest bipoles in a recent collective memory okay. it is turning out that cash seizures have been happening on a regular basis and the police say this could be linked to one such incident as well so further investigation still okay. underway to a certain who these three individuals are who allegedly try to buy off the 40 rsmlas all right swastika das appreciate your time thank you so much for getting us that piece of breaking news that it was coming from telangana shifting focus to our top debate this evening the majoritarian debate raging in india over the rise of rishi sunak to the post of prime minister has taken a fresh twist with the statement of mim chief asaduddin owaisi after multiple opposition leaders said that india must take lessons from britain over the appointment of the member of the minority community to 10 downing street owesi said he wishes to see a hijab wearing woman as the prime minister of india one day the bjp hit back at owesi accusing him of duplicity saying he should first appoint a hijab wearing woman as the president of his party and then discuss the post of the prime minister this comes just a day after the bjp countered the opposition listing members of the minority community who have held the post of president prime minister as well as top positions in the judiciary and the armed forces as the war of words continues to escalate the big question emerges has the debate gone out of hand and deteriorated into provocative political pot shots before i get the guests here's what happened today British Asian Rishi Sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the UK has triggered a massive political storm in India. A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, 
AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi has added fuel to fire. मैं तो बोला कि इंशाल्लाह मेरी जिंदगी में या मेरी जिंदगी के बाद एक हिजाब पहनने वाली बच्ची भारत की प्राइम मिनिस्टर बनेंगे बोले। Owaisi's remark was immediately criticized by the BJP who asked him to look no further than his own party. नफरत के जो एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोजी रोटी है अपने परिवार के अलग परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाए और जिताए लेट्सिटी फ्रॉम होम वेन विल हिजाबी वुमन बिकम द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एम आई एम पार्टी देर इज अ भारत बदनामी ब्रिगेड विच हैज अंकी सनक टू यूज इवन ऋषि सुनक इशू Even the opposition steered clear of Obasi's pitch for a hijabi as prime minister. Why do you why do you think of this as being a communal thing? Anybody in this country, no matter what community, what religion, can aspire to be prime minister. There's no problem at all about that. Obasi also accused the BJP of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country. But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs or even office bearers in his own party. So is it politics or provocation? Joining me now Shantanu Gupta is an author, Varis Pathan national spokesperson of MIM, Dr. Zeenus Shaukat Ali is director general of Wisdom Foundation. Varis Pathan, a hijabi M, uh, prime minister, is this not pure minority push for getting merit? <clears throat> well maria first and foremost let me congratulate mr rishi sunak for being appointed as the prime minister of united kingdom and uh, i feel that if a minority person wearing a kalawa in his hand a hindu can become the prime minister of uh, uk why can't a muslim woman become a prime minister of india a hijabi woman can become a prime minister of india inshallah taala we have faith in the constitution we live in democracy and anything can happen tomorrow she might become prime minister hmm. so what wrong did we say and that day india will be declared truly secular the day a muslim prime minister is made in the country but what has the bjp done there are so many states where the bjp is in power show me from data available to you before the country hmm. how many ladies women they have given the uh, post how they don't even give tickets to muslim women to contest the elections okay. they don't even give forget about muslim women even muslim men are not given any okay. opportunity uh, to contest the elections so how do we and how can they talk about secular before i bring in shantanu gupta i i will remind you of the data that i actually have of mim women representation you have not given a place of yes. pride to the women in your party and telangana 2018 assembly polls you contested eight seats one seven seats women candidates zero bihar 2020 assembly polls contested 20 seats women candidates uh 0% 1 5 all male maharashtra 2019 assembly polls contested 44 seats uttar pradesh uh 2022 assembly polls contested 95 seats women candidates 5 my my point la, you know and the lok sabha elections 2019 you contested 3 women candidate 0 1 2 seats this is also a data that that is before you so shouldn't you practice what you preach well yeah kindly i look into the data also i'll speak about maharashtra maharashtra we have a muslim president lady of maharashtra in mumbai we have a lady president she is a uh, lady for mim we just now we are contesting elections in gujarat for the first time the ml elections uh, upcoming hmm. we have declared till now only four seats out of that four seats the first seat which our party president asad always declared was of a lady she is a dalit uh, lady our dalit sister from amdavar dani limda and she is campaigning it kindly see the crowd which she is gathering the muslims dalits hindus gujaratis everybody is accompanying her not only women but men are accompanying her so out of three seats declared till now when the gujarat election is yet to be declared we have already given ticket okay. to one of our Sha- sisters Shantanu, and let the coming Shantanu, days Shantanu. we have we have got corporators we have got corporators from other community as well in our party Shantanu, so you cannot you know just point, say that show me okay. from the bjp how many women so have they if, given if the, if if the mim is making the point that the real inclusive diverse india would be a hijabi prime minister that can be given a thought by various political parties why object to it and call it communal i think nobody is objecting to it i think it sounds like 
uh, utter frustration of a Hindu becoming uh, uh, the Prime Minister of UK. Uh, and you already Let's have Iris Patan and Shantanu Gupta on the screen now, please. Yes, yeah, go ahead. And hmm. you've already shown, Maria, the data that how the representation of a hijabi woman in the cadres of AIM, AIMM, their MLAs, their MPs, the various can candidates. And Varis Patan has given some extra examples, one hair, two hair, <laughs> that doesn't mean the, uh, woman representation. Why didn't from tomorrow? If you want to walk the talk tomorrow, from a, instead of Sadhudin Oweisi, someone else, a hijabi woman should be the president, right? And then only he can talk about someone becoming the, the, the prime minister, point number one. Point number two, let's not take it from Rishi Sunak, he's not become the prime minister of UK because only he's a Hindu, because only he's uh, uh, wearing Kalava, he's a second generation uh, Brit. He went to best of the schools, he fought hard, he's an MP from there, and he lost, in fact, a month back, and now finally the Tory MPs elected him. So don't 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 take it from from merit that because he's a Hindu, because he's a he's a Dalit, because he's a Muslim. I think come out of this, come up. I think Narendra Modi has shown meritocracy from last seven years. Try to live in the era of merit meritocracy. It's a very different era. Okay, okay. Val Varis Patan. But did we ever thought that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will become a Prime Minister someday of the country? Just eight years back, we nobody knew. We were having Advani ji. Now they have sidelined him. But Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of the country. And why can't why can't a woman become the Prime Minister of this country? Why can't a Muslim woman become a Prime Minister? Why can't she become the Chief Minister? Is there any embargo to that? No, nothing. They can. But the target of the BJP is always to see that the Muslims are kept back. There is a war created. There is a war waged by the BJP against the Muslim. Take it from hijab. Take it on madrasa. Talk about the prayers. Hey, everything the, it is against the Muslim. Even the food habits. We want to eat halal food. They are objecting to that. Not only that, even the festivals are objected to. Even See, if Garba is played, Ram Lila is played on airports, we have no objection. You can play, it's a festival time. But if a Muslim man offers namaz anywhere in the corner of an airport or a station, there will be a fire against him, police will question him and so many things will go against him. Well, so why, why they are trying to destroy the secularism of our great nation? That is why we say that the BJP is killing, they are destroying the diversity of our great nation. No, no, but, they but are but not following the constitution. I am just looking at what, what kind of analogies that are being drawn in the point point first place. If if something has happened in uh, UK, just look at what we have achieved in India. The f third president of India was who? Zakir Hussain. We have had a minority, yes, a, you know, I... minority prime minister for ten years, a Sikh prime minister for ten years. We mm -hmm. have had a long list of constitutional heads who have been my, from the minority community. Why can't that be appreciated? Rather than giving this kind of spin, Varis Patan. See, the appreciation that what I said the day India will become fully secular when they appoint a Muslim prime minister of the country. That day we will say that yes, the secularism, pluralism but is still presidents, existing, but Vakrindin, I don't think so Ali Hamad, all of BJP them have been. era such kind of thing could happen. Yani Zail Singh from the Sikh community. They, they are president. I am talking about... You show me from data available yes, at your Muhammad end. Yes, Muhammad Hadaytullah, the... Many, the Women's. You had a Forget former chief justice Muslims. as well. How many Muslims during the BJP era, how many women have been given portfolios? Forget about it. How many ministers are there today, Muslims in the BJP government, in the cabinet? Hmm. None. After Mukhtar Abbas, Nakhivan, nobody is there. Shanawad Hussain is nowhere to be seen. So they don't want the Muslim representation. How do they succeed? So okay. we are the minority, largest minority. We live in democracy. We have a right. We have a okay. right to become prime okay. minister. We have okay. a right uh, to become uh, chief Dr. minister. Dr. Zina Shakatali, how are you looking at this push, by, this push by this push by MIM? quite surprised that you know when this question of uh, a prime minister for the country is raised the first thing is that the most popular leader there's an election and whoever is elected as the most popular leader as the most well-known leader it becomes the prime minister of a country hmm. now any woman can uh, opt for that post whether she is a muslim woman whether she is a dalit woman whether she is a christian woman whoever it is can contest that post there is absolutely no denying it but what surprises me is that the qualification of a prime minister which should be uh, you know which should be meritocracy which should be which should be uh, you know professionalism which should be expertise which should be competence should be qualification these are the requisites hmm. you make hijab a requisite that is what is surprising me okay had uh, you know uh, I, I was quite surprised that of course a, a woman can contest of course a muslim woman can contest and she would be very welcome 
to be the prime minister of this country because we are a, a, a you know a multicultural nation and nobody has to give us any examples or any lessons in that we are the oldest in the field here but the you know, the surprising part of it is that when you say that she has to be hijab clad and you make that into a prerequisite that is surprising what should be your prerequisite is her education is her you know is is her clarity is okay her vice president did her, did her, did uh, the party go yes, too far in saying yes, hijab clad it could have been just a muslim woman or just Absolutely. a woman argument the, the whole point is that you know why do you well, make hijab well, well just people? now Yeah. There are Muslim women cutting across uh, India. Well, just all now, over. Zina Shaukat yes, Ali was. Uh, to congratulate. Just, may I make my point, Madam? Please. Madam, if you lower her feather, I will be able to make my point, Mari. Otherwise. Yes. I I think that is extremely important. Well, well, But well, Madam. You know, a hijab-clad Muslim woman that is very surprising hmm. because uh, you know that is not a prerequisite. The prerequisite. Okay, fine, is, fine. You have made your point, ma'am. You have made your point. Yes, Varis Patan, quickly. Yes. Well, well, just now I was listening to what Zina Shaukat Ali was saying. She was speaking about the qualification. There has to be a qualification. Now, may I ask her what is the qualification of our present Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi? We don't know his degree also. And what problem does she has for hijab? If a hijab wearing woman, we say Modi said, "Beti bachao, beti padao." That time we said that our daughters wants to study, but you don't allow them to study. Uh, we want our daughter to have in one hand a computer, a laptop; in other hand, she should have a Quran and all. Head, she must wear a hijab, and one day she becomes a good lawyer, doctor, engineer. Then why not become a prime minister of the great nation India? What stops? What prevents? Why? Why is the problem with the hijab? Hijab is just covering of the head. We have not hiding our brains. The brain is acting; it is only hiding the head. If she will become prime minister, Muslim representation. You are talking about. You show me what is the Muslim representation in the BJP state uh, era. Okay, what is, how many Muslims Gupta, have they this question of Muslim how many representation? Have they made? How many is the BJP finding it difficult to, to explain? To contest elections. See, every party put candidate based on their availability. I think same similar question should be asked: How many Buddhists? How many Jains? How many Sikhs? Every party, including AIMM, make to contest, right? uh what uh, is he saying that uh, indian india will become completely secular when a hijab wearing female with the will become the prime minister with the same logic aimm aimim will become fully secular when a hindu female become the president of aimm what kind of logic is that let's talk merit if the person is popular if the person is what popular kind of people, logic is that here yeah. yeah. i'm talking about the country you are talking about my party he can be the prime minister india india has never stopped anyone did, did, did with did i say Beat Maria Shakil, beat Azim Hasan Premji, beat beat uh, Muhammad Azharuddin. Someone who is married always reached in top in India. So I think India doesn't have a problem. Yeah, Varis Patan, his Akas want to create a sensation or want to come on TV debates. I think that's their claim to fame in every TV debate. That's all. Varis Patan, I'll give you the final words. Please go ahead. Well, these are nothing but conjectures and surmises they are coming up with. We say that I did not say that from our party. We say a hijab wearing Muslim woman from our country she will become the prime minister. Did anybody expected that Rishi Sunak will become the prime minister of Britain? No. Prime Minister, ask, ask, ask. Our, I don't know. You forget. You forget about it. Our party has got woman representations. Enough woman representation better than the other parties. Start from your home house. Charity. Our party have got. a huge number of muslim women representation as well as other uh, from our sisters it, it, also it, hindu sisters also we gave right, ticket to seven hindu sisters in amdavad to contest election in gujarat out of that four of them won the election see barely bit i was silent when you were making your point i know truth is bitter but you will have to listen don't just make a statement to come see i was very quiet and silent when you were making your foolish submissions okay, okay i was okay. very quiet and silent when shantanu was making his foolish submissions but when i am making some 30 points, seconds just try to interject because Paris, i know the truth is Paris, bitter Paris, Paris, 30 seconds quickly to i have truth. to move on to the next issue yes 30 seconds ha uh, quickly well, well i well i am making a simple point that what we have what we need to say that huh. in india we live in democracy follow the constitution okay. and one day a muslim woman wearing hijab can become the prime All minister right. of the Varish country all right varish patan dr zina shaukat ali and shantanu gupta thank you so much for joining us shifting focus to debate 2 as the rupee continues to slide delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal has made a unique pitch to the central government he wants the center to introduce currency notes with lord ganesh and goddess lakshmi is image along with mahatma gandhi giving the example of the indonesian rupiah which boasts the 
image of Lord Ganesh, Kejriwal said the move will help the economy recover and end its continuous decline. While calling the proposal laughable, the BJP has hit back at the Ahmadi Party calling Kejriwal a Chunavi Hindu, accusing him of making the pitch just for the elections, namely the fight in Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh. The BJP has accused him of trying to shed his Aurangzebi image, accusing him of trying to send Hindus to jail for bursting crackers on Diwali. The Ahmadi Party has stuck to its stand, calling the Delhi Chief Minister a true bhak. But is, is this nothing more than an election gimmick by a party trying to expand its political footprint? भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो वैसे ही रहनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी तरफ श्री गणेश जी की और श्री लक्ष्मी जी की तस्वीर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर लगाई जा रही है जिस प्रकार से यू टर्न किया जाता है आज ही हमारे सामने पूर्णतः उतर के आ रहा है जनता उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा ये तो एक फेस सेविंग प्रोग्राम है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी क्योंकि इन लोगों ने इतना गाली दिलवा दिया है अपने मंत्रियों से अपने गुजरात प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से हिंदू देवी देवताओं को कि अब इनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि हम कौन सा चेहरा लेके जनता के बीच में जाए मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है हम तो आस्तिक लोग हैं हम ये मानते हैं कि भगवान के आशीर्वाद के बिना बड़ा काम तो छोड़िए कोई छोटा काम भी सफल नहीं हो सकता And joining me now, Shahzad Poonawala, national spokesperson of the BJP, Priyanka Kakkar, Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson. Priyanka, the Indonesian rupaya that Kejriwal talked about is doing very badly. And the Ganesh photo on it hasn't helped arrest its slide. So why bank on superstition? Maria, good evening to all of you. But before I begin this, Maria, I, I am not sure if I can debate with Shahzad Ji since his own party MP has asked that inka bahishkar kiya jaye. Either he calls up his MP and seeks permission before he sits before me in the debate and then we can proceed. This is very confusing for me. I'll uh, create, help you resolve your confusion. Karna ah, hai, Shaz, Priyanka, Priyanka ji, aapka sawaal samaj gaya. Aap sawaal ka uttar bhi le li jiye. Parvesh Varma ji ne to kisi samudai ka naam nahi liya tha. Wo to atang ki dangai aur atataiyon ka naam le rahe the. Paran tu aapne ek atatai, atang ki aur dangaiyon ko ek samudai se kaise jod liya. To mein aapatti darj karta hoon ki aapne ek samudai vishesh ko atang ki aur logon se joda hai. Dousi baat. Par mein sawaal ki ki unhone meri baat kar hi di hai. Let's put the focus back back on this discussion. Nee, nee, par iske alawa mein apna point kar loo. Fir Priyanka ji sa consolidated jawab de de. Dekhe, aaj kitna acha divas hai ki jo log kal tak orangze bhi mansikta se gra होकर पटाखों पर प्रतिबंध लगा रहे थे हिंदू पर्व पर प्रतिबंध लगा रहे थे आज ऐसा चुनावी यूटर्न किया है सियासी धर्मांतरण उसका ऐसा हुआ है कि जिस पार्टी में गोपाल इटालिया मंदिर और कथा को गाली और अपमान दे रहे थे जो मंदिर का विरोध कर रहे थे राम मंदिर का विरोध कर रहे थे कहते हुए कि नानी ने कहा है मस्जिद तोड़कर मंदिर बनाया जाना नहीं है मंदिर के बदले राम जन्मभूमि पर जो बिल्डिंग बनाने की बात कर रहे थे और जो कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के नरसंगार पर ठहाके लगा लगा कर हंस रहे थे आज वो लोग कह रहे हैं कि मां लक्ष्मी की और गणेश जी की तस्वीर होनी चाहिए नोट पर मैं स्वीकार करता हूं ये जो चरनी है मैं इसका स्वीकार करता हूं एक ही सवाल है मारिया जी ये तीन बिंदुओं पर मुझे स्पष्टीकरण दे दे कि ये जो नोट बनेगी लक्ष्मी मां और गणेश जी की तस्वीर के साथ वो किसी शराबी घोटाले और हवालाबाज घोटाले के हाथ में नहीं आएगी दूसरी जो कसाई हाथों से खून से सने हाथ होंगे जिसके और जो जानवरों को काटता है उसके हाथ में नहीं जाएगी जो भ्रष्टाचार करता है विजय नायर से मनीष सिसोदिया जैसे लोगों के उनके हाथ में नहीं जाएगी और तायर हुसैन जैसे आतंकियों के हाथ में नहीं जाएगी इसका मुझे आप गारंटी 
भी दे दीजिए और हमारा समर्थन ले लीजिए अन्यथा ये बताइए कि ये सीजनल हिंदू वाला कार्ड जैसे सीजनल फ्रूट होता है और आखिरी बात मारिया जी आखिरी बात एक आखिरी बात मैं आपको आप बड़े हिंदू होने का दावा कर रहे ना जटाटवी गलत जल प्रवाह पावित स्थले गड़े व लंब लंबितम भुजंग तुंग मालिकम ये शिव तांडव श्रोतम के पहले श्लोक की दो लाइन है आगे की आप कंप्लीट कर लीजिए मुझसे बड़े हिंदू है ना आप बताइए प्रियंका प्रियंका चलिए सवाल का जवाब दीजिए आपका बहिष्कार करना है आपके साथ आपको ऑब्जेक्शन है इस बात से जवाब दे देता हूँ मैंने तो कहा मुझे कतई अब आपका सवाल मैंने ले लिया है मारिया जी मैं जवाब दे दू मुझे कतई कोई ऑब्जेक्शन नहीं आप मुझे केवल इतना गारंटी दे दो कि ये माँ लक्ष्मी और गणेश जी वाली नोट शराब माफिया विजय नायर मनीष सिसोदिया के हाथ नहीं आएगी कसाई नहीं। जिनके हाथ में खून सते हुए हैं गौ माता के खून से उनके हाथ नहीं आएगी तायर हुसैन जैसे दंगाइयों के हाथ नहीं आएगी इसका गारंटी मुझे दे दीजिए ना यस 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 प्रियंका प्रियंका प्रियंकांडरस्टैंड दिस वर्बल आपको नहीं समझेगा हिंदी हिंदी कंफर्टेबल है तो इंग्लिश में बोल दो नहीं प्रियंका टू स्पीक नाउ प्रियंका इज दिस इज दिस इज दिस नॉट एन इलेक्शन स्टंट आर यू नॉट प्लेइंग द हिंदुत्व कार्ड बिफोर द ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट गुजरात इलेक्शन कम इलेक्शन यू डिसाइड टू टर्न हिंदू Maria, I'll attempt answering, but it is very confusing for me that I have to sit before a person who has to be forced to vote, and then he is talking about he has some uh, he is putting some conditions attached. That if we do this, we don't have a problem. What is the problem with Lakshmi and Ganesh? What is the problem? It is also put on the petals. It is also put on the currency notes. It will be a good start. You have put on the status quo. You have put on the status quo. पच्चीस हजार कमाने पे आप टॉप टेन परसेंट में आते हैं कंट्री के अगर ब्लेसिंग्स ले लेंगे भगवान जी की तो उसमें आपको कंडीशंस क्यों लगानी है ठीक है मैं इसका जवाब देता हूँ नहीं नहीं बट 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 नो नो बट चर्चा होने दीजिए ना मैं इसका सीधा आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट सम फैक्ट्स बिफोर वी मूव ऑन द इंडोनेशियन रुपया वन यूएस डॉलर इक्वल्स टू फिफ्टीन इंडोनेशियन रुपया One Indian rupee equals to one hundred and eighty-nine point four eight Indonesian rupiah. If anything, the rupiah, the Indonesian currency, is tumbling. That is the truth. And are you saying our currency is strengthening? I mean, it's a very, it's a demand that we are saying that why don't you put these pictures? Because we believe that these, the, the Lakshmi ji and Ganesh ji, symbolize wealth and prosperity. And right now we need blessings. We we want to start this work with the blessings, auspicious blessings of accords. ठीक है, मारिया मैं जवाब दे दूँ. देखिए, एक तो गजब की बात है. Look at what you want. मारिया अभी एक-एक करके आपके debate में मैंने इनके बीच में नहीं बोला. मैं अपनी बात रख सकता हूँ. मारिया जी, क्या मैं अपनी बात रख सकता हूँ? मैं आपसे अनुमति चाहता हूँ. Can I speak, Maria, yes, without being interrupted? It's very tough for Maria, me to take. Maria, I, I can't this. be interrupted. Take you you'll seriously. have to tell her to pipe down. Let me speak. Take you seriously, how can I? Maria, this is not. Yeah, the... no, Priyanka, Priyanka, Priyanka. Please let's put focus on this discussion. Let me come in. This entire I debate, I Priyanka, Priyanka, has Maria, been in fact started, started, Maria, started by the Amani Party chief. Mr. Arvind Kejriwal was the one who started this discussion with his press conference today. So you should be able to just listen to all the responses that are coming. I can give all the responses. No, Maria, no. Let me come in. She's spoken her turn. It's my turn. Let me. Speak. Maria, you'll have to ask quite, them to now step in. It's yes, quite please. disturbing to okay. me because we're going to bahishkar. Okay, now, chale. now all we are saying Maria, this is, is my opportunity. The, the time of the debate is running yes. out. Yes. Okay. Maria, share that quickly. Yes. Now, two, three points. Let's address Haan. them very quickly. First of all, I am saying that I have no objection to this idea at all. But because we revere Ma Lakshmi, no uh, please, uh, Maria. No riders. Maria, this the debate won't, okay. audience okay. won't be able to hear. Okay. 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 Can you please ask your technical yes, team to please, allow no, one no, one at no, a time? Yes, please. No, Shahzad, make your point. Shahzad, make your point. How do I make my point if she's interrupting? Yes, Shahzad. I did yes. not interrupt anyone. Yes, 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 yes. May I make my point without yes, being interrupted? Yes, please go ahead. Hmm. Because we revere Ma Lakshmi and Ganesh ji, I spoke to a large number of religious people. 
पीपल टूडे एंड दे टोल्ड मी बेटा आप जब डिबेट में जाओगे तो इस केजरीवाल को बोलना कि माँ लक्ष्मी की तस्वीर नोट तो गल जाती है फट जाती है टूट जाती है कहीं और लग जाती है उसको किस प्रकार से चोरी के लोग यूज करते हैं टेररिस्ट यूज करते हैं हम नहीं चाहते हमारी माँ लक्ष्मी का इस्तेमाल ऐसे हो तो केजरीवाल से पहले गारंटी ले लेना तो मैं उनकी बात कन्वे कर रहा हूँ दूसरी बात इतना ही इनको अगर लक्ष्मी माँ का आशीर्वाद चाहिए तो अपने दफ्तर में सरकारी पीछे लगा देना माँ लक्ष्मी की तस्वीर जिसमें कि वो कमल के वाहन पर बैठी हुई है और हाथ में कमल लेकर बैठी हुई है आपको किसने रोका है पर जब मौका मिला सरकार में तो पहला निर्णय क्या लिया मौलानाओं की पगार बढ़ानी है दूसरा निर्णय क्या किया धन मन धर्म समर्पित है किसको वक्फ को और तीसरा निर्णय क्या लिया कि राम मंदिर में कतई नहीं जाना क्योंकि मंदिर क्यों बना है मस्जिद तोड़ के बना है और चौथा निर्णय क्या लिया गोपाल इटालिया को गुजरात का चेहरा बनाया जिसने कहा कथा और मंदिर जो है वो शोषण के अड्डे अब ये सही मायनों में हिंदुत्व के इतने बड़े ये प्रकारक और प्रवर्तक है तो बताइए कि गोपाल इटालिया पे क्या कार्रवाई करेंगे राजेंद्र पाल ने कहा विष्णु ब्रह्म महेश का कोई अस्तित्व नहीं अब वो कह रहे हैं कि लक्ष्मी जी को अब नोट पर डाले अरे भाई पहले बताइए कि उनको क्या पार्टी से निकाला है अरे मनीष सिसोदिया ने कहा कि राम मंदिर बनाना नहीं उसके जगह पर आप बना दीजिए कोई बिल्डिंग बताइए उस पर क्या कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए और स्वस्तिक हिंदू विरोधी पार्टी है इन्होंने तीन सौ पचास मंदिर वाराणसी में तोड़े उसमें से एक मंदिर टू फिफ्टी ईयर ओल्ड प्राचीन मंदिर था Only to build a shopping mall. Your party has written to us, जिन्होंने आपका बहिष्कार करने को बोला है उन्होंने फिफ्थ जुलाई अभी चिट्ठी लिखी कि डेली गवर्नमेंट परमिट अस टू ब्रेक फिफ्टी थ्री टेम्पल इन डेली इनको शायद पता नहीं होगा बहिष्कार करने के बाद आज इनको इतना बोलने में इसलिए दे रही हूँ बिकॉज आई फीलिंग सिंपथेटिक टू वर्ड हिम आपकी सिंपति मुझे नहीं चाहिए परंतु एक चीज का जवाब जरूर दे दीजिएगा प्रियंका जी इसको थोड़ा सुन के दीजिएगा और आप जरूर दीजिए जेके अपन खबर जे कैसेट गसाई गई छे अरे मतलब फालतू वा तो मा कथा मा जे हिजड़ा नी जम ताली हो पारे छे कथा में जाकर आप डैश डैश की तरह ताली मारते हैं ये गोपाल इटालियन एक एक करके भाई आप सबसे बड़े अरे भाई मारिया प्लीज मारिया मारिया मेरा समय है बोलने का मारिया प्लीज मुझे संरक्षण दीजिए मारिया यू हैव टू इंटरव्यू शी इज टॉकिंग ओवर मी लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट इट्स माय टर्न टू स्पीक मारिया लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट द टाइम इज ऑन लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट शी इज इंटरप्टेड मी ऑन एवरी टाइम यस यस शहजाद गो शी हैज इंटरप्टेड मी एवरी एवरी टाइम आई हैव टू स्पीक शी इज इंटरप्टेड मी द चैनल कैन आल्सो अलाउ वन वन एट अ टाइम चलिए 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 हाँ, मैंने अभी गोपाल इटालिया का स्टेट ये कह रहे ना हम तो बहुत बड़े फर्जी हिंदू है चलिए ठीक है हमको क्या क्या जो हिंदू मंदिर भाई मारिया ऐसे कैसे डिबेट हो सकती है मैंने उनकी बात सुनी ना मारिया आई एम बेगिंग यू फॉर माय टाइम दिस इज जस्टिस यू हैव टू गिव टू गोपाल इटालिया इटरेशन दैट मंदिर और कथा में जाने वाले शोषण करते हैं कथा में जाने वाले डैश डैश की तरह तालियां बजाते हैं ये बड़े हिंदू है हम तो नहीं है शिव तांडव श्रोतम का तो इनको एक लाइन नहीं आता वो तो पहले ही शुरुआत में साबित हो गया मैं इनसे पूछता हूं कि अरे बड़े हिंदू आप बताइए गोपाल इटालिया ने जो बोला वो हिंदू विरोधी है या हिंदुओं के पक्ष में है जो राम मंदिर के विषय में केजरीवाल ने बोला उसका स्टेटमेंट भी मैं सुना सकता हूं कि नानी ने बोला है मंदिर नहीं जाना है राम जी वहां नहीं बसते उसके विषय पर आपका क्या स्टैंड बता दीजिए और तीसरी बात जो वक्त के लिए आपने तन मन धन समर्पित किया था क्या किसी हिंदू पंडित को पांच रुपए भी दिया है आपने सरकारी कोष से इसका जवाब दे दीजिए ना क्वेश्चन ले सकता हूं 
मारिया जी मैं एक भारतीय मुसलमान हूं पर मैंने राम मंदिर के लिए चंदा दिया केजरीवाल ने कितना चंदा दिया जरा बता दीजिए चुनावी रिसीट जो चंदे की रिसीट आप चंदा चोर है अब छोड़ दीजिए अब जाइए और बहिष्कार आतंकियों का करना है आपने आतंकियों को पूरे मुस्लिम समुदाय से कैसे जोड़ा ये परवेश वर्मा जी ने नहीं पर आपने जब मुसलमानों का बहुत बड़ा अपमान किया है मुसलमान देख रहे हैं मुसलमान देख रहे हैं आपने कैसे अपमान किया है आप अपमान करते हैं उनका रोज दिन सुबह शाम ऐसी पार्टी में होकर जो आपका बहिष्कार कर आप परवेश वर्मा ने कहीं पर भी समुदाय का नाम लिया तो बता दीजिए परंतु मुझे बताइए की राम मंदिर का अपोज करना है राम मंदिर नहीं जाना है गोपाल इटालिया के बयानों पर एक वाक्य आप नहीं बोल पाए गोपाल इटालिया के अलावा स्वस्तिक की चिंता अपमान करने वाले केजरीवाल के ट्वीट पर एक वाक्य नहीं बोल पाए कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के नरसंहार पर हंसने वाले केजरीवाल पर एक वाक्य नहीं बोल पाए और आप शिव तांडव स्त्रोतम को भी कंप्लीट नहीं कर पाए जाकर पढ़ लीजिए श्लोक पढ़ लीजिए फिर आप इस सब तरीके का दावा कीजिएगा चलिए आपको बहिष्कार करना है आप केवल बीच में स्पार्क ऑफ बाई योर पार्टी चीफ प्रियंका थ्रू दैट प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस सो द क्वेश्चन दैट विल बी आज इज is this not hindutva card that you are playing keeping purely and purely gujarat elections in we mind we are Say one yes party or no we are one party which are sending our people to to buzurgon ko teerth yatra inke yahan par pm cm tax payer ke paise se jaate hain teerth yatra pe hamare yahan par tax payer ke money se hum bechte hain logo ko teerth yatra pe All right. what is that priyanka ka we are doing we are constantly and shahzad punawala we are in the studio really appreciate your time thank you so much for joining us on that note we are slipping into a short break after that I'll be getting you an exclusive interview with Lord Meghna Desai on the new team Rishi Sunak. What does it actually mean for India and for Great Britain? back united kingdom where team rishi sunak is taking shape with a mission to stabilize the economy is our next focus rishi sunak has filled the top posts in his cabinet with jeremy hunt and ben wallace continuing in their positions as chancellor of the exchequer and defense secretary james cleverly has been given the post of foreign secretary while robert jornick is immigration minister but sunak is already under fire over the reappointment of Swela Braverman as the home secretary remember she resigned over the breach of ministerial code for handling confidential information through her private email however beyond the domestic turmoil where all opinion polls cite a labor sweep if elections are announced braverman has raised an alarm in india she is known for her anti immigration politics and even said that indians overstay their visas the most she has also opposed the free trade agreement with india claiming it will increase the number of indian migrants naturally sunak is having a hard time defending her here's a look at an interaction from the parliament was his home secretary right to resign last week for a breach of security. Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, Ms. Mr. Speaker, can I thank the uh, Honourable Gentleman for, for his kind and indeed generous uh, welcome to the dispatch box. I look forward to Prime Minister's question time with him, and I know that we will have no doubt robust exchanges. But I hope that they can also be serious and grown up. So yeah. I look forward to it. Well, uh, he, it, look, he he asked uh, about the Home Secretary. The Home Secretary made an error of judgment, but she recognised that. She raised the matter and she accepted her mistake. And that's why, that's why I was delighted to welcome back into a united cabinet that brings experience and stability to the heart of government. And let me tell you, Mr Speaker, what the Home Secretary will be focused on. She'll be focused on cracking down on criminals, on defending our borders. party opposite remains soft on crime and in favor of unlimited immigration and joining me now is lord meghna desai member of the house of lords lord desai really appreciate your time you have a new prime minister in rishi sunak the process of choosing his ministers has begun 
some have been reappointed, some have been sagged. How are you looking at this new team, Rishi Sunak? Well, you know, what that means is that he is trying to maintain all the factions in the party happy because the party is very divided between different factions and different and they have to now agree at least until the election time so that the party can continue to rule in, in an orderly fashion. Otherwise, they'll have to face an election and they're not ready for that. So the first step of having a cabinet of all parts is a good, good move. Now his other problem he'll have to begin to solve. One concern is of Suela Braverman, who quit the government a few days before Liz Truss's resignation and is back in Sunak government as Home Secretary. Braverman is known to have controversial view as far as India is concerned, uh, particularly to do with Indians overstaying their visas and also regarding FTA. So what does this appointment mean for India? Well, you know, Suela Braverman is from India. She's of Indian origin. As much as uh, you know, people say Rishi Sunak, but Rishi Sunak was born here uh, in Britain. I think basically Priti Patel, who was the Home Secretary before Suela Braverman, she was also tough on immigration. But I think you have to make a distinction between people who try to arrive in UK without a visa, without a passport, as refugees and against them. What she said about Indians, the Indians, when they come to UK, overstay their welcome beyond the visa limits. That's all she pointed out. And that is not anti-Indian prejudice. That is basically a statement of fact. So I think people should give Suela Braverman a little bit more time to settle down in her job and do her job. Okay, so you are of the opinion that she should be given more time. Uh, but looking at overall immigration policies, which include visa for Indians, is the key contentious point in the FTA, uh, which India-UK had hoped to sign by this Diwali. But Indian origin Home Secretary Suela Braverman uh, is being seen as largely responsible for derailing it. The question then is, can Rishi Sunak give FTA a fresh push? Basically, one has to understand that Rishi Sunak is a British Prime Minister. He is British born. Yes, he is from an Indian ancestry, but he will not particularly favor India just because he is supposed to be Indian. He has to look after British interests. And in Britain, immigration happens to be a controversial topic. Under Preeti Patel, it caused a lot of controversy because she wanted to, uh, you know, to export all the legal so I think give Suela Braverman a bit more time, let the FTA be negotiated properly. And I think when the FTA is negotiated, India can make its demands and then UK will will respond. So I don't think people should imagine that, oh, because Rishi Sunak is uh, Indian, uh, India will have an easy ride in the FTA. No country gives another country an easy ride when it comes to FTA. FTAs are very important for both countries. And I think a little bit of patience and, and India should defend India's interest and UK will defend UK's interest. I don't think anybody should expect that Rishi Sunak will just let uh, let India walk all over. Lord Mignan Desai, uh, let's look at this team. Ben Wallace as the Secretary of Defence, Liz Truss, she, he was also in Liz Truss's cabinet. He has been retained. Penn Modern uh, has been made law, a leader of the House of Commons. Several uh, such reappointments have happened. Many are of the opinion, and I've been reading a lot of analysts who have commented on it. They are of the opinion that this, this is perhaps old wine in the new bottle. Well, as I was saying, he has to have a cabinet which is a combination of all the different factions. So people who are under uh, Boris Johnson, some of them are here. Some of the people, Boris Johnson sect are back, like Michael Gove. Some of the people who are under uh, Liz Truss are also back. He's trying to make as little change as possible so that he doesn't end up fighting the inside 
cabinet battles, but concentrates on other problems. I mean, right now, what matters is that the cabinet works harmoniously and begins to solve the really big problems we have, which are about inflation and possible recession, and of course, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, which is very, very serious, and of course, energy prices. So I think here's a lot of problems and the FTA with India is not a major issue. It will be solved, but it is not urgent. It will be solved, but it's not urgent. Uh, let me ask the final question, and this is about Suela Braverman. Uh, she had linked the riots in Leicester post-India-Pakistan match to uncontrolled migration of people from subcontinent who failed to integrate into the host country. Her views on migration has been very, very controversial. In matter of deportation, she follows the footstep of her predecessor, Preeti Patel, who wanted to deport illegal migrants to Rwanda. Uh, so what will be it now? Should, how should India be viewing uh, with her being someone who will be helming the Home Department? As I was saying before, Preeti Patel was against people who arrived on boats in the channel, pretended to be refugees, and once they arrive on British soil, they may qualify to be citizens. She wanted to stop that flow. Other immigration, which happened regularly, was going through the standard routine uh, laws. Now, Sula Brown, I, I don't know why everybody is making such a big fuss about Sula Browman, because she is new, but, but she, as, as a minister, she is of Indian origin, but she is also, like Rishi Sunak, a British person. And I think she has been good enough uh, and noticed well enough to have been made cabinet minister by two prime ministers. I think have patience with Sura Browerman. Don't, as it were, make a fuss about it. And in the FTA negotiations, these problems can be brought up in a proper technical way. Don't say, oh, Sura Browerman is against all Indians. She is not. All that she said was that some people do not obey the law mm. of the land and overstay their welcome in UK. Now, that's a per uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed, say, in US or Canada or anywhere else. So she is not saying anything which is out of, uh, out of uh, uh, the standard rules. All right, uh, Lord Meghna, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. We are putting out all those interviews on news18.com. That's all for me. Thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Welcome. You're watching Plain Speak with me, Grihatul Siddiqui. Now, citing the state of India's economy and the need to improve it, the Aam Admi Party Chief and the Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has gone on to request Prime Minister Narendra Modi to have images of Hindu deities Ganesha and Lakshmi on the Indian currency. Yes, you heard that right. Now, while his divine intervention seems to have come in at the fag end of Diwali festivities as if to counter the criticism led by the BJP on Delhi government's cracker ban, there's more to it than meets the eye. The argument that his appeal has attracted are many, from being branded bizarre to most calling out Kejriwal for taking his soft Hindutva a tad bit too far. Although, what has set the cat amongst the pigeons clearly is Kejriwal claiming in the same breath, that the Aam Admi Party is fully prepared for the municipal cooperation of Delhi polls and stressing that the people of the national capital would reject the BJP. He also challenges the BJP to cite one good work that it might have done in Gujarat where it was running a government for the last 27 years. So is this another bit to take on the BJP in Gujarat, countering it with the exact same political posturing or just another attempt by the Aam Admi Party to keep the eyeballs on it? And a last-ditch attempt, a poll stunt for votes. Let's take a look.
भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो वैसे ही रहनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी तरफ श्री गणेश जी की और श्री लक्ष्मी जी की तस्वीर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर लगाई जा रही है जिस प्रकार से यू टर्न किया जाता है आज ही हमारे सामने पूर्णतः उतर के आ रहा है जनता उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा ये तो एक फेस सेविंग प्रोग्राम है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी चूंकि इन लोगों ने इतना गाली दिलवा दिया है अपने मंत्रियों से अपने गुजरात प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से हिंदू देवी देवताओं को कि अब इनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि हम कौन सा चेहरा लेके जनता के बीच में जाएं। मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है हम तो आस्तिक लोग हम ये मानते हैं कि भगवान के आशीर्वाद के बिना बड़ा काम तो छोड़िए So what exactly is Arvind Kejriwal's divine fix for the rupee? What all has he said today? Let's break it down for our viewers uh, on exactly what is it that he is suggesting. Now, what he said is that the country will prosper if currency has images of Lord La uh, Ganesha and Lakshmi. That's the argument number one that has been presented by Kejriwal. Then he goes on to say that our efforts won't fructify if the gods are not blessing us. That's another argument. Uh, clearly playing uh, with this entire Hindutva plank that uh, is the argument by many. He also says that uh, he needs Almighty's blessings to stabilize the economy and that's what is the need of the hour when it comes to the country. Also going on to say that a Muslim nation has the picture of Lord Ganesha on its currency talking about Indonesia and that's the example that he has quoted and he has gone on to say that if Indonesia can do it being a Muslim country, why not India? Another argument, when Indonesia has the image of Ganesha on its notes, why can't we? Exactly the same thing that he went on to mention, clearly hard selling it, pushing that point a tad bit too far. So the argument against Kejriwal now is that of playing appeasement politics ahead of Gujarat polls. Now how much of water does that hold? Let's take a look at that through certain past instances and also dissecting it on the timing. Now, ahead of 2014 Lok Sabha polls, K. Jival takes a dip in the Ganges in Varanasi. This is the image of that, of course, clearly uh, riding on the Hindutva wave. Before 2020 Delhi polls, K. Jival has recited the Hanuman Chalisa and also went on to visit the Hanuman Temple. That was pretty much on record there. Then before the 2022 UP polls, Kejriwal went on to flag off the pilgrim train to Ayodhya, also calling for what he termed as Ram Raj. That's what he did before UP polls. Then in the run-up to the Gujarat elections, Kejriwal went on to pray at Somnath Temple, also vowed free pilgrimage to Ayodhya. That's something that he has also said on record. So all of this actually brings us to the big question that we ask today. Divine intervention, a pitch for economy, is it an advice or just appeasement? Let me take this question across to my guests who are joining me on the broadcast. Anuja Kapoor of the BJP joins me. Priyanka Kakkar of the Aam Aadmi Party is here with us on CNN News 18 today. Also, Mamta Kale and Sanjay Chadda, political analyst, are joining us on the broadcast. Mamta, uh, in fact, uh, Priyanka, let me begin with you. How are the gods going to be saving the economy? Griha, good evening to everyone. Good evening. Uh, it, you know, when we, we are all Indians and when we begin anything auspicious or we try, we seek blessings of our gods, we seek blessings of our elders, whether, you know, a child who's writing an exam, you will see he writes a Om or Jai Matati before the exam, whether, um, whether it is, whether when we started the schools and hospitals, we did the Bhumi Poojan. So it is something auspicious. We're not saying this is the only measure, but there's some, everyone should be united on this. I just don't understand 
the opposition, especially from BJP on the issue. And, uh, you know, even two days ago on Diwali, I think all of India would have read the Lakshmi Ganesh Ji Ki Aarti. And uh, there is the jo koi tumko dhyata riddhi siddhi dhan pata. So, I don't see where this uh, op op objection from BJP is coming. And we, we've just said, we've made a proposition. Hmm. We are writing to the PM that this be included. Why, why today, Priyanka? Why say, today? There is no, why okay, we'll do, I mean, that timing cannot be questioned. Why when should it not be questioned? Just, Everybody is questioning the timing. Well, when is a good time? Now is a good time always. Okay, okay. Let me take this across to Anuja. Anuja, how do you respond to the argument that has been made by the Aam Party? A U-turn, anti-Hindu conversion believer, anti-nationalist, ad man, self-proclaimed, direct cash collection, corrupted, one and a half state government is giving an advice to our Honorable Prime Minister who has himself brought Adjection. the economy Adjection. of India to the Priyanka fifth, to make fifth, a point. fifth largest economy in the world after, you know, after he has taken up in his tenure and 2014 before you have seen that it was on the 11th number the delhi government look at the economy of the delhi government from which he belongs he has brought delhi jal board to 28000 crore that he's brought the loan of the delhi to 38753 crore who is he talking to he has also been talking about uh, to understand the people who they are talking the, the ones who are in gujarat i think the elections have not been finished so now they are talking about before you do anything which is auspicious, you have to speak something related to goddess and goddesses. Ask Gopal Italia, ask Ajinder Pal, Bakam, what they have done. And now they're talking about, about the goddess and the goddesses. They insulted, they insulted the temples, they insulted goddess and goddesses. Anuja, they Anuja, you know, party. tell me something. There's no need to, to be this agitated. Them. We have just begun the debate. Anuja, let me, let me actually come in here. No need for the agitation. I just want to understand this one thing. If the BJP can go ahead and do it, why not the Aam Aadmi Party? If we can do it, what about Aam Aadmi Party? I don't understand. What is the question? I just what? want to understand anything which is pertaining to Hindutva, let's say, quote unquote. Why does the BJP get so rattled? I have just begun the debate. What is the need for I this agitation? Sorry, Grehaji. I am sorry to put it through. Everybody knows hmm. the, the mask face of Arvind Kejriwal what he does and how he appeases the Muslims. You know that this is again an appeasement policy. Obviously, talking about Indonesia, Muslim country who is, who is having a currency. But he's talking what about is he putting talking? gods and goddesses, Lakshmi and no, Ganesha on Indian currency. Goddesses, it can't be Muslim madam. appeasement. Okay, Priyanka wants to come in. Yes, the Priyanka. The goddess and the goddesses, okay. Priyanka, have no clue. Okay, let, let her respond then. There, let her respond. Talking about this. Okay, Priyanka, yes. About yes. Is the goddess I'll, of the I'll, goddesses I'll, on the country? Priyanka. Uh, Priyanka. You'll have to mute her. You'll have to mute her. Griha, I'm telling you the reason for her agitation is that actually. Anuja, one second. I'll give you the time, please. Let, actually, let Priyanka respond. BJP is an anti Hindu party, Jinke Mupe Nam or Ram or Bagal Mechura hai, because on 5th July this year, the central government wrote to us, Delhi government, that they want to break 53 temples in Delhi. This after they broke. 250 temples in Kashi, one of them, one of the temples in Kashi. 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 Okay, okay, Anuja, Anuja, all right, let me come in here, let me come in here, Anuja, let me come in here, let me, let me handle this, all right, Priyanka, tell me one thing, Arvind Kejriwal, an IS officer, goes ahead, makes a statement like this, when I heard it, I first thought it was borderlining on sarcasm, but clearly it isn't after the series of press conferences that have happened, justifying this very statement that has been made by the Aam Aadmi Party chief. How does the party choose to justify it at the moment? Because putting gods and goddesses on the Indian currency note cannot go ahead and save an economy. What is it that the Aam Aadmi Party is trying to do here and right ahead of the MCD polls and more importantly, the Gujarat polls? 
Kriya, we are making a request. They can do this, take the suggestion, and do it after the polls. Once let let not let's not relate it with polls. Secondly, Kriya, whether it is but the unfortunately we have to Priyanka because the 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 the, 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 the suggestion has been made before the polls. Anuja, one second. Let her respond. Anuja, please. Who are you? Anuja. Let me yeah. let me actually yeah. have Priyanka respond to my question. You. Doctors are requesting you. Let uh, let Priyanka respond to my question. Then then you can please come in, Anuja. Thank you so much. Yes, Priyanka. Thanks, Griha. Griha was saying that you know at the uh, Lord Ganesha features on the currency of Indonesia, which has an eighty five percent Muslim hmm. population. There is a in God we trust on the currency of US. And please do not relate this with the scientific temperament. Science and faith can go hand in hand. Hmm. All of us at Ahmadi Party are you know IRS officers hmm. or Ivy League graduates or hmm. Oxford graduates. But we all have a faith and we all believe in it. So there is no. It's it's just seeking blessings. And what? Why is she so agitated? Okay, I let's con not consider. Her. I I am asking you a question. You can just respond to me. All right. Uh, you know when we talk about the state of Gujarat, since I mentioned and I put that question to you, now the Hindu vote bank and I'm reading out of a data is 88.57 percent of the electorate. Do you think that appeasement charge that the BJP is leveling or the other opposition parties are leveling at the Aam Aadmi Party? Is not something that holds any water because clearly before the Gujarat elections, this is something that the Aam Aadmi Party has chosen to do after that massive dis defeat in 2017, where you lost yeah. in all the seats in Gujarat. Priya, we can look this as in isolation, hmm. but please look at the larger picture. Aam Aadmi Party is the only party in the country which uses the taxpayers' money and sends them even on Tir Thiyatras. You know, in other parties, the CMs and the PMs they go go on Tir Thiyatras on the taxpayers' money. Hmm. Hmm. We are the only and party which abuse, has been doing. And abuse and insult goddess and goddesses and send them to Tir Thiyatras. Madam, look at the face of. Please, Madam, everybody, you look at the face broke temple. Right you now. broke okay. temple. All right, let God. me let me bring in Miss Mamta Kale here. Miss Mamta. Miss Miss Mamta Kale, what do you make of what do you make of this suggestion that has been made by the Aam Aadmi Party chief, Mamta? Yeah. So first of all, thank you so much for having me on your show, and uh, a very happy Bhaiya Dooj to everyone. And hello and good evening to all my fellow uh, panelists. Coming back to your question, what do I make of this uh, statement of Mr. Arvind Kejriwal? It is nothing but. Vigyapan Rajniti once again. You know, we all know that he is hell bent to get at least one seat in Gujarat, which he is not getting. Hmm. So now I have a serious objection of playing dirty politics of using Hindu Sanatan Dharm by Arvind Kejriwal for his Rajniti. Hmm. You know, I am a staunch uh, Hindu, a practicing Sanatani, and I am not going to accept it. Come what may, that Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, who I call very openly, clearly, a Rajnatic or Barsati Hindu, you know, he 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 goes and uses our deities for his uh, political uh, gains. I would have been very happy had he uh, been, you know, writing letters to Honorable Prime Minister of India and requesting him to give more Aishman Bharat Yojana to Delhi. Hmm. he hasn't uh, uh, implemented that ayushman bharat yojana in delhi but he won't do all of this you tell me he is the same arvind kejriwal just now uh, the spokesperson of aam um, aadmi party was uh, saying mu mein ram bagal mein churi for bharatiya janata party oh my god this is called double standards you know he is the same same arvind kejriwal who had said hmm. that main ram mandir mein puja karne nahi jaunga they are the same Aam Aadmi Party leaders, be it Arvind Kejriwal or Manish Shisodia, who had serious and big objections to build Ram Lala's Mandir. They said, why do why don't we build a built a school or a hospital there? Hmm. We have not forgotten the cabinet minister of Delhi who had gone on record and and insulted Brahma Vishnu Mahesh in Delhi itself. One hand, you you insult our Devi Devtas. Sanatan Dharma, and on other hand, you come out with such stupid, vague uh, things. Hmm, hmm. What do you? What okay. does Mr. Arvind Kejriwal think? All right. He thinks let that me, let Sanatan bring, Dharma. Let me bring in Mr. Uh, Sanjay you know, is, is Chadda. Is there for him to use, Mr. Mr. Chadda? You know, from opposing this entire Ram Temple in Ayodhya, that's another argument that has come to fore uh, that Ms. Kale is also making to actually talking about Ram Raj. That is the political posturing shift that the Aam Aadmi Party has been constantly. Accused of? How do you respond? 
well uh, what what i have heard mamta ji and everybody here i feel certainly the timings are very important hmm. but i have a different point of view if you allow me for 2 minutes yes what i feel is uh, this uh, suggestion which has been given it is nothing to do with any religion it's a culture let us it is a symbol of our culture i feel hmm. you know in almost every mamta ji will be agreeing with me and other palanders will be agreeing with me almost in every school of this country we see saraswati vandana going on it is our culture what i feel hmm. what i you know i go back to you know obama used to keep a, uh, a picture and uh, uh, the, of uh, hanuman ji with him so let us make a consensus here everybody should agree for such kind of things which are not related to any religion but they are our culture i feel if you know indian asia this is this is this is clearly a hindu push how is it not related, uh, related to one particular religion and why suddenly only talk about lord ganesha and uh, goddess lakshmi in this case i i am just telling you hmm. just see it from a larger prospect hmm. just see it from this angle also you are seeing it that it is a hindu this thing okay. now i uh, i would say that in uh, what 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 is the answer to the question i put it hmm. i said that saraswati vandana is there and almost all of you must have sung in the schools yes we have sung it we have so the, the same way let us have that kind of culture we should not divide people uh, on this count and hmm. i really welcome if uh, if people are doing and uh, you know the hindu this thing all the political parties where is the harm in it okay. let us have uh, this kind of culture across the country why we are uh, uh, opposing it i don't know right. and especially i feel bjp is opposing it because uh, because they should welcome it a uh, bjp is opposing it with the only reason because they don't, don't want that hindu thing should go to somebody else okay let me That's let me actually bring anuja here anuja you know there was a delhi high court order that actually ruled a pil that was put forth actually claiming that any sort of religious symbols embossed on the coins that are part of the indian currency should not be done however the court said that it is not unconstitutional it does not go ahead and dent the secular fabric of the country then what is the problem in this suggestion that has been made by kejriwal Griha ji, look into this. Do you see how it goes? This is Arvind Kejriwal. See, now the person who has taken a jhadu in his hand mm. and look where it is coming, and the swastik is making it run. Do you, do you think this comes in good taste? Mm. You all have also seen Gopal Italia, the way he was talking about the C word for the women, mm. and then the way he was talking about the temples, mm. and the way he was talking about goddess and goddess. I would like just like to understand that before he does all these things, his. his is his his cab is his a uh, uh, state gopal unit uh, 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 from up in gujarat hmm. that this person gopal italia he spoke hmm. then we have also seen um, uh, rajender pal we have also seen about him also talking about the goddess and goddesses in insulting him tell me how does this same government is speaking this in gujarat and Rajin the same gautam has converted to buddhism the, the, how is he uh, how is he going ahead and insulting gods you have to explain that point anuja however please respond to the question that i've asked you and then i will uh, let priyanka respond to these very questions and this argument that you are making when the court has allowed it then what is or not i'm yes. sorry it is not about constitution or not the, the thing which needs to be understood how god and goddesses um, picture on the currency hmm. um, will make it more economical and uh, will give a more of a benefit to india where india is already reaching without the goddess and the goddesses on the currency i think our work our, our, our development that needs to be taken care of instead of working on the currencies with the goddess and the goddesses okay. Okay. the problem Priyanka, is the problem is yeah. reha ji ek yes. minute the all problem right. is arvind kejriwal takes a u turn he hmm. knew that the punjab parali and all is coming up and we are posting and we are exposing him hmm. he has brought this in in right now we're talking about it so hmm. that we do not talk about his parali we do not talk about punjab we don't hmm. talk about his his failures 
this is where the problem is okay. priyanka now, please respond to this argument because this clearly this is also part of the tom timing that i was also questioning that do you think this is a preemptive measure uh, so that a bjp's counter doesn't go ahead and dent the aam aadmi party after diwali and the kind of pollution and diwali uh, ban on crackers that is going against the hindu sentiment and that's why uh, the aam aadmi party chief has gone ahead and made this argument i will griha begin with anuja's anuja ji's uh, you know observant of the c word by yogi adityanath ji also i she may have missed it then i will also say mm -hmm. that priyanka i i believe you Lakshmi, you would agree that two wrongs don't make a right no right? let me please yes. let me please finish okay yes uh, because he in that video that she talks about there was no insult to women there it was said in a different context hmm. let's not get into that it digress yeah, yeah right Uh, so uh, also one point before i get into this uh, kalaji made a, a thing about ayushman bharat we have a better policy in delhi because ayushman bharat excludes anybody with a mobile and a fridge so we we give it better health facility in delhi that is why we did opt for it what mm. second now what has happened is see goddess lakshmi and um, ganesh they represent what wealth and prosperity hmm. and it is needed we need god's blessings at this time because anuja ji probably is oblivious to a report of the economic advisor to the pm which said if today you earn 25000 rupees in india you are at the top 10% of the country hmm. let her let her make a point I, anuja yeah, ji she did not interrupt you, are, you. you no, no no anuja she didn't interrupt you losing let her make a point please 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 some sanity here yes ji so there is a this is on record this is government data which says of of which talks about the huge income disparity that india has seen today hmm. and and if you earn 25000 rupees today you are in the top 10% hmm. Hmm. when she is speaking about economy being 11th 6th whatever you know in 14 i recall we were third she doesn't even and, know hmm. uh, uh, yeah okay so um, <laughs> all hmm. we are saying is this is these are not the measures this is not the be it and so uh, be all mm. we are saying that there, there is a demand of the public mm. which our cm is raising which is not a legitimate demand which we are Who, saying who's that, who's who's demand. getting the demand please tell me who okay. has brought the demand priyanka priyanka respond Nani respond to the other the allegation who respond to the, the other who's allegation once again please anuja me. please please Respond to the other this allegation. Is something which is so it is obnoxious. happening right after Diwali. It has happened, happened right, right after the. Anuja, one second. Let me make my right question, please. Again. Let me put my question, Anuja. Some of our god garden goddesses, and they belong to such a category who are so shameless. They should understand that how things float. Yes. 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 All right, Anuja. Anuja, I think paper, you made your point. How will it matter to the economy? Let's keep it civil. Okay. Let's not understand this. Priyanka, you have still not answered my question. You've still really not answered my question. Quiet. Yeah, Anuja, please, please. Uh, if we have you, I would actually present that question to you. But let her respond to that very question that you have made. I am asking her the same thing. Anuja, please have some patience. You know, this coming right after Diwali. Do you think this is also Aam Aadmi Party's defence? This is what is the argument that the BJP is making in the wake of the criticisms that are coming to the party. right after diwali whether it is aqi or whether it is a cracker ban in delhi you will have to give me one whole minute kriha and make please. sure anuja ji does not interrupt me please please go ahead now what happens is uh, pollution although it seems like a delhi issue mm. there are experts and there are reports on record which says 80% of india suffers from toxic air it's a very serious issue mm. when it comes to delhi uh, in the past 7 years the aqi was better this time before diwali mm. and in the past 5 years the aqi was better this yeah. time after diwali mm. these are on record credible mm. data mm. now now also we have been constantly working on these issues we planted 33 33 lakh trees we've come up with a tree transplantation policy mm. we've come up with an ev policy yesterday we launched a bio uh, uh, bio energy plant in uh, uh, asia asia's largest mm. bio energy plant in sangrur so i will it will again divert the topic i can give you a lot of information on things we have done mm. and i can assure you it was the result of the aam aadmi party's measures in punjab and delhi setting up a war room the parali incident you know, reduced to one done, third riya ji let me tell her you Madam. have made money to the people you have made money to the people let you respond you and the hindu party let us see i don't this is not that it is a very poor you be a little sabhya it's 
try to keep this country. country. And yours, you, because of you, you are paying an ad. Allah give you your time. Anuja, I don't understand this one fact. She is responding to your very questions. She is responding yeah. to your very questions. And the data that she is mentioning is out there for everybody to see. The AQI yes. has improved. And that is the truth. That You cannot negate that. Let me actually put your second it question. Anuja, one second. One second. Let me handle the debate, please. No, no, no. no. I will not allow this. Anuja, I won't allow this. I, she has not interrupted you. Ma'am, please. Please have the respect for other members of the panel as well. Priyanka, the other argument is that the Aam Army Party chief has in fact gone ahead for this Hindu appeasement in the wake of the dent that has been made by leaders like Mr. Gopal Italia and Mr. Rajin Pal Gautam. How do you respond to that? Kriya, that's a false argument. Like I said, you know, it is a very well-known fact that Arvind Kejriwal ji is a very big Hanuman bhag. Everyone knows that. We hmm. also know that Arvind Kejriwal ji, which argument I made earlier, we have started this Buzurgo Ko Teer Thiyatra scheme, hmm. which no other government does to date. Hmm. So we've been constantly working at, uh, uh, we've been constantly doing this thing. And like I said, scientific, scientific temperament and faith can work together. And that is what we're doing. So we've made a suggestion. I don't see why BJP is not accepting this. Hmm. I mean, uh, Lakshmi ji and Ganesh ji are regarded as uh, symbols of wealth and prosperity. And two days ago, hum sabne padha. what is BJP's objection? Are they not satisfied by breaking 250 temples? Is is this, uh, and that's and don't play drama okay. on record. That okay. is what BJP is talking about. Don't you insult goddess and goddesses and then How are we and talking about it on the paper. All How right, Anuja. All right, Anuja, since you want to so badly come, come in. Up. One because second, Priyanka. Already high. Okay. We are already on the fifth place. We will come in in so many years. It's on the third number. We don't need goddess and goddesses on the paper. It is our heart. We pray them. What have you done? Okay, Anuja. All right, Anuja. The point that you're making, the point that you're making, and I'll go back to my earlier argument. Why does the BJP think, and this is the charge against the BJP, Anuja, I'd want you to answer this alone. Why does the BJP actually get very rattled? This was an argument that many, many people have found very bizarre. This is by the Aam Aadmi Party. BJP being so rattled, because it is borderline Hindutva, why does it happen? Is this only BJP's prerogative to actually talk about Hindutva? And considering we are also talking about elections in Gujarat, do you think you actually see Aam Aadmi Party as a credible opposition and that's why this sort of a response coming in from the BJP? I think you very well know that BJP is not trying to Hellenize Hindu or talking about it that Hindu it belongs to BJP, I'm sorry, hmm. or to RSS. Hmm. We are just talking about this that don't play a fake picture. Okay. Be what you are. If you are anti-Hindu because your acts show that okay. during I'm, I'm really Pandit afraid I'd have to leave it at that. I'm really things. sorry, Mamta so and is... Sanjay. We'll just take one final argument from Mamta and Sanjay. Just wrapping points. Quickly, please. Mamta, what do you actually make of where this is headed? Do you think this has become an indefensible argument for the Ahmadmi Party? And Sanjay, you are next. See, uh, it is absolutely sad and I take objection to it being a, being a practicing Sanatani that uh, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal has the habit of ridiculing, insulting Sanatan Dharm and using our Devi Devtas for his political game. Uh, again, he is only and completely doing the ap uh, politics of appeasement. Point okay. number one. Point number two. I just want to say one thing which Priyanka ji had mentioned just now that they don't want to implement Ayushman Bharat Yojana in Delhi because they have a better Yojana. Okay. All right. First That's of all, all, we, all right. you know, let, there let is no, no such Yojana. I really Yoshna. don't have time. Can Sanjay, I? Sanjay, appeasement politics, please respond. Uh, uh, two things. Hmm. One is, what is law says on this? I'm a lawyer, I would say it's so. Our law says that you have mentioned about that Delhi judgment, Delhi High Court judgment. Our law says that you should not insult or, uh, uh, you know, we should give respect to each and every religion. Mm -hmm. Where is a disrespect in this statement? That's okay. what my contention mm -hmm. is. No doubt about it that certainly, you know, if you see it from the uh, uh, indi individual uh, 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 person as an individual person, it's a politically motivated also. No doubt about it. I'm being very, very... Uh, candid on it. Okay. So it right. is a politically, politically motivated is the argument, uh, Priyanka, that is out there on the table. This clearly seems like a poll plank that the Aam Aadmi Party is choosing to ride on right before the Gujarat polls. Again, a direct question that I'm pointing to you. Please respond. 
Priya, we can implement this on 9th December after the There's polls no are point over. In implementation. It has been proposed. And uh, we will go on in circles if you actually choose to respond to that question in the similar fashion. Same, same way she is responding. Priya, when is a good time? Okay. Please tell me. The timing is something that I'm questioning. Why? Why was the when proposal made time? today? Why was the when proposal made? He has already set the cat amongst the pigeons. Has when, he not? When will, it, when will it not be questioned, Griha? Okay. All right. All right. We'll leave it at that. Priyanka, thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to also thank my other panelists. I'm really sorry. I am very, very short on time. But something that is coming out of this debate. Has Arvind Kejriwal actually made a proposal and in turn made an argument that probably has not been well defended by his own party. That is a question that is laid bare over here. We'd let our viewers actually deliberate on that as we shift our focus to the next debate on the broadcast. As there is no end to the full-blown war between the Kerala government and the governor, Arif Mohammad Khan. In the latest, Khan has written a letter to Pinaray Vijayan seeking action against the finance minister in the state, Mr. K. N. Balgopal. The governor alleged that Bal Gopal delivered a speech on October 19th and tried to stoke a fire of regionalism and provincialism, undermining the unity of the country. Further asking Pinaray Vijayan to take action against his minister. In no time, the Kerala chief minister wrote back to the governor saying that there is nothing democratically and constitutionally wrong in Bal Gopal's statement. In the letter, Vijayan also said that he completely backs and trusts his minister. Without mincing words, Kerala Chief Minister said that he won't be taking any action against the Finance Minister, Balagopal. Now, this latest flashpoint has a volatile backdrop. Remember, the Kerala governor had issued a show cause notice, in fact, notices to the Vice Chancellor of 11 Kerala universities claiming that their appointments will be in alleged violation of the University Grants Commission regulation. In fact, they are. That is what the claim that was made. The Raj Bhavan action also came after the Supreme Court, in fact, uh, judgment that had annulled the appointment of MS Rajeshri as the Vice Chancellor of APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University, while clearly mentioning that the UGC regulations have been adopted by Kerala in the year 2010. The court further went on to say that the search committee constituted by the state should have recommended a panel of not less than three suitable people among eminent people in the field of engineering or science to the Chancellor, but instead it sent only one name. Now, what has all this led to? There is a growing chorus to ensure chancellorship doesn't involve an overarching role in universities. This recommendation for trimming the Chancellor's power has been made by the Kerala State University Law Reforms Commission. The panel has called for divesting the Chancellor's legal powers and entrusting a university tribunal chaired by a sitting or former judge of the Supreme Court or the High Court with such authority. In fact, CNN News 18 also had an exclusive conversation with the Kerala governor on this varsity war. Let's listen in to what he had to say. Words which have been used by Honorable Supreme Court are void ab initio. From day one, your appointment is illegal. The only thing that I am doing is to uphold, apply the law as laid down by Honorable Supreme Court. Actually, out of 15 universities, 12 appointments were not only irregular in terms of UGC regulation, but they were totally illegal. Now that brings us to the big question. Now, Pinaray Vijayan government versus the governor. Who is crossing the line? And that's the question that we are putting before our panel. Tom Varakan of the BJP is joining me on the broadcast. Also joining me is Sunit Chopra, the leader of the CPIM. And also on the broadcast with us is Mr. Kanak Gupta, who is an educationalist. Mr. Gupta, I take this to you first. Where do you see education getting impacted in this war of words between the government and the governor in the state? Uh, thank you for having me as part of this discussion. Uh, well, you know, ultimately, we have to look at the student at the center of the teaching learning process. Hmm. We'd like to have the teachers uh, upskilled at our universities, our colleges and our schools. And somewhere a lot of suffering would happen to 
uh, the teachers and the students. But I'm confident that we'll come out of uh, uh, this uh, at Kerala. And I'm, I'm, I've been following the news uh, since uh, the last uh, few days. Hmm. And I'm confident there will be some resolution. 3rd of November is the date given now. Uh, by the court, hmm. uh, I am confident we'll be able to come out of it. All right, Mr. Chopra, why this blocking of the governor? Why is this continuing in Kerala? You see, the main thing we have to understand is that constitutionally, education, education is something which is both of the center and the state. It is, in fact, something that has to be worked out hmm. by the centre and the state. Hmm. But unfortunately, the governor, who is only the visitor, has go gone ahead and done this, which is a complete chaotic uh, situation that has arisen for nothing. Mr. Chopra, you, you are only underlining the, the very point that Mr. Khan is making. He doesn't to want to be a other. rubber stamp and you are just saying that it is a ceremonial position. He has to actually be the visitor, be the guest. Uh, th the point is, I am not saying whether he wants to be hmm. a rubber stamp or not a rubber stamp. You're saying that's he is? That's not up to him. Okay, alright. He uh, no, no, that's hmm. not up to him. Okay. I am saying that in fact, this is in the concurrent list. So you have to go with the constitution. Hmm. If one leg of the constitution, that is the law, hmm. kicks the other leg of the constitution, that is the constitution itself, hmm. then you are actually weakening Indian democracy in the interest of sectarian elements, which is what he is doing. Okay. Mr. Varakan, that is the argument against Mr. Arif Mohammad Khan that he's misusing his chancellorship. Please respond. Well, it's a very strange uh, situation, Greha. Hmm. Uh, essentially, because uh, all over India, it is, for the state university, the appointment is done by the chancellor. Yeah. Now, uh, the state government decides that this is going to be a recruitment center for the leftists. I think that is unfortunate hmm. and uh, the UGC norms are clear whether there it is... No thing. Let him respond. Yes. There is no uh, such thing. One second. Let, comrade, let com, com, comrade this is I'll give you, actually I'll give you time. misrepresenting give the fact. Mr. Chopra, let him respond. He has not I'll said a give... word when you were talking. Please. Yes. Uh, comrade, yes. comrade, give me the time. Give yes. me the time. Be patient. Please go ahead. Uh, now, uh, this is the norm whether it's Delhi University, State University, the Chancellor is responsible for the appointment. Hmm. Now, the issue has gone up to the Supreme right. Court. Hmm. Has gone up to the Supreme Court, comrade. It's not just uh, Kerala government. And uh, the Supreme Court has said the due processes have not been followed. Hmm. And what the governor, comrade, is saying is, my God, I am the governor here. And if I, as a Chancellor, will not uphold the law of the land, what am I doing here? Hmm. And uh, I think it is justified because it's Mr. Vadakan, let me actually yeah. bring you uh, to note this point uh, when it comes to yes. the UGC guideline. Let me read out of it. The visitor or the chancellor shall appoint the vice chancellor out of the panel of names that have been recommended by the search committee. So he has to work on the recommendation. He's not responsible for the appointment. Greha, there has to be a choice. Hmm. where a selection can be done. Hmm. I send Greha's name there is and no I say, such well, you Let know, him respond, well, please, Mr. Said. Chopra, please. Yes. I send one name. I say, say mm -hmm. take, it, take your name, uh, mm -hmm. Greha. Mm -hmm. And I send your name. I mean, the, uh, the Chancellor is left with no option. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is precisely what the Supreme Court has also said. You send the three names yeah. and a selection process can happen. This is what is happening across the country. Absolutely. And now, Mr. Chopra, please respond now. How do you take this argument? Because this clearly has been the, said by the court as well. Why, instead of more than three names, only one name being recommended? The court is only one leg of our constitution. I'm talking about the UGC guidelines. Please respond to the this first. The concurrent list hmm. is the major element of the constitution. Why only one and name, And you cannot sir? violate Why the only constitution one name? of India. And simply, why not? 
they have a, they have a law in Kerala hmm. that allows them this. Why not? Why not? And if the governor wants a certain change, hmm. let him speak to the ministers concerned. The governor is not it. wanting the change. Who it's it's it? actually mentioned and listed out in the UGC guidelines, sir. I just read it out for you. And this is what has been no, actually the announced by the, the did court. Not say that one person cannot be there. It's they did very, not say yeah, that it one said more than three. It's there. pretty much there. It's, no, it's no, underlines no, no. more than three. That's what the guidelines say. More the than three. The point is, it does. Whatever the guideline says, hmm. the governor has to go to the chief minister and discuss the matter through. Hmm. It is the duty of the governor not to have one pillar of the constitution kick another pillar so that the constitution itself falls flat. Hmm. We cannot allow democracy to die in India today. Okay, Mr. Varakkan. You know, this latest flashpoint that I began this debate with, asking for the finance minister's removal, is it taking this a tad bit too far in this war between the government and the governor? Why did the governor have to go, have to go ahead and do it? Well, Dra, let's look at it this way. When, when a minister, honorable minister, hmm. speaks against certain states, makes remarks, and uh, the governor is just to watch and uh, praise him. He has written to the chief minister. He has not acted yet. Hmm. He has written to the, uh, that he, uh, he withdraws his pleasure. Let him act. Then we can come into the... He has no, not he's acted. written back. He's written back. He's, he's written yeah. back and he said that he's not going to take any action. Ah, then, then the hmm. matter ends. Hmm. The matter ends if that is the case. Hmm. The point here is the governor is not acting. Where is the controversy? Hmm. He has made a point that the Honorable Minister went and spoke and then he has taken objection to it. He has a right as a citizen of India, hmm. he has a right as a governor hmm. to show his displeasure and that is what he has done. And why are the leftists jumping, jumping? I don't know. The comrade here will now say okay. democracy is funeral. But they are the undertakers of, these, of democracy. Hmm. The undertakers are the ones who conduct funeral. Hmm. So please tell them not to conduct uh, be an undertaker to the conduct the funeral of democracy. of democracy is being undertaken by your particular party. Okay, let me get in Mr. Kanak Gupta back. And Mr. Gupta, it Mr. Is Gupta, obvious. all right, all right, Mr. Chopra, let me actually ask this question of Mr. Gupta. Mr. Gupta, you are in education. We are talking about the derailment of education, also in a sense, in the state of Kerala. When out of 13 odd universities, 11, exactly. 11 of them, the vice chancellors of those universities, are sent a show cause by the guardian of the VCs. You know, where do you see this actually going? And when we talk about these UGC guidelines, how effective and how to the T are they actually followed by the educational institutes? So, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the UGC guidelines and, uh, you know, whatever the Supreme Court or the High Courts have directed us, uh, you know, you can you can uh, uh, express your pleasure or displeasure about it. You can, I don't think that they are wrong in any manner. Hmm. You need to follow them. I think UGC guidelines need to be followed, this, hmm. which is very important. Hmm. Governor is the chancellor of uh, the universities. And, you know, hmm. uh, governor has the power, has the authority to remove uh, vice chancellors for procedure, hmm. financial misconduct, or any gross uh, malpractice uh, that they may find. They can hmm. ask questions. They have that right to do that. Uh, from what I understand, that uh, uh, this has been... Uh, going on where the governor has asked for uh, uh, you know nomination from the state government because the state government has to give a panel that will nominate people uh, from what i understand that mm. is what the clarification is required about mm. and 3rd november is what we are looking forward to uh, the students will suffer the teachers will suffer uh, i do feel that uh, uh, education being the driver of uh, most of the things in our country we need to be a little more considerate mm. look uh, i understand that there is question mark about the short notice period but i don't know and i, I might not be completely right about mm -hmm. it also but i don't think that there are procedural problems uh, as of now but there's a question being asked about uh, the intent which i do, do not want to comment about uh, uh, this question being asked about the short notice period but i don't think procedure is a question over here okay. uh, ugc regulation is very very clear 
uh, I think uh, uh, that needs to be followed as well. Okay. So when we talk about uh, UGC regulations, Mr. Chopra, and we talk about the annulment of uh, the vice chancellorship of uh, Ms. Rajeshri in this case, that was the main point of contention between the governor and uh, the government in the I state. Know. Because here we are talking about the private secretary of uh, the chief minister of the state here. How do you actually rule out that entire argument of favoritism and these posts being given on the basis of that? It's not a question of favoritism. It's a question of a decision of a government. And therefore, the, uh, the chancellor of the universities should not have had this drama of nine people in one go, then attack on the minister. I mean, what is all this? Are we living in some banana republic? Hmm. And our, our chancellor hmm. is in fact behaving like the ruler of a banana republic. Okay. And it is tragic. Mr. Varakkan, please and respond to that. that. This he ornamental position of, of the governor. And respect the students okay. and their rights. Okay, all right. So, this ornamental position of the governor, do you think this is an attempt by Mr. Arif Muhammad Khan to actually seek more relevance, uh, relevance than just that? And because of which this flashpoint refuses to die down? Well, I think everything was honky dory till this vice chancellor's appointment. There was a the cordiality, the relation between the chief minister and the governor was worth mentioning. Whenever the governor, hmm. whenever the chief minister called on the governor, their, their equation, their body language was excellent. Hmm. Now, there is an issue that has come up. There is a Supreme Court ruling on the matter. Hmm. You expect the constitutional head of, uh, of Kerala to just say, well, you know, I have a good equation with the chief minister. I should not interfere in these matters. They want one person to be appointed, so be it. Hmm. That's not the what the constitution says. He is somebody who has to safeguard the constitution. But the going ahead and here, giving show cause notices to 11 vice chancellors is really not a step in that direction, don't you think, Mr. Varadkar? <laughs> when the situation in the 11 universities or 12 universities are the same and the procedures followed are the same, hmm. it's not the same. Expect? Okay. Okay. No yes, two universities the are the same. Do they, not they have talk only in the sent air. One, they have only sent one name. And if that is the situation, hmm. what Greha should be done? If the guardian of the constitution can't, is in, he should in call the, state. the chief minister and talk to him. Okay, I was really that hoping. I was really hoping that for the sake of education, for the sake of education, gentlemen, gentlemen, let me make this finishing argument. I was really hoping that we would be actually able to come to some sort of a consensus for the sake of education. But clearly, this flashpoint remains with the arguments that are coming to fore. We can only actually see where this goes from here on. Now that these show cause notices have been sent to the 11 vice chancellors, where does the matter really move from here on is something that only time can tell. Unfortunately, so it is the derailment of education and at the cost of the education of the very children in these universities in the state of Kerala. And it's the education of the best educated right. state. We'll, I'll uh, leave it at that. I'd like to thank all my guests for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you so much for watching uh, this debate and uh, we We'll join you on the other side as there's more on Plain Speak. Welcome back. This is Plain Speak with me, Griha. Let's now take a look at some of the other top 10 stories doing the rounds all across the country and the world now. An argument over parking space in Ghaziabad led to a roadside murder of a 35-year-old man last night. The bone chilling video of the crime has now gone viral on social media. Delhi LG has allowed holding Chhat Puja at designated ghats on the Yamuna and urged Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to ensure clean ghats and water for devotees. Congress President Malikarjun Kharge took charge as the Congress President today 
and Karge defeated Congress MP Shashi Taru by securing over 7,897 votes in the Congress presidential election race. He is, remember, the first non-Gandhi leader in 24 years to assume office. Amid the ongoing political controversy regarding India origin, Rishi Sunak taking on the role of uh, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Obesi now has expressed his wish of a hijab-clad girl to become the Indian Prime Minister one day. Meanwhile, the BJP has hit back at Obesi saying that he should first make hijab-wearing girl the president of his own party. A new face-off has erupted between the BJP and the Trinamool Congress over NCC funds. BJP has slammed the Mamta-led government, saying that the TMC chief is ruining institutions and destroying careers of the young. Meanwhile, the TMC has hit back, saying that BJP should not be bothered about funds and the centre should release money on various schemes that they have withheld so far. Security forces foiled an infiltration bid by terrorists along the line of control in the Kupwara district in Jammu and Kashmir. Armed forces killed one foreign terrorist during this operation. There was an exchange of fire between two sides at the Sutpora in Karna sector along the line of control. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has recommended a probe in the Coimbatore cylinder blast case. This decision has come after the Tamil Nadu BJP chief Anamalai had accused the state government of not taking any actions against the alleged terrorist attack in Coimbatore. Stalin, remember, has sent a letter to the NIA to ensure the safety of the state during the investigation. Ireland beat England by five runs in a rain-affected game in Melbourne. After 11 years, Ireland again upset England by a famous victory today. Ireland, in fact, set a target of 158 runs in reply. England were reduced to 105 for the fall of five wickets when the rain interrupted the match. Sports brand Adidas has terminated its partnership with rapper Kanye West, who's popularly known as Ye now, over his anti-Semitic comments. This move is estimated to impact its bottom line by $246 million. The company, in fact, put uh, a strong message saying that they shall not tolerate any form of hate speech being propagated and that West's recent actions have been highly unacceptable, hateful and dangerous, also violating the company's policies of inclusion. As Russia continues its invasion in Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin oversaw annual nuclear exercises by Russia's strategic nuclear forces. Ballistic and cruise missiles were launched in Far East and Arctic, the Kremlin Gore went on to say. Now today is the 40th day after Iran's Masa Amini's death and tens of thousands of protesters have staged a walk towards her gravesite after the government, in fact, shut all the roads in Sahez, which is Amini's hometown. As we say goodbye tonight, we are leaving you with these visuals. Good evening, this is Brass Tax, I'm Zakhar Jacob. The Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival is a rather novel way of dealing with the falling rupee. He's made a suggestion to the Indian government and to the Prime Minister to have the images of Goddess Lakshmi and God Ganesha along with the images of Mahatma Gandhi on the Indian currency notes. His justification is that a country like Indonesia, which has less than 5% of its population as Hindu, has done so with its currency notes having the images of Goddess Lakshmi and God Ganesha. Of course, Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth, but the fact remains that all currency, and particularly in Asia, the Indonesian rupiah and the Indian rupee, 
have been doing badly against the dollar. Both have fallen 9 and 10% respectively since the beginning of this year. Now, the question is, will having pictures of gods and goddesses on currency notes actually flip the economic story of India? Or is this just Arvind Kejriwal's attempt to try and beat the BJP by outflanking it from the right? Remember, all of this is happening before the Gujarat elections where the AAP claims it's making a serious attempt to give an alternative to the electorate of Gujarat between 35-40 years of having to choose between the BJP and the Congress. So, is this Mr. K. Jriwal's attempt to try and outflank the BJP from the right? Because he believes in a state like Gujarat, you can't beat it from the left. If the currency is on the Gandhi ji ki tasveer hai wo as it is rahe dusri taraf agar lakshmi ji ki aur ganesh ji ki tasveer hogi to isse pure desh ko unka aashirwad milega that's the advice put forward by aap convener and delhi chief minister arvind kejriwal to reverse the fall of the rupee he has appealed to the prime minister to print new currency with the images of goddess lakshmi and lord ganesh on the notes बहुत सारे एफर्ट्स करने की जरूरत है लेकिन वो एफर्ट्स तब फलीभूत होते हैं जब देवी देवताओं का आशीर्वाद होता है केजरीवाल साइटेड द एग्जांपल ऑफ इंडोनेशिया व्हिच हैज लॉर्ड गणेशस इमेज प्रिंटेड ऑन द 20000 रुपया नोट अगर इंडोनेशिया कर सकता है इंडोनेशिया ने भी श्री गणेश जी को चुना तो हम हम भी कर सकते हैं हमारे देश में भी हो सकता है अभी जो नोट्स हैं वो एज इट इज रहे हैं लेकिन जो हर महीने फ्रेश नोट छपते हैं वो फ्रेश नोट्स के ऊपर The BJP accused Kejriwal of appeasement politics in the run-up to elections in Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh. उस वीडियो को देखें जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा क्योंकि उस राम मंदिर में पूजा जो है वो भगवान प्राप्त नहीं करेंगे। अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने यूटर्न लिया है। ये वही अरविंद केजरीवाल जी है। जिनके बहुत सारे मीम जिनके बहुत सारे हिंदू विरोधी फोटो प्रसिद्ध हैं उनके ट्वीट में जो इंसान कभी कहता था मेरी नानी कहती है अयोध्या में राम मंदिर नहीं बनना चाहिए वहां अस्पताल बनना चाहिए मेरा राम लाला वहां नहीं रहेगा जो कभी स्वास्तिक पवित्र निशान के पीछे झाड़ू वाली फोटो लगाकर दौड़ा रहा था स्वास्तिक के पवित्र निशान को दीपावली पे अगर कोई गणेश जी को लक्ष्मी जी की पूजा करेगा पटाखे चलाएगा इनको मानेगा तो जेल में डाल दूंगा गुजरात के लोगों ने क्या पटाया उसको क्या उसके मुंह के ऊपर चांटे लगाए उसको अपनी राजनीति से धर्म की मजबूरी समझ में आ गई फेसिंग फ्लैग आप ट्राई टू टर्न द टेबल्स ऑन द बीजेपी मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है आज मुख्यमंत्री जी ने एक विचार ये रखा है और भाजपा सुबह से इसके विरोध पे उतरी हुई है मुझको समझ में नहीं आता इनको इतनी प्रॉब्लम क्या है इतनी चिड़ क्यों है इन रीसेंट इयर्स केजरीवाल हैज नॉट शाइड अवे फ्रॉम वेयरिंग हिज रिलीजन ऑन हिज स्लीव वेदर इट वाज चांटिंग द हनुमान चालीसा और कॉलिंग फॉर अ राम राज्य एंड गोइंग ऑन टेंपल रन्स But is his divine intervention fix for the falling rupee simply an election stunt? All right, is this an election stunt? Uh, joining us on the talking point, R.P. Singh is BJP national spokesperson. Vivek Bansal of the Congress Party joining us. Siddharth Sharma is spokesperson of the Amadmi Party. Dushyant Sridhar, Vedic scholar, and uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, sophologist, will also be joining us. Siddharth Sharma, let me start with you first. Is this not a plain election stunt? Please explain to our viewers. How having the pictures of Goddess Lakshmi and uh, Lord Ganesha is going to actually help the Indian rupee get strength against the dollar? After all, all currencies, almost all currencies in the world, are losing against the dollar since 2022 began. Uh, yeah, Zaka, very happy Deepavali to everyone, all the viewers of CNN News 18. Uh, uh, the point here is that. Uh, the bjp uh, i'll start with a little bit of a satire the bjp which revels itself in body line bowling it should not shy away it should not it should be brave enough to face a few bouncers on its own that said in satire the serious point is that 
we don't understand why the BJP today is going against Lord Ganesha and uh, Goddess Lakshmi. Because what we are asking, it's just an appeal from Arvind Kejriwal. And when you say it's an election stunt, it is not an election stunt because the BJP can always say that all, okay, we are not, we are not asking it to be done tomorrow. They can always go ahead and do it after the Gujarat elections, uh, election results are declared. The point here is that the BJP, which speaks uh, itself about cultural nationalism, Mm. And we are speaking today about Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi, who are also cultural icons across India. We are just asking, and we, in fact, we are not asking, we are appealing to the Prime Minister that these motives can be etched in the currency of no, India. No, Mr. That's Sharma, uh, I'll go to R.P. Singh in a second, but please explain to our viewers how having the uh, symbols or emblems of gods and goddesses is going to strengthen the Indian currency. The Indian currency has fallen almost 10% uh, to the dollar compared yes. to where, where it was at the start of this year. The, just this, this year alone in the last 10 months, the Indian rupee has fallen almost 10% to the US dollar. How will having Ganesha or Lakshmi or any gods and goddesses on the currency help save that? Yes, uh, very nice of uh, Zaka to accept that the Indian rupee is falling against the dollar. And the falling rupee against the dollar has to be arrested by the government through its yes. policies. Yes. Obviously, the government's policies are failing. That's what you're saying. When the government's policies are failing, what do we do as a last resort? We ask for the blessings of the uh, supernatural. That's what we are asking for. That these supernatural powers like Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi are being revered across India, not just in India, across South Asia and many countries, including Netherlands and uh, West Indies in south america so these are gods which 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 uh, spiritual gods which help people come out of their problems and as you very okay. rightly said for the first time i think uh, cnn news 18 and the bjp is accepting that the dollar is for uh, rupee is falling no no let, let's ask rp singh that because the, the finance dollar. minister say, uh, says she has a different take on it she says the rupee is not falling it's actually fallen less compared to other currencies, the dollar is strengthening, that's right? That, yeah, that, that's her take. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I want, oh, no, no, one second. I want to ask R.P. Singh, no, no, I mean, one second, ma'am, uh, sir, sir, sir. I want to ask R.P. Singh, fact of the matter is, R.P. Singh, that uh, Aam Aadmi Party is saying, BJP is today rattled because for the first time in the last eight years, a political party in this country is attacking the BJP from the right. All of the attacks so far on the BJP have been from the left, from Congress Party, RJD, Samajwadi Party, all, all our opposition parties are trying to attack the BJP from the left. This is the first time that here is a party who is trying to prove there is more Hindu than the BJP. Therefore, the BJP is rattled. Jawab dijiye. Well, well, Dhaka, do you think people of the country are foolish? They will accept the poor carbon copy, who is trying to be poor carbon copy than the real. The fact is that this party has been anti-Hindu throughout. I will give you two, three examples. In Delhi, sorry to say that Imams, Malvis get monthly involvement from Delhi government. Almost in 2 to 32,000 rupees per, per masjid. But a similar thing being paid to Pujaris in temple who do prachana every day, who do archana every day for Ganesh and Ganesh ji and Lakshmi ji or to the Granthis in Punjab where they are the elected government. No, it's only because they want to appease certain vote bank, they have been following their policy. Now keeping in mind the Gujarat election, especially the way they were being battered on Diwali issue uh, because they said even a six year old child if uh, burst a cracker he'll be arrested and will be sent for six months to the jail there's, and then there's so much strong social uh, reaction on that that people went ahead i'm sorry to say that people went ahead and and uh, burst crackers and they couldn't do anything but the fact is that to cover up that they they, they came up with this they had no other they had no other option they no, no, but rp singh saab rp singh saab the fact but of the, the matter concern, is can no, I, no, can no, no, complete, eight seconds. Can give me can give me ten, give me 10 seconds Fact of the matter is that uh, even in Uttar Pradesh, Maulanas and Malvis from the recognized madrasas across the state get uh, a token amount from the Sarkar every month. So it's not just the <laughs> Delhi government. Also in the case of Punjab, in the case of Delhi, wherever it is, those Gurdwaras which are uh, taking a grant or, a, or, a, or an aid from the government, are uh, they are paid some, some amount of money. Um, you can... You can always, you know, debate about how much money should be paid, what, what the, this thing is, remuneration is. But 
those those religious institutions which take aid from the government are paid a normal amount of money i'm i'm sorry jaka uh, you ask i I'll, we'll be in the debate for another 20 minutes ask your research team to search for it not a single penny goes from the state exchequer here the state pays no state government pays to religious institution uh, the priest of the religious institution or imams of the uh, religious institution this only in delhi which happens but that point aside sir 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 that's Indra not Pal true Gautam? sir sir He's sir we did a debate on mother sas yesterday pay. up government has 500 plus almost 550 plus madrasas that are recognized by the up government to whom the in fact the up government's budget for madrasas last year is 470 crores agar wo paise nahi de rahe maulvi ko to kisko de rahe wo 470 crore वो 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 एजुकेशन के लिए जा रहे हैं ना कि मस्जिद के लिए नहीं जा रहे वो एजुकेशन मदरसा में एजुकेशन के लिए जा रहे हैं और एजुकेशन को अपग्रेड करने के लिए जा रहे हैं हेयर इज नॉट बिंग गिवन टू मदरसा इज ओनली गिवन टू मस्जिद स्पेसिफिकली ओनली फॉर मस्जिद विच विच हैज नो मदरसा अटैच टू इट एनीवे वी आर वी आर डिविएटिंग वी आर डिविएटिंग फ्रॉम द टॉपिक टॉपिक इज अबाउट पुटिंग द इमेजेस ऑफ गॉडेस लक्ष्मी एंड लॉर्ड गणेशा ऑन रुपी एंड हाउ दैट्स गोइंग टू सेव द इंडियन करेंसी तो लेट मी आस्क विवेक बंसल ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी उसके बाद यशवंत देशमुख के पास जा रहा हूँ विवेक बंसल साहब ये बताइए कि इंडोनेशियन रुपया जो अरविंद केजरीवाल ने एग्जांपल दे दिया आज इंडोनेशियन रुपया हैज फॉलन 9.3 परसेंट अगेंस्ट द यूएस डॉलर सिंस जनवरी ऑफ 2022 इंडियन रुपी हैज फॉलन नाइन टू द यूएस डॉलर सिंस जनवरी ऑफ ट्वेंटी मतलब बराबर है नाइन पॉइंट तो कोई इतना ज्यादा फर्क नहीं है ऐसा नहीं कि इंडोनेशियन रुपया मतलब डॉलर से आगे बढ़ चुका है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है सो फैक्ट ऑफ द मैटर इज कि लॉर्ड गणेशा के इमेज डालने के बावजूद अग... Good evening AIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi has weighed in on the Rishi Sunak is a minority candidate becoming Britain's prime minister that entire debate that's been stirred off Owaisi says he dreams of a day when a hijab wearing woman can and will become the prime minister of India which is all very well it's a noble intention no one has a quibble with that but shouldn't charity begin at home in Mr Owaisi's party for example there are no women in any senior leadership position either as party president secretary or even mlas that the mim has in different states so should ovc be preaching about gender rights when his own party's record is so patchy british asian rishi sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the uk has triggered a massive political storm in india A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, EIMIM chief Asaduddin Owaisi has added fuel to fire. मैं तो बोला कि इंशाल्लाह मेरी जिंदगी में या मेरी जिंदगी के बाद एक हिजाब पहनने वाली बच्ची भारत की प्राइम मिनिस्टर बनेगी बोले। Owaisi's remark was immediately criticised by the BJP, who asked him to look no further than his own party. नफरत के जो एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोज़ी रोटी है अपने परिवार के अलग परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाएं और जिताएं लेट्स हैव द चैरिटी फ्रॉम होम व्हेन विल अ हिजाबी वुमन बिकम द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एम पार्टी देर इज अ भारत बदनामी ब्रिगेड विच हैज अंकी सनक to use even rishi sunak issue even the opposition steered clear of obc's pitch for a hijabi as prime minister why do you why do you think of this as being a communal thing anybody in this country no matter what community what religion can aspire to be prime minister there's no problem at all about that obc also accused the bjp of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs, or even office bearers in his own party. So, is it politics or provocation? 
All right, on the big talking point this evening, Ratan Sharda, RSS researcher and author, Suman C. Raman political analyst joining us. Mohammed Farhan is spokesperson of the MIM party. Amber Zedi is a social activist and Amina Sherwani, women's rights activist, joining us as well. Uh, Ratan Sharda, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country and one among them. Uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the Prime Minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that? Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as Prime Minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back and hijab has been introduced as an Arabic celebrity sign only recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to further right of freedom? who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so. So this patriarchy they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, woman become, if Muslim woman can become a prime minister, in, uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere. And okay. the next, if you say Islamic nation next door to us, in Pakistan there was Bamedra Bhutto, she lost her life. She was not a hijab wearing politician. In Bangladesh we had two ladies who became head of the state, prime ministers. They, they, have, they are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it is especially Islamic where you have women becoming head of the state. So this, either you are, you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years? 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular government saw through why they could not get a Muslim pr prime minister elected. No, and so why in Punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be uh, can be chief minister. So this hypocrisy of the entire gang is so funny. Le and Sunat did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. He became a prime minister because he worked hard. He worked through the party. He rose to the top and we must compliment him for that. Yeah, Not no, no, I absolutely agree with you. I think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because Suman C. Raman, Mr. Rishi Sunak got chosen not because he's a Hindu or because of his Indian heritage. He got chosen for two things. Number one, uh, to fix the British economy and he has a proven record of that as Chancellor of the Exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking, so on and so forth. So he's capable, his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked. And the other reason is England, as is India, a parliamentary democracy, whoever has the support of majority legislators, majority parliamentarians, goes on to become the leader of that party. It is not a, a post of tokenism. The prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority. So tomorrow, and nothing stops a hijab-wearing woman, the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab-wearing woman, if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India, to go ahead and become Prime Minister. So this whole debate around Sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are. First of all, uh, Zaka, um, uh, should Mr. Chidambaram or uh, Mr. Uh, Vaisi have the, do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties? The answer is no, that is a, a different issue. I don't think that they are actually saying that Mr. Rishi Sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job. I don't think that that is their point at all. Their point is there the atmosphere in the country is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community, belonging to a minority faith in his country to become the prime minister of the country. I think that that's the point that's being made. Should OYC be making that point? Uh, is he having, uh, uh, you know, 
the the same freedom to the uh, to the um, women and other groups in his own party yeah. all that of course is 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 comp- is definitely a valid point but and i think that this is important see we have to understand that this applies to all political parties look we have not had a muslim chief minister of a state in 40 years from uh, from the uh, mm. early 80s onwards and i think the last one was anwara taimur uh, in assam after that i i don't really think we've had a muslim chief minister so where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it we are not and the rise of the bjp has meant that even political parties which quote unquote claim to be secular are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the bjp with their hard hindutva line and they are running scared you see mr kejriwal statement today yeah. you have to put uh, 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 lord ganesha and lord lakshmi uh, goddess lakshmi on the notes you know so every now it is now a question of who is more hindu than the other no, because no. so so much so much fair, fair enough i'm, I'm not yeah yeah i'm not i'm not uh, arguing against that but the fact is also that uh, electability and winability has become now the bottom line uh, for political success whether it's in the bjp or any other party Uh, the same aam aadmi party you refer to has an amanatullah khan they have a tahir hussain who used to be an mlc but yes. I, i want to get to the larger point both uh, ratan yeah. sharda and sumant also referred well, to one, this one so i want to ask mohammad Fa- farhan no, no, just give me just give me 10 well, seconds yeah, mohammad yeah. farhan is a spokesperson of the mim party mohammad farhan saab uh, jo aapke rashtriya adhyaksh shri uh, asaduddin owaisi ne bola wo achhi baat hai kisi ko koi aitraz nahi hai all right we've lost him let's go to ambar zaidi uh, ambar you know no one has a problem with what mr owaisi said the problem is his own double standards when it comes to his own party everyone uh, you know has no problem with a hijab wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country but in mr owaisi's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they are all men all mlas that they have across five or six states where mim has mlas they are all men uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men So where is a woman hijab wearing or otherwise in Mr Owaisi's party in any position of leadership Absolutely right uh, uh, because uh, as they say charity uh, begins at home and whatever uh, Owaisi ji is preaching he doesn't practice that so he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation we need to like uh, in our country if we talk about the muslim women especially their literacy rate is so low he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women he doesn't care about the health care of muslim women he doesn't give that equal rights that muslim women as uh, the islam or sharia are given even uh, the constitution for that matter but they they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the muslim women should get but he is just preaching what is like uh, he should also like uh, he i mean i just want to ask one question to uh, osa ji Uh, he should at, at least give up on his mp seat from hyderabad and nominate at least a woman from his party and he should give a chance to uh, become a prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least and then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and crack, uh, yell out to, to the people what he is just trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that uh, in india muslim are being targeted just because, because of their religious identities for hijab for topi for beef or for for all these things which is absolutely not right he needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue the work on ground okay amina sherwani you know i'm i'm taking ahead what the point that ambar zaidi was making that again i have no quibble with mr uh, mr ovesi wanting to see in his lifetime a burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the prime minister of this country surely if that person is capable if that person has uh, electoral majority the support of majority of the people of this country absolutely that person should go on to become prime minister but in mr ovc's case not just this leadership issue in his party but more importantly how do you get there we are talking about rishi sunak it's his capability he went to the best schools uh, in england and the best universities in the world uh it is about his education as as an old man once said the greatest leveler that we have in this country is is quality education if you get a good education that is a sure shot route to success what has mr ovc's party done about uh, education and 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 for uh, and for women uh who is the party who said agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi 
are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanganyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala and as we know the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world and yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster, and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us, to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwesi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze, and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. We had no less than a, a justice of the Supreme Court uh, who was a hijab wearing woman, uh, Fatima Bivi. And when she used to go to court to perform her public official duty, she used to remove the hijab. That is what Mr. Ovesi should be encouraging in young girls. Well, Mohammed Farhan is back in uh, on the Justice, on the discussion. Mohammed Farhan, uh, sir, ye batayye, aapke jo Rashtriya Adhyaksh Shri Ovesi ji ne bola hai, achhi baat hai. Koi ko usse koi etraz nahi hai. Lekin charity begins at home. Ek kahavat hai Angrezi mein. To aapke party mein batayye, koi aise mahila hai jo hijab pehne ho, hijab na pehne ho, jo leadership position mein hai. क्या क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष महिला है क्या आपके जो प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं काफी सारे प्रदेशों में क्या वो महिला है कोई एक जन ऐसा है महिला जो आपके पार्टी में लीडरशिप पोजीशन में है जी सर मैं आपकी बात को बत कह रहा हूं सर हमारे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिला विंग की जो प्रेसिडेंट है नजमा फातिमा जी वो हिजाब भी पहनती हैं और क्या नाम है पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिलाओं को जोड़ने का काम महिला विंग के प्रेसिडेंट तो महिला ही बन सकती है ना सुनिए ये बात तो आपको भी पता है नहीं नहीं मैं आपको बता रहा हूं ना मैं आपको गिनवा रहा हूं कि हमारी पार्टी के अंदर कितनी महिलाएं हैं जो हिजाब पहनकर क्या नाम है आज की डेट में काम कर रही हैं सर महिला विंग की प्रेसिडेंट तो आदमी नहीं बन सकता है ना वो तो महिला ही बनेगी ये क्या लॉजिक है आपकी अरे सुन लीजिए मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ करा रहा हूँ की हमारे यहाँ कितनी महिला बोलिए बोलिए कौशिका परमार जी है जो की क्या नाम है गुजरात में उनको टिकट दिया गया है वो पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही है आपके तमाम टीवी चैनल पर भी ये खबर चली है रिया सिद्दीकी जी हैं जो क्या नाम है मेन बॉडी में हमारे यहाँ प्रदेश सचिव हैं और क्या नाम है पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही हैं और पूरे प्रदेश में पार्टी को मजबूत करने का काम कर रही हैं इस तरह की तमाम फरहान साहब फरहान साहब एक एक, एक सिंपल सी चीज आ, मैं आपसे पूछ रहा हूँ क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष मुस्लिम महिला है प्रदेश के जो अध्यक्ष हैं पांच सात प्रदेशों में आपके प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं क्या वो महिला है एम हैं आपके काफी सारे तेलंगाना में है महाराष्ट्र में है बिहार में भी थे क्या उसमें से एक भी महिला थी तो आप अगर लीडरशिप पोजीशन अपने खुद के पार्टी के अंदर नहीं दे रहे महिलाओं को तो फिर क्या ये हसीन सपने देख रहे हैं ओवेसी साहब कि एक दिन हिजाब पहनी हुई लड़की बनेगी भारत की प्रधानमंत्री ये तो हसीन सपना ही है नहीं हसीन सपना नहीं है महात्मा गांधी जी ने भी जब अंग्रेजों के सामने ये बात कही थी कि एक दिन आप देखिएगा कि धोती और कुर्ता पहनने वाला इस देश का प्राइम मिनिस्टर होगा तो अंग्रेजों ने उनका उपहास उड़ाने का काम किया था वही आज बिल्कुल वैसी साहब पर लागू हो रहा है चाहे भारतीय जनता पार्टी वाले उनका जितना भी उपहास उड़ा लें हमें यह फर्क नहीं पड़ता अगर विधि को लिखा होगा कि इस देश में भारत की एक ऐसी महिला प्रधानमंत्री बने जो हिजाब वाली हो तो विधि हंड्रेड परसेंट वो बन रहा कि किसी को कोई ऐतराज नहीं है अगर वो उनमें काबिलियत है उनमें काबिलियत है और वो आ, देश को कन्विंस कर सकेगी कि उनको मेजोरिटी क्यों देना है वो बिल्कुल आ, 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 आगे आना चाहिए और उनको पब्लिक ऑफिस में, में पोजीशन मिलना चाहिए लेकिन किस पार्टी ने बोला अगर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं 
ये तो बीजेपी ने नहीं बोला ना किस पार्टी ने बोला जो हिजाब के मुद्दे को लेकर आप बात कर रहे हैं सर कर्नाटक में जिन बच्चों ने कहा कि अगर हिजाब नहीं तो हम एग्जाम नहीं देने जाएंगे या हम पढ़ने नहीं जाएंगे तो वो बच्चों का मुद्दा था वैसी साहब ने तो कहा नहीं कि हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं नहीं आपके आपको आपको वो पोस्टर्स याद नहीं है फरहान साहब मैं याद दिलाता हूँ जो जो औरंगाबाद में आपके जो गढ़ माना जाता है गढ़ नहीं मतलब आपके एम एल से आते हैं औरंगाबाद में पोस्टर पोस्टर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं किसने लगवाई बाकायदा एम पार्टी के फ्लेक्स बोर्ड लगे थे वहां पे हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं देखिए क्या नाम है हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं ये जो है ये पर्टिकुलर उन बच्चों का अपना स्लोगन है जो आज हिजाब की लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं कोर्ट से लेकर जमीन तक अंबर जैरी ये बच्चों की लड़ाई नहीं थी ये तो बिल्कुल हंड्रेड परसेंट राष्ट्रीय राजनीतिक तरीके का एक लड़ाई था और आपके पार्टी भी इसमें एक अंग था लेकिन एनी लेट अंबर जैदी रिस्पॉन्ड टू इट एंड टू रतन शारदा आप absolutely it has been proven in the supreme court also because it has been politicized uh, by the some so called uh, political parties and also uh, pfi and uh, we all know that how they have been politicizing this particular matter for at least 8 9 months now and nobody is focusing on the prime uh, education of young girls they are only politicizing this matter just to gain some political brownie points i want to ask one question here He, uh, a Muslim lady in uh, AMI, he, if they want to join, if I want to join AMI hmm. today, hmm. like this, with the, without not wearing hijab, I can't be a member of uh, AMI. Covering my basic requirement is to cover that. Uh, I, I'll give you an example of uh, uh, Sayda Falak. She used to be without hijab, a normal girl, like a normal any Indian girl. And after joining, even before joining AMI, she started wearing a hijab and covering her head. So this is the basic requirement to become. No, a this is a great point. Let let uh, Farhan respond to this, and I'll go back to Ratan Sharda after this. Mohammad Farhan Sahab, ye batayiye ki mahilaon ko aapke party mein sadastha milne ke liye kya hijab pehne pehne ki zarurat hai? Bina hijab pehne hue auraton ko nahi denge aap sadastha. नहीं बिल्कुल देंगे अगर अंबर जैदी अंबर जैदी जी अगर हमारी पार्टी ज्वाइन करना चाहती हैं और इस शर्त के साथ कि वो बिना हिजाब में रहेंगी तो हम उनका स्वागत करते हैं कल आए पार्टी ज्वाइन करें उनको नहीं उन्होंने एक उदाहरण दिया एक एक महिला के जो हिजाब पहनते नहीं थे लेकिन जैसे आपके पार्टी में ज्वाइन किया उन्होंने तो हिजाब पहनना पड़ा उनको क्या ये सच है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है सर देखिये हिजाब अगर कोई व्यक्ति पहनता है तो वो उसकी च्वाइस है नहीं नहीं सिर्फ आपके पार्टी में सदस्य मिलने के लिए उनको पहनना पड़ा नहीं नहीं सर आप उनसे सैयदा फलक सर तमाम टीवी चैनल्स डिबेट करती हैं आप भी उनसे बात कर सकते हैं कि उनको कभी एम पार्टी ने ये नहीं कहा कि आप क्या नाम है सदस्यता लेने से पहले आप हिजाब पहनी तभी आपको सदस्यता ओके अंबर क्विक रिबर्टल देन देन रतन शारदा यस क्विक रिबर्टल मुस्लिम why is the bjp so against uh, muslims uh, and, and it's not like there aren't capable muslim candidates uh, in uttar pradesh for example where there are 400 tickets that were given by the bjp party couldn't they find one single muslim candidate see the sarkar already pointed out that this is something to winability as far as bjp is concerned is branded hindu nationalist bigot party so don't expect uh, you know they have don't have a responsibility to promote the muslims but why all these secular parties who have been there in the power for the 60 years out of 75 years what have they done for the muslims that is the bigger question when somebody like abdul kalam becomes the president the most popular president we ever had the secular parties did not allow him to have a second term because he was not muslim enough because he played veena because he respected geeta then we have rf mohammad khan who has made a scapegoat for fighting for the rights of poor india muslim women called shabano and she was put on the he was put on the side you know on the sideline not promoted anywhere in the political parties now the larger point is that since 1921 khilafat or caliphate movement the the all secular parties have thrown away modern forward looking muslims 
who who are who want to be based in the mainstream and they brought all kind of molanas molvis orthodoxy who believe in 7th century ideology who doesn't believe in democracy to come and lead the muslims and okay. that is a tragedy if we had modern people like zaidi and sherwani we would find muslims leading on so many fronts unfortunately no secular party promotes uh, modern forward looking muslims and we have Zara. all kind of uh, bigots who who throw all kind of big statements and big kind of constitutionalism to prove their point i'll i'll wrap up by simply saying that uh, while it may be a noble idea and no one has an issue with mr ovc asking for his dream of you know a hijab wearing woman becoming prime minister the least he can do is to begin by making his own party a little more inclusive having more women in leadership positions that's a wrap thanks very much for your time good night Good evening, this is Brass Tax. I'm Zakhar Jacob. The Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival is a rather novel way of dealing with the falling rupee. He's made a suggestion to the Indian government and to the Prime Minister to have the images of Goddess Lakshmi and God Ganesha, along with the images of Mahatma Gandhi, on the Indian currency notes. His justification is that a country like Indonesia, which has less than five percent of its population as Hindu, has done so with its currency notes having the images of Goddess Lakshmi and God Ganesha. Of course, Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth, but the fact remains that all currency, and particularly in Asia, the Indonesian rupiah and the Indian rupee, have been doing badly against the dollar. Both have fallen nine and ten percent respectively since the beginning of this year. Now, the question is: Will having pictures of gods and goddesses on currency notes actually flip the economic story of India? Or is this just Arvind Kejriwal's attempt to try and beat the BJP by outflanking it from the right? Remember, all of this is happening before the Gujarat elections, where the AAP claims it's making a serious attempt to give an alternative to the electorate of Gujarat between 35, 40 years of having to choose between the BJP and the Congress. So, is this Mr. Kejriwal's attempt to try and outflank the BJP from the right because he believes? In a state like Gujarat, you can't beat it from the left. अगर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो as it is रहे, दूसरी तरफ अगर लक्ष्मी जी की और गणेश जी की तस्वीर होगी, तो इससे पूरे देश को उनका आशीर्वाद मिलेगा. That's the advice put forward by AAP convener and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. to reverse the fall of the rupee he has appealed to the prime minister to print new currency with the images of goddess lakshmi and lord ganesh on the notes bahut sare efforts karne ki zarurat hai lekin wo efforts tab phali bhoot hote hain jab devi devtaon ka aashirwad hota hai kejriwal cited the example of indonesia which has lord ganesh's image printed on the 20000 rupiah note agar indonesia kar sakta hai indonesia ne bhi shri ganesh ji ko chuna तो हम हम भी कर सकते हैं हमारे देश में भी हो सकता है अभी जो नोट्स हैं वो एज इट इज रहे हैं लेकिन जो हर महीने फ्रेश नोट छपते हैं वो फ्रेश नोट्स के ऊपर ये शुरुआत की जा सकती है द बीजेपी अक्यूज केजरीवाल ऑफ अपीजमेंट पॉलिटिक्स इन द रन अप टू इलेक्शंस इन गुजरात एंड हिमाचल प्रदेश उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा क्योंकि उस राम मंदिर में पूजा जो है वो भगवान प्राप्त नहीं करेंगे अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने यू टर्न लिया है ये वही अरविंद केजरीवाल जी है जिनके बहुत सारे मीन जिनके बहुत सारे हिंदू विरोधी फोटो प्रसिद्ध है उनके ट्वीट में जो इंसान कभी कहता था मेरी नानी कहती है अयोध्या में राम मंदिर नहीं बनना चाहिए वहां अस्पताल बनना चाहिए मेरा राम लाला वहां नहीं रहेगा जो कभी स्वास्थिक पवित्र निशान के पीछे झाड़ू वाली फोटो लगाकर दौड़ा रहा था स्वास्तिक के पवित्र निशान को दीपावली पे अगर कोई गणेश जी को लक्ष्मी जी की पूजा करेगा पटाखे चलाएगा इनको मानेगा तो जेल में डाल दूंगा गुजरात के लोगों ने क्या पटाया उसको क्या उसके मुंह के ऊपर चांटे लगाए उसको 
अपनी राजनीति से धर्म की मजबूरी समझ में आ गई फेसिंग फ्लैग आप ट्राई टू टर्न दिबल्स ऑन द बीजेपी मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है आज मुख्यमंत्री जी ने एक विचार ये रखा है और भाजपा सुबह से इसके विरोध पे उतरी हुई है मुझको समझ में नहीं आता इनको इतनी प्रॉब्लम क्या है इतनी चिड़ क्यों है इन रिसेंट इयर्स केजरीवाल हैज नॉट शाइड अवे फ्रॉम वेयरिंग हिज रिलीजन ऑन हिज स्लीव वेदर इट वाज चांटिंग द हनुमान चालीसा और कॉलिंग फॉर अ राम राज्य एंड गोइंग ऑन टेंपल रब्स but is his divine intervention fix for the falling rupee simply an election stunt all right is this an election stunt uh, joining us on the talking point rp singh is bjp national spokesperson vivek bansal of the congress party joining us siddharth sharma is spokesperson of the aam aadmi party dushyant sridhar vedik scholar and uh, yashwan deshmukh sophologist will also be joining us siddharth sharma let me start with you first is this not a plain election stunt please explain to our viewers how having the pictures of goddess lakshmi and uh, lord ganesha is going to actually help the indian rupee get strength against the dollar after all all currencies almost all currencies in the world are losing against the dollar since 2022 began uh, yeah zaka very happy deepavali to everyone all the viewers of cnn news 18 uh, uh, the point here is that uh, the bjp uh, i'll start with a little bit of a satire the bjp which revels itself in body line bowling it should not shy away it should not it should be brave enough to face a few bouncers on its own that said in satire the serious point is that we don't understand why the bjp today is going against lord ganesha and uh, goddess lakshmi because what we are asking it's just an appeal from arvind kejriwal and when you say it's an election stunt it is not an election stunt because the bjp can always say that all okay we are not we are not asking it to be done tomorrow they can always go ahead and do it after the gujarat elections uh, election results are declared the point here is that the bjp which speaks itself about cultural nationalism mm. and we are speaking today about lord ganesha and goddess lakshmi who are also cultural icons across india we are just asking and we in fact we are not asking we are appealing to the prime minister that these motives can be etched in the currency of no, india no, mr That's sharma uh, i'll go to rp singh in a second but please explain to our viewers how having the uh, symbols or emblems of gods and goddesses is going to strengthen the indian currency the indian currency has fallen almost 10% uh, to the dollar compared yes. to where, where it was at the start of this year the, just this this year alone in the last 10 months the indian rupee has fallen almost 10% to the us dollar how will having ganesha or lakshmi or any gods and goddesses on the currency help save that yes uh, very nice of uh, zaka to accept that the indian rupee is falling against the dollar and the falling rupee against the dollar has to be arrested by the government through its yes. policies yes. obviously the government's policies are failing that's what you are saying when the government's policies are failing what do we do as a last resort we ask for the blessings of the uh, supernatural that's what we are asking for that the supernatural powers like lord ganesha and goddess lakshmi are being revered across india not just in india across south asia and many countries including netherlands and uh, west indies in south america so these are gods which 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 uh, spiritual gods which help people come out of their problems and as you very okay. rightly said for the first time i think uh, cnn news 18 and the bjp is accepting that the dollar is for uh, rupee is falling no no let, let's ask rp singh that because the, the finance dollar. minister say, uh, says she has a different take on it she says the rupee is not falling it's actually fallen less compared to other currencies the dollar is strengthening that, right that, yeah, that that's her take yeah, anyway yeah, i want oh, no no one second i want to ask rp singh no no i want one second ma'am uh, sir 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 i want to ask rp singh fact of the matter is rp singh that uh, aam aadmi party is saying bjp is today rattled because for the first time in the last 8 years a political party in this country is attacking the bjp from the right all of the attacks so far on the bjp have been from the left from congress party rjd samajwadi party all all our opposition parties are trying to attack the bjp from the left this is the first time that here is a party who is trying to prove there is more hindu than the bjp therefore the bjp is rattled jawab dijiye well well zaka do you think people of the country are foolish 
they will accept the poor carbon copy who is trying to be poor carbon copy than the real the fact is that this party has been anti hindu throughout i'll give you two three examples in delhi sorry to say that imams maulvis get monthly emolument from delhi government almost into 32000 rupees per per masjid but a similar thing being paid to pujaris in temple who do prarthana every day who do archana every day for ganesh and ganesh ji and lakshmi ji or to the granthis in punjab where they are the elected government no it's only because they want to appease certain vote bank they have been following their policy now keeping in mind the gujarat election especially the way they were being battered on diwali issue uh, because they said even a six year old child if uh, burst a cracker he'll be arrested and will send for six months to the jail there's, and then there's so much strong social uh, reaction on that that people went ahead i'm sorry to say that people went ahead and and uh, burst crackers and they couldn't do anything but the fact is that to cover up that they 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 came up with this they had no other they had no other option they no, no, but rp singh saab rp singh saab the fact of the, the matter sir, is no no wait a second give me can, give me t- give me 10 seconds fact of the matter is that uh, even in uttar pradesh maulanas and maulvis from the recognized madrasas across the state get uh, a token amount from the sarkar every month so it's not just the <laughs> delhi government also in the case of punjab in the case of delhi wherever it is those gurdwaras which are uh, taking a grant or a, or a, or an aid from the government are uh, they are paid some some amount of money you can you can always you know debate about how much money should be paid no. what what the, this thing is remuneration is but those those religious institutions which take aid from the government are paid a normal amount of money i am i am sorry jaka uh, you ask i I'll, we'll be in the debate for another 20 minutes ask your research team to search for it not a single penny goes from the state exchequer here the state pays no state government pays to religious institution Uh, the priest of the religious institution or imams of the uh, religious institution this only in delhi which happens but that point aside sir 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 that's Indra not Pal true Gautam? sir sir He's sir we did a debate on madrasas yesterday pay. up government has 500 plus almost 550 plus madrasas that are recognized by the up government to whom the in fact the up government's budget for madrasas last year is 470 crores agar wo paise nahi de rahe maulvi ko to kisko de rahe wo 470 crore वो 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 एजुकेशन के लिए जा रहे हैं ना कि मस्जिद के लिए नहीं जा रहे वो एजुकेशन मदरसा में एजुकेशन के लिए जा रहे हैं और एजुकेशन को अपग्रेड करने के लिए जा रहे हैं हेयर इज नॉट बिंग गिवन टू मदरसा इज ओनली गिवन टू मस्जिद स्पेसिफिकली ओनली फॉर मस्जिद विच विच हैज नो मदरसा अटैच टू इट एनीवे वी आर वी आर डिविएटिंग वी आर डिविएटिंग फ्रॉम द टॉपिक टॉपिक इज अबाउट पुटिंग द इमेजेस ऑफ गॉडेस लक्ष्मी एंड लॉर्ड गणेशा ऑन रुपी एंड हाउ दैट्स गोइंग टू सेव द इंडियन करेंसी तो लेट मी आस्क विवेक बंसल ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी उसके बाद यशवंत देशमुख के पास जा रहा हूँ विवेक बंसल साहब ये बताइए कि इंडोनेशियन रुपया जो अरविंद केजरीवाल ने एग्जांपल दे दिया आज इंडोनेशियन रुपया हैज फॉलन 9.3 परसेंट अगेंस्ट द यूएस डॉलर सिंस जनवरी ऑफ 2022 इंडियन रुपी हैज फॉलन नाइन टू द यूएस डॉलर सिंस जनवरी ऑफ ट्वेंटी मतलब बराबर है नाइन पॉइंट तो कोई इतना ज्यादा फर्क नहीं है ऐसा नहीं कि इंडोनेशियन रुपया मतलब डॉलर से आगे बढ़ चुका है ऐसा कुछ नहीं है सो फैक्ट ऑफ द मैटर इज कि लॉर्ड गणेशा के इमेज डालने के बावजूद अगर इंडोनेशियन रुपया भी गिर रही है जैसे इंडियन रुपी गिर रही है तो ये सब तो बेबुनियाद बातें हैं आई मीन दीज आर नॉट इकोनॉमिक आर्ग्यूमेंट्स दीज आर पोलिटिकल स्टंट Vivek Bansal sir can i make one very small point another i'll come back to you sir sir i'll come back to you two, two minutes very yeah. small point i completely agree with you these are all political gimmicks and i think this is making a mockery of our 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 our, our beliefs and our, our beliefs our sanatan beliefs uh, the, the belief with the the gods of the hindus uh, this is this is not done this is very unethical and this is as i said this it is somewhat i feel that it's a mockery mockery of our beliefs and uh, because money is used for all sort of purposes underhand dealings and all i fail to understand either uh, the logic behind mr kejriwal's suggestion or he is just trying to play a game of one one up manship as far as um, uh, uh, as far as uh, beliefs of the bjp party is concerned or trying to uh, 
prove this that we are uh, we are bigger hindus than you so this is i think when they, we have to draw certain line lines in political despite the vote okay. uh, bank politics our religion should not be dragged into it we should try to avoid that and uh, the, the i fail to still comprehend despite stretching my brains and uh, um, that how how the uh, pictures of lord ganesh or lord um, uh, or lord and the goddess lakshmi is going to no, so kill the balance know, the, of the funny part is and i'll ask uh, dushan sridhar this after that uh, yashwan deshmukh about the electoral so, reasons or electoral so, compulsions so, so, for this but so, dushan so, sridhar so, 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 fact of the so, matter I, is dushan sridhar that I, I, the dollar I, I, has strengthened I, to I, virtually I, every currency I, in the I, world I, since I, this year I, began I, whether it's I, I, british I, pound I, sterling I, whether it is euro whether it is the saudi real whether it is the dirhams in dubai uh, indian rupee every almost every currency uh, the dollar has strengthened against now going by the logic of arvind kejriwal and the aam aadmi party uh, the dollar then should have jesus christ picture not george washington and not uh, uh, you know theodore roosevelt and abraham lincoln's picture right if, if that's the argument he's being he's putting forth yeah Uh, namaskaram zaka and namaskaram to all my panelists i am the only uh, non political person in this debate so i hope i'll get some inter uninterrupted time uh, so while we are at a stage where we are talking about the digital currency picking up the digital payments picking up we should find intelligent ways of going into all classes of people to spread the good message about digital payment and rather we are talking about which deity's picture should come on the printed note that said Uh, the first point that i would like to make is um, uh, as per the beliefs of uh, sanatana dharma yes goddess lakshmi is the one who grants wealth wealth could be wealth could be of any form be it gold be it currency or be it even knowledge uh, or even ganesha who is the one who removes all the obstacles uh, but at the same time uh, zaka uh, lakshmi has been adored as the goddess of water ardram jwalantim says shri suktam so if it all any government just not up if it is bjp or congress if they have to bring some prosperity to the country the civilization states clean the rivers first make yamuna and ganga so prosperous so clean that will bring prosperity to the country one second point with respect to printing of deities on the currency notes i don't know where such ideas do come because uh, as a religion that believes that formless form of worship is important we also believe in forms it doesn't mean the forms of gods should be taken to printed notes plastic covers and bags so this is a very ridiculous idea to whomever it has struck and okay. the third part if at all we want the uh, economy of the country to strengthen and the currency to not fall so much against the dollar in that case Is, probably we should pray to lakshmi and ganesha that the war stops between russia and ukraine we should pray to gods that uh, there is proper logistics happening all over the world where the fuel prices are not going to rise these are the ways that we have to pray and putting them on notes will be uh, a, a matter of ridicule uh, i wouldn't say it's hurting any religion for that matter zaka if mm. even bjp had come up with this idea and you had called me on this debate even if congress had come up with this idea and you had called me on this debate i would have opposed to the nail to this idea because this is a very ridiculous idea to impress upon a certain section of people maybe there are better ways probably hindus are not uh, so easy to be fooled like where you can bring the photos of ganesha and uh, lakshmi on the rupee note and say that the economy is going to improve okay let me ask uh, 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 yashwan deshmukh how much a uh, hard politics is there in this because in gujarat for example the electorate is almost 88 89% hindu muslims are less than 10% of the population of gujarat and it's been a hindutva laboratory for the last 3 4 decades now so the only way the aam aadmi party or any political party can hope to beat the bjp or at least make inroads into the bjp's vote bank there is by trying to be more right of the bjp you can't be left of the bjp in gujarat because there's only 10% electorate there is this an attempt to try and be more hindu than the bjp more hindutvavadi than the bjp more right of the bjp and will this at all succeed in a state like gujarat well first of all rata i don't think this is limited to gujarat i think uh, what aam aadmi party is trying to do is to uh, basically look at a map road map which uh, can go beyond gujarat and and uh, for for much bigger appeal uh will this work in gujarat or not 
that only the time will tell but what i feel is that right now aam aadmi party with or without the notes of ganesh ji and lakshmi ji uh, you know is uh, is making a significant dent in gujarat as far as the congress vote share is concerned mm-hmm. so the contest is likely to be quite keen uh, in our trackers which we run for the abp we do not see their graph going down like it went up in uttarakhand and then it went down very quickly so uh, it is not looking like at this point of time uh, we'll keep a keen eye on that but what looks like zaka is that you know uh, going beyond gujarat and aam aadmi party there is something uh, uh, serious that is is for all the analysts to look into and that is the entire idea or entire narrative of the indian politics which has changed in the last uh, eight or years and uh, it's just not about you know for six decades in this country people competed with each other as a sec- champion of secularism uh, you know in order to become uh, you know electorally significant and, and winnable strategies but it seems that in the last eight year particularly this entire equation has changed and uh, india for all practical purpose right now i believe that uh, Uh, electorally speaking each and every party would be on the right of the right as well no but uh, so, uh, yashwan deshmukh uh, uh, can i ask one 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 small question at least in the last election and and this is true for the last many elections as far as the congress vote is concerned in gujarat it's predominantly uh, our rural vote largely from saurashtra and because of the last election the dynamics of the partizan registration and so on it was a largely uh, patel vote uh, the aam aadmi party though is a urban party whether it's in delhi or gujarat or any other uh, state in this country it's largely seen as an urban phenomenon so how is it that by denting the congress's vote bank the aam aadmi party is hoping to make a dent and frankly by saying that let lord ganesha and lord uh, i mean uh, uh, god of saraswati be on currency notes i don't think they're denting the congress's vote bank uh, first of all uh, this idea that aam aadmi party is only an urban phenomena i think uh, Uh, doesn't hold true anymore uh, mm-hmm. as far as data is concerned they are getting significant tractions even in the rural areas of number 1 okay number 2 if this traction continues and the data shows that out of every 100 votes that they are kind of influencing right now 75 is approximately 75 are coming from the congress and approximately 25 coming from the bjp so all in all if aam aadmi party even if they poll only about 10% that will increase the gap between the congress and bjp by about 5% and like last time the gap between the congress and bjp was 10% approximately 10% vote okay even though on the seat wise it looked much closer 77 and 99 largely because of the fact that you just mentioned that you know bjp swept uh, the urban areas with huge majorities and they lost to the rural areas uh, many seats with a smaller much smaller Uh, you know uh, markets okay. so that is where why i say uh, you know if aam aadmi party is given the smallest of the possible traction in the rural areas i'm just giving you a hypothetical suppose they are polling about 25% in the urban areas and only about 5% in rural areas you know that 25% vote will not make much of a difference what is happening to the bjp in the congress because bjp has huge leads in urban gujarat but that 5% vote in rural gujarat is going to create really okay. big dent in congress because of the smaller okay, that the congress so, has so let me ask siddharth sharma the, you know one of the points that's been made uh, by rp singh and others is that you have just recently denied hindus in delhi ncr from bursting crackers saying that you will go after even little kids who burst crackers uh so in order to counter that you are now coming up with this uh hindutva sort of philosophy have the images and iconographies of our uh, gods and goddesses on currency notes because you are on the back foot as far as the cracker issue is concerned and diwali has just passed so how do you respond to that yeah three points in 3 30 seconds point number 1 this is a total fallacy about the cracker thing not one kid not one person was arrested point number point number 2 the fact of the matter is that we are there is a lot of halabu about everything uh in december in january of 2014 when mr manmohan singh was the prime minister india came out with a coin which had uh, uh, a dt which had a dt vishnu devi on its as its motif so there is there is a precedent to this in india so that's point number 2 
Point number three and very interesting. Uh, the very erudite Hindu scholar for, in this panel has very clearly said, and that is what we need today in India. Today, after a very long time, there is a debate on national television that yes, the dollar and the rupee, rupee is falling against the dollar. There is a very, very good debate going on on national television that what is the philosophical tenets of Hinduism. That erudite scholar very clearly said that Hinduism also accepts formless gods. Whereas for the last eight years, we have been living in, we have been living in symbolism. So these are the kinds of the debates that Amadmi Party is forcing upon BJP today. Not just the debates, the okay. Prime Minister of India had to sit in a classroom after 27 years of ruling Gujarat, he had to sit in a classroom. That is the change, that is the narrative okay. that we Let want. Let me ask Arpi Singh that. Arpi Singh, the fact that you are having to defend a falling rupee, the fact that Prime Minister goes to a classroom in Gujarat after 30 years in power, this the Amadmi Party claims is because they have forced you to address these issues. Please, R.P. Singh Saab, respond. Siddharth Sharma, please yield. I've, I've given you enough time. Let R.P. Singh respond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please yield. R.P. Singh. R.P. Singh. Ji. Zaka, I'm sorry. You should have stopped the gentleman there and then when he said the Prime Minister went to the classroom after 27 years. Prime, uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Modi ji, when was the Chief Minister, used to regularly visit schools and take care of the school education. And school education is the best, uh, of uh, Gujarat is the best in the country. I'm sorry. When, and, and you can check on the, uh, you, uh, you, you can check on your the search team to tell you the details. But that point aside, who is talking? Rajinder Pal Gautam said that we don't believe in Devi Devta, we don't believe in Lakshmi and Ganesh. Yes, he said and he's still part of the uh, Ahmadi party. Their Gujarat president, what did he say? If women go to temples, they'll be molested, they'll be harassed, don't go to temples, don't go to Bhajan Kirtan uh, Mandalis. This is their stand and he's, he's still the uh, party president there. But again, I repeat, let Mr. Bhagwant Man give a request in writing. Mm -hmm. Following Mr. Kejriwal's footsteps, saying that this should be done. One. Secondly, again, when will they start paying allowances to which has not been done in Delhi and then don't mix up madrasas with the masjids? Only for masjid. Similar to that, to temples and gurdwaras. Okay. Uh, I'll, let me go back to uh, Dushan Sridhar. Again, the, the idea of uh, literacy or the school model, and I just want to bring in this data as well. Uh, as per the last uh, census of India, the literacy rate in Delhi is 86% in the uh, urban areas. In Gujarat, in the urban areas, it's 78%. So, you know, I'm just making that distinction. Of course, one is a 4-5 crore population state, the other is a 1.5 crore population state. But fact of the matter remains that today you are having a debate by two mainstream political parties on putting insignias on the currency notes, which you know, we all agree may not be the best or, or most scientific way of strengthening the, uh, uh, the rupee. Fact of the matter is that the finance minister is on record said that the dollar is not uh, getting strong. Uh, sorry, the rupee is not getting weak, but it's the dollar getting strong. That's what she said. So, uh, what is the question that, uh, uh, that you have, Zaka? No, so my, my question, Dushan Sridhar, is... I mean, is, the, is this the level of discourse that we are going to grind down to in this country uh, at a time when, you know, again, uh, this, this uh, debate, okay. this debate, oh, just give me 10 seconds. You know, people are going on and on about Rishi Sunak, Rishi Sunak, Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister of Britain, not because he's Hindu or not because he hails from Indian origin. He became Prime Minister because he has one job to do and that one job is to fix the British economy. He's qualified to do that. His past record Correct. shows that he's capable of doing that. That's why he's got the job. Uh, Zaka, on a very lighter note, all our politicians are blessed immensely by Lakshmi. All that they need is Saraswati. They need education to even come up with statements such as this. Now, getting back to this particular point of printing deities on the notes, as my, in my humble opinion, IMHO, I feel it's a very ridiculous idea. And coming to one more point, if, if at all any of the politicians, I'm not talking about one, any of the politicians believe that printing uh, the deity on an Indian rupee note could help solve the problem, then Krishna's statement that do your duty, karmanyeva adhikaraste, goals false. So every individual, every citizen of this country should do their duty well, okay. should follow the rules well. 
the government should frame policies well. These are the ways that probably we can get out of whatever economic uh, muddle that the world is in. Okay, Rather I'll give you the final this, word. I'm really out of time. Just of last 30 seconds. Uh, what I want to know is, has this become the new normal, Yashwan Deshmukh, that parties can't be seen as uh, catering to the left or catering from the left or attacking the BJP from the left? You have to, if you have to beat the BJP, you have to beat them, outflanking them from the right. That's why the Amadmi Party is doing what it's doing. Well, pretty much yes. I mean, if you if you will ask about the political positioning, I think pretty much yes. But more than the beating the BJP or anything like that, like, uh, I believe that uh, this country's political discourse has changed so much that earlier you could get more sounding anti-Hindu than came at a time when you were electorally unviable if you sounded anti-Hindu. And now it is a time where it is going in a direction where you have to sound pro-Hindu all the time in order to get the votes. So basically the political narrative this, of this country has kind okay. of changed in a very, very affirmative way. All right. Where maybe 20 years down the lane, you are looking at India, uh, which has a political landscape of far right, is, far right versus the right rather than the right versus center or okay. certainly not the right versus All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I'm just borrowing something that somebody said on Twitter today and I think it was pertinent. That if you look at the iconography in uh, in Hindu religion, in Hindu tradition, uh, Goddess Lakshmi sits on a lotus. It's a flower. Flowers sometimes bloom, sometimes wilt. Uh, that's how money is. Sometimes you get money, sometimes money goes out of your hands. It is not a permanent feature in our lives. So let's leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much to all our guests. Quick break. We'll see you on the other side. Good evening, AIMIM Chief Asaduddin Owaisi has weighed in on the Rishi Sunak as a minority candidate becoming Britain's Prime Minister, that entire debate that's been stirred off. Owaisi says he dreams of a day when a hijab-wearing woman can and will become the Prime Minister of India. Which is all very well, it's a noble intention, no one has a quibble with that. But shouldn't charity begin at home? In Mr Owaisi's party, for example, there are no women in any senior leadership position either as party president, secretary, or even MLAs that the MIM has in different states. So should OAC be preaching about gender rights when his own party's record is so patchy? British Asian Rishi Sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the UK has triggered a massive political storm in India. A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, EIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi has added fuel to fire. I said that after my life or my life, a hijab pen will become a Prime Minister of India. Owesi's remark was immediately criticised by the BJP, who asked him to look no further than his own party. एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोजी रोटी है अपने परिवार के अलग परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाएं और जीताएं लेट्स हैव द चैरिटी फ्रॉम होम व्हेन विल अ हिजाबी वुमन बिकम द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एमआईएम पार्टी देयर इज अ भारत बदनामी ब्रिगेड व्हिच हैज अ संकी सनक टू यूज इवन ऋषि सुना के इशू इवन द ओपोजिशन स्टेयर्ड क्लियर ऑफ ओवीसीस पिच फॉर अ हिजाबी एज प्राइम मिनिस्टर व्हाई डू यू व्हाई डू यू थिंक ऑफ दिस इज बीइंग अ कम्युनल थिंग एनीबॉडी इन दिस कंट्री नो मैटर व्हाट कम्युनिटी व्हाट रिलीजन can aspire to be Prime Minister. There's no problem at all about that. OBC also accused the BJP of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country. But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs or even office bearers in his own party. So is it politics or provocation? 
All right, on the big talking point this evening, Ratan Sharda, RSS researcher and author, Suman C. Raman, political analyst, joining us. Mohammed Farhan is spokesperson of the MIM party. Amber Zaidi is a social activist and Amina Sherwani, women's rights activist, joining us as well. Uh, Ratan Sharda, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country and one among them. Uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the Prime Minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that? Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as Prime Minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back and hijab has been introduced as an Arabic celebrity sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to further right of freedom? who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so. So this patriarchy they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, woman become, if Muslim woman can become a prime minister, in, uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere. And okay. the next, if you say Islamic nation next door to us, in Pakistan there was Bambayadana Zee Bhutto, she lost her life. She was not a hijab wearing politician. In Bangladesh we had two ladies who became head of the state, prime ministers. They, they, have, they are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it is especially Islamic where you have women becoming head of the state. So this, either you are, you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years? 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 12, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular government saw through why they could not get a Muslim pr prime minister elected. No, and so why in Punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be a, can be chief minister. So this hypocrisy of the entire gang is so funny. Let and Sunat did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. He became a prime minister because he worked hard. He worked through the party. He rose to the top and we must compliment him for that. Yeah, not no, no, I absolutely agree with you. I think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious. Because Suman C. Raman, Mr. Rishi Sunak got chosen not because he's a Hindu or because of his Indian heritage. He got chosen for two things. Number one, uh, to fix the British economy. And he has a proven record of that as Chancellor of the Exchequer before. And then, of course, his background in private investment banking, so on and so forth. So he's capable. His capabilities are well tested. And that's the number one reason that he got picked. And the other reason is... England, as is India, a parliamentary democracy, whoever has the support of majority legislators, majority parliamentarians, goes on to become the leader of that party. It is not a, a post of tokenism. The prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority. So tomorrow, and nothing stops a hijab-wearing woman, the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab-wearing woman, if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India, to go ahead and become Prime Minister. So this whole debate around Sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are. First of all, uh, Zaka, um, uh, should Mr. Chidambaram or uh, Mr. Uh, Vaisi have the, do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties? The answer is no. That is a, a different issue. I don't think that they are actually saying that Mr. Rishi Sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job. I don't think that that is their point at all. Their point is their, the atmosphere in the country is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community, belonging to a minority faith in his country to become the prime minister of the country. I think that that's the point that's being made. Should OYC be making that point? Uh, is he having, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, the the same freedom to the uh, to the um, women and other groups in his own party yeah. all that of course is 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 definitely a valid point but and i think that this is important see we have to understand that this applies to all political parties look we have not had a muslim chief minister of a state in 40 years from uh, from the uh, mm. early 80s onwards and i think the last one was anwara taimur uh, in assam after that i i don't really think we've had a muslim chief minister so where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it we are not and the rise of the bjp has meant that even political parties which quote unquote claim to be secular are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the bjp with their hard hindutva line and they are running scared you see mr kejriwal statement today you yeah. have to put uh, 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 lord ganesha and lord lakshmi uh, goddess lakshmi on the notes you know so every now it is now a question of who is more hindu than the other no, because no. so so, much, so much. I, I, fair, fair enough i'm, I'm not yeah yeah i'm not i'm not uh, arguing against that but the fact is also that uh, electability and winability has become now the bottom line uh, for political success whether it's in the bjp or any other party uh, the same aam aadmi party you refer to has an amanatullah khan they have a tahir hussain who used to be an mlc but yes. i, I want to get to the larger point both uh, ratan yeah. sharda and suman also referred but to one, this one so i want to ask point, mohammad Fa one farhan point, no, no, just give me just give me 10 what? seconds yeah. mohammad yeah. farhan is a spokesperson of the mim party mohammad farhan saab uh, jo aapke rashtriya adhyaksh shri uh, asaduddin owaisi ne bola wo achhi baat hai kisi ko koi aitraz nahi hai all right we've lost him let's go to ambar zaidi uh, ambar you know no one has a problem with what mr owaisi said the problem is his own double standards when it comes to his own party everyone uh, you know has no problem with a hijab wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country but in mr owaisi's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they are all men all mlas that they have across five or six states where mim has mlas they are all men uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men so where is a woman hijab wearing or otherwise in mr owaisi's party in any position of leadership absolutely right uh, uh, because uh, as they say charity uh, begins at home and whatever uh, owaisi ji is preaching he doesn't practice that so he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation we need to like uh, in our country if we talk about the muslim women especially their literacy rate is so low he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women he doesn't care about the health care of muslim women he doesn't give that equal rights that muslim women as uh, the islam or sharia are given even uh, the constitution for that matter but they they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the muslim women should get but he is just preaching what is like uh, he should also like uh, he i mean i just want to ask one question to uh, osag Uh, he should at, at least give up on his mp seat from hyderabad and nominate at least a woman from his party and he should give a chance to uh, give them a prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least and then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and uh, yell out to, to the people what he is trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that uh, in india muslim are being targeted just because, because of their religious identities for hijab for topi for beef or for for all these things which is absolutely not right he needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue the work on ground okay amina sherwani you know i'm i'm taking ahead what the point that ambar zaidi was making that again i have no quibble with mr uh, mr ovesi wanting to see in his lifetime a burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the prime minister of this country surely if that person is capable if that person has uh, electoral majority the support of the majority of the people of this country absolutely that person should go on to become prime minister but in mr ovc's case not just this leadership issue in his party but more importantly how do you get there we are talking about rishi sunak it's his capability he went to the best schools uh, in england and the best universities in the world uh it is about his education as as an old man once said the greatest leveler that we have in this country is is quality education if you get a good education that is a sure shot route to success what has mr ovc's party done about uh, education and 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 for uh, and for women uh, who is the party who said agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi 
are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tangyangika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala and as we know the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world and yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster, and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us, to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwaisi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze, and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped, just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. We had no less than a, a justice of the Supreme Court uh, who was a hijab wearing woman, uh, Fatima Bivi. And when she used to go to court to perform her public official duty, she used to remove the hijab. That is what Mr. Ovesi should be encouraging in young girls. Well, Mohammed Farhan know, is back in uh, on the justice, on the discussion. Mohammed Farhan, sir, you tell me, your leader of the Supreme Court, Mr. Ovesi Ji, has said it's a good thing, there's no surprise from it, but the charity begins at home, it's a word in English. So, tell me about your party, who is such a person who is wearing a hijab or not wearing a hijab, who is in the leadership position? Is it your leader of the Supreme Court? Is it your leader of the Supreme Court? Is it your leader of the Supreme Court? Is there any one person who is in your party in the leadership position? जी सर मैं आपकी बात को बत कह रहा हूं सर हमारे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिला विंग की जो प्रेसिडेंट है नजमा फातिमा जी वो हिजाब भी पहनती हैं और क्या नाम है पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश में महिलाओं को जोड़ने का काम महिला विंग के प्रेसिडेंट तो महिला ही बन सकती है ना सुनिए ये बात तो आपको भी पता है नहीं नहीं मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ ना मैं आपको गिनवा रहा हूँ कि हमारी पार्टी के अंदर कितनी महिलाएं हैं जो हिजाब पहनकर क्या नाम है आज की डेट में काम कर रही हैं सर महिला विंग की प्रेसिडेंट तो आदमी नहीं बन सकता है ना वो तो महिला ही बनेगी ये क्या लॉजिक है आपकी अरे सुन लीजिए मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ करा रहा हूँ कि हमारे यहाँ कितनी महिला कौशिका परमार जी हैं जो कि क्या नाम है गुजरात में उनको टिकट दिया गया है वो पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही हैं आपके तमाम टीवी चैनल्स पर भी ये खबर चली है रिया सिद्दीकी जी हैं जो क्या नाम है मेन बॉडी में हमारे यहाँ प्रदेश सचिव है और क्या नाम है पार्टी के लिए काम कर रही हैं और पूरे प्रदेश में पार्टी को मजबूत करने का काम कर रही हैं इस तरह की तमाम फराज साहब फराज साहब एक एक सिंपल सी चीज मैं आपसे पूछ रहा हूँ क्या आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष मुस्लिम महिला हैं प्रदेश के जो अध्यक्ष हैं पांच सात प्रदेशों में आपके प्रदेश अध्यक्ष हैं क्या वो महिला हैं एमएलएज हैं आपके काफी सारे तेलंगाना में हैं महाराष्ट्र में हैं बिहार में भी थे क्या उसमें से एक भी महिला थी तो आप अगर लीडरशिप पोजीशन अपने खुद के पार्टी के अंदर नहीं दे रहे महिलाओं को तो फिर क्या ये हसीन सपने देख रहे हैं ओवेसी साहब की एक दिन हिजाब पहनी हुई लड़की बनेगी भारत की प्रधानमंत्री ये तो हसीन सपना ही है नहीं हसीन सपना नहीं है महात्मा गांधी जी ने भी जब अंग्रेजों के सामने ये बात कही थी कि एक दिन आप देखिएगा कि धोती और कुर्ता पहनने वाला इस देश का प्राइम मिनिस्टर होगा तो अंग्रेजों ने उनका उपहास उड़ाने का काम किया था वही आज बिल्कुल वैसी साहब पर लागू हो रहा है चाहे भारतीय जनता पार्टी वाले उनका जितना भी उपहास उड़ा लें हमें ये फर्क नहीं पड़ता अगर विधि को लिखा होगा कि इस देश में भारत की एक ऐसी महिला प्रधानमंत्री बने जो हिजाब वाली हो तो विधि हंड्रेड परसेंट वो बन आगे आना चाहिए और उनको पब्लिक ऑफिस में पोजिशन मिलना चाहिए लेकिन किस पार्टी ने बोला अगर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं 
ये तो बीजेपी ने नहीं बोला ना किस पार्टी ने बोला जो हिजाब के मुद्दे को लेकर आप बात कर रहे हैं सर कर्नाटक में जिन बच्चों ने कहा कि अगर हिजाब नहीं तो हम एग्जाम नहीं देने जाएंगे या हम पढ़ने नहीं जाएंगे तो वो बच्चों का मुद्दा था वैसी साहब ने तो कहा नहीं कि हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं नहीं आपके आपको आपको वो पोस्टर्स याद नहीं है फरहान साहब मैं याद दिलाता हूँ जो जो औरंगाबाद में आपके जो गढ़ माना जाता है गढ़ नहीं मतलब आपके एम एल ए वहां से आते हैं औरंगाबाद में पोस्टर पोस्टर हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं किसने लगवाई बाकायदा एम आई एम पार्टी के फ्लेक्स बोर्ड लगे थे वहां पे हिजाब नहीं तो किताब नहीं देखिए क्या नाम है हिजाब नहीं किताब नहीं ये जो है ये पर्टिकुलर उन बच्चों का अपना स्लोगन है जो आज हिजाब की लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं कोर्ट से लेकर जमीन तक अंबर जैरी ये बच्चों की लड़ाई नहीं थी ये तो बिल्कुल हंड्रेड परसेंट राष्ट्रीय राजनीतिक तरीके का एक लड़ाई था और आपके पार्टी भी इसमें एक अंग था लेकिन एनी वे लेट अंबर जैदी रिस्पॉन्ड टू इट एंड आई कम टू रतन शाह absolutely it has been proven in the supreme court also because it has been politicized uh, by the some so called uh, political parties and also uh, pfi and uh, we all know that how they have been politicizing this particular matter for at least 8 9 months now and nobody is focusing on the prime uh, education of young girls they are only politicizing this matter just to gain some political brownie points i want to ask one question here He, a girl, a Muslim lady in uh, AMI. He, if they want to join, if I want to join AMI hmm. today, hmm. like this, with the, without not wearing hijab, I can't be a member of uh, AMI. Covering my basic requirement is to cover that. Uh, I, I'll give you an example of uh, uh, Sayda Falak. She used to be without hijab, a normal girl, like a normal any Indian girl. And after joining, even before joining AMI, she started wearing hijab and covering her head. So this is the basic requirement to become. No, a this is a great point. Let let uh, Farhan respond to this, and I'll go back to Ratan Shahzad after this. Mohammad Farhan Sahab, ye batayiye ki mahilaan ko aapke party mein sadhista milne ke liye kya hijab pehne pehne ki zarurat hai? Bina hijab pehne hue auraton ko nahi denge aap sadhista. नहीं बिल्कुल देंगे अगर अंबर जैदी अंबर जैदी जी अगर हमारी पार्टी ज्वाइन करना चाहती हैं और इस शर्त के साथ कि वो बिना हिजाब में रहेंगी तो हम उनका स्वागत करते हैं कल आए पार्टी ज्वाइन करें उनको नहीं उन्होंने एक उदाहरण दिया एक एक महिला के जो हिजाब पहनते नहीं थे लेकिन जैसे आपके पार्टी में ज्वाइन किया उन्होंने तो हिजाब पहनना पड़ा उनको क्या ये सच है ऐसा कुछ नहीं सर देखिये हिजाब अगर कोई व्यक्ति पहनता है तो वो उसकी च्वाइस है नहीं नहीं सिर्फ आपके पार्टी में सदस्य मिलने के लिए उनको पहनना पड़ा नहीं नहीं सर आप उनसे सैयदा फलक सर तमाम टीवी चैनल्स डिबेट करती हैं आप भी उनसे बात कर सकते हैं कि उनको कभी एम पार्टी ने ये नहीं कहा कि आप क्या नाम है सदस्यता लेने से पहले okay. आप हिजाब पहनी तभी आपको सदस्यता ओके अंबर क्विक रिबर्टल देन देन रतन शारदा यस क्विक रिबर्टल मुस्लिम why is the bjp so against uh, muslims uh, and, and it's not like there aren't capable muslim candidates uh, in uttar pradesh for example where there are 400 tickets that were given by the bjp party couldn't they find one single muslim candidate see the sarkar already pointed out that this is something to winability as far as bjp is concerned is branded hindu nationalist bigot party so don't expect uh, you know they have don't have a responsibility to promote the muslims but why all these secular parties who have been there in the power for the 60 years out of 75 years what have they done for the muslims that is the bigger question when somebody like abdul kalam becomes the president the most popular president we ever had the secular parties did not allow him to have a second term because he was not muslim enough because he played veena because he respected geeta then we have rf mohammad khan who has made a scapegoat for fighting for the rights of poor india being a muslim woman called shabano and she was put on the he was put on the side you know on the sideline not promoted anywhere in the political parties now the larger point is that since 1921 khilafat or caliphate movement the the all secular parties have thrown away modern forward looking muslims 
who who are who want to be based in the mainstream and they brought all kind of molanas molvis orthodoxy who believe in 7th century ideology who doesn't believe in democracy to come and lead the muslims and okay. that is the tragedy if we had modern people like zaidi and sherwani we would find muslims leading on so many fronts unfortunately no secular party promotes uh, modern forward looking muslims and we have Zara. all kind of uh, bigots who who throw all kind of vague statements and vague kind of constitutionalism to prove their point i'll i'll wrap up by simply saying that uh, while it may be a noble idea and no one has an issue with mr ovc asking for his dream of you know a hijab wearing woman becoming prime minister the least he can do is to begin by making his own party a little more inclusive having more women in leadership positions that's a wrap thanks very much for your time good night watching news epicenter and we are starting with some piece of breaking news that is coming in from telangana and ahead of the manugode by poll the cyberabad police have raided a farmhouse in the moinabad area and seized cash to the tune of 15 crore rupees they have taken three people into custody for allegedly trying to bribe four trs mlas the police also say that the tip off in fact came from one of the trs mlas police is saying that one suspect is from faridabad another one from delhi and one is from tirupati all the four trs mlas are now going to meet kt rama rao who is the working president of trs and may also meet chief minister kcr let's first listen in to the political reaction and also the reaction that has come in from the commissioner of police ఇప్పుడు మనకి ఎమ్మెల్యేలే మనకి ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఇవ్వడం జరిగింది టీఆర్ఎస్ ఎమ్మెల్యేస్ ఇక్కడ మమ్మల్ని ఎవరు వచ్చి అంటే ఈ ముగ్గురు వచ్చి మమ్మల్ని ప్రలోభ పెడతా ఉన్నారు డబ్బులు ఎలా చూపెడతా ఉన్నారు కాంట్రాక్ట్లు ఎలా చూపెడతా ఉన్నారు మరియు పదవులు కూడా ఎలా చూపెట్టి మమ్మల్ని పార్టీకి ర్యాంక్ చేయమని ఇట్లా ప్రలోభ పెడతా ఉన్నారని ఆ పర్టికులర్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ మనకి ఇచ్చారు దానికి సంబంధించి ఈ రోడ్ రోజు చెక్ చేస్తే మనకి ఈ డీటెయిల్స్ మనకి వచ్చాయి బిజెపి ఇస్ నోన్ ఫర్ టాపులింగ్ స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్స్ అక్రాస్ ఇండియా బట్ వన్ థింగ్ ఇస్ క్లియర్ అవుట్ టుడే దట్ కేసీఆర్జీస్ ఎమ్మెల్యేస్ ఆర్ నాట్ ఫార్ సేల్ యూజింగ్ స్వామీజీస్ అండ్ మెనీ అదర్ పొలిటికల్ బ్రోకర్స్ భారతీయ జనతా పార్టీ లీడర్స్ we are caught red handed today by pressurizing mlas for mlas of trs to shift sides to bharatiya janata party offering hundreds of crores and contracts just before the munugod by election kcrg's mlas informed police that bjp has been pressurizing them and today police has caught them red handed Swastika is now joining me live from Hyderabad Swastika the TRS is alleging that this was some kind of operation lotus which was happening what really has happened given the nature serious nature of allegation have you got a reaction from the BJP and when did these raid happen well, we are still awaiting a reaction from the BJP but to give you a exact sequence of events This evening rather there was a raid by the Cyberabad well, Cyberabad police where they went to a farmhouse in Moinabad area outskirts of Hyderabad where they found three leaders three identified persons uh, uh, by the name which the TRS alleged belong to the BJP and four MLAs uh, holding negotiations this was done based on the tip off of the TRS MLAs who said that these three individuals who came from delhi faridabad and one from hyderabad identified as mr nandu kumar uh, were trying to a bribe them with cash with government contracts and also means at the central level and cabinet positions at the state government level if the bjp comes to power next year now in the evening the raids were carried out by the cyberabad police where we are learning through our sources that 
cash to the tune of almost 15 crores were seized along with some other documents. Now, the allegations, in fact, put forth by the TRSS side is that all the three leaders are linked to a union cabinet minister, not just that, they have been thoroughly holding negotiations with not just these four MLAs, but other leaders from the TRS as well, trying to buy them off by offering them cash and government contracts. And based on that tip off, after holding negotiations for almost a month, uh, one of the MLAs have told me that they finally met today and they gave a tip off to the police to come and crack down on all the three accused who have now been taken into police custody. Okay, so talking about these three accused, as uh, uh, as you're picking up from the police that they are from different cities, also uh, from Delhi, um, is this linked to, you know, how is the link with the BJP being established here by the police? That is an allegation, remember, which is being put forth by the TRS side. The police so far has not established any links with any political parties. They say that they have in fact taken three individuals into custody for the questioning is underway they did raid the farmhouse in moinabad area acting on the tip off of the trs mlas but the a police commissioner there of cyberabad did not really mention what party or which party or which organization these three individuals were associated with that allegation is in fact coming in from the side of the trs remember a senior trs leader told me that all the three are associated with a union cabinet minister who is also a prominent face from the state of telangana but all of these are unfounded allegations at this point in time if you talk from an investigation point of view swastika stay with us let's listen in to what uh, the sound bite of the police commissioner of cyberabad is and then i go back to swastika for the final comments have you managed to speak to the BJP to get a reaction from them? Swastika, if you can hear me. Swastika, if you can hear me, my question is, since these allegations are being leveled against the BJP, have you got a reaction from them? Well, Maria, we've reached out to the BJP and they have uh, clearly told us that there is no involvement from their side because the police itself has not clarified who these leaders are associated with. They say that allegations put forth from the TRS side is completely baseless and unfounded at this point in time. They say none of the three uh, individuals identified in that particular video that we are play playing out on our screens right now, Nandu Kumar Simha, who are said to be uh, individuals who have flown in from Faridabad, Delhi, as well as one from Hyderabad, uh, have no authority or positions within the party. So at this juncture, the BJP definitely says it's not a setback, A, it's okay. not an embarrassment. These are the cheap tactics they say are being adopted by the TRS side because they are sensing defeat in Munugodu and they're also sensing defeat in the upcoming 2023 assembly elections. It will be interesting to see how the BJP counters several allegations. We also have to wait on what the police investigation has found so far. But to put out facts simply, okay. a farmhouse raided, 15 crores cash seized for TRS MLAs alleged that they were holding negotiations with members of the Bharatiya Janta Party who were okay. trying to allegedly, allegedly buy them uh, with cash, government contracts, as well as ministerial positions at center and the state level, provided the party comes to power next year. So all of this 
completely based on allegations. Remember, because of Munugoru bipole, which is turning out to be one of the costliest bipoles in a recent collective memory, okay. it is turning out that cash seizures have been happening on a regular basis. And the police say this could be linked to one such incident as well. So further investigation still okay. underway to a certain who these three individuals are who allegedly tried to buy off the 40 RS MLAs. All right, Swastika Das, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for getting us that piece of breaking news that it was coming from Telangana. Shifting focus to our top debate this evening, the majoritarian debate raging in India over the rise of Rishi Sunak to the post of Prime Minister has taken a fresh twist with the statement of MIM Chief Asaduddin Owesi. After multiple opposition leaders said that India must take lessons from Britain over the appointment of the member of the minority community to 10 Downing Street, Owesi said he wishes to see a hijab-wearing woman as the Prime Minister of India one day. The BJP hit back at Owesi, accusing him of duplicity, saying he should first appoint a hijab-wearing woman as the president of his party and then discuss the post of the Prime Minister. This comes just a day after the BJP countered the opposition listing members of the minority community who have held the post of President, Prime Minister as well as top positions in the judiciary and the armed forces. As the war of words continues to escalate, the big question emerges, has the debate gone out of hand and deteriorated into provocative political pot shots? Before I get the guests, here's what happened today. British Asian Rishi Sunak's ascent to the high seat of power in the UK has triggered a massive political storm in India. A day after several opposition leaders lamented that such a situation is not possible in India because of a majoritarian government, EIMIM chief Asaduddin Owesi has added fuel to fire. I said that in my life a hijab Prime Minister Uwesi's remark was immediately criticised by the BJP, who asked him to look no further than his own party. नफरत के जो एक के बाद एक इस तरह के नफरती लोग हैं, उनकी इस तरह के बयान ही उनकी जो है रोजी रोटी है। अपने परिवार के अलग, परिवार से अलग किसी हिजाब वाली महिला को जो है वो चुनाव लड़ाएं और जीताएं। Let's have the charity from home. When will a hijabi woman become the president of MIM party? There is a Bharat Badnami brigade which has a sunky sunak to use even Rishi Sunak issue. Even the opposition steered clear of Obasi's pitch for a hijabi as prime minister. Why do you why do you think of this as being a communal thing? Anybody in this country, no matter what community, what religion. Can aspire to be Prime Minister. There's no problem at all about that. OBC also accused the BJP of attempting to eradicate secularism and equal opportunity in the country. But the fact of the matter is that there are no women MPs, MLAs, or even office bearers in his own party. So is it politics or provocation? Joining me now, Shantanu Gupta is an author, Waris Patan, national spokesperson of MIM, Dr. Zina Shrokatali is Director General of Wisdom Foundation, Waris Patan, a hijabi M, uh, Prime Minister. Is this not pure minority push for getting merit? <clears throat> well, Maria, first and foremost, let me congratulate Mr. Rishi Sunak for being appointed as the Prime Minister of United Kingdom. And uh, I feel that if a minority person wearing a kalawa in his hand, a Hindu, can become the Prime Minister of uh, UK, why can't a Muslim woman become a Prime Minister of India? A hijabi woman can become a Prime Minister of India, inshallah. We have faith in the constitution, we live in democracy and anything can happen. Tomorrow she might become Prime Minister. Hmm. So what wrong did we say? And that day India will be declared truly secular, the day a Muslim Prime Minister is made in the country. But what has the BJP done? There are so many states where the BJP is in power. Show me from data available to you before the country, hmm. how many ladies, women, they have given the uh, post, How they don't even give tickets to Muslim women to contest the elections. Okay. They don't even give, forget about Muslim women, even Muslim men are not given any okay. opportunity uh, to contest the elections. So how do we come before I bring and in, how can they talk about Before I bring in Shantanu Gupta, I, I will remind you of the data that I actually have of MIM, women representation. You have not given a place 
of yes. pride to the women in your party. And Telangana 2018 assembly polls, you contested eight seats, one seven seats, women candidates zero. Bihar 2020 assembly polls, contested 20 seats, women candidates uh, zero percent, one five all male. Maharashtra 2019 assembly polls, contested 44 seats. Uttar Pradesh uh, 2022 assembly polls, contested 95 seats, women candidates 5. My, my point, la, you know, and the Lok Sabha elections 2019, you contested 3, women candidates 0, 1, 2 seats. This is also a data that, that is before you. So, shouldn't you practice what you preach? Well, yeah, kindly I look into the data also. I'll speak about Maharashtra. Maharashtra, we have a Muslim president lady of Maharashtra. In Mumbai, we have a lady president. She's a uh, lady for MIM. We just now we are contesting elections in Gujarat for the first time, the ML elections are upcoming. Hmm. We have declared till now only four seats. Out of that four seats, the first seat which our party president Asad Obviously declared was of a lady. She is the Dalit lady, our Dalit sister from Ahmedabad, Dani Limda. And she is campaigning it. Kindly see the crowd which she is gathering. The Muslims, Dalits, Hindus, Gujaratis, everybody is accompanying her. Not only women, but men are accompanying her. So out of three seats declared till now, when the Gujarat election is yet to be declared, we have already given ticket okay. to one of our sisters. Sh and let the coming Shantanu, days, Shantanu. We, have, we have got corporators, we have got corporators from other community as well in our party. Shantanu, so you, you cannot just point, say that. Show me okay. from the BJP how many women so have they if, given if the, if, if the MIM is making the point that the real inclusive diverse India would be a hijabi prime minister that can be given a thought by various political parties. Why object to it and call it communal? I think nobody is objecting to it. I think it sounds like uh, utter frustration of a Hindu becoming uh, uh, the prime minister of UK. Oh. Uh, and you already Let's have Virus Patan and Shantanu Gupta on the screen now, please. Yes, yeah, go ahead. And hmm. you've already shown, Maria, the data that how the representation of a hijabi woman in the cadres of AIM, AIMM, their MLAs, their MPs, the various can candidates. And Virus Patan has given some extra examples, one hair, two hair. <laughs> that doesn't mean the, uh, woman representation. Why didn't from tomorrow? If you want to walk the talk tomorrow, from a, uh, instead of a Saduddin Oasi, someone else, a hijabi woman should be the president. Right, and then only he can talk about someone becoming the, the, the prime minister. Point number one. Point number two, let's not take it from Rishi Sonak. He's not become the prime minister of UK because only he's a Hindu, because only he's uh, uh, wearing Kalava. He's a second generation uh, Brit. He went to best of the schools. He fought hard. He's an MP for, from there. And he lost, in fact, a month back. And now finally the Tory MPs elected him. So don't, don't, don't take it from, from merit. That because he's a Hindu, because he's a he's a Dalit, because he's a Muslim, I think come out of this, come up. I think Narendra Modi has shown meritocracy from last seven years. Try to live in the era of merit meritocracy. It's a very different era. Okay, okay. What is Patan? But did we ever thought that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will become a Prime Minister someday of the country? Just eight years back, we nobody knew. We were having Advani ji. Now they have sidelined him. But Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of the country. And why can't why can't a woman become the Prime Minister of this country? Why can't a Muslim woman become a Prime Minister? Why can't she become the Chief Minister? Is there any embargo to that? No, nothing. They can. But the target of the BJP is always to see that the Muslims are kept back. There is a war created. There is a war waged by the BJP against the Muslim. Take it from hijab. Take it on madrasa. Talk about the prayers. Hey, everything the, it is against the Muslim. Even the food habits. We want to eat halal food. They are objecting to that. Not only that, even the festivals are objected to. Even See, if Garba is played, Ram Lila is played on airports, we have no objection. You can play. It's a festival time. But if a Muslim man offers namaz anywhere in the corner of an airport or a station, there will be a fire against him. Police will question him and so many things will go against him. Well, so why, why they are trying to destroy the secularism of our great nation? That is why we say that the BJP is killing, they are destroying the diversity of our great nation. No, 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 but, they but are but not following the constitution. I am just constitution looking at speaks about what, what kind of analogies that are being drawn in the first of. place. If, if something has happened in uh, UK, just look at what we have achieved in India. The f third president of India was who? Zakir Hussain. We have had a minority, yes, a, you know, I, minority prime minister for ten years, a Sikh prime minister for 20, ten years. 
We have had a long list of constitutional heads who have been from the minority community. Why can't that be appreciated? Rather than giving this kind of spin, Varis Pathan. See, the appreciation that what I said the day India will become fully secular when they appoint a Muslim prime minister of the country. That day we will say that yes, the secularism, pluralism. But is presidents, Bakhtin Ali so Ahmed, all of BJP them have era, been. such kind of thing could happen. Yani Zail Singh from the Sikh community. They, they are presidents. I am talking about. You show me from data available yes, at your Muhammad end. Yes, Muhammad Hadidullah, the other women. You had a former Chief Justice Muslim. as well. How many Muslims during the BJP era? How many women have been given portfolios? Forget about it. How many ministers are there today? Muslims in the BJP government in the cabinet? Hmm. None. After Mukhtar Abbas, Nakvi went. Nobody is there. Shahnawaz Hussain is nowhere to be seen. So they don't want the Muslim representation. How do they succeed? So okay. we are the minority, largest minority. We live in democracy. We have a right. We have a okay. right to become prime okay. minister. We have okay. a right to uh, become uh, chief Dr. minister. Dr. Zina Shakatali, how are you the looking BJP at does not this push by that. this push by MIM? quite surprised that you know when this question of uh, a prime minister for the country is raised the first thing is that the most popular leader there is an election and whoever is elected as the most popular leader as the most well known leader it becomes the prime minister of a country hmm. now any woman can uh, opt for that post whether she is a muslim woman whether she is a dalit woman whether she is a christian woman whoever it is can contest that post there is absolutely no denying it but what surprises me is that the qualification of a prime minister which should be uh, you know which should be meritocracy which should be which should be uh, you know professionalism which should be expertise which should be competence should be qualification these are the requisites hmm. you make hijab a requisite that is what is surprising me okay. had uh, you know uh, I, i was quite surprised that of course a, a woman can contest of course a muslim woman can contest and she would be very welcome to be the prime minister of this country because we are a, a, a you know a multi cultural nation and nobody has to give us any examples or any lessons in that we are the oldest in the field here but the you know, the surprising part of it is that when you say that she has to be hijab clad and you make that into a prerequisite that is surprising what should be your prerequisite is her education is her you know is is her clarity is okay her clarity, vice president did her, did uh, did the party go yes, too far in saying hijab clad it could have been just a muslim woman or just Absolutely. a woman argument the, the whole point is that you know why, why do you well, make hijab well, well just women? now yeah there are muslim women cutting across uh, india well, just all now zinat shaukat yes, ali was uh, to congratulate just, May I make my point, Madam? Please, Madam, if you lower her feather, I will be able to make my point, Maria. Otherwise, yes, I I think that is extremely important. Well, well, But well, Madam. You know, a hijab-clad Muslim woman that is very surprising hmm. because uh, you know that is not a prerequisite. The prerequisite. Okay, fine, fine. You have made your point, ma'am. You have made your point. Yes, Varis Patan, quickly. Yes. Well, well. Just now, I was listening to what Zina Shokatali was saying. She was speaking about the qualification. There has to be a qualification. Now, may I ask her, what is the qualification of our present Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi? We don't know his degree also. And what problem does she has for hijab? If a hijab wearing woman, we say, Modi said, "Beti bachao, beti padao." That time we said that our daughters wants to study, but you don't allow them to study. Uh, we want our daughter to have in one hand a computer, a laptop; in other hand, she should have a Quran and all. Head, she must wear a hijab, and one day she becomes a good lawyer, doctor, engineer. Then why not become a prime minister of the great nation India? What stops? What prevents? Why? Why is the problem with the hijab? Hijab is just covering of the head. We have not hiding our brains. The brain is acting; it is only hiding the head. If she will become prime minister, Muslim representation. You are talking about. You show me what is the Muslim representation in the BJP state uh, era? Okay. What is how you many know, Muslims Shantanu have they given? This question of Muslim how many representation have they made? How many is the BJP have they finding it Muslims difficult to explain? Who contest elections? See, every party put candidate based on their availability. I think same similar question should be asked. How many Buddhists? How many Jains? How many Sikhs? Every party, including AIMM, make to contest, right? uh what uh, is he saying that uh, indian india will become completely secular when a hijab wearing female with the will become the prime minister with the same logic aimm aimim will become fully secular when a hindu female become the president of aimm what kind of logic is that let's talk merit if the person is popular if the person is what popular kind of people, logic is that here yeah. you are i'm talking about the country you are talking about my party she can be the prime minister 
India India has never stopped anyone did, did, did with I say be it Maria Shakil, be it Azim Hasan Premji, be it, be it uh, Mohammad Azuruddin, someone who is married always reached in top in India. So I think India doesn't have a problem. Yeah, Varis Patan, his Akas want to create a sensation or want to come on TV debates. I think that's their claim to fame in every TV debate. That's all. Varis Patan, I'll give you the final words. Please go ahead. Well, these are nothing but conjectures and surmises they are coming up with. We say that, I did not say that from our party. We say a hijab wearing Muslim woman from our country, she will become the prime minister. Did anybody expect that Rishi Sunak will become the prime minister of Britain? No. Minister, ask, ask, ask. You forget, you forget about it. Our party has got women representations, enough women representatives better than the other parties. Start from your home house. Charities Our party with... have got a huge number of Muslim women representation as well as other uh, from our sisters hey, also, hey, Hindu sisters also. We gave resign, ticket to seven Hindu Jab sisters in Ahmedabad to contest election in Gujarat. Out of that, four of them won the election. See, barely bit. I was silent when you were making your point. I know truth is bitter, but you will have to listen. Don't just make a statement to come. See, I was very quiet and silent when you were making your foolish submissions. Okay. okay I was okay. very quiet and silent ah. when Santanu was making his foolish submissions. But when I am making some thirty point, seconds, just trying to interject because Paris, I know the Paris truth is Patan, bitter. Thirty seconds and quickly. To I have truth. to move on to the next issue. Yes, thirty seconds. Uh, huh. Quickly. Well, I, well, I am making a simple point that what we have, what we need to say that huh. in India we live in democracy, follow the constitution, okay. and one day a Muslim woman wearing hijab can become the prime All minister. All right, Varish Patan, so Dr. Zina Shaukat Ali, and Shantanu Gupta, thank you so much for joining us. Shifting focus to debate two, as the rupee continues to slide, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has made a unique pitch to the central government. He wants the centre to introduce currency notes with Lord Ganesh and Goddess Lakshmi's image along with Mahatma Gandhi. Giving the example of the Indonesian Rupaya, which boasts the image of Lord Ganesh, Kejriwal said the move will help the economy recover and end its continuous decline. While calling the proposal laughable, the BJP has hit back at the Ahmadi party calling Kejriwal a Chunawi Hindu, accusing him of making the pitch just for the elections namely the fight in Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh. The BJP has accused him of trying to shed his Aurangzebi image, accusing him of trying to send Hindus to jail for bursting crackers on Diwali. Damadi Party has stuck to its stand, calling the Delhi Chief Minister a true bhak. But is, is this nothing more than an election gimmick by a party trying to expand its political footprint? भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो वैसे ही रहनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी तरफ श्री गणेश जी की और श्री लक्ष्मी जी की तस्वीर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर लगाई जा रही है जिस प्रकार से यू टर्न किया जाता है आज ही हमारे सामने पूर्णतः उतर के आ रहा है जनता उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा ये तो एक फेस सेविंग प्रोग्राम है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी चूंकि इन लोगों ने इतना गाली दिलवा दिया है अपने मंत्रियों से अपने गुजरात प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से हिंदू देवी देवताओं को कि अब इनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि हम कौन सा चेहरा लेके जनता के बीच में जाए मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है हम तो आस्तिक लोग हैं हम ये मानते हैं कि भगवान के आशीर्वाद के बिना बड़ा काम तो छोड़िए कोई छोटा काम भी सफल नहीं हो सकता And joining me now, Shahzad Poonawala, national spokesperson of the BJP, Priyanka Kakkar, Amadni Party spokesperson. Priyanka, the Indonesian rupiah that Kejriwal talked about is doing very badly. 
and the Ganesh photo on it hasn't helped arrest its slide. So why bank on superstition? Maria, good evening to all of you. But before I begin this, Maria, I, I am not sure if I can debate which has RG since his own party MP has asked that inka bahishkar kiya jaye. Either he calls up his MP and seeks permission before he sits before me in the debate and then we can proceed. This is very confusing for me. I'll uh, create, help you resolve your confusion. Karna ah, hai main Priyanka ji, aapka sawal samaj gaya. Aap sawal ka uttar bhi le lijiye. Parvesh Verma ji ne to kisi samudai ka naam nahi liya tha. Wo to atank ki dangai aur atataiyon ka naam le rahe the. Parantu aapne ek atatai, atank ki aur dangaiyon ko ek samudai se kaise jod liya. To main aapatti darj karta hoon ki aapne ek samudai vishesh ko atank ki aur logon se joda hai. Dousi baat. Par main sawal ki kyun unhone meri baat kar hi di hai. Let's put the focus back back on this discussion. Nee nee par iske alawa main apna point kar loo. Fir Priyanka ji sir consolidated jawab de de. Dekhe aaj kitna achha divas hai ki jo log kal tak orangze bhi mansikta se ग्रसित होकर पटाखों पर प्रतिबंध लगा रहे थे हिंदू पर्व पर प्रतिबंध लगा रहे थे आज ऐसा चुनावी यूटर्न किया है सियासी धर्मांतरण उसका ऐसा हुआ है कि जिस पार्टी में गोपाल इटालिया मंदिर और कथा को गाली और अपमान दे रहे थे जो मंदिर का विरोध कर रहे थे राम मंदिर का विरोध कर रहे थे कहते हुए कि नानी ने कहा है मस्जिद तोड़कर मंदिर बनाया जाना नहीं है मंदिर के बदले राम जन्मभूमि पर जो बिल्डिंग बनाने की बात कर रहे थे और जो कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के नरसंहार पर ठहाके लगा लगा कर हंस रहे थे आज वो लोग कह रहे हैं कि माँ लक्ष्मी की और गणेश जी की तस्वीर होनी चाहिए नोट पर मैं स्वीकार करता हूं ये जो चरनी है मैं इसका स्वीकार करता हूं एक ही सवाल है मारिया जी ये तीन बिंदुओं पर मुझे स्पष्टीकरण दे दे कि ये जो नोट बनेगी लक्ष्मी माँ और गणेश जी की तस्वीर के साथ वो किसी शराबी घोटाले और हवालाबाज घोटाले के हाथ में नहीं आएगी दूसरी जो कसाई हाथों से खून से सने हाथ होंगे जिसके और जो जानवरों को काटता है उसके हाथ में नहीं जाएगी जो भ्रष्टाचार करता है विजय नायर से मनीष सिसोदिया जैसे लोगों के उनके हाथ में नहीं जाएगी और तायर हुसैन जैसे आतंकियों के हाथ में नहीं जाएगी इसका मुझे आप गारंटी Okay, दे दीजिए और हमारा समर्थन ले लीजिए अन्यथा ये बताइए कि ये सीजनल हिंदू वाला कार्ड जैसे सीजनल फ्रूट होता है और आखिरी बात मारिया जी आखिरी बात एक आखिरी बात मैं आपको आप बड़े हिंदू होने का दावा कर रहे हैं ना जटाटवी गलत जल प्रवाह पावित स्थले गड़े व लंब लंबितम भुजंग तुंग मालिकम ये शिव तांडव श्रोतम के पहले श्लोक की दो लाइन है आगे की आप कंप्लीट कर लीजिए मुझसे बड़े हिंदू है ना आप बताइए प्रियंका प्रियंका चलिए सवाल का जवाब दीजिए आपका बहिष्कार करना है आपके साथ प्रियंका लक्ष्मी जी फोटो ऑन द ऑन द करेंसी नोट दैट इज माई सेकेंड क्वेश्चन टू बीजेपी आपको ऑब्जेक्शन है इस बात से जवाब दे देता मैंने तो कहा मुझे कतई अब आपका सवाल मैंने ले लिया है मारिया जी मैं जवाब दे दूं मुझे कतई कोई ऑब्जेक्शन नहीं आप मुझे केवल इतना गारंटी दे दो कि ये माँ लक्ष्मी और गणेश जी वाली नोट शराब माफिया विजय नायर मनीष सिसोदिया के हाथ नहीं आएगी कसाई जिनके हाथ में खून सते हुए हैं गौ माता के खून से उनके हाथ नहीं आएगी तायर हुसैन जैसे दंगाइयों के हाथ नहीं आएगी इसका गारंटी मुझे दे दीजिए ना यस 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 प्रियंका हाँ बोलिए प्रियंकाइ आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस वर्बल आपको नहीं समझेगा हिंदी हिंदी कंफर्टेबल है तो इंग्लिश में बोल देता हूँ नहीं 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 शहजाद यू स्पोकन एंड प्रियंका हैज़ टू स्पीक नाउ प्रियंका इस दिस इस दिस इस दिस नॉट एन इलेक्शन स्टंट आर यू नॉट प्लेइंग द हिंदुत्व कार्ड बिफोर द ऑल इम्पोर्टेंट गुजरात इलेक्शंस कम इलेक्शन यू डिसाइड � Maria, I'll attempt answering, but it is very confusing for me that I have to sit before a person who has to do a job and then he's talking about, he has some, uh, he's putting some conditions attached that if we do this, we don't have a problem. What is the problem of Lakshmi and Ganesh Ji? It's also on the pathak, on the currency notes, it's a good start. You have to do a good start. You have to do a good job. 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 ब्लेसिंग्स ले लेंगे भगवान जी की तो उसमें आपको कंडीशंस क्यों लगानी है ठीक है मैं इसका जवाब देता हूँ नहीं नहीं बट 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 मारिया नो नो बट नो नो बट चर्चा होने दीजिए ना मैं इसका सीधा आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट सम फैक्ट्स बिफोर वी मूव ऑन द इंडोनेशियन रुपया वन यूएस डॉलर इक्वल्स टू the rupiah, the Indonesian currency is tumbling. That is the truth. And are you saying our currency is strengthening? I mean, it's a very 
it's a demand that we are saying that why don't you put these pictures because we believe that these the, the, Lakshmi ji and Ganesh ji symbolize wealth and prosperity and right now we need blessings we we want to start this work with the blessings auspicious blessings of accords ठीक है मारिया मैं जवाब दे दूं देखिए एक तो गजब की बात है look at what आ, what मारिया अभी एक-एक करके आपके डिबेट में मैंने एक बीच में नहीं बोला मैं अपनी बात रख सकता हूं मारिया जी क्या मैं अपनी बात रख सकता हूं मैं आपसे अनुमति चाहता हूं can i speak maria yes, without being it's interrupted it's very tough for maria, me to take maria i can't be interrupted you have to tell her to pipe down let me speak inko seriously kaise le maria this is not ye ne priyanka 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 please let's put focus on this discussion let me come in. this I, entire I debate I priyanka has maria, been maria, in fact started by the aam aadmi party chief maria, mr arvind kejriwal was the one who started this discussion with his press conference today so you should be able to listen to all the responses that are coming in now maria now let me come in she has spoken her turn it's my turn let me speak मारिया यू लाइक टू आस्क देम टू नाउ स्टेप इट यस प्लीज सर्विंग टू मी बिकॉज़ इनका बहिष्कार कर ठीक है चलो नाउ ऑल वी मारिया दिस इज माय ऑपर्चुनिटी द टाइम ऑफ द डिबेट इज रनिंग आउट ओके मारिया शेयर आउट क्विकली यस नॉट टू थ्री पॉइंट्स लेट्स एड्रेस देम वेरी क्विकली फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम सेइंग दैट आई हैव नो ऑब्जेक्शन टू दिस आईडिया एट ऑल बट बिकॉज़ वी रिवियर मा लक्ष्मी प्लीज मारिया मारिया दिस द डिबेट वोट ऑडियंस वोट बी टू यू Okay. Can you please ask your technical yes, team to please, allow no, one no, one at a no, time? Yes, please. No, Shahzad, make your point. Shahzad, make your point. How do I make my point, point if she's yes, interrupting? Yes, Shahzad. I yes. do not interrupt anyone. Yes, 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 yes. May I make my point without yes, being interrupted? Yes, please go ahead. Hmm. Because we revere Ma Lakshmi and Ganesh ji, I spoke to a large number of religious people today, and they told me, "Beta, ab jab debate me jaoge, to is Kejriwal ko bolna ki Ma Lakshmi ki tasveer note to gal jati hai, phat jati hai, tur jati hai, kahi aur lag jati hai. Usko kis prakar se chori ke log use karte, terrorist use karte? Ham nahi chahte ham." हमारी मां लक्ष्मी का इस्तेमाल ऐसे हो तो केजरीवाल से पहले गारंटी ले लेना तो मैं उनकी बात कन्वे कर रहा हूं दूसरी बात इतना ही इनको अगर लक्ष्मी मां का आशीर्वाद चाहिए तो अपने दफ्तर में सरकारी पीछे लगा देना मां लक्ष्मी की तस्वीर जिसमें कि वो कमल के वाहन पर बैठी हुई है और हाथ में कमल लेकर बैठी हुई है आपको किसने रोका है पर जब मौका मिला सरकार में तो पहला निर्णय क्या लिया मौलानाओं की पगार बढ़ानी है दूसरा निर्णय क्या किया धन मन धर्म समर्पित है किसको वक्फ को और तीसरा निर्णय क्या लिया कि राम मंदिर में कतई नहीं जाना क्योंकि मंदिर क्यों बना है मस्जिद तोड़ के बना है और चौथा निर्णय क्या लिया गोपाल इटालिया को गुजरात का चेहरा बनाया जिसने कहा कथा और मंदिर जो है वो शोषण के अड्डे अब ये सही मायनों में हिंदुत्व के इतने बड़े ये प्रकारक और प्रवर्तक है तो बताइए कि गोपाल इटालिया पे क्या कार्रवाई करेंगे राजेंद्र पाल ने कहा विष्णु ब्रह्म महेश का कोई अस्तित्व नहीं अब वो कह रहे हैं कि लक्ष्मी जी को अब नोट पर डाले अरे भाई पहले बताइए कि उनको क्या पार्टी से निकाला है अरे मनीष सिसोदिया ने कहा कि राम मंदिर बनाना नहीं उसके जगह पर आप बना दीजिए कोई बिल्डिंग बताइए उस पर क्या कार्रवाई होनी चाहिए और स्वस्तिक के चिन्ह को हिंदू विरोधी पार्टी है इन्होंने तीन सौ पचास मंदिर वाराणसी में तोड़े उसमें से एक मंदिर टू फिफ्टी ईयर ओल्ड प्राचीन मंदिर था Only to build a shopping mall. Your party has written to us, जिन्होंने आपका बहिष्कार करने को बोला है उन्होंने फिफ्थ जुलाई अभी चिट्ठी लिखी कि डेली गवर्नमेंट परमिट अस टू ब्रेक फिफ्टी थ्री टेम्पल इन डेली इनको शायद पता नहीं होगा बहिष्कार करने के बाद आज इनको इतना बोलने में इसलिए दे रही हूँ बिकॉज आई फीलिंग सिंपथेटिक टू वर्ड्स हिम आपकी सिंपति मुझे नहीं चाहिए परंतु एक चीज का जवाब जरूर दे दीजिएगा प्रियंका जी इसको थोड़ा सुन के दीजिएगा और आप जरूर दीजिए जेके अपन ने खबर छे कैसेट घसाई गई छे अरे मतलब फालतू वातो मा कथा मा जेन हिजरा नी जेम तालीओ पाड़े छे कथा में जाकर आप डैश डैश की तरह ताली मारते हैं ये गोपाल इटालियन एक एक करके भाई आप सबसे बड़े अरे भाई मारिया प्लीज मारिया मारिया मेरा समय है बोलने का मारिया प्लीज मुझे संरक्षण दीजिए मारिया यू हैव टू इंटरव्यू शी इज टॉकिंग ओवर मी लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट इट्स माय टर्न टू स्पीक मारिया लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट द टाइम इज ऑन लेट मी मेक माय पॉइंट शी इज इंटरप्टेड मी ऑन एवरी टाइम यस यस शहजाद गो शी हैज इंटरप्टेड मी एवरी एवरी टाइम आई हैव टू स्पीक शी इज इंटरप्टेड मी द चैनल कैन आल्सो अलाउ वन वन एट अ टाइम चलिए 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 हां हाँ. मैंने अभी गोपाल इटालिया का स्टेट ये कह रहे ना हम तो बहुत बड़े फर्जी हिंदू हैं चलिए ठीक है हमको क्या क्या जो हिंदू मंदिर भाई मारिया ऐसे कैसे डिबेट हो सकती है मैंने उनकी बात सुनी ना मारिया आई एम बेगिंग यू फॉर माय टाइम दिस इज जस्टिस यू हैव टू गिव टू मी नाउ ओके शहजाद वन मोमेंट परमिट आप यू कैन साइलेंस और व्हाई यू गिविंग अ डिस्टेंस आई एम फॉर ब्रेकिंग द रूल प्रियंका प्रियंका यू हैव प्लेड द हिंदुत्व कार्ड यू हैव आस्क्ड देम क्वेश्चन अबाउट व्हाई द बीजेपी हैज ब्रोकन टेंपल्स लेट हिम रिस्पॉन्ड यू हैव टू लिसन टू हिम नाउ योर चैनल इज टेकिंग नेसेसरी एक्शन 
ना लाओ वन परसेंट के लिए करेंगे शहजाद ना शहजाद ना वन परसेंट मारिया आई एम रेजिस्टिंग माय स्ट्रॉंग प्रोटेस्ट दैट आई हैव हर्ड हर आउट बट योर चैनल इज़ नॉट अलाउंग माय वर्ड्स शहजाद गो हेड नाउ इफ शी इंटरप्ट्स यू हैव टू स्टॉप ह Now I have just made you hear Mr. Gopal Italia's iterations that mandir or katha me jane wale shoshan karte hain, katha me jane wale dash dash ki tarah taliya bajate hain. Ye bade Hindu hain, hum to nahi hain. Shiv Tandav Srotam ka to inko ek line nahi aata. Wo to pehle hi shuruat me sabit ho gaya. Main inse poochta hu ki arey bade Hindu, ab bataiye Gopal Italia ne jo bola, wo Hindu virodhi hai ya Hindu ke paksh me hai? Jo Ram Mandir ke vishe me Kejriwal ne bola, uska statement bhi main suna sakta hu ki Nani ne bola hai Mandir nahi jana hai, Ramji wahan nahi baste. Uske vishe pe apka kya stand hai? Bata dijiye. Tisri baat, jo vakt ke liye apne tan man dhan samarpit kiya tha, kya kisi Hindu pandit ko panch rupee bhi diya hai apne sarkari koosh se? Iska jawab de dijiye na. You ask questions, let her respond. That will be the final words yes yes आप वो पार्टी हैं जिनके मुंह पे राम और बगल में छुरा है और आपके मुंह पे तो राम अच्छा ही नहीं लग रहा आपका बहिष्कार भी हुआ है दूसरा आपने क्या किया आपने अयोध्या में भी अयोध्या में भी स्कैम किया राम मंदिर में वहां पर आपने सुल्तान अंसारी जो एक भगोड़ा है पीओ डिक्लेयर है उससे आपने दो करोड़ में जमीन खरीद दी और अठारह करोड़ में ट्रस्ट को बेची ये करते आप चंदा चोर है आप 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 बताइए कि वो जो जिन्होंने मंदिर तोड़े 350 वाराणसी में काशी में शॉपिंग बॉन्ड बनाने के लिए उनके लिए आपने क्या किया सीआर पाटिल जी की क्षेत्र में एक मंदिर तोड़ा गया अभी किसी बिल्डर को फेवर करने के लिए आपने क्या किया और आप बहिष्कार होकर यहाँ बैठे मुझे बहुत ज्यादा कंफ्यूजन हो रहा है ये क्या चल रहा है अब पांच सेकंड ले सकता हूँ मारिया जी मैं एक भारतीय मुसलमान हूं पर मैंने राम मंदिर के लिए चंदा दिया केजरीवाल ने कितना चंदा दिया जरा बता दीजिए चुनावी रिसीट जो चंदे की रिसीट आप चंदा चोर हैं मैं बता अब छोड़ दीजिए अब जाइए और बहिष्कार आतंकियों का करना है आपने आतंकियों को पूरे मुस्लिम समुदाय से कैसे जोड़ा ये परवेश वर्मा जी ने नहीं पर आपने जरूर मुसलमानों का बहुत बड़ा अपमान किया है मुसलमान देख रहे हैं मुसलमान देख रहे हैं आपने कैसे अपमान किया है आप अपमान करते हैं उनका रोज दिन सुबह शाम ऐसी पार्टी में होकर जो आपका बहिष्कार कर आप परवेश वर्मा ने कहीं पर भी समुदाय का नाम लिया तो बता दीजिए परंतु मुझे बताइए की राम मंदिर का अपोज करना है राम मंदिर नहीं जाना है गोपाल इटालिया के बयानों पर एक वाक्य आप नहीं बोल पाए गोपाल इटालिया के अलावा स्वस्तिक की चिंता अपमान करने वाले केजरीवाल के ट्वीट पे एक वाक्य नहीं बोल पाए कश्मीरी हिंदुओं के नरसंहार पे हंसने वाले केजरीवाल पे एक वाक्य नहीं बोल पाए और आप शिव तांडव स्त्रोतम को भी कंप्लीट नहीं कर पाए जाकर पढ़ लीजिए श्लोक पढ़ लीजिए फिर आप इस तरीके का दावा कीजिएगा चलिए आपको बहिष्कार करना है आप केवल बीच में बोलने के अलावा कोई डिबेट नहीं कर पाए स्पार्क ऑफ बाय योर पार्टी चीफ प्रियंका थ्रू दैट प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस सो द क्वेश्चन दैट विल बी आस्ड इज is this not hindutva card that you are playing keeping purely and purely gujarat elections in we mind are say one yes party. or no we are one party which are sending our people to to buzurgon ko teerth yatra inke yahan par pm cm tax payer ke paise se jaate hain teerth yatra pe hamare yahan par tax payer ke money se hum bechte hain logo ko teerth yatra pe all right what is that priyanka ka we are doing we are constantly and shahzad punawala here in the studio really appreciate your time thank you so much for joining us on that note we are slipping into a short break after that I'll be getting you an exclusive interview with Lord Meghna Desai on the new team Rishi Sunak. What does it actually mean for India and for Great Britain? back united kingdom where team rishi sunak is taking shape with a mission to stabilize the economy is our next focus rishi sunak has filled the top posts in his cabinet with jeremy hunt and ben wallace continuing in their positions as chancellor of the exchequer and defense secretary james cleverly has been given the post of foreign secretary while robert jernick is immigration minister but sunak is already under fire over the reappointment of Swela Braverman as the home secretary remember she resigned over the breach of ministerial code for handling confidential information through her private email however beyond the domestic turmoil where all opinion polls cite a labor sweep if elections are announced braverman has raised an alarm in india she is known for her anti immigration politics and even said 
that Indians overstay their visas the most. She has also opposed the free trade agreement with India claiming it will increase the number of Indian migrants. Naturally, Sunak is having a hard time defending her. Here's a look at an interaction from the parliament. Was his Home Secretary right to resign last week for a breach of security? Prime yeah. Minister! Well, Ms. Mr Speaker, can I thank the uh, Ronald gentleman for, for his kind and indeed generous uh, welcome to the dispatch box. I look forward to Prime Minister's question time with him, and I know that we will have no doubt robust exchanges, but I hope that they can also be serious and grown up. So I look forward to it. Well, uh, he, it, look, he, he asked uh, about the Home Secretary. The Home Secretary made an error of judgment, but she recognised that. She raised the matter and she accepted her mistake. And that's why, that's why I was delighted to welcome back into a united cabinet that brings experience stability to the heart of government. And let me tell you, Mr Speaker, what the Home Secretary will be focused on. She'll be focused on cracking down on criminals, on defending our borders, while the party opposite remains soft on crime and in favour of unlimited immigration. And joining me now is Lord Meghna Desai, member of the House of Lords. Lord Desai, really appreciate your time. You have a new Prime Minister in Rishi Sunak. The process of choosing his ministers has begun. Some have been reappointed, some have been sagged. How are you looking at this new team, Rishi Sunak? Well, you know, what that means is that he is trying to maintain all the factions in the party happy because the party is very divided between different factions and different and they have to now agree at least until the election time so that the party can continue to rule in, in an orderly fashion. Otherwise, they'll have to face an election and they're not ready for that. So the first step of having a cabinet of all parts is a good, good move. Now his other problem he'll have to begin to solve. One concern is of Suela Braverman who quit the government few days before Liz Truss's resignation and is back in Sunak government as Home Secretary. Braver Man is known to have controversial view as far as India is concerned, uh, particularly to do with Indians overstaying their visas and also regarding FTA. So what does this appointment mean for India? Well, you know, Suela Braverman is from India. She's of Indian origin. As much as uh, you know, people say Rishi Sunak, but Rishi Sunak was born here. Uh, in Britain. I think basically Priti Patel, who was the Home Secretary before Suela Brahman, she was also tough on immigration. But I think you have to make a distinction between people who try to arrive in UK without a visa, without a passport, as refugees and against them. What she said about Indians, the Indians, when they come to UK, overstay their welcome beyond the visa limits. That's all she pointed out. And that is not anti-Indian prejudice. That is basically a statement of fact. So I think people should give Suela Browerman a little bit more time to settle down in her job and do her job. Okay, so you are of the opinion that she should be given more time. Uh, but looking at overall immigration policies, which include visa for Indians, is the key contentious point in the FTA, uh, which India-UK had hoped to sign by this Diwali but Indian origin Home Secretary Suela Braverman uh, is being seen as largely responsible for derailing it. The question then is, can Rishi Sunak give FTA a fresh push? Look, basically one has to understand that Rishi Sunak is a British Prime Minister. He is British born. Yes, he is from an Indian ancestry, but he will not particularly favor India just because he is supposed to be Indian. He has to look after British interests. And in Britain, immigration happens to be a controversial topic. Under Priti Patel, it caused a lot of controversy because she wanted to uh, you know, to export all the legal uh, So I think give the government a bit more time. Let the FTA be negotiated 
negotiated properly. And I think when the FTA is negotiated, India can make its demands and then UK will will respond. So I don't think people should imagine that, oh, because Rishi Sunak is uh, Indian, uh, India will have an easy ride in the FTA. No country gives another country an easy ride when it comes to FTA. FTA is very important for both countries. And I think a little bit of patience and, and uh, India should defend India's interest and UK will defend UK's interest. I don't think anybody should expect that Rishi Sunak will just let uh, let India walk all over. Lord Mignan Desai, uh, let's look at this team. Ben Wallace as the Secretary of Defense, Liz Tr she, he was also in Liz Truss's cabinet. He has been retained. Pan Modern uh, has been made law, a leader of the House of Commons. Several uh, such reappointments have happened. Many are of the opinion, and I've been reading a lot of analysts who have commented on it, they are of the opinion that this, this is perhaps old wine in the new bottle. Well, as I was saying, he has to have a cabinet which is a combination of all the different factions. So people who are under uh, Boris Johnson, some of them are here. Some of the people Boris Johnson sect are back, like Michael Gove. Some of the people who are under uh, Liz Truss are also back. He's trying to make as little change as possible so that he doesn't end up fighting the inside cabinet battles, but concentrates on other problems. I mean, right now, what matters is that the cabinet works harmoniously and begins to solve the really big problems we have, which are about inflation and possible recession, and of course, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, which is very, very serious, and of course, energy prices. So I think he has a lot of problems, and the FTA with India is not a major issue. It will be solved, but it is not urgent. It will be solved, but it's not urgent. Uh, let me ask the final question, and this is about Suela Braverman. Uh, she had linked the riots in Leicester post-India-Pakistan match to uncontrolled migration of people from subcontinent who failed to integrate into the host country. Her views on migration has been very, very controversial. In matter of deportation, she follows the footstep of her predecessor, Preeti Patel, who wanted to deport illegal migrants to Rwanda. Uh, so what will be it now? Should, how should India be viewing uh, with her being someone who will be helming the home department? As I was saying before, Priti Patel was against people who arrived on boats in the channel, pretended to be refugees, and once they arrive on British soil, they may qualify to be citizens. She wanted to stop that flow. Other immigration, which happened regularly, was going through the standard routine uh, laws. Now, Sura Bra, I, I don't know why everybody is making such a big fuss about Sura Brahman, because she is new, but, but she, as, as a minister, she is of Indian origin, but she is also, like Rishi Sunak, a British person. And I think she has been good enough uh, and noticed well enough to have been made cabinet minister by two prime ministers. I think have patience with Sura Brahman. Don't, as it were, make a fuss about it. And in the FTA negotiations, these problems can be brought up in a proper technical way. Don't say, oh, Sura Brahman is against all Indians. She is not. All that she said was that some people do not obey the law mm. of the land and overstay their welcome in UK. Now, that's a per uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed, say, in US or Canada or anywhere else. So she is not saying anything which is out of uh, out of uh, uh, the standard rules. All right, uh, Lord Meghna Desai, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. We are putting out all those interviews on news18.com. That's all for me. Thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Are two public office in this country. But in Mr. Ovesi's party, despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations, the national president is a man, the different state presidents that they have in five.
and thanks a lot for staying with us here at CNN News 18. You're watching The Right Stand with me, Rudhima Bhatnagar. Now, there is no denying the fact that the Indian rupee has been falling. With the rupee falling to a new low of 82 against the US dollar, which is a fall of 12% in the calendar year of 2022, the cold comfort that it has held up better than other currencies actually no longer holds. And anyone who understands the basics of economics knows the value for currency depreciating is because of both internal as well as external factors. Since little can be done about external factors, the key is to focus more on internal factors or the macroeconomic fundamentals. But the Aam Aadmi Party and Chief Minister of Delhi, Arvind Kejriwal, seem to have found a new solution to tackle this economic crisis. Now, according to the Aam Aadmi Party, the solution is simple. All you need to do is to print images of Hindu gods and goddesses like Lakshmi Ji and Ganesh Ji on currency notes along with that of Mahatma Gandhi and that will bring prosperity to the country. The BJP on expected lines has now slammed this move, calling it a soft Hindutva push and a U-turn by the Aam Aadmi Party, which they believe has been seen as anti-Hindu. So is there any optimism with what the AAP is suggesting or is it just appeasement politics? भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर एक तरफ गांधी जी की तस्वीर है वो वैसे ही रहनी चाहिए लेकिन दूसरी तरफ श्री गणेश जी की और श्री लक्ष्मी जी की तस्वीर भारतीय करेंसी के ऊपर लगाई जाए जिस प्रकार से यू टर्न किया जाता है आज ही हमारे सामने पूर्णतः उतर के आ रहा है जनता उस वीडियो को देखे जिसमें केजरीवाल जी कह रहे थे कि मैं तो किसी भी कीमत पे उस राम मंदिर में आराधना करने पूजा करने नहीं जाऊंगा ये तो एक फेस सेविंग प्रोग्राम है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी चूंकि इन लोगों ने इतना गाली दिलवा दिया है अपने मंत्रियों से अपने गुजरात प्रदेश अध्यक्ष से हिंदू देवी देवताओं को कि अब इनको समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि हम कौन सा चेहरा लेके जनता के बीच में जाए मुझे हैरानी है कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी भारत की करेंसी पर महालक्ष्मी जी और गणेश जी की तस्वीरें लगाने का विरोध कर रही है मुझे बहुत आश्चर्य है हम तो आस्तिक लोग हैं हम ये मानते हैं कि भगवान के आशीर्वाद के बिना बड़ा काम तो छोड़िए कोई छोटा काम भी सफल नहीं हो सकता What is the rationale that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party or why are they making such an argument? Let's break down those details. The first reasoning that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party is this, that the country will prosper if the currency actually has images of god and goddesses like Lakshmi and Ganesh. The other rationale that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party is that our efforts actually won't yield any results if the gods are not blessing us. The other reasoning that has been given by them is that we do need the Almighty's blessings to stabilize the economy, something that has actually rattled a lot of economists across the country. The other rationale that has been given and a comparison has been drawn to what takes place in Indonesia. They're saying that when a Muslim nation has picture of Lord Ganesha on its currency, then why can't India? Why is this problematic? I'll just tell you about that in just a bit. The other reasoning that has been given by the Aam Aadmi Party and as I said, the comparison that is being drawn by Indonesia, that if Indonesia can go forward and do such a thing, why can't India? But as I said, this is where the big problem lies. When you give the example of a nation like Indonesia, we need to see where its currency actually holds. Today, Indonesia's currency is one of the worst performing currencies. Let me give you some statistics. It fell to its lowest level against the dollar since April 2020. It fell by almost 3% by the end of August against a forceful dollar. It slid almost 2.5% in the month of September 
which means it was its largest monthly fall this year. It has lost 9.3% against the dollar from December 2021 to October 2022. Thus, the larger question that we're going to take to our guests this evening is this. Is the Ahmadmi party just cashing in on the Hindutva pitch because of state elections? Let me also now bring in our guest to take this discussion forward. We have the national spokesperson of the BJP, Sanju Varma. We have political analyst, Varun Singh. We have spokesperson of the Ahmadmi Party, Reena Gupta. And we also have author and activist, Rahul Ishwar. Good to have all of you on the broadcast with us. Reena Gupta, I want to begin with you. And I'm not going to mince any words because this is something that has a lot of significance, whether political parties would want to believe it or not. As I said when I started the show, the economy is going through a turmoil. Yes, India has done a lot better vis-a-vis -vis other currencies, but a lot still needs to be done. Are political parties like the Aam Admi Party today thinking that voters or citizens on the ground are that gullible that will, they will just believe absolutely anything? What is the rationale that has been given by the Aam Admi Party as a fix to the economy? So, Ridhima, as you correctly said, that the economy is in bad shape. We have high inflation. We have unemployment at 40, 45 years high. The rupee is just sliding down. In the past 12 months itself, there's been a depreciation of 10%. So, at this time, we need divine intervention. We need the gods to come and save us from the mismanagement and misgovernance of Bharatiya Janata Party. And that is the reason why the Honorable Chief Minister of Delhi has made this proposal. But Ridhima, what I don't understand is a, a party like Bharatiya Janata Party which says, Hamare to kan kan mein Ram hai. Why are they opposing this proposal? We are saying we don't want any credit out of this. Why don't you go ahead and announce it? And if there is any political benefits, any gains to be made, you so go ahead. So Reena and... Gupta, with the logic that the Aam Aadmi Party is putting forward, with that rate, all economists in the country should take retirement. The central bank should shut down because we found a solution as far as the falling rupee and the failing economy is concerned. All I'm trying to understand is, and you're smarter than that, where is it going wrong? Are you actually taking the voters or citizens on the ground for granted that they will buy anything because it is going to be seen, quote-unquote, as a Hindutva push? What have uh, what has the government and all the officers of the government who work on the economy, what have they been doing for all the past 7-8 years? Why is it that even today, 80 crore people are dependent on free ration? What is it all these smart people have been doing? When they have not managed to do anything, what we are saying is that it is time now where we need to pray to gods and goddesses to help us survive this mismanagement and misgovernance. So and rather than coming with concrete solutions of where we are going wrong with our macro economy, economy, you know, economics, the Aam Aadmi Party literally is saying it's all Bhagwan Bharose because we can't do anything more than wait for divine intervention. Sanju Varma. Ridhima, you did not let me complete. You Ridhima, complete. you know, she can't have a monologue. May I come in? Sanju Varma. Yes, thank you. You know, Ridhima, I don't want to sound pompous, but I am an economist. I have been voted amongst the 30 best globally by the global think tank Asia Money. So I think I, I know a lot more about economics than some of the panelists who are trying to give a certificate to the Bharatiya Janta Party. Uh, you know, first and foremost, let's be very clear, the economy is in fine settle. We grew at 8.7% last year and we are likely to grow at anywhere between 68 to 7.5% in the next one year despite Bloomberg saying and IMF saying that China, US, UK, Germany are on the brink of a recession. Point number one. Point number two, when it comes to Indonesia, I think it's a very fallacious comparison. The entire population of Indonesia is barely 28 crores, which is equal to the population of two states in India, Uttar Pradesh no, no. and Gujarat. So that's why I wanted to give and, it to the Aam Aadmi Party that even if we take that comparison, that currency hasn't gone anywhere. So that comparison either way doesn't hold. What I'm yes, essentially trying finish. to understand is how should we see this soft Hindutva push by the Aam Aadmi Party, a party yeah, I'm coming to in that. the past Rindima. that has been seen as anti-Hindu. It is the same Arvind Kejriwal who didn't want the construction Rindima, as far as the Ram Mandir is concerned. 
Ridhima, you did not interrupt the earlier panelist. Please, I request you. I am letting finish. you only respond, Sanju Verma. Yeah. Ridhima, can you stop heckling me? Let me complete. I don't need you to keep intervening. Let me finish. But I'm you letting. But I'm letting you only complete, Sanju Verma. I'm letting you only make the point. Okay, can you stop talking? Can you stop talking for a bit? Let me make my point. I am the anchor. I'll have to You're moderate right? the show, Let right? Me. Yeah, stop moderating when I'm in the midst of making a point. Now, please, can you stop interrupting? Let me make my point. Thank you so much. The most important What? point is this. The most important point is this: that be it. Be it Germany, be it UK, be it the European Union, every single economic zone or country's currency has depreciated by anywhere between 15, 20, 27 percent. The pound has depreciated by 27 percent against the dollar this year alone. The euro zones. Currency has sunk to a 24-year low. Japanese yen has sunk to a 32-year low. So please don't single out the rupee. This is my request to Aam Aadmi Party. And coming to the Hindu topic, do you remember Ridhima? After the Ram Janmabhoomi judgment had already been announced by the Supreme Court, Arvind Kejriwal had the audacity to say this, and I'm quoting him at verbatim. He said, "Mere Ram kabi us mandir mein." निवास नहीं कर सकते जो एक मस्जिद को तोड़कर बनाया गया हो सो ही वॉज एक्चुअली रनिंग फाउल ऑफ इवन दी सुप्रीम कोर्ट वर्डिक एंड देन मनीष सिसोडिया रिमेंबर आफ्टर दी राम जन्मभूमि वर्डिक से मंदिर की जगह यहां यूनिवर्सिटी बना देते तो ज्यादा अच्छा रहता यूनिवर्सिटी ना बनाकर मंदिर बनाने से क्या राम राज्य वापिस आ जाएगा एंड दिस इज द सेम मनीष सिसोडिया टूडे हु इज अक्यूज नंबर वन in the delhi excise liquor scam and what did sanjay singh say about uh, hindus mile mulayam kanshi ram hawa mein ud gaye jai shri ram okay this is the manner in which senior aam aadmi party leaders have blocked hindus and hindutva we don't sanjay you will appreciate I'll, i'll i've let you made your points now can i continue at least moderating the show now but reena i want yeah. to bring you back in the conversation This is where it becomes problematic for even the voters on the ground. I want to go back to a time when Arvind Kejriwal was sworn in for the first time. That speech was actually seen as a game changer that will he actually bring change? At that time, he had invoked gods of all religions because he said that I take pride in the fact that we have diversity and we represent various religions in this country. somewhere down the line where has that changed is it simply because the aam aadmi party today realizes that the state elections which are coming which is gujarat and himachal pradesh is not going to turn around for them until unless this hindutva push is seen by the aam aadmi party ridhima first of all you must not interrupt me please allow me to complete my thought so i want to first respond to some of the uh, the wrong statements that sanju verma was making first of all the per capita income of uk and germany and france and america is nowhere compared to the per capita income of india so please do not compare these economies in the same line point number 1 can you define per capita income you do not even know the definition of per capita income do you know what is the definition of per capita income do you know the difference between gdp and gnp do you know the difference between aadhar card okay. and ration card Sanju Verma let let the Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson make her point and we'll appreciate if this I is I challenge you tell me that let let her let her, point, let her make a point let her make a point GDP and GNP ke beech ka difference malum nahi yahan par aakar economy par bhashan Sanju Verma let's keep this civil you expected uninterrupted time i'm assuming the Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson also wants the same go ahead So let me tell Sanju Verma that she has been rated best economist by some third rated magazine I used no, to work Asia Money today. is a global think tank madam Asia Money is a global think tank which okay. people like you wouldn't know Asia yeah. Money is a global think tank Okay okay kuch padh likh kar aaya karo debate par Okay kuch padh likh kar debate par aaya Sanju Verma I unfortunately Asia will have to ask you to not interrupt Asia because Asia I want Reena Gupta to make a point I have other panelists waiting as well Reena go ahead Pudima you have to mute her this is not fair I must get a chance to respond just because she is from the ruling party does not mean that she can you know uh, just keep interrupting 
So for Sanjay Verma's information, I have had a long career at the World Bank and I have not been rated the best economist by some third-rate magazine. So now coming back to the economy in this country, if the economy is doing so well, why is it that 80 crore population of this country is dependent on free ration of the government? Okay, no, Reena, what answer that specific question. Why are we seeing a change in stance by the Ahmadmi Party? Is it only because they fear they're losing ground in the state elections? Answer that. There is no change in stance, Rudima. We are still saying that we are still talking about schools, we are still talking about hospitals, we are still talking about roads, we are still talking about having access to basic services for every citizen of this country. And this is how we define our Ram Raj. Hamare Ram Raj mein koi bhuka nahi rahega. Hamare Ram Raj mein sabko shiksha milegi. Hamare Ram Raj mein sabko aspatal milega. Agar Bharatiya Janta Party ne 27 saal mein kuch kiya hota, to aaj Gujarat mein Ram Raj hota. Ek party 27 saal tak ek state mein kaam kare, tab bhi us state mein itni buri halat hai na school hai, na aspatal hai, na sarke hai. Yehi karan hai ki aaj Bharatiya Janta Party is so rattled. So we are not changing our stand. We are still talking about schools and hospitals and roads. But we are saying at the same time, okay. also talking about the fact that we need the blessings of gods and goddesses. If we need to move this country out of this economic doldrum, which the okay. Bharatiya Party's corruption has put this country into. Varun, I want to bring you in the conversation and you and Rahul Ishwar have been patiently waiting. I'm sorry I couldn't come to you earlier. But what I'm, what I'm trying to understand, this is a question, as I said, at the cost of sounding repetitive, voters and citizens are asking these questions quite loudly. That there has been a clear shift as far as the comments that we've seen from various leaders of the Ahmadmi Party. The BJP is saying, you don't have to go back a lot in time, just see what happened on Diwali. There was a cracker ban in place, which the BJP is seeing as anti-Hindu. Harish Khurana of the Delhi BJP has also put out certain advertisements of newspapers, which has Arvind Kejriwal wishing Diwali to people at large. They are saying, even if your Diwali greeting doesn't have images of god and goddesses like Lakshmi and Ganesh, what are you talking about fixing the economy? Do you buy that argument? You know, Rithima, first of all, I give you free liberty to interrupt me and moderate this panel because you are the moderator. And secondly, let me tell you, I was expecting uh, better from an uh, IRS officer who is now the Chief Minister of a state that he would know the rules and regulations and what are passed in the parliament. This is not the first time that something like this sort of replacing an image or bringing in more images in the currency note has come up. But in October 2010, the then government had set up a committee, the RBI had set up a committee to deliberate whether new images can be brought in. And I'm reading from the answer to the reply that late finance minister Arun Jaitley gave when, in the house when this question was raised. I would just read one line, the committee after due consideration decided that no other personality could better represent the ethos of India than Mahatma Gandhi and hence it was decided that no other image will be brought in. Mm. So expecting an IRS to know these basic things was one of the basic facts that I think everyone was expecting but no as a Hindu, I feel good that a party which till now was not so Hindu-Hindu and atheist who has recently converted into a devote Hindu is now asking for an image to be brought in of Ganesha and Lakshmi. But as a Hindu who is learned and educated, I don't think these things work to bring the economy back on track. The economy is not derailed when compared to other nations. The economy is fine, doing good. but. Here it is clear. See, you know, the moment you see elections coming in, in material which political party it is, they run to they run to temples, they run to see and take seek blessings of God. Ahmadi Party is a political party, and Arvind Kejriwal is its come, uh, you know head. Obviously, he is also trying to seek in the same thing. He has realized that his leaders have made blunders in Gujarat. And uh, you know the kind of statements I do not want to even repeat what his state president had even said earlier in Gujarat. Those things are not working in favor of Ahmadi Party. And obviously, as a political party which wants to win elections, he is choosing something. Just say Mulayam Singh Yadav ji ke bete Akhilesh ji ko Krishna dikhai de rahe the. All of a sudden, we see Arvind Kejriwal seeing gods and goddesses, and he wants them back. So it's a clear political and election-winning uh, agenda. I think so right now. But my only concern is that Janta is more smart hai. And Rahul, yeah, I want I to bring you, and Rahul, I want to bring you in here. Do you feel that this is really unfortunate that we are seeing the religion card being used by various political parties when it becomes convenient to them? 
The sound by that Sanju Verma was quoting is there for all of us to see. Arvind Kejriwal had said exactly this. Mera Ram kisi ki masjid todkar nahi bas sakta. But today we are seeing that same Aam Aadmi Party have this soft Hindutva push. Is it now becoming convenient for political parties to use this card when elections are nearing? And more Maryam. important, and more importantly, Rahul, are citizens actually buying this? Ma'am, the reality of politics everywhere is of two spectrums. One, a right identity-oriented spectrum, and on the left, there is a left economic spectrum. In India, usually the winning formula is uh, left-wing economics plus right-wing identity flashing, or right-wing identity flashing plus uh, Gandhian socialism followed by BJP and the other parties. So this has been a winning formula. Arvind Kejriwal, as we all know, is a populist who is populist, you know, who has a centre-left economic plan who is inclusive in economics at the same point of time he would like to recite hanuman chalisa he would like to invoke hindu gods because he know that is the majority he has been a very craftful politician so you know this is the winning formula what up really believes will face the votes on one hand they will you know it's something like ram and roti usually regarding bjp the analyst will say bjp usually follows a ram and roti policy so these are the various combinations that people are trying and second i think what arun kejriwal said is symbolic not substantial he, you know, nobody seriously believes by invoking any god or yeah. any deity in you know, to, to bring economics. But rather, it was a cultural flashing point uh, to substantiate the point of the Hindu majority vote bank. That, see, I am also along with you. Maybe some bad comments in the past by his yeah. ministers. Other people might have invoked this. But it is a matter of fact that in Indonesia and the other nations, or even in America, if God be trust, such kind of divinity or sacredness is at, you know, attributed to wealth. So, you know, as a suggestion, you can consider it. As we all know, it is not okay. practical. You already okay. have a... Sanju Verma, I want you to respond to the criticism that's now coming in from the Aam Aadmi Party. And they're saying this, that till now, the BJP had been using the Hindutva push or the Hindutva card when it was convenient to them. Today, if we're beating them at their own game, why is the BJP rattled? They are saying the BJP stands exposed today when they object the wanting of printing of images of gods and goddesses. Okay. You know, Ridhima, uh, I just want to lay a couple of facts for your audience. First and foremost, last year, when the local body elections in Gujarat were held, out of 572 seats, BJP won 486. That is a strike rate of 85%. The Aam Army Party got 27 seats, which is a strike rate of 4.7%. I am surprised, actually I am amused, a party with a strike rate of 4.7% says that the party with a winning rate of 85% is rattled. No, we are not rattled. Then again in October 2021, you had the Gandhi and other local body polls. Out of 44 seats, BJP won 41 seats. That is a strike rate of more than 93%. Do you know how many seats Aam Aadmi Party won? It won a princely one seat. That translates into a pathetic strike rate of 2.2%. But I know economics is not something which is uh, easily understood by the likes of uh, Reena Gupta or her party bosses. And madam, this debate is not about Sanju Varma, but Asia Money rankings are given by Fortune 500 companies. Hence, next time before blabbering, go and read Wikipedia and then come and debate with me. And I want to tell you one more thing, Ritima. No, but Sanju, no, no, you look at Rajendra Pal Gautam. Hmm. Look at just 10 seconds. Look hmm. at Rajendra Pal Gautam. I was on your channel and I remember that an Aam Aadmi Party spokesperson was there and yes. the person refused to apologize despite Rajendra Pal Gautam saying ki hum Ganesh mein vishwas nahi rakte, hum Gauri Mata mein vishwas nahi rakte, hum Durga Mata mein vishwas nahi rakte, Hindu dharm is equal to uh, devil incarnate. Did Arvind Kejriwal, apart from removing him or you know whether he resigned, that is besides the point, has he been expelled from the Aam Aadmi Party? A man openly abuses our gods and goddesses. Arvind Kejriwal ne kya Rajendra Pal Gautam ko expel kiya hai? The answer is no. Hmm. Arvind Kejriwal is a cutter Hindu vadi on odd days, on even days, he becomes anti-Hindu. He is playing Dr. respond to the allegations and that the BJP, Ayin. it's not just the BJP today, even the Congress, the Shiv Sena, they've all hit out at you saying, one, this is something that is unimaginable that you putting a solution to the failing economy with printing images of God and goddesses. And more importantly, the question that is being raised is, has Aam Aadmi Party forgotten its original identity today?
Rizima, we have not forgotten our identity. We are still talking about good schools, good hospitals, good roads, and we are going to seek votes in the name of the good work that we have done in Delhi and Punjab, and the good work that we plan to do in uh, in Gujarat. But How Rizima, many hospitals have you set up in Delhi? How many schools have you set up in Delhi? Okay. How many colleges did you set up okay. in Delhi? Sanju Verma, no, I am running out of time. I want to give the final no, words to Reena. Reena, you make your point. Delhi. Make your point. No, one hospital that you one set up in Sanju Delhi. Verma, let her make her point. I am running out no, of time as well. Reena, you set up in Delhi. I San challenge you. Sanju Verma, I you made your point. It was uninterrupted. Sanju Verma, let's have no. the same courtesy to the other panelists as well. Reena, make your point. I'm running out of time. Vidima, the point is that BJP has misgoverned Gujarat for 27 years. Now they are realizing that they are losing Gujarat, so they they want to tell us who is a better Hindu and you know how what Hinduism is all about. But Vidima, the question that I want to ask them is that a party which talks about Ram has has even made corruption and has made siphon of money in the in the construction Ram, construction of Ram Mandir temple. So a party like that, how can they come on TV now and question my Hinduism against their Hinduism? I don't need Sanju Verma or the Bharatiya Janata Party to tell me what is a good Hindu. I know what is a good Hindu, and I know what Ram Raj is. And Ram Raj is 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 a state where people have access to good health, good education. People have enough food to eat. There is employment, and this is all that we are talking about. This is what we have done in Delhi, and this is what we are going to do in Gujarat. Absolutely, Rina. Nobody was questioning your faith or your asta. And as Rahul Ishwar was also saying, the intent might be right. The only question is, is it actually a solution to the depleting economy? That question is still out in the open. Unfortunately, I've completely run out of time. I'd like to thank all our guests, Sanju Verma. I've completely run out of time. I appreciate all our guests joining us this evening. We are slipping into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back with another debate. don't need him to comment on us he is a nobody and you should understand that uh ratan shada let me start with you first there are 1.5 million people of indian descent persons of indian origin uh in the uk it's the largest ethnic minority in that country and one among them uh, a british asian of the third generation rishi sunak has become the prime minister of that country shouldn't indians and people of indian heritage all over the world celebrate that Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing. Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back. And hijab has been introduced as an Arabic slavery sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab? Or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so? So this patriarchy, they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, a Muslim woman can become a prime minister in uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere? And okay. the next... If you say Islamic nation next door to us, in Pakistan, there was Bhamedanazi Bhutto. She lost her life. She was not a hijab-wearing politician. In Bangladesh, we had two ladies who became head of the state, prime ministers. They they have, they have are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it is especially Islamic, where you have women becoming head of the state. So this, either you are, you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years, 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular government saw through why they could not get a Muslim prime minister elected. No, and so why in Punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be, uh, can be chief minister. So this hypocrisy of the entire gang is so funny. Let and Sunat did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. He became a prime minister because he worked hard. He worked through the party. 
he rose to the top and we was complimented for that yeah Not no no Welcome back. Thanks a lot for staying with us. We now going to talk to you about the big story that we're tracking this evening. There has been a big development in the Coimbatore blast case. The Tamil Nadu government today has decided to recommend the transfer of the case to the NIA or the National Investigation Agency. Remember, this in the backdrop of a cylinder explosion in a car that happened near the Kottai Iswaram Temple on Sunday. Five people have been arrested so far and the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act of the UAPA was also invoked against the five accused. Now the Coimbatore police had identified the arrested accused as Mohammad Dala age 25, Mohammad Azruddin age 25, Mohammad Riaz age 27, Firoz Ismail age 27 and Mohammad Nawaz Islam again age 27 all hailing from Coimbatore district. It later emerged that Mubin the man who died in this blast was already examined by the National Investigation Agency way back in 2019 for suspected ties to a radical network related to various activities the BJP remember had already alleged that there was a cover up by the state government resulting in delay of action so the question is is there a lot more than what meets the eye case of a suicide bomber uh, because he makes his intention clear the way he was driving that vehicle the nature of the incident everything points out to the fact that this guy is a very radicalized youth to bring you some very crucial details of what top intel sources are telling us here at CNN News 8 in or why it looks like a failed terror attack look at these details very carefully the plot was to conduct a fidaine style attack what we're also picking up is the attack planned to spread havoc during the festival of deepavali the terror suspect nubin was drilled in 2019 by the nia as i already pointed out a lot is being said about his last whatsapp status message as well i'll talk to you about that in just a bit 78 kg of explosive material was found at mobin's home what was it doing there that's the question that's being raised by the bjp the plot to replicate a 2019 easter sunday attack in sri lanka a lot of parallels being drawn to that a lot of parallels being drawn to the 1998 bomb blast as well because of the usage of cars and similar explosives mobin met isis terrorist azuruddin in prison what was the meeting all about azuruddin has been linked to the easter attack planner zaran hashim as well so a larger nexus at play one suspect linked to al umar terrorist basha as well now remember basha was behind the 1998 coimbatore blast which remember at that point had killed almost 50 people the cops are now calling this a cylinder blast not a suicide attack CCTV visuals are also showing how explosives were actually loaded in that car and all of this happening at the time of Deepavali and outside a temple the timing cannot be missed there is clear proof that ISIS cells are active in the state of Tamil Nadu evidence of efforts by state police to play down the attack that's the allegation that's coming in from the BJP as well let me bring in our newsmaker this evening We have the Tamil Nadu BJP state president K Annamalai now joining us this evening. Sir, we appreciate you taking our time and joining us here in this edition of the Right Stand. I want to understand from you on day one itself, you had said there is a lot more than what meets the eye. How were you so convinced on day one itself? Madam, when the blast happened, immediately a lot of our Kari Kartas and everybody were there in the morning. they have observed nails they have okay. observed nails and ball bearings in that area 
and then only we knew it is not, it is something sinister it is not a simple thing when they were the, the our party functionaries were reporting the local public were reporting when the state police called that is a cylinder blast uh, it was not only worrying it was very shameful matter when there is a ball bearing inside when there is a nail inside a classic case of uh, an explosive thing how can you call that as a cylinder attack then we put pressure on the government with a statement saying please be open this is a terror incident yeah. the government started to demean us we waited for 48 hours when we did not have any other recourse when the government still called that as a cylinder blast then we had to call a major press conference yesterday release out some details and say when all those things are happening when you have ceased explosives in the home more than 40 kg when you are not disclosing you have arrested five people but not booked them under uapa act which is the terrorist act your unlawful activities prevention act you call all this it's a shameful you are trying to cheat the tamil nadu public it is a very serious issue that is happening in coimbatore why do you want to do it then the police were forced to book an uapa then transfer to nim the whole thing looked suspicious from moment to one because how did nails and ball bearings come there when it is a, when it is a smear cylinder blast I also want to talk to you about what you had spoken about Mubeen the one who actually died in this blast and the last WhatsApp message of him that was actually seen are you convinced this was a fidain attack Madam this uh, message apparently he has apparently changed his uh, status of uh, hmm. the WhatsApp uh, message two days before and the wording is very clear in the wording he clearly mentions that the news about my death reaches you forgive my mistake hide my shortcoming participate in my janasa which is funeral and pray for me so this is a very clear statement where he is inviting people to his funeral and the state police hiding that also we 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 were never interested to go and harm any investigation 48 hours when you are refusing to book uapa initially we called the terror attack waited for two full days before calling this as a suicide attack Sure. The police still not responding. We didn't have a choice, madam. When it is very clear the message, the way it was framed, everything looked suspicious because this guy was investigated in 2019 by mm. the NIA during the Easter bombing attack. Also, correct. Coimbatore, that area which was instrumental in the 1998 Coimbatore bomb blast, where more than 60 people died, the area in which the bomb originated, the car originated, mm. everything points to a very telltale sign. that this time that is much more deeper than what the police were talking about i want to understand how are you seeing the move by the state government today today the state government has finally said that we want to make a recommendation for the case to be given over to the nia do you think it's coming too late in the day i mean firstly i'm happy that the case we are happy uh, tamil nadu people the case is going to nia because sure. it's a professional agency they can go to the root of this case find out the real accused the modules which might be active in tamil nadu which is still might be dormant also we want everybody to come out <coughs> madam for a kind information madam 3 months back one person was picked up in erod he was plotting a paris style truck attack and head of tamil nadu uh, the central agencies have picked up he has brought a truck he wanted to take the truck in a ganapati procession and kill people but due to the sensitivity nature of that instant we never disclosed it out there okay in the last month when the pfi got banned in 32 places the functionaries of bjp's houses properties were bombed including bjp office the office in which i am sitting and talking to you now ma'am the head mm. central office in chennai okay this got bombed five five months before by a person so tamil nadu in the last 16 months we are seeing this kind of telltale signs across the state so that is why we are very worried it is becoming a heaven for the anti nationals whereby they are operating at will we are more worried about that we hope nia ma'am for your kind information madam we had a nia in tamil nadu hmm. for two years it was not given a police station status we have written three letters in the last 16 months saying please give a police station status in 2019 when nia picked up somebody the fir was registered in kochi okay because only kochi nia had an fir sure. only last week CM has given permission for the police station state because they are very clear nothing resembling a central government should come inside their state you know what i want to talk to you specifically is about the manner in which this blast happened the timing of it all it happens a day before diwali it happens 
outside a temple. Do you think there was a deliberate attempt to stoke communal passions? Of course, ma'am, there was a deliberate attempt to stroke communal passions. In fact, uh, the day uh, the blast got reported at 4 a.m., when we got to know at 6 a.m. only, we told our party functionaries very clearly nobody should speak. Okay. Except the state president and the designated spokesperson. Nobody will speak anything so that an unrest gets created in Coimbatore, which mm. is right for a communal tension. We stopped our people from reacting, though okay. it was very tense in that morning. But having said it, madam, a day before Deepavali, a car. Uh, I don't think temple was the attack, ma'am. The, the more uh, they want to get into a shopping area. Since okay. the police check post starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, they want to reach that area before 9 and park the car. So luckily, there was a speed breaker outside the temple. When the car was running over, uh, the cylinder head came out and car got stopped. So the plan was to go deep inside the city, probably target a shopping area where people are more crowded a day before the public. So the plot is very sinister. Man. So we hope NIA will get to the root of that issue. You're saying there was a larger sinister plot at play. So are you then worried about a pattern that is emerging from Tamil Nadu because of the various ISIS links that are also emerging from the state? Yes, madam. Uh, uh, because Kerala, the neighboring state, had sent a lot, lot of people to ISIS when ISIS was declaring a state. From Tamil Nadu also, a handful of people have gone to Turkey, Syria to join ISIS. So, uh, powder cake. So Easter bombing, some of the link uh, uh, came to Tamil Nadu, Palakkad, they picked up. Then uh, the police was trying to control. Now, now continuously for 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 for, for the last few months, we are we are, we are seeing uh, central agencies picking up somebody who wanted to do a truck truck style attack like Paris in Erod. Okay. Erod is a place you never hear communal tension. Though, though in the Congo region, Salem is a place you never hear a communal tension because you are picking up radicalized youth from those areas. At, at one end, the state government no agent will come into the state. You cannot have NIA station. The state will manage. When you don't deny the taxes also, hmm. uh, everything is coming out now, madam. Lastly, sir, before I let you go, I want to understand the DMK has taken a couple of days to react. Why do you think that has happened? It's very shameful, ma'am. When the DMK jumps the gun, and they go to reputed national televisions like you and give all kinds of statement about Hindi, this, that. So from yesterday, such a serious nature, they couldn't answer any of the allegations we raised yesterday. And they, there is a total ban of spokesperson going to national media like you and to the state media. Nobody is coming. Nobody is talking, which clearly shows they've got a lot of things to hide. They're trying to hide. I think in the NIA investigation, not only they should investigate who did it, they should also investigate the investigation that happened in the 48 hours. How did the investigation happen? Was there a, was, was there a deliberate omission? Was there a deliberate way to uh, sidestep the investigation? Even that should be taken care by the NIA. That is our new request. Okay. Kiran Namalai, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here on CNN News 18. So the question that we're asking this evening is this. As far as the Coimbatore terror plot is concerned, was there a cover-up? Let me also now bring in our guest to take this discussion forward. We have the Vice President, Tamil Nadu of the BJP, Narayan Tirupati. From the DMK, we have their spokesperson, Salem Darani Dharan, and former DGP of Uttar Pradesh, Vikram Singh. Good to have all of you on the broadcast with us. Salem, I want to begin the conversation with you. The BJP from day one has been saying that there is a lot more than what meets the eye. They are saying there was a deliberate, desperate attempt in form of a cover-up by the state government. Why? No, 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 see, the BJP is doing cheap politics. BJP Tamil Nadu uh, president is doing cheap politics. BJP Tamil Nadu president is not the investigating uh, investigating officer. He's not even the in the union government's uh, organization such as NIA or the IP. The TN police is not hiding from anybody. The job of intelligence is to not leak information. Whatever uh, in investigation we do should remain within us. That has happened and that was communicated with the NIA, NIA and IP. When NIA uh, investigation will proceed, it will be clearly shown that Tamil Nadu government has acted with alacrity. In fact, we have acted with alacrity. It's only because of the efficient law and order situation in Tamil Nadu and proper checking that no untoward incident happened. The extremists could not leak the target because of the TN police checking. Immediately after the incident, TN DGP visited the spot with seniors of, uh, senior officials 
and for example for any crime the first 24 hours is very important True. immediately after the incident tn police viewed the cctv camera and under secrecy only because we maintain secrecy we were able to view the camera and make sure that five people were arrested if you had leaked the information those people would have gone elsewhere no and but the bjp is asking of- this they are saying why isn't the dmk coming on record and calling this a failed terror attack because that's exactly what it was and the examples yeah. that i gave when i started the show of the parallels that are being drawn to the easter bombings or even the 1998 blast and the evidence that has been found on the ground in form of nails and others so is the dm going to go on record and call this a failed terror attack is the question that the bjp is asking no 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 see the question is why should we tell to the bjp opposition party in tamil nadu with less than 5% vote share or to the news media our job is to communicate with the nia or hmm. nia or the ib or the relevant organization if we have not done it then they will come back and tell us right it's not our job to go and tell the media or anyone else proper work has been done with six teams were formed within 12 hours the houses were raided and people were arrested so so no no state government in indian history has acted with this much agility and presence of mind and i would also go further and say that there is there is some rumors that foreign hands were also involved in this if that okay. is the, if that is the case then it's clear intelligence failure with the union government R and IB, Raw and IB, this they are due to provide intelligence. Has Raw and IB come and told uh, that uh, we have provided in, in, uh, intelligence information? No, they have not said. Uh, Pulwama happened. Did Prime Minister Modi, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Modi, resign in 2020 uh, Delhi riot? It was very clear that it okay. was Indian government's uh, intelligence failure. Right. Narayan Tirupati uh, responds to the uh, criticism uh, that's coming in from the DMK, and he's making a valid point. He's saying when the investigation is such a in in such a nascent stage, why should we put out? all the information and look we already acted five people have been arrested and the investigation is now taking its own course why should we disclose all the information to the bjp see <clears throat> what all about the incident uh, my uh, president mr annamalai has very clearly said now there is only one question i want to ask the dmk the chief minister of tamil nadu mr stalin today has ordered recommending the transfer of coimbatore incident to nna but in this in this letter or the order it is mentioned it is very really surprising that the entire statement of the government mentions that this terror incident as a car cylinder blast that's all the absence of words like terrorism or an act of terror terrorist act at any place it has it, there is it, it is it is absent so it is it has very clearly exposed that the tamil nadu government is treating this incident as an ordinary incident of a cylinder blast in the car so the questions what then after that in the letter also they say my question is that why should you transfer a, an ordinary uh, b- cylinder blast case to an nia why so what is the need to strengthen coimbatore district security in lieu of this just a cylinder blast if the tamil nadu government considered to be a case of an ordinary car cylinder blast then why and how the state government speculates a possibility of Uh, as uh, my friend dharanidharan said across the dimensions or international links to the blast what is the need to immediately set up three police stations mm-hmm. in coimbatore for a simple cylinder bust why was it designed to create a special force for an ordinary cylinder bust Why Mr. Dharmadharan, would you want to take that before I bring in Vikram Singh as simple, well? Yeah, 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 that yeah, on yeah, one hand, finish. the state let government me, is saying this is just okay. a cylinder blast. On oh, the other hand, finish. you're increasing vigil on the ground, and let you also want the one second, Narendra Pati. And on the other hand, you also want the case to be shifted to the NIA, which means the state government is also realizing there has been an intelligence failure at the state level as well. Ma'am, if there was an intelligence See? failure, how do you think these five people would have been arrested, in, immediately investigated, and UAP would have been filed? There was no, no intelligence failure. Was intelligence job is to maintain secrecy. Ah, not before police. Just, not, ah, see, if you have not, it's not mean that we have not maintained, we have not done the uh, proper work, right? It's baffling that an IPS officer, ex-IPS officer, could not understand the SOP of a terrorist act. I am not even saying that investigation will say what it is, but across the world. Information in such situations is kept secret. Even the High Court and Supreme Courts have urged the state governments to keep secrecy. If the supposed uh, extremists are caught, it's only because of the DMK government. We are doing our job. Unnecessarily, BJP is doing really? politics and okay. helping this terrorist to escape. That is the problem. They should keep quiet, cooperate with the state Let government. Let me let you. You are not allowed to finish. Okay, okay. Narayan Tirupati, make your point. Yeah. See all these things. We need to understand that the government, the Tamil Nadu government, the DMK, 
does not want to show to the world that this is act of terror why it is missing see suppose in case that as as mr anamalai had said uh, this uh, incident has not happened what would have happened this car had reached some other place in the morning crowded place before before the diwali day mm. what would have happened and that was the plot that that what was that that is what we are saying and they are not bothered why the dmk president mr stalin has not condemned so far why, what is the intention of the government why it is covering up that is what we are asking you are not bothered about the people of tamil nadu you are not bothered about the lives of the people that is what we are asking vikram By singh God, i want no, to no, understand no, no. from the one sec one sec one sec vikram singh has been patiently happened. waiting let me Otherwise, bring in him there, 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 vikram singh what i want to understand is what was essentially being seen as a cylinder blast but with the details that are now emerging of the man who has died who was already interrogated by the NIA in 2019 and all the links that are emerging of those five who've been arrested is it fair to call this a failed terror attack Rajima with my experience I can tell you this is nothing but a failed terrorist attack all the ingredients are shaking from the rooftops the recovery of 75 kilograms of explosive from the house of the deceased Mobeen the shrapnels the marbles the iron nails the aluminum nails the ball bearings they all go to indicate that they were weapons of massive offense and mass destruction and collateral damage that it did not happen is a matter of tremendous good luck for everybody and these actions and these incidents governmental harmony and national security are best left aside and politics does not penetrate into these sensitive issues there is business known as right to know and need to know of course there cannot be any premature disclosures when it comes to such sensitive investigation but yes the people have a right to know that there is a terrorist attack with international ramifications azharuddin was not a child he was interrogated by the nia in 2019 True. and if he was hobnobbing with mobile then it was something that he should have been flagged his movement should have been flagged he should have been in a constant watch well it is a matter of satisfaction that the government has chosen to write to hand over the investigation to the nia but the fact of the matter is that it is a failed terrorist attack because there's a world of difference between an ordinary cylinder blast and such a blast wherein it was almost a killing machine that has been rigged up by a potential terrorist look what his last words were they are indicative of the fact that he was a fidai sure. and he had programmed and chosen mm. his words so that he becomes immortal and for posterity that did not happen for him but yes the people have a right to know okay. what international ramifications are there and where they are living and what precautions they need to take Selim, two this things is that i want to understand have. from you and this is what the bjp is asking one they are asking that you are the party in power you have the state government so why was there complete silence over the last two days more importantly there is a big allegation that is being made by ke anamalai who is the bjp president as far as tamil nadu is concerned he is saying the temple wasn't even the main target it was a shopping area close to the temple and if that went through god forbid we don't know how many casualties would have followed see i think the ex ips officer should be a novel writer you can't uh, uh, no, speak on illusion you. right don't listen you. you can't speak on illusion how no 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 people. listen i'm not saying i'm not saying like this you do not know what was the target how do you know what was the target how do you know what was the target How, how can he know? How does he know? Is he, is he part of the Tamil uh, 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 Union government like intelligence? This. Have some responsible talk. What? No, no, no. Okay. Tell me your point. Why the silence by the state government? How does he know? And did we miss the original target, which was actually an area nearby? Only the DMK people. Okay. Narendra Modi, let him make his point. No, no. The DMK don't understand. How does he know? You see, the intelligence of the Union government. He was just a middle level officer, ex officer. In Karnataka state, nothing to do with the intelligence. Has he ever worked with intelligence? No. How does he know? So I'm not saying I'm not saying yes or, or denying. I'm saying we do not know. Let the investigative officers do their job. Like the DGP sir who spoke earlier said, these are matters of national security. The DGP sir, we should not do politics that, uh, with them. There was no terror angle. Only to because state. of politics we are discussing this. Ah, Let the state government and the why, union government do their job. Of, uh, this is uh, cheap uh, politics that okay. by Tamil Nadu. You know, Narayan, what I want to understand is between this blame game, aren't we doing a disservice to the investigation? Because he thinks. When there is communal divide, communal harmony is disturbed. He will have few chances. This one okay. percentage will increase from two to. Narayan Tirupati, I'm running out of time. I want to understand this from you. While the DMK is saying we've done everything in our part, we were 
ready with all sort of proof. We wanted to take it slow. We didn't want to jump the gun either. Arrests have already been made. And now we're saying transfer it to the NIA. I'm trying to understand between this political back and forth, aren't we doing a disservice to the investigation? See, we have to understand this first. The people of Tamil Nadu should have been alerted because it was uh, the, the sir, day previous the uh, day to sir. Diwali. The so the people should have known this. So you have right. totally hidden everything from the people of Tamil Nadu. The DGP sir, said even, that there is no terror angle to this issue. The first that day, why oh, you have not done that? Five or, people, or uh, or the CCTV has very clearly exposed. Five people carrying explosives. You have, you have definitely, you should have told that. The three days have gone. After 72 hours, you are... Did anything to happen? NIA. You should have done this on 21st, 23rd itself. This is what we have been saying. You have detained more than another 8%. Okay, Mr. Mohanji Ji. Pati, but this is what the DMK is now saying, that yes, you wanted the case to be transferred to the NIA. That's exactly the recommendation that has been made by the state government today. And they're saying, on our part, we've already made some arrests. The investigation is already taking place. And unfortunately, we'll have to leave that conversation there. I appreciate all our guests taking our time and joining us on this edition of The Right Stand. With that, it's a wrap from my side. Brass Tacks with Zaka Jacob is up next. You refer to as an Amanatullah Khan. They have a Tahir Hussain who used to be an MLC. But yes. I, I want to get to the larger point. Both uh, Ratan yeah. Sharda and Sumant also referred no, to one, this. So I want to ask Mohammed Fa Farhan. No, no, just, give me, just give me 10 one, seconds. Yeah, Mohammed yeah. Farhan is a spokesperson of the MIM party. Mohammed Farhan Saab. जो आपके राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष श्री असदुद्दीन ओवैसी ने बोला वो अच्छी बात है किसी को कोई ऐतराज नहीं है और आई वी लॉस्ट हिम लेट्स गो टू अंबर जैदी अंबर यू नो नो वन हैज अ प्रॉब्लम विद व्हाट मिस्टर ओवैसी सेड द प्रॉब्लम इज हिज ओन डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स व्हेन इट कम्स टू हिज ओन पार्टी एवरीवन यू नो हैज नो प्रॉब्लम विद अ हिजाब वेयरिंग वुमन बिकमिंग अ प्राइम मिनिस्टर एज लॉन्ग एज ही और शी इज कैपेबल एज लॉन्ग एज ही और शी गेट्स इलेक्टेड टू पब्लिक ऑफिस इन दिस कंट्री but in mr ovc's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they are all men all mlas that they have across five or six states where mim has mlas they are all men uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men so where is a woman hijab wearing or otherwise in mr ovc's party in any position of leadership absolutely right uh, uh, chika because uh, as they say uh, charity begins at home and whatever uh, ovsi ji is preaching he doesn't practice that so he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation we need to like uh, in our country if we talk about the muslim women especially their literacy rate is so low he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women they, they, he doesn't care about the health care of muslim women he doesn't give that equal rights that the muslim women as uh, the islam or sharia as women even uh, the cons constitution for that matter but they they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the muslim women should get but he is just preaching what is like uh, he should also like uh, he i mean i just want to ask one question to uh, osa ji Uh, he should at, at least give up on his mp seat from hyderabad and nominate at least a woman from his party and he should give a chance to uh, become a prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least and then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and uh, yell out to, to the people what he is trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that uh, in india muslim are being targeted just because, because of their religious identities for hijab for topi for beef or for for all these things which is absolutely not right he needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue the work on ground okay amina sherwani you know i'm i'm taking ahead what the point that ambar zaidi was making that again i have no quibble with mr uh, mr ovesi wanting to see in his lifetime a burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the prime minister of this country surely if that person is capable if that Hello and welcome I'm Shilpa Ratnam and you're watching the morning news on CNN News 18. Starting off with the news coming in about the Coimbatore cylinder blast, the NIA to step into the case.
case of a suicide bomber uh, because he makes his intention clear the way he was driving that vehicle the nature of the incident everything points out to the fact that this guy is a very radicalized youth The Tamil Nadu government has decided to recommend the transfer of the Coimbatore Sirinda blast case to the National Investigation Agency. Chief Minister M K Stalin has said that the decision to hand over the investigation to the central agency was taken at a meeting considering the incident's possible dimensions and connections beyond the scope of the state. Meanwhile, BJP Tamil Nadu Chief Minister K Annamalai has accused the DMK government of going slow on the probe into the blast. Remember one person was shot to death after an LPG cylinder inside a vehicle that he was driving exploded near a temple on October 23rd. Five people have been arrested so far and UAPA has been invoked against the five accused. The CCTV footages from uh, the cameras located in and around the scene of crime are uh, being collected and uh, once it's a huge volume, huge volume of uh, uh, CCTV uh, footages, so uh, we will uh, examine and come back. Rend uh, cylinder LPG cylinder, that was a moon can, that was a drum, chinna drum. That is why I am going to bring it to the police. We will report it to the police. We will come back. My colleague Ridhima Bhatnagar spoke to Tamil Nadu BJP Chief K. Annamalai on the Coimato cylinder blast and the role of the DMK government in the probe. Listen in. I want to understand from you, on day one itself, you had said there is a lot more than what meets the eye. How were you so convinced on day one itself? Madam, when the blast happened, immediately a lot of our Kari Kartas and everybody were there in the morning. They have observed nails. They have okay. observed nails and ball bearings in that area. And then only we knew it is not, it is something sinister. It is not a simple thing. When they were the, the, our party functionaries were reporting, the local public were reporting. When the state police called, that is a cylinder blast. Uh, it was not only worrying, it was very shameful, madam. When there is a ball bearing inside, when there is a nail inside, a classic case of an explosive thing, how can you call that as a cylinder attack? Then we put pressure on the government with the statement saying, please be open. This is a terror incident. Hmm. The government started to demean us. We waited for 48 hours. When we did not have any other recourse, when the government still called that as a cylinder blast, then we had to call a major press conference yesterday, release out some details and say when all those things are happening, when you have ceased explosives in the home more than 40 kg, when you are not disclosing, you have arrested five people but not booked them under UAPA Act, which is the Terrorist Act, your Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. You call all this, it's a shameful, you're trying to cheat the Tamil Nadu public. What you had spoken about Mubin, the one who actually died in this blast and the last WhatsApp message of him that was actually seen. Are you convinced this was a Fidayin attack? Madam, this uh, message apparently, he has apparently changed his uh, status of uh, hmm. the WhatsApp uh, message two days before. And the wordings is very clear. In the wording, he clearly mentions that the news about my death reaches you. Forgive my mistake. Hide my shortcoming. Participate in my janasa, which is funeral, and pray for me. So this is a very clear statement where he is inviting people to his funeral. And the state police is hiding that also. We 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 were never interested to go and harm any investigation. Now, 48 hours when you are refusing to book UAPA. Initially, we called a terror attack, waited for two full days before calling this as a suicide attack. Sure. The police still not responding. We didn't have a choice, madam. Today, the state government has finally said that we want to make a recommendation for the case to be given over to the NIA. Do you think it's coming too late in the day? I mean, firstly, I'm happy that the case, we are happy, uh, Tamil Nadu people, the case is going to NIA because... Sure. It's a professional agency. They can go to the root of this case, find out the real accused, the modules which might be active in Tamil Nadu, which is still might be dormant also. We want everybody to come out. It happens a day before Diwali. It happens outside a temple. Do you think there was a deliberate attempt to stoke communal passions? Okay. Except the state president and the designated spokesperson, nobody will speak anything so that 
an unrest gets created in Coimbatore, which is mm. right for a communal tension. We stopped our people from reacting, though okay. it was very tense in that morning. But having said it, madam, a day before Deepavali, a car. Uh, I don't think temple was the attack, ma'am. The the more they want to get into a shopping area. You're saying there was a larger sinister plot at play. So are you then worried about a pattern that is emerging from Tamil Nadu because of the various ISIS links that are also emerging from the state? Yet, yes, madam. Uh, uh, because Kerala, the neighboring state, had sent a lot lot of people to ISIS when ISIS was declaring a state. From Tamil Nadu, also a handful of people have gone to Turkey, Syria to join ISIS. So, the uh, powder cake. So, Easter bombing. Some of the link uh, uh, came to Tamil Nadu, Palakkad. They picked up. Then uh, the police was trying to control. Now, now oh. continuously for, for 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 the last few months, we are we are we are seeing uh, federal agencies picking up somebody who wanted to do a truck truck style attack like Paris in Eero. Okay. Eero is a place you never hear communal tension. Though though in the Congo region, Salem is a place you never hear a communal tension because you are picking up radicalized youth from those areas. At at one end, the state government no federal agent coming to the state you cannot have any station. The state will manage when you don't deny that access. Also, hmm. uh, everything is coming out now, madam. Oh, I want to understand the DMK has taken a couple of days to react. Why do you think that has happened? How did the investigation happen? Was there a, was was there a deliberate omission? Was there a deliberate way to uh, sidestep the investigation? Even that should be taken care by the NIA. That is our. New request. Uh, now, a face-off between the Kerala government and the governor seems far from over. The governor has written to the Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan seeking action against the Finance Minister K N Balagopal. The governor alleged that Balagopal delivered a speech on October 19th and tried to stoke a fire of regionalism and provincialism, undermining the unity of India. The chief minister has written back to the governor, saying there is nothing democratically and constitutionally wrong in Balagopal's statements. Without mincing words, the Kerala CM said that he will not be taking any action against Finance Minister Balagopal. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to unveil the statue of Kempe Gowda in Bengaluru, BJP's Vokkaliga leaders slip into a tussle. Discontent has been brewing amongst BJP Vokkaliga leaders after Minister Ashwath Narayan has been single-handedly making arrangements and visiting Vokkaliga stalwarts for the unveiling of the statue at Kempe Gowda. Party leaders such as Revenue Minister R. Ashoka, who hails from the Vokkaliga community, was not involved in the preparations. The leaders are now demanding that responsibilities must be split equally among ministers. This comes as BJP tries to move the politically important and numerically dominant Vokkaliga community ahead of the 2023 assembly polls. A fresh face-off now between the Aam Aadmi Party and the BJP is in store in the national capital over Chhat Puja. BJP has termed the expenditure of Rs 25 crores by the Aam Aadmi Party on the Chhat arrangements in the capital as misleading and false. BJP leaders have decided to expose the AAP government's claims by visiting Yamuna Ghat. The LG Delhi office has also indicated that LG is not happy with the alleged misleading announcement by Arvind Kejriwal, which was done without his approval. This happening at a time when MCD elections are expected to be announced soon and both the parties are eyeing the 40% Purvanchali vote bank in the national capital. <laughs> और सरकार उसकी तैयारी कर रही है एलजी साहब ने उसको अप्रूव कर दिया है तो इसमें तो कुछ विवाद कहां से है जमुना तट पे भी निश्चित है जो जो छठ जहां जहां होती है वहीं होगा और वो एनफ है हम लोगों के लिए तो शायद उसी को ये भ्रामक प्रचार कहा तो प्रचार करने में अरविंद केजरीवाल का कोई जोड़ा है पूरे संसार में तो निश्चित रूप से अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को अब इस समय क्या है कि वो जल्दीबाजी में रहते हैं कि जब बैन हटी गया तो मैं भी क्रेडिट ले लूं ले लो भैया लेकिन जमुना जी मैया की सफाई कराना उन्हीं के अंतर्गत है ना अब कोई बात नहीं वो नहीं किए तो हम छठ व्रतधारी करेंगे नाउ बीजेपी इज सेइंग दैट जस्ट बिकॉज़ मनोज तिवारी हैज रिटन अ लेटर आस्किंग फॉर प्रॉपर अरेंजमेंट्स एंड क्लीननेस ऑफ छठ घाट्स दैट्स द रीजन व्हाई वी हैव सीन दैट अरविंद केजरीवाल हैज ट्वीटेड दैट दिस टाइम यू आर अलाउड टू सेलिब्रेट छठ ऑन छठ घाट्स 
I think it's quite funny that Manoj Tiwari ji should say this. Over a thousand chhat ghats have been created by the Delhi government over the period of the last seven years. Obviously, during COVID, there were restrictions. But if there is any government, any party, any leader that has really stood behind chhat celebrations, and it is Ahmadmi Party and Arvind Kejriwal. Mr. Vinay Saxena is relatively new in Delhi. He maybe should first apprise himself how Chhat has been celebrated in Delhi for the last seven years, where arrangements have been made for all people who are involved. They can have safe Chhat celebrations to make sure that they can have access to uh, arrangements where all their rituals can be carried out. Another year and the same story. With Chhat Puja just round the corner, the politics around it has already started. Currently, I am standing at Kalendi Kuch on the bank of the toxic yet holy Yamuna River. If I could just move out of the frame and show you in the visuals, the toxicity in the Yamuna River has again started. The toxic foam that settles on the Yamuna River every year at this time of the year up on the month of October and November, that continues yet again. Last year, we saw the kind of political flashpoint between the Ahmadi Party and the BJP when the Ahmadi Party banned people from celebrating Chhat Puja on the banks of Yamuna River. But this time around as well, the situation remains the same. Water is being released from the Okla Barrack or the Okla Dam to make sure that the fraud that settles on the on the top layer of the Yamuna River flows away. If you could see in the visuals over here, there is a heavy flow that has been maintained in the Yamuna River, making sure that the fraud that settles on the Yamuna River uh, from the chemical waste coming from the factories in the national capital, that flows away. But as Chhat Puja nears, blame game has started between AAP and BJP. Both the parties are eyeing the 40% Purvanjali vote bank just before the NCD elections. My colleague Akash Sharma brings you this ground report. Like every year, politics over Chhat Puja is taking center stage in Delhi, but this time the stakes are higher because of the upcoming MCD elections and the nearly 40% Purvanchali vote bank is being eyed by both the Ahmadi Party and the BJP. Preparations are in full swing for the auspicious occasion of Chhat Puja here in the capital city. Well, I'm reporting from Yamuna Ghat in central Delhi, which is the prominent Ghat for Chhat Puja. And here I'm showing you the visuals of the preparations that are going on. You can see these workers are working on this particular artificial ghat that is on the bank of river Yamuna. As far as the preparations are concerned, so total 1100 chhat ghat will be prepared by different agencies in the national capital. And in fact, Delhi government is spending at least 25 crore rupees here on this chhat puja for these chhat ghats. BJP MP Manoj Tiwari fired the first shot, writing to Delhi LGVK Saxena, seeking direction to officers for cleaning the Yamuna Ghats. I am very happy that today, Manya LG Mahoday has accepted it. And we were able to understand what we were able to understand in the NGT. We will all give the same words today. That the work of Swachhata is the work of Chhat. Now, Arvind Kejriwal Ji, credit is a bad thing, so credit is a bad thing when we stop first, when we don't stop, then we will take credit. This came even as our Madhmi Party claimed they have readied at least 1100 guards for Chhat Puja. I think it's quite funny that Manoj Tiwari Ji should say this. Delhi is the first state in the country to make extensive and very systematic arrangements for people across Delhi to celebrate Chhat. Over a thousand Chhat cards have been created by the Delhi government over the period of the last seven years. The LG gave his nod to hold Chhat Puja at designated cards on the Yamuna, but he also cautioned Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal against misleading and premature publicity over the issue. Politics over Chhat Puja is an annual affair for the national capital. Every time when this auspicious occasion is around, political parties try to portray themselves as the one with clear intention of providing better facilities. Aam Aadmi Party government this time also has claimed for world-class facilities for all those who believe in Chhat Puja and who celebrate Chhat Puja. However, BJP on the other hand is attacking Aam Aadmi Party government saying that they are only involved in misleading people and fake advertisement. Cleanliness of Yamuna is the prominent issue this time. As the MCD elections draws near, the political parties have involved themselves in a political war of words. However, this is going to be very interesting as we are just hours away 
from the auspicious day of Chhat Puja and this will be interesting to see as how things will unfold from now onwards. With Cameraman Rajesh Bharadwaj, this is Akash Sharma for CNN News 18. Our managing editor Zaka Jacob spoke to a panel of guests on Delhi Chief Minister and AAP convener Arvind Kejriwal's recommendation to include Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Ganesha's picture along with Mahatma Gandhi on currency notes. Take a look. Please explain to our viewers how having the pictures of Goddess Lakshmi and uh, Lord Ganesha is going to actually help the Indian rupee get strength against the dollar. After all, all currencies, almost all currencies in the world are losing against the dollar since 2022 began. The falling rupee against the dollar has to be arrested by the government through its yes. policies. Yes. Obviously, the government's policies are failing. That's what you're saying. When the government's policies are failing, what do we do as a last resort? We ask for the blessings of the uh, supernatural. That's what we are asking for that these supernatural powers like Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi are being revered across India, not just in India, across South Asia and many countries including Netherlands and uh, West Indies in South America. So these are gods which, 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 which uh, spiritual gods which help people come out of their problems. Fact of the matter is RP saying that uh, Aam Aadmi Party is saying BJP is today rattled because for the first time in the last eight years, a political party in this country is attacking the BJP from the right. All of the attacks so far on the BJP have been from the left, from Congress party, RJD, Samajwadi party, all, all our opposition parties are trying to attack the BJP from the left. This is the first time that here is a party who is trying to prove there is more Hindu than the BJP. Therefore, the BJP is rattled. The fact is that this party has been anti-Hindu throughout. I'll give you two, three examples. In Delhi, sorry to say, that imams, malwis get monthly involvement from Delhi government. Almost in 32,000 rupees per, per masjid. But a similar thing being paid to pujaris in temple who do prachana every day, who do archana every day for Ganesh and Ganesh ji and Lakshmi ji or to the Granthis in Punjab where they are the elected government. No, it's only because they want to appease certain vote bank, they have been following their policy. I think this is making a mockery of our, 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 our beliefs and our, our beliefs, our Sanatan beliefs, uh, the, the belief with the, the gods of the Hindus. Uh, this, is, this is not done, this is very unethical. And this is, as I said, this, it is somewhat I feel that it's a mockery, mockery of our beliefs and uh, because money is used for all sort of purposes, underhand dealings and all, I fail to understand either uh, the logic behind Mr. Kejriwal's suggestion or he's just trying to play a game of one-upmanship one as far as, um, uh, uh, as, far as uh, beliefs of the BJP party is concerned or trying to uh, prove this that we are, uh, we are bigger Hindus than you. Almost every currency, uh, the dollar has strengthened against. Now, going by the logic of Arvind Kejriwal and the Amadmi party, uh, the dollar then should have Jesus Christ picture, not George Washington and not, uh, uh, you know, Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln's picture. Right? If, if that's the argument he's, being, he's putting forth. While we are at a stage where we are talking about the digital currency picking up, the digital payments picking up, we should find intelligent ways of going into all classes of people to spread the good message about digital payment and rather we are talking about which deity's picture should come on the printed note. That said, uh, the first point that I would like to make is, um, uh, as per the beliefs of uh, Sanatana Dharma, yes, Goddess Lakshmi is the one who grants wealth. Wealth could be, wealth could be of any form, be it gold, be it currency or be it even knowledge. I, or even Ganesha who is the one who removes all the obstacles. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Zak uh, Zaka, uh, Lakshmi has been adored as the goddess of water. Ardram Jvalantin says Sri Suktam. So, if at all any government, just not up, if it is BJP or Congress, if they have to bring some prosperity to the country, the civilization states clean the rivers first. Only way the Amadmi party or any political party can hope to beat the BJP or at least make inroads into the BJP's vote bank there is by trying to be more right of the BJP. You can't be left of the BJP in Gujarat because there is only 10% electorate there. 
Is this an attempt to try and be more Hindu than the BJP, more Hindutvavadi than the BJP, more right of the BJP? And will this at all succeed in a state like Gujarat? Well, first of all, Rekha, I don't think this is limited to Gujarat. I think uh, what Amadi Party is trying to do is to uh, basically look at a mad roadmap which uh, can go beyond Gujarat and, and uh, for, for much bigger appeal. Uh, Will this work in Gujarat or not? That only the time will tell. But what I feel is that right now, Amadi Party, with or without the notes of Ganeshi and Lakshmiji, uh, you know, is uh, is making a significant dent in Gujarat as far as the Congress vote share is concerned. We're taking a very short break. Stay with us. More on the other side. that even with the unprecedented majority that the BJP government has, UCC is just too hot a potato for it. It wants to possibly delay it as much as possible. Farooq Abdullah said that you didn't have a name, but he said that some people are saying that until they don't get justice, who are talking about justice? Ajit Sahib is also turning around and showing him the mirror. Ajit Sahib is also turning around and showing him the mirror. With Mr. Kharge's victory, the fact remains that Mr. Kharge's biggest stumbling block will be to at least dent the image that he's a candidate of the Gandhis, that he's not going to do anything that the Gandhis don't want him to do. As per the law, those convicted of decoity, robbery, murder with rape are not to be released on foreign law. Gurmeet Ram Rahim is convicted of two murders and two rape. How is he out for 40 days? He went to the best schools uh, in England and the best universities in the world. Uh, it is about his education. As, as an old man once said, the greatest leveler that we have in this country is, is quality education. If you get a good education, that is a sure shot route to success. What has Mr. Oasis' party done about uh, education and, 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 for, uh, and for women? Uh, who is the party who said, Agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanyanyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala. And as we know, the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world. And yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world, and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster. And that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwesi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. Uh, Ratan Shada, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country. And one among them, uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the prime minister of that country. Shouldn't 
Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that. Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister? At a time when the hostilities between Russia and Ukraine are at their worst since the invasion, Russian President Vladimir Putin recently monitored exercises by nuclear forces which involved the launch of ballistic and cruise missiles. To underscore the high stakes, President Joe Biden warned Moscow it would be making a serious mistake if it chose to use tactical nuclear weapons. Moscow counter claimed that Ukraine is planning to use a dirty bomb as part of a false flag operation to blame Russia. The Russian Defence Minister is lobbying for global support, including that of India's, and held a telephonic conversation with Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday, advising him of caution. Russia has even raised the issue at UNSC, which will hold a discussion soon. Meanwhile, Ukraine has refuted all the claims. And with that, it's a wrap on this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to CNN News 18. News and updates continue right here. They, they have, they are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it is especially Islamic, where you have women becoming head of the state. So this, either you are, you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years? 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular government saw through why they could not get a Muslim prime minister as elected. No, and so why in Punjab me, we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu le, or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be uh, can be chief minister. So this hypocrisy of the entire gang is so funny. Le, and Sunat did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. He became a prime minister because he worked hard. He worked through the party. He rose to the top and we must compliment him for that. Yeah, not no, no, I absolutely agree with you. I think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because Suman Si Raman, Mr. Rishi Sunak got chosen not because he's a Hindu or because of his Indian heritage. He got chosen for two things. Number one, uh, to fix the British economy and he has a proven record of that as Chancellor of the Exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking, so on and so forth. So he's capable, his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked. And the other reason is... England, as is India, a parliamentary democracy, whoever has the support of majority legislators, majority parliamentarians, goes on to become the leader of that party. It is not a, a post of tokenism. The prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority. So tomorrow, and nothing stops a hijab-wearing woman, the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab-wearing woman, if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India, to go ahead and become Prime Minister. So this whole debate around Sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are. First of all, uh, Zaka, um, uh, should Mr. Chidambaram or uh, Mr. Uh, Vaisi have the, do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties? The answer is no. That is a very different issue. I don't think that they are actually saying that Mr. Rishi Sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job. I don't think that that is their point at all. Their point is there the atmosphere in the country is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community, belonging to a minority faith in his country. Hello and welcome, I'm Shilpa Ratnam and you're watching the morning news on CNN News 18. Starting off with the news coming in about the Coimbatore Cylinder Blast, the NIA to step into the case.
case of a suicide bomber uh, because he makes his intention clear the way he was driving that vehicle the nature of the incident everything points out to the fact that this guy is a very radicalized youth The Tamil Nadu government has decided to recommend the transfer of the Coimbatore cylinder blast case to the National Investigation Agency. Chief Minister M K Stalin has said that the decision to hand over the investigation to the central agency was taken at a meeting considering the incident's possible dimensions and connections beyond the scope of the state. Meanwhile, BJP Tamil Nadu Chief Minister K Annamalai has accused the DMK government of going slow on the probe into the blast. Remember one person was shot to death after an LPG cylinder inside a vehicle that he was driving exploded near a temple on October 23rd. Five people have been arrested so far and UAPA has been invoked against the five accused. The CCTV footages from uh, the cameras located in and around the scene of crime are uh, being collected and uh, once it's a huge volume huge volume of uh, uh, CCTV uh, footages so uh, we will uh, examine and come back. Rend cylinder LPG cylinder at the or moon can about drum chinna drum other lay in a pork in the being rather today we'll report to Ghana Pirgro Sigro Mandro. My colleague Ridhima Bhatnagar spoke to Tamil Nadu BJP chief K Annamalai on the Koyamoto cylinder blast and the role of the DMK government in the probe. Listen in. I want to understand from you, on day one itself, you had said there is a lot more than what meets the eye. How were you so convinced on day one itself? Madam, when the blast happened, immediately a lot of our karyakartas and everybody were there in the morning. They have observed nails. They have okay. observed nails and ball bearings in that area. And then only we knew it is not, it is something sinister. It is not a simple thing. When they were, the, the, our party functionaries were reporting, the local public were reporting. When the state police called that as a cylinder blast, uh, it was not only worrying, it was very shameful, madam. When there is a ball bearing inside, when there is a nail inside, a classic case of uh, an explosive thing, how can you call that as a cylinder attack? Then we put pressure on the government with the statement saying, please be open. This is a terror incident. Mm. The government started to demean us. We waited for 48 hours. When we did not have any other recourse, when the government still called that as a cylinder blast, then we had to call a major press conference yesterday, release out some details and say when all those things are happening, when you have seized explosives in the home more than 40 kg, when you are not disclosing, you have arrested five people but not booked them under UAPA Act, which is the Terrorist Act, your Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. You call all this, it's a shameful, you're trying to cheat the Tamil Nadu public. What you had spoken about Mubin, the one who actually died in this blast and the last WhatsApp message of him that was actually seen. Are you convinced this was a Fidayin attack? Madam, this uh, message, apparently he has apparently changed his uh, status of uh, hmm. the WhatsApp uh, message two days before. And the wordings is very clear. In the wording, he clearly mentions that the news about my death reaches you. Forgive my mistake. Hide my shortcoming. Participate in my janasa, which is funeral, and pray for me. So this is a very clear statement where he is inviting people to his funeral. And the state police is hiding that also. We, we, we were never interested to go and harm any investigation. 48 hours, when you are refusing to book UAPA, Initially, we called a terror attack, waited for two full days before calling this as a suicide attack. Sure. The police still not responding. We didn't have a choice, madam. Today, the state government has finally said that we want to make a recommendation for the case to be given over to the NIA. Do you think it's coming too late in the day? I mean, firstly, I'm happy that the case, we are happy, uh, Tamil Nadu people, the case is going to NIA because... Sure. It's a professional agency. They can go to the root of this case, find out the real accused, the modules which might be active in Tamil Nadu, which is still might be dormant also. We want everybody to come out. It happens a day before Diwali. It happens outside a temple. Do you think there was a deliberate attempt to stoke communal passions? Okay. Except the state president and the designated spokesperson. Nobody will speak anything so that 
an unrest gets created in Coimbatore, which mm. is right for a communal tension. We stopped our people from reacting, though okay. it was very tense in that morning. But having said it, madam, a day before Deepavali, a car. Uh, I don't think temple was the attack, ma'am. The the more they want to get into a shopping area. You're saying there was a larger sinister plot at play. So are you then worried about a pattern that is emerging from Tamil Nadu because of the various ISIS links that are also emerging from the state? Yet, yes, madam. Uh, uh, because Kerala, the neighboring state, had sent a uh, lot, lot of people to ISIS when ISIS was declaring a state. From Tamil Nadu, also a handful of people have gone to Turkey, Syria to join ISIS. So, uh, powder cake. So, Easter bombing. Some of the link uh, uh, came to Tamil Nadu, Palakkad. They picked up. Then uh, the police was trying to control. Now, now continuously for 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 the last few months. We are we are we are seeing uh, federal agencies picking up somebody who wanted to do a truck truck style attack like Paris in Erode. Okay. Erode is a place you never hear communal tension. Though, though in the Congo region, Salem is a place you never hear a communal tension because you are picking up radicalized youth from those areas. At at one end, the state government no agent to come into the state. You cannot have any station. The state will manage when you don't deny that access. Also, hmm. uh, everything is coming out now, madam. Oh, I want to understand the DMK has taken a couple of days to react. Why do you think that has happened? How did the investigation happen? Was there a, was, was there a deliberate omission? Was there a deliberate way to uh, sidestep the investigation? Even that should be taken care by the NIA. That is our new request. Uh, now, a face-off between the Kerala government and the governor seems far from over. The governor has written to the Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan seeking action against the Finance Minister K N Balagopal. The governor alleged that Balagopal delivered a speech on October 19th and tried to stoke a fire of regionalism and provincialism, undermining the unity of India. The Chief Minister has written back to the governor saying there is nothing democratically and constitutionally wrong in Balagopal's statements. Without mincing words, the Kerala CM said that he will not be taking any action against Finance Minister Balagopal. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to unveil the statue of Kempe Gowda in Bengaluru, BJP's Vokkaliga leaders slip into a tussle. Discontent has been brewing amongst BJP Vokkaliga leaders after Minister Ashwat Narayan has been single-handedly making arrangements and visiting Vokkaliga stalwarts for the unveiling of the statue at Kempe Gowda. Party leaders such as Revenue Minister R. Ashoka, who hails from the Vokkaliga community, was not involved in the preparations. The leaders are now demanding that responsibilities must be split equally among ministers. This comes as BJP tries to move the politically important and numerically dominant Vokkaliga community ahead of the 2023 assembly polls. A fresh face-off now between the Aam Aadmi Party and the BJP is in store in the national capital over Chhat Puja. BJP has termed the expenditure of Rs 25 crores by the Aam Aadmi Party on the Chhat arrangements in the capital as misleading and false. BJP leaders have decided to expose the AAP government's claims by visiting Yamuna Ghat. The LG Delhi office has also indicated that LG is not happy with the alleged misleading announcement by Arvind Kejriwal, which was done without his approval. This happening at a time when MCD elections are expected to be announced soon and both the parties are eyeing the 40% Purvanchali vote bank in the national capital. <laughs> और सरकार उसकी तैयारी कर रही है एलजी साहब ने उसको अप्रूव कर दिया है तो इसमें तो कुछ विवाद कहां से है जमुना तट पे भी निश्चित है जो जो छठ जहां जहां होती है वहीं होगा और वो इनफ है हम लोगों के लिए तो शायद उसी को ये भ्रामक प्रचार कहा तो प्रचार करने में अरविंद केजरीवाल का कोई जोड़ा है पूरे संसार में तो निश्चित रूप से अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को अब इस समय क्या है कि वो जल्दीबाजी में रहते हैं कि जब बैन हटी गया तो मैं भी क्रेडिट ले लूं ले लो भैया लेकिन जमुना जी मैया की सफाई कराना उन्हीं के अंतर्गत है ना अब कोई बात नहीं वो नहीं किए तो हम छठ व्रतधारी करेंगे नाउ बीजेपी इज सेइंग दैट जस्ट बिकॉज़ मनोज तिवारी हैज रिटन अ लेटर asking for proper arrangements and cleanliness of chhat ghats that's the reason why we have seen that arvind kejriwal has tweeted that this time you are allowed to celebrate chhat on chhat ghats
<laughs> I think it's quite funny that Manoj Tiwari ji should say this. Over a thousand chhat ghats have been created by the Delhi government over the period of the last seven years. Obviously, during COVID, there were restrictions. But if there is any government, any party, any leader that has really stood behind chhat celebrations, and it is Aam Aadmi Party and Arvind Kejriwal. Mr. Vinay Saxena is relatively new in Delhi. He maybe should first apprise himself how chhat has been celebrated in Delhi for the last seven years, where arrangements have been made for all people who are involved. They can have safe chhat celebrations to make sure that they can have access to uh, arrangements where all their rituals can be carried out. Another year and the same story. With chhat puja just round the corner, the politics around it has already started. Currently, I am standing at Kalendi Kuch on the bank of the toxic yet holy Yamuna River. If I could just move out of the frame and show you in the visuals, the toxicity in the Yamuna River has again started. The toxic foam that settles on the Yamuna River every year at this time of the year, up on the month of October and November, that continues yet again. Last year, we saw the kind of political flashpoint between the Ahmadi Party and the BJP when the Ahmadi Party ban people from celebrating chhat puja on the banks of yamuna river but this time around as well the situation remains the same water is being released from the okla barrack or the okla dam to make sure that the fraud that settles on the on the top layer of the yamuna river flows away if you could see in the visuals over here there is a heavy flow that has been maintained in the yamuna river making sure that the fraud that settles on the yamuna river or from the chemical waste coming from the factories in the national capital that flows away but as Chhat Puja nears, blame game has started between AAP and BJP. Both the parties are eyeing the 40% Purvanjali vote bank just before the NCD elections. My colleague Akash Sharma brings you this ground report. Like every year, politics over Chhat Puja is taking center stage in Delhi, but this time the stakes are higher because of the upcoming MCD elections and the nearly 40% Purvanchali vote bank is being eyed by both the Aadmi Party and the BJP. Preparations are in full swing for the auspicious occasion of Chhat Puja here in the capital city. Well, I'm reporting from Yamuna Ghat in central Delhi, which is the prominent Ghat for Chhat Puja. And here I'm showing you the visuals of the preparations that are going on. You can see these workers are working on this particular artificial ghat that is on the bank of river Yamuna. As far as the preparations are concerned, so total 1100 chhat ghat will be prepared by different agencies in the national capital. And in fact, Delhi government is spending at least 25 crore rupees here on this chhat puja for these chhat ghats. BJP MP Manoj Tiwari fired the first shot, writing to Delhi LGBT Saxena, seeking direction to officers for cleaning the Yamuna Ghats. I am very happy that today, Manye LG Mahoday has accepted it, and we were also Manye NGT to understand this thing. We have all the words that we will give today, that the work of the work of the work is a good work. Now, Arvind Kejriwal Ji, credit बाज व्यक्ति हैं तो क्रेडिट तो किस भी व्यक्ति है जब पहले रोकेंगे जब नहीं रुक पाएगा तो उसका क्रेडिट लेंगे। This came even as Aam Aadmi Party claimed they have readied at least 1100 cards for Chhat Puja. I think it's quite funny that Manoj Tiwari ji should say this. Delhi is the first state in the country to make extensive and very systematic arrangements for people across Delhi to celebrate Chhat. Over a thousand Chhat cards have been created by the Delhi government over the period of the last seven years. The LG gave his nod to hold Chhat Puja at designated cards on the Yamuna, but he also cautioned Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal against misleading and premature publicity over the issue. Politics over Chhat Puja is an annual affair for the national capital. Every time when this auspicious occasion is around, Political parties try to portray themselves as the one with clear intention of providing better facilities. Aam Aadmi Party government this time also has claimed for world-class facilities for all those who believe in Chhat Puja and who celebrate Chhat Puja. However, BJP on the other hand is attacking Aam Aadmi Party government saying that they are only involved in misleading people and fake advertisement. Cleanliness of Yamuna is the prominent issue this time. As the MCD elections draws near, the political parties have involved themselves in a political war of words. However, this is going to be very interesting as we are just hours away 
from the auspicious day of Chhat Puja and this will be interesting to see as how things will unfold from now onwards. With Campus and Rajesh Bharadwaj, this is Akash Sharma for CNN News 18. Our managing editor Zaka Jacob spoke to a panel of guests on Delhi Chief Minister and AAP convener Arvind Kejriwal's recommendation to include Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Ganesha's picture along with Mahatma Gandhi on currency notes. Take a look. Please explain to our viewers how having the pictures of Goddess Lakshmi and uh, Lord Ganesha is going to actually help the Indian rupee get strength against the dollar. After all, all currencies, almost all currencies in the world are losing against the dollar since 2022 began. The falling rupee against the dollar has to be arrested by the government through its yes. policies. Yes. Obviously, the government's policies are failing. That's what you're saying. When the government's policies are failing, what do we do as a last resort? We ask for the blessings of the uh, supernatural. That's what we are asking for that these supernatural powers like Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi are being revered across India, not just in India, across South Asia and many countries including Netherlands and uh, West Indies in South America. So these are gods which, 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 which uh, spiritual gods which help people come out of their problems. Fact of the matter is R.P. saying that uh, Amadmi party is saying BJP is today rattled because for the first time in the last eight years, a political party in this country is attacking the BJP from the right. All of the attacks so far on the BJP have been from the left, from Congress party, RJD, Samajwadi party, all, all our opposition parties are trying to attack the BJP from the left. This is the first time that here is a party who is trying to prove there is more Hindu than the BJP. Therefore, the BJP is rattled. The fact is that this party has been anti-Hindu throughout. I'll give you two, three examples. In Delhi, sorry to say, that imams, malvis get monthly involvement from Delhi government. Almost in 32,000 rupees per, per masjid. But a similar thing being paid to pujaris in temple who do prachana every day, who do archana every day for Ganesh and Ganesh ji and Lakshmi ji. Or to the Granthis in Punjab, where they are the elected government. No, it's only because they want to appease certain vote bank. They have been following their policy. I think this is making a mockery of our 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 our, our beliefs and our, our beliefs, our Sanatan beliefs, uh, the, the belief with the the gods of the Hindus. Uh, this is this is not done. This is very unethical, and this is as I said, this it is somewhat. I feel that it's a mockery, mockery of our beliefs and uh, because money is used for all sort of purposes, underhand dealings and all, I fail to understand either uh, the logic behind Mr. Kejriwal's suggestion or he's just trying to play a game of one-upmanship one as far as, um, uh, uh, as, far as uh, beliefs of the BJP party is concerned or trying to uh, prove this that we are, uh, we are bigger Hindus than you. Almost every currency, uh, the dollar has strengthened against. Now, going by the logic of Arvind Kejriwal and the Amadmi party, uh, the dollar then should have Jesus Christ picture, not George Washington and not, uh, uh, you know, Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln's picture. Right? If, if that's the argument he's, being, he's putting forth. While we are at a stage where we are talking about the digital currency picking up, the digital payments picking up, we should find intelligent ways of going into all classes of people to spread the good message about digital payment and rather we are talking about which deity's picture should come on the printed note. That said, uh, the first point that I would like to make is, um, uh, as per the beliefs of uh, Sanatana Dharma, yes, Goddess Lakshmi is the one who grants wealth. Wealth could be wealth could be of any form, be it gold, be it currency, or be it even knowledge, or, or even Ganesha, who is the one who removes all the obstacles. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Zak uh, Zaka, uh, Lakshmi has been adored as the goddess of water. Ardram Jwalantin says Sri Suktam. So, if at all any government, just not up, if it is BJP or Congress, if they have to bring some prosperity to the country, the civilization states clean the rivers first. Only way the Amadmi party or any political party can hope to beat the BJP or at least make inroads into the BJP's vote bank there is by trying to be more right of the BJP. You can't be left of the BJP in Gujarat because there's only 10% electorate there. 
Is this an attempt to try and be more Hindu than the BJP, more Hindutvavadi than the BJP, more right of the BJP? And will this at all succeed in a state like Gujarat? Well, first of all, Rata, I don't think this is limited to Gujarat. I think uh, what Amadi Party is trying to do is to uh, basically look at a mad road map which uh, can go beyond Gujarat and, and uh, for, for much bigger appeal. Uh, Will this work in Gujarat or not? That only the time will tell. But what I feel is that right now, Amadi Party, with or without the notes of Ganeshi and Lakshmi Ji, uh, you know, is uh, is making a significant dent in Gujarat as far as the Congress vote share is concerned. We're taking a very short break. Stay with us. More on the other side. that even with the unprecedented majority that the BJP government has, UCC is just too hot a potato for it. It wants to possibly delay it as much as possible. Faruk Abdullah said, you didn't have a name, but he said that some people are saying that until they don't get justice, who are you talking about justice? Ajit is also turning around and showing him the mirror. With Mr. Kharge's victory, the fact remains that Mr. Kharge's biggest stumbling block will be to at least dent the image that he's a candidate of the Gandhis, that he's not going to do anything that the Gandhis don't want him to do. As per the law, those convicted of decoity, robbery, murder with rape are not to be released on first law. Gurmeet Ram Rahim is convicted of two murders and two rape. How is he out for 40 days? other groups in his own party yeah. all that of course is 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 definitely a valid point but and i think that this is important see we have to understand that this applies to all political parties look we have not had a muslim chief minister of a state in 40 years from uh, from the uh, mm. early 80s onwards and i think the last one was anwara taimur uh, in assam after that i i don't really think we've had a muslim chief minister so where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it. We are not. And the rise of the BJP has meant that even political parties which quote-unquote claim to be secular are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the BJP with their hard Hindutva line. And they are running scared. You see Mr. Kejriwal's statement today. Yeah. You have to put uh, 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 Lord Ganesha and Lord Lakshmi uh, Goddess Lakshmi on the notes. You know, so every now it is now a question of who is more Hindu than the other. No, because no. So, so electoral so success I, I, fair seems enough. to I'm, be I'm assured. Not, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, arguing against that. But the fact is also that uh, electability and winnability has become now the bottom line uh, for political success. Whether it's in the BJP or any other party. Uh, the same Ahmadmi party you refer to has an Amanatullah Khan. They have a Tahir Hussain who used to be an MLC. But yes. I, I want to get to the larger point. Both uh, Ratan yeah. Sharda and Sumant also referred no, to one, this. One so I want to ask Mohammed Fa Farhan. No, no, just, give me, just give me 10 what? seconds. Yeah. Mohammed yeah. Farhan is a spokesperson of the MIM party. Mohammed Farhan sahab, who uh, your Rashtri Adhyaksh Shri uh, Asaduddin Ovesi has said, that's a good thing. There is no doubt about anyone. All right, we've lost him. Let's go to Ambar Zaidi. Uh, Ambar, you know, no one has a problem with what Mr. Ovesi said. The problem is, no one has a problem with what Mr. Ovesi said. No one has a problem with what Mr. Ovesi said. The problem is, his own double standards when it comes to his own party. Everyone, uh, you know, has no problem with a hijab-wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable, as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country. But in Mr. Ovesi's party, despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations, the national president is a man. The different state presidents that they have in five or six states, they're all men. All MLAs that they have across five or six states where MIM has MLAs, they're all men. Uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men. So where is a woman, hijab wearing or otherwise, in Mr. Ovesi's party in any position of leadership? Absolutely right, uh, uh, Chika, because uh, as they say, uh, cherish at home and 
whatever uh, Obesej is preaching, he doesn't practice that. So he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation. We need to, like uh, in our country, if we talk about the Muslim women especially, their literacy rate is so low. He doesn't care about the literacy rate of women. He doesn't care about the health care. At a time when the hostilities between Russia and Ukraine are at their worst since the invasion, Russian President Vladimir Putin recently monitored exercises by nuclear forces which involved the launch of ballistic and cruise missiles. To underscore the high stakes, President Joe Biden warned Moscow it would be making a serious mistake if it chose to use tactical nuclear weapons. Moscow counter claimed that Ukraine is planning to use a dirty bomb as part of a false flag operation to blame Russia. The Russian defense minister is lobbying for global support, including that of India's, and held a telephonic conversation with Defense Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday, advising him of caution. Russia has even raised the issue at UNSC, which will hold a discussion soon. Meanwhile, Ukraine has refuted all the claims. And with that, it's a wrap on this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to CNN News 18. News and updates continue right here. electoral majority, the support of the majority of the people of this country, absolutely, that person should go on to become Prime Minister. But in Mr. Ovesi's case, not just this leadership issue in his party, but more importantly, how do you get there? We are talking about Rishi Sunak, it's his capability, he went to the best schools uh, in England and the best universities in the world. Uh, it is about his education, as, as an old man once said, the greatest leveller that we have in this country is, is quality education. If you get a good education, that is a sure shot route to success. What has Mr. Ovesi's party done about uh, education and, 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 for, uh, and for women? Uh, who is the party who said, agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanganyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala. And as we know, the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world. And yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwesi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now, women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become Chief Justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. Uh, Ratan Shadha, let me... Hello and welcome, I'm Shilpa Ratnam and you're watching the morning news on CNN News 18. We'll be going through the day's top stories and starting off with some breaking news coming in. Amit Shah's call for a meeting with all state home ministers and LGs but opposition ruled states could give the Chintan Shivir a miss. Though issues like cross-border infiltration, radicalization, cyber crimes are on the agenda. States most affected like Bihar, Bengal, Kerala, Jharkhand, Rajasthan could seat their home ministers 
give the two-day conference a miss. Incidentally, the chief ministers hold the home portfolio in most of these states. PM Modi will address the gathering virtually on Friday. Agenda issues such as home guards, civil defense, fire protection and enemy property will be discussed. Cyber security, drug trafficking, women's safety, Nasha Mukt Bharat Abhyan also on the agenda. Alright, so this is uh, the Chintan Shivir which has been organized by the Home Minister Amit Shah and uh, according to reports, uh, PM Modi may also uh, be attending this. But uh, the latest coming in that opposition states might be giving this Chintan Shivir a miss. Chintan Shivir of course means a contemplation camp and uh, the issues on the plate will of course be security number one but also going into uh, drug trafficking and issues such as home guards, civil defense and more. Now we are joined by my colleague Arunima who brings us these details. Arunima, what, uh, we know that uh, some opposition states are apparently plan to give this a miss, but which are the opposition states that have confirmed their attendance? See, most of the, the BJP ruled uh, states, uh, so states like Uttar Pradesh, states like Madhya Pradesh, uh, Uttarakhand, their home ministers uh, are expected to be in attendance. The problem is uh, with this case where the home minister portfolio is held by the chief minister himself or herself. So, for example, Rajasthan, Bengal, Jharkhand, uh, we are told uh, Kerala and some other southern states as well. Uh, because the chief minister himself holds the home portfolio there, they will send a representative, most likely the director general of police and the chief secretary of the state uh, will represent these states. Uh, but uh, but the, the home minister, which is effectively the chief minister, will give it a miss. They have said that they had had prior appointments and therefore they could not uh, accommodate um, their, in their schedule. Uh, the issues at hand here are quite complex. Uh, on the face of it, uh, the, the Home Ministry has said that uh, this is uh, to look at Vision 2047. Uh, but there are also issues of uh, cross-border infiltration, illegal migration, border management, etc. And some of these states, Bihar, for example, we've seen how uh, in the Simanchal area, uh, this is cross-border infiltration has uh, taken a proportion uh, which could threaten internal security. Kerala, again, uh, the, the way PFI raids have been carried out, Kerala is a problematic state as well as uh, radicalization is concerned. Same for Bengal. The border there is porous. There is a problem there. Uh, so that is a bit of a concern that some of these states, uh, their home ministry will perhaps uh, give it a miss, uh, but their DGPs and chief secretaries could attend. Thank you, Arunima, for bringing us up to speed. Now we're shifting our attention to the details coming in the Koimutur Blast. case of a suicide bomber uh, because he makes his intention clear the way he was driving that vehicle the nature of the incident everything points out to the fact that this guy is a very radicalized youth <laughs> The Tamil Nadu government has decided to recommend the transfer of the Coimbatore cylinder blast case to the National Investigation Agency. Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has said that the decision to hand over the investigation to the central agency was taken at a meeting considering the incident's possible dimensions and connections beyond the state. Meanwhile, BJP Tamil Nadu Chief K. Anamalai has accused the DMK government of going slow on the probe into the blast. Remember, one person was starved to death after an LPG cylinder inside a vehicle he was driving exploded near a temple on October 23rd. Five people have been arrested so far and UAPA has been invoked against the five accused. The CCTV footages from uh, the cameras located in and around the scene of crime are uh, being collected. And uh, once it's a huge volume, huge volume of uh, uh, CCT uh, footages, so uh, we will uh, examine and come back. Rend cylinder, LPG cylinder, that was a moon can, that was a drum, chinna drum. That is why any problem is there, that is why the report is going to be released. 
My colleague Dilma Bhatnagar spoke to Tamil Nadu BJP Chief K. Anamalai about the cylinder blast and the role of DMK government in the probe. Listen in. I want to understand from you, on day one itself you had said there is a lot more than what meets the eye. How were you so convinced on day one itself? Madam, when the blast happened, immediately a lot of our karyakartas and everybody were there in the morning. They have observed nails. They have okay. observed nails and ball bearings in that area. And then only we knew it is not, it is something sinister. It is not a simple thing. When they were, the, the, our party functionaries were reporting, the local public were reporting. When the state police called, that is a cylinder blast. Uh, it was not only worrying, it was very shameful, madam. When there is a ball bearing inside, when there is a nail inside, a classic case of an explosive thing, how can you call that as a cylinder attack? Then we put pressure on the government with a statement saying, please be open. This is a terror incident. Mm. The government started to demean us. We waited for 48 hours. When we did not have any other recourse, when the government still called that as a cylinder blast, then we had to call a major press conference yesterday, release out some details. And say when all those things are happening, when you have seized explosives in the home more than 40 kg, when you are not disclosing, you have arrested five people but not booked them under UAPA Act, which is the Terrorist Act, your Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. You call all this, it's a shameful, you are trying to cheat the Tamil Nadu public. What you had spoken about Mubin, the one who actually died in this blast and the last WhatsApp message of him that was actually seen. Are you convinced this was a Fidayin attack? Madam, this uh, message apparently he has apparently changed his uh, status of uh, hmm. the WhatsApp uh, sure. message two days before. And the wordings is very clear. In the wording, he clearly mentions that the news about my death reaches you. Forgive my mistake. Hide my shortcoming. Participate in my janasa, which is funeral, and pray for me. So this is a very clear statement where he is inviting people to his funeral. And the state police hiding that also. We, we, we were never interested to go and harm any investigation. 48 hours, when you are refusing to book UAPA, initially we called a terror attack, waited for two full days before calling this as a suicide attack. Sure. The police still not responding. We didn't have a choice, madam. Today, the state government has finally said that we want to make a recommendation for the case to be given over to the NIA. Do you think it's coming too late in the day? I mean, firstly, I'm happy that the case, we are happy, uh, Tamil Nadu people, the case is going to NIA because sure. it's a professional agency. They can go to the root of this case, find out the real accused, the modules which might be active in Tamil Nadu, which is still might be dormant also. We want everybody to come out. It happens a day before Diwali. It happens outside a temple. Do you think there was a deliberate attempt to stoke communal passions? Okay. Except the state president and the designated spokesperson, nobody will speak anything so that an undress gets created in Coimbatore, which mm. is right for a communal tension. We stopped our people from reacting, though okay. it was very tense in that morning. But having said it, madam, a day before Deepavali, a car, uh, I don't think temple was the attack, ma'am. The, the more they want to get into a shopping area. You're saying there was a larger sinister plot at play. So are you then worried about a pattern that is emerging from Tamil Nadu because of the various ISIS links that are also emerging from the state? Yes, madam. Uh, uh, because Kerala, the neighboring state, had sent a uh, lot, lot of people to ISIS when ISIS was declaring a state. From Tamil Nadu also, a handful of people have gone to Turkey, Syria to join ISIS. So, it uh, became powder cake. So, Easter bombing, somehow the link uh, uh, came to Tamil Nadu, Palakkad, they picked up. Then, uh, the police was trying to control. Now, now continuously for, 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 for the last few months, we are, we, are, we are seeing uh, federal agencies picking up somebody who wanted to do a truck truck style attack like Paris in Erode. Okay. Erode is a place you never hear communal tension, though, though in the Congo region. Salem is a place you never hear a communal tension because you are picking up radicalized youth from those areas. At, at one end, the state government knows the agency to come the state. You cannot have any station. The state will manage. When you don't deny that access also, hmm. uh, everything is coming out now, madam. Oh, I want to understand, the DMK has taken a couple of days to react. Why do you think that has happened? How did the investigation happen? Was there a, was, was there a deliberate omission? Was there a deliberate way to uh, sidestep the investigation? Even that should be taken care of by the NIA. That is our 
new request. Telangana politics heats up after allegation of poaching four TRS MLAs. Four MLAs of Telangana Rashtra Samiti, P. Rohit Reddy, Bhiram Harshwaradhan Reddy, P. Rega Kanta Rao, Guvala Balaraju have accused the Bharatiya Janata Party of having tried to poach them. In what seemed to be high political drama, the four MLAs were found in a farmhouse in Aziz Nagar within Cyberabad Police Commissioner Rate Limits. Cyberabad Commissioner of Police Stephen Ravindra said based on a complaint about illegal activities happening ahead of elections in a farmhouse in Hyderabad, we have conducted search operations. The police have held three persons accused of having links with the BJP. Following the complaint, BJP has hit back saying TRS is doing dirty and nasty politics. information <laughs> BJP is known for toppling state governments across India. But one thing is clear out today that KCRG's MLAs are not for sale. Using Swamiji's and many other political brokers, Bharatiya Janata Party leaders were caught red-handed today by pressurizing MLAs, four MLAs of TRS to shift sides to Bharatiya Janata Party offering hundreds of crores and contracts just before the Munugod by election. KCRG's MLAs informed police that BJP has been pressurizing them and today police has caught them red-handed. Now we're joined by my colleague Swastika who brings us more details. Very good morning to you Swastika. Who are the BJP leaders who have been held in these raids and also apparently cash was recovered to the tune of about 100 crores. How is the party reacting to these incriminating details? Well Shilpa, uh, we can't really say that all the three accused are BJP associates because that is still under the purview of investigation. We can say that three individuals have been arrested. It is the TRS which is alleging that these three individuals have links with the Bharatiya Janata Party. Now, yesterday at around 8 o'clock uh, uh, in the evening, the Hyderabad police, after receiving a tip off from one of the four TRS families who were holding negotiations with the three lead, uh, three members of uh, the three individuals. Uh, went and raided a farmhouse from which cash to the tune of 15 crores was recovered in addition to separate documents. It is being alleged that the there was a bid to poach the TRS MLAs with a bribe of 100 crore each with some government contract and ministerial and cabinet position if the BJP comes to power in the state of Telangana. So at this juncture, all of this under allegation purview. However, the three individuals who have been arrested include Satish Sharma, who came from Faridabad, Simhadi, he is a priest from Tirupati, Nandu Kumar, who is a businessman based out of Hyderabad. Now, the TRS has come up with different types of unverified pictures of all the three accused with some BJP leaders, including two union ministers. All of that yet to be verified whether they have any association with the Bharatiya Janata Party. But Swastika, how is the BJP reacting to this and uh, especially to those pictures that you're mentioning? Well, the BJP has strongly condemned this association. They say, in fact, I'm quoting Kishan Reddy, one of the ministers who's being dragged into this entire controversy. He said that all of this drama and theatrics that is being done by KCR. In fact, he's saying it's baseless allegations are being leveled against him and the party and the TRS is acting out of frustration because they know that they are going to lose Mumu Bipoles. 
You also had Bobby Sanjay react yesterday, who is the Telangana BJP president here, saying all of this is drama and theatrics by KCR. He's also had the same question. How can you say that all the three accused are linked with the BJP? There is no evidence to suggest the same. But the TR uh, has been proving that they have evidence and they have provided all those evidence to the police as well to suggest that the poaching bid was done by agents of BJP. Swastika, so what are you picking up? What is this evidence that they've turned over? Uh, the TRS has alleged that uh, they were being lured with money and with posts and following uh, this uh, prima facie uh, information, the police conducted those raids. What was uncovered during those raids and also uh, the other evidence that the TRS holds, uh, apparently holds? At the juncture, the evidence that we're talking about is something that the police will have to dive deeper into because yesterday, here we know that there was a raid at a farmhouse in Moinabad area where four CRS MLAs were seen sitting with three individuals, Satish Sharma, Simharu, and uh, Nanda Kumar, where the CRS MLAs had allegedly, had reportedly given a tip off to the police saying, there is a poaching bid that is being conducted by these three individuals who they allege are working for the Bharatiya Janta Party and are linked to two ministers. Upon raiding that place, the police recovered bags of cash. And at this juncture, we don't really know how much cash was recovered, but sources and indicate that it was to the tune of 15 crores. Negotiations were underway, verbal negotiations were underway, wherein these three accused reportedly, uh, allegedly, in fact, uh, offered 100 crore bribes each to all the four MLAs in a bid to get them over to the BJP side. This is the allegation again to put them at the beach uh, by the PRS. And also offered them some government contracts in addition to a promise that they would be made ministers once the BJP comes to power in Telangana after elections next year. So all of these were dialogues that were being held, but we are yet to know if there were any telephonic or technical evidence such as telephonic conversations to suggest in a key three members A are associated with the Bharatiya Janta Party and also the fact that whether there were any talks of uh, the 400 crore bribe claim that has been suggested by the CRS MLA. So everything under the purview of investigation question is underway for both the sides. Big story coming in from Telangana and uh, Swastika bringing us those details. Swastika, let's also take a look at the political reactions coming in to the story. The alleged uh, poaching of MLAs by few individuals in a farmhouse and wherein rupees 15 crores is supposed to have been seized. The Bharti Janta Party has nothing to do with this. Bharti Janta Party need not even poach a single MLA. Those who are coming to us, they are being poached by TRS. In fact, these people who have been caught belong to TRS leader. The money belongs to TRS. This is a dirty game politics of the TRS. Why is it that your party is alleging BJP's hand in the entire uh, nexus that has been busted by the Cyberbath police? Then who will uh, are the responsible? It is the central government headed by BJP and their people, own people are there, Ramchandra Bharti, Somaya Zulu. They are the BJP supporters and they are the actual, on the back end, they are only operating the all the money and other things from the BJP end. And the third person is also Nandu, he is the follower of the Central Minister Kishan Reddy. All these, these people working and they offered 100 crores for an each MLA. They wanted to topple the government in similar line to the Maharashtra. Hmm. And definitely they, on behalf of BJP, they approached our MLAs. Our MLAs actually after receiving the information, they telephoned. They also actually invited them for the particular location in which was informed to the police. So the, those are the people responsible. They are doing all these things. 
It's time for a very short commercial break. Stay with us. More coming up on the other side. And, 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 for, uh, and for women, uh, who is the party who said, Agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tangyangika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala and as we know the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world and yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world and they will be educated, they will certainly become Prime Ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. So the world is our oyster, and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us, to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwaisi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze, and Mr. Uwesi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped, just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. Uh, Ratan Shada, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country. And one among them, uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the prime minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that? Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing. Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back. And hijab has been introduced as an Arabic slavery sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab? Or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so? So this patriarchy, they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, a Muslim woman can become a prime minister in a, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere? And okay. the next... If you say Islamic nation next door to us, in Pakistan there was Bambayadna Bhutto, she lost her life. She Mehbuba Mufti told to vacate Fairview residents by or before November 15th in the latest order. Government rejects her plea for keeping the accommodation, citing the law to keep government accommodation for former CM was rendered null and void in 2020. Going across to my colleague Mufti Isla, who brings us these details. Uh, Mufti, uh, Mehbooba uh, Mufti has uh, st overstayed a welcome by over three years and uh, now is she expected uh, to react favourably to the notice to vacate? I think yes, uh, she has dropped enough indications that she is this time around going to vacate the Gupkar Fairway residence where she lived for around a decade. 
along with her father because uh, first it was allotted in the name of her father and then when she became the chief minister it was given out to her now we've seen in the past uh, few months she has been repeatedly served notices that uh, she should vacate uh, the gupka residence because it's a government accommodation and by virtue of a new law which was passed in 2020 uh no chief minister no former chief minister is entitled to hold the residence so clearly uh, now government issuing a fresh notice that uh, she should vacate it in next 20 days or so uh, by or before november 15 is what the notice says uh, clearly yesterday in a press briefing by mahbooba mufti she did say that well this is not a big deal she is going to do it by any how uh, but a lot of people actually asking questions that why what was the need to stay put uh, when uh, you know she could have vacated it before uh, all said and done it seems that this controversy will be settled down and she has decided really to move out of that residence uh, clearly that is what the government wanted uh, because they said that uh, by virtue of this new order no former chief minister is now entitled to uh, stay put in a government uh, uh, you know accommodation Mufti so are you telling us initially there was some opposition from her or uh, did she comply immediately I think yes uh, we picking up some sources that initially she did cite that uh, there was security reasons and uh, there was no house in Srinagar where she could go to uh, the house that she or her family owns is in an area called Naugam which is on the outskirts of Srinagar and where we've seen repeated kind of militancy actions so probably she had really written to the government that well for security uh, needs she requires to stay put in an area which is kind of a corridor uh, for for people for vvips remember that the obdulas also uh, stay put in in the gupkar area which is considered to be highly secure uh, but again you will have to really see what omar obdullah did a uh, few months back we did see omar also vacating from the government uh, accommodation and now is the turn of mahbooba mufti uh, who this time around is not resisting and in fact as i said in yesterday's press briefing he did say that it's not a big deal there are other issues which government needs to focus on mainly on on jobs of of young people on 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 better human rights uh, in in jammu and kashmir and also uh, you know handing over the resources to the people and uh, she did in fact say that uh, well uh, this is not a big deal she is going to anyhow move out of this residence and one expect that she will comply by this order uh, which says that she needs to vacate by or before november 15 which gives her around 20 days or so thank you for joining us on this broadcast with those details mufti we we'll leave it at that now shifting our focus to kerala now the face off between the kerala government and the governor seems far from over The governor has written to Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan seeking action against the finance minister K N Balugopal. The governor alleged that Balugopal delivered a speech on October 19th that tried to stoke fire of regionalism and provincialism, undermining the unity of India. The chief minister has written back to the governor saying there is nothing democratically and constitutionally wrong in Balugopal's statements. Without mincing words, the Kerala CM said that he won't be taking any action against the finance minister Balugopal. We join with my colleague Neetu, who brings us more details. Very good morning to you, Neetu. Neetu, could you take us through that exact speech of Balu Gopal and what exactly was said on October nineteenth? Uh, see, a couple of uh, spe- uh, speech as well as the statements that he made before the media. All this was quoted by the governor when he spoke about this. So, this one particular, the first thing which he quoted was uh, that when he said that uh, some without name, governor, he said some people from uh, who are coming from Uttar Pradesh. They really don't know the function of the university here, how things are being done, there, and how in Hindu Banaras, the white have to go uh, move around with uh, security. So these are the things which the governor thinks uh, are uh, not true, and then he speaks about regionalism and uh, uh, like that. this is not something which uh, which uh, is uh, correct, and then this uh, this is why. Uh, he no longer has what uh, the governor had written, and the chief minister have written back that he has uh, looked into it, and we can find anything wrong with it. That uh, uh, folks are not happy with the, of the governor. Uh, I went on to say that he uh, trusted. Hope that 
All right, so that was Neetu there bringing us up to speed in the latest in the face off between the governor and the government of Kerala. Of course, this whole started over the fracas between the university appointments and now uh, the Kerala governor stepping it up by asking for the removal of finance minister over the speech that he made on October 19th. But Pinarai Vijayan there reacting saying that uh, you need the CM's consent before you decide on restitution of a minister and that he personally found nothing constitutionally wrong or democratically wrong with that speech with the governor pushing for the fact that it was a speech that was trying to stoke a fire of regionalism. So this is uh, the latest in the showdown between the Kerala governor and the government and this uh, more details coming in from my colleague Neetu. I believe we've re-established our connection with her. Uh, Neetu, now uh, in the latest, uh, uh, the chief minister there saying that uh, you need the permission of uh, his side uh, to make any appointments or restitution. So legally, uh, how is this expected to continue? Uh, as far as the government is concerned, they are uh, uh, they they say that they have uh, the answers. They say they have replied. but at the same time, this out all factors away. Now, fresh face-off between the Amadmi Party and the BJP is in store in the national capital over Chhat Puja. BJP has termed the expenditure of rupees 25 crores by the Amadmi Party on the Chhat arrangements in the capital as misleading and false. BJP leaders have decided to expose the AAP government's claims by visiting Yamuna Ghat. The LG Delhi office has also indicated that LG is not happy with the alleged misleading announcement by Arvind K. Jriwal, which was done without his approval. This happening at a time when MCD elections are expected to be announced soon and both parties are eyeing the 40% Purvanjali vote bank in the national capital. और सरकार की तैयारी कर रही है एलजी साहब ने उसको अप्रूव कर दिया है तो इसमें तो कुछ विवाद कहां से है जमुना तट पे भी निश्चित है जो जो छठ जहां जहां होती है वहीं होगा और वो इनफ है हम लोगों के लिए तो शायद उसी को ये भ्रामक प्रचार कहा तो प्रचार करने में अरविंद केजरीवाल का कोई जोड़ा है पूरे संसार में तो निश्चित रूप से अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को अब इस समय क्या है कि वो जल्दीबाजी में रहते हैं कि जब बैन हटी गया तो मैं भी क्रेडिट ले लूं ले लो भैया लेकिन जमुना जी मैया की सफाई कराना उन्हीं के अंतर्गत है ना अब कोई बात नहीं वो नहीं किए तो हम छठ व्रतधारी करेंगे नाउ बीजेपी सेइंग दैट जस्ट बिकॉज़ मनोज तिवारी हैज रिटन अ लेटर asking for proper arrangements and cleanliness of chhat ghats that's the reason why we have seen that arvind kejriwal has tweeted that this time you are allowed to celebrate chhat on chhat ghats <laughs> i think it's quite funny that manoj tiwari ji should say this over a thousand chhat ghats have been created by the delhi government over the period of the last 7 years obviously during covid there were restrictions but if there is any government any party any leader that has really stood behind chhat celebrations and it is aam aadmi party and arvind kejriwal mr vinay saxena is relatively new in delhi he maybe should first apprise himself how chhat has been celebrated in delhi for the last 7 years where arrangements have been made for all people who are in body can have safe chhat celebrations to make sure that they can have access to uh, arrangements where all their rituals can be carried out my colleague akash joining us with more details akash you've been reporting from on ground and you've witnessed uh, these uh, ghats are they actually clean because the bjp and aap they're fighting over each other to take credit for it uh, you look shilpa preparations are in full swing but we cannot say that ghats are all clean as of now also while it is about politics so political parties are stressing on the yamuna cleaning rather than the ghat cleaning so these are two different things 
ghat cleaning is a different thing and yamuna cleaning is a different thing bjp is saying that arvind kejriwal has failed to clean yamuna and that's the reason why they are attacking aam aadmi party saying that this time also uh, those who believe in chhat puja and those who celebrate chhat puja will be facing several issues because chhat puja is puja is all about uh, you know uh, worshiping the sun and also you know there uh, there are rituals that they have to stand in water and all other things also while it is about aam aadmi party so aam aadmi party is clearly saying that as far as these preparations are concerned so they are spending at least 25 crore rupees and they have prepared at least 1100 ghats remember we are just a uh, two to three days away from this particular celebration and they are saying that by that time we'll be uh, getting all these ghats prepared on the other hand you know this is very interesting for the national capital shilpa because we know uh, that uh, you know delhi houses a lot of uh, people who belong to uh, the western up eastern up bihar and jharkhand so these are the regions where they celebrate chhat uh, prominently and also they, they you know this is their uh, main festival this is one annual festival and their main festival also talking about the politics so chhat puja and politics go hand in hand in the national capital we have witnessed a whole lot of politics last year and this time also now the yamuna cleaning and also the ghat cleaning is one of the prominent issues and you know aam aadmi party is claiming that we'll be preparing 1100 chhat ghats and uh, you know all uh, the necessary arrangements will be done on the other hand we have bjp which is first saying that only because manoj tiwari wrote a letter to a uh, cm kejriwal asking for the arrangements they have done it also they are still you know far away from the cleaning of yamuna on the other hand we have lg office that is somewhere indicating that lg is not very happy with the kind of developments that have happened in the past few days because you must be remembering the tweet and the announcement by arvind kejriwal where he categorically mentioned that now those who uh, celebrate chhat puja uh, you know can go to uh, can go to ch uh, chhat ghats uh, alongside the bank of yamuna and can celebrate chhat but on the other hand we have lg office which is somewhere saying that this was done even when uh, you know lg was uh, uh, like discussing or giving a deliberation on this particular thought and he did not uh, give any sort of approval also you know there has been uh, the, an allegation that arvind kejriwal misled uh, the people of delhi with the kind of announcement because this time also there are some sort of restrictions on the celebration of uh, chhat puja you need to uh, you know follow the uh, rules and regulations by L, uh, ngt and also by some other agency related to cleanliness and all the uh, celebrations this time also we have the political political war of words between bjp and aam aadmi party and the development is that now we have bjp leaders who are going to visit chhat ghat in the national capital and they are somewhere saying that they'll expose aam aadmi party government because as far as uh, you know bjp is concerned so bjp is clear that nothing has been done and arvind kejriwal and his party is only involved in fake advertisement and misleading people in the national capital shilpa Akash, stay with us. Let's also take a look at uh, Anshul's ground report on the Chhat Puja preparations. Another year and the same story. With Chhat Puja just round the corner, the politics around it has already started. Currently, I'm standing at Kalendi Kuch on the bank of the toxic yet holy Yamuna River. If I could just move out of the frame and show you in the visuals, the toxicity. in the yamuna river has again started the toxic foam that settles on the yamuna river every year at this time of the year up on the month of october and november that continues yet again last year we saw the kind of political flashpoint between the aam aadmi party and the bjp when the aam aadmi party banned people from celebrating chhat puja on the banks of yamuna river but this time around as well the situation remains the same water is being released from the okla barrack or the okla dam to make sure that the fraud that settles on the on the top layer of the yamuna river flows away if you could see in the visuals over here there is a heavy flow that has been maintained in the yamuna river making sure that the fraud that settles on the yamuna river uh, from the chemical waste coming from the factories in the national capital that flows away But With just a few days to go for the chhat puja blame game has heated up between aap and bjp both parties are eyeing that 40% purvanshli vote bank just before the mcd elections my colleague akash sharma brings you this ground report
Like every year, politics of Uchhat Puja is taking center stage in Delhi, but this time the stakes are higher because of the upcoming MCD elections and the nearly 40% Purvanchali vote bank is being eyed by both the Aadmi Party and the BJP. Preparations are in full swing for the auspicious occasion of Chhat Puja here in the capital city. Well, I'm reporting from Yamuna Ghat in central Delhi, which is the prominent Ghat for Chhat Puja. And here I'm showing you the visuals of the preparations that are going on. You can see these workers are working on this particular artificial Ghat that is on the bank of river Yamuna. As far as the preparations are concerned, so total 1100 Chhat Ghat will be prepared by different agencies in the national capital. And in fact, Delhi government is spending at least 25 crore rupees here on this Chhat Puja for these are Chhat Ghat. BJP MP Manoj Tiwari fired the first shot, writing to Delhi LG VK Saxena, seeking direction to officers for cleaning the Yamuna Ghats. I am very happy that today, Manya LG Mahoday has accepted it. And we were able to understand the NGT until Manya NGT. We will give all the details today. That the work of Chhat is a good thing. Now, Arvind Kejriwal Ji is a credit for the credit. बाज व्यक्ति है तो क्रेडिट तो किस भी व्यक्ति जब पहले रोकेंगे जब नहीं रुक पाएगा तो उसका क्रेडिट लेंगे दिस केम इवन एज आम आदमी पार्टी क्लेम दे हैव रेडीड एट लीस्ट इलेवन हंड्रेड गार्ड फॉर छठ पूजा I think it's quite funny that Manoj Tiwari ji should say this. Delhi is the first state in the country to make extensive and very systematic arrangements for people across Delhi to celebrate Chhat. Over a thousand Chhat cards have been created by the Delhi government over the period of the last seven years. The LG gave his nod to hold Chhat Puja at designated cards on the Yamuna, but he also cautioned Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal against misleading and premature publicity over the issue. Politics over Chhat Puja is an annual affair for the national capital. Every time when this auspicious occasion is around, Political parties try to portray themselves as the one with clear intention of providing better facilities. Aam Aadmi Party government this time also has claimed for world-class facilities for all those who believe in Chhat Puja and who celebrate Chhat Puja. However, BJP on the other hand is attacking Aam Aadmi Party government saying that they are only involved in misleading people and fake advertisement. Cleanliness of Yamuna is the prominent issue this time. As the MCD elections draws near, the political parties have involved themselves in a political war of words. However, this is going to be very interesting as we are just hours away from the auspicious day of Chhat Puja and this will be interesting to see as how things will unfold from now onwards. With Congressman Rajesh Bharadwaj, this is Akash Sharma for CNN News 18. Projects over Lakshmi Ganesh on rupees escalates Congress's Manish Tiwari tell Delhi CM uh, Arvind Kejriwal on Twitter. Manish Tiwari tweeted and I quote, Why not Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's photograph on new series of currency notes? One side the great Mahatma, the other side Dr. Ambedkar. Non-violence, constitutionalism and egalitarianism fusing in a unique union that would sum up the modern Indian genius perfectly. All right, so that is the latest coming in from the Congress. Uh, in response to Kejriwal's request for Lakshmi and Ganesha to revive the follow uh, the following loopy. Already, uh, the Congress has accused the Aam Aadmi Party of uh, being the B team of the BJP and saying uh, Arvind Kejriwal uh, always shifts his goalposts according to when the election is coming and that this is an attempt to woo the majority by uh, putting out statements uh, of a religious nature of this sort. And now, Manish Tiwari turning around and uh, asking Arvind Kejriwal, perhaps, uh, you know, why are you uh, displaying Baba Sahib Ambedkar's uh, picture so prominently behind you because, uh, you know, that is an ubiquitous image of the Delhi Chief Minister and saying, uh, why not make space uh, for that great leader as well on the rupee note. So, the Congress there also stepping in to the whole uh, currency controversy uh, right now, uh, joined by our senior editor, Pallavi Ghosh, who brings us more details. Pallavi, how do you view Manish Tiwari's statement coming in uh, regarding Baba Sahib Ambedkar's uh, right of place on the currency note? Well, I think one, of course, it's a pot shot and the Ahmadi party because Mr. Edwin Kejriwal 
made that uh, statement yesterday that Lakshmi and Ganesh Ji should be on the, on the other side of the currency. Also, Manish Tiwari comes in from Punjab and AAP is in power. So that's one reason for a pot shop. But second, I think Shilpa has now become a game of one-upmanship. And it's also become a what about I mean, Salman Sos, for example, again from the Congress party, tweeted yesterday, why not do you also have a picture of Jesus and Allah on the currency note? And he, of course, Manish Tiwari is trying to go in for the so-called secular angle when he makes the point that you should have the father of the constitution, Babara Abhim Rao Ambedkar's picture also on the currency, just as much as that of the power of the nation. So the politics over this comment of Arvind Kejriwal is not going to end. I think every political party will also try to treat a very cautious stance because they do understand that complete criticism of Kejriwal at this point could actually boomerang on them. But at the same time, as I said, I mean, they want to take pot shots at the uh, Ahmadne party. Thank you very much for those details, Pallavi. Those politicians are putting their money where their mouth is or maybe vice versa. On that note, I'm speaking to a very short commercial break. Stay with us. Hijab has been introduced as an Arabic slavery sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to further the right of freedom who are burning hijab or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so? So, this patriarchy they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates. Then, as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So, how can a woman, a Muslim woman, can become a prime minister in uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere? And okay. the next, if you say Islamic nation next door to us, in Pakistan, there was Bamezhnazi Bhutto, she lost her life. She was not a hijab wearing politician. In Bangladesh, we had two ladies who became head of the state, prime ministers, they they have, they have are all without hijab. Show me one country, Islamic or any other, it is especially Islamic, where you have women becoming head of the state. So this, either you are, you support Sharia and Islam, or you say we are a secular country. If you are a secular country, then don't oppose triple talaq. Then if you are secular, okay. then what did you do for 60 years? 50 years prior to 90, 2000, uh, year 1996, 10 years from 2004 to 2014, secular governments all through, why they could not get a Muslim prime minister elected. No, and so why in Punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu, or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be a, can be chief minister. So this hypocrisy of entire gang is so funny. Le and Sunat did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. He became a prime minister because he worked hard, he worked through the party, he rose to the top and we must compliment him for that. Yeah, Not no, no, I absolutely agree with you. I think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because Suman Si Raman, Mr. Rishi Sunak got chosen not because he's a Hindu or because of his Indian heritage. He got chosen for two things. Number one, uh, to fix the British economy and he has a proven record of that as Chancellor of the Exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking, so on and so forth. So he's capable, his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked. And the other reason is... England, as is India, a parliamentary democracy, whoever has the support of majority legislators, majority parliamentarians, goes on to become the leader of that party. It is not a, a post of tokenism. The prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority. So tomorrow, and nothing stops a hijab-wearing woman, the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab-wearing woman, if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India, to go ahead and become Prime Minister. So this whole debate around Sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are. First of all, uh, Zaka, um, uh, should Mr. Chidambaram or uh, Mr. Uh, Vaisi have the, do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties? The answer is no. That is a very different issue. I don't think that they are actually saying that Mr. Rishi Sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job. I don't think that that is their point at all. Their point is, their, the atmosphere in the country 
is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community, belonging to a minority faith in his country to become the prime minister of the country. I think that that's the point that's being made. Should always he be making that point? Uh, is he having, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the same freedom? BJP takes on Congress after 1984 riot accused Taikla was seen at Karge assuming charge of Congress. Chief event yesterday, BJP's Sajinder Bhagat tweeted a picture showing Taikla at the event and said Congress invited killers of Sikhs Jagdish Taikla as special guest in oath ceremony of Malika Arjun Khadge. Congress and Sonia Gandhi's love for killers of Sikhs proved once again. We're joined by our senior editor Pallavi Ghosh, who brings us more details. Uh, Pallavi, how is the Congress expected to react? The BJP now missing a chance there to point out the inclusion of Jagdish Titler continuously by the Congress, even in their ceremonial activities. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I was there that even and we did see Jagdish Taikla walk in and not only that, I mean the Congress cannot get away by saying that he was uninvited because he can be seen, for example, in that press conference hall where even Sonia Gandhi, Malika Jun Kharge uh, was sitting and it was a special security zone, so only selected people were allowed in and Jagdish Taikla managed to go in. The Congress has certainly been trying to maintain a distance from him uh, because obviously his alleged involvement in the 1984 Sikh riots. But this, I think, is going to be very difficult for the Congress to wish away. I think the reaction which we'll again predictably get from the Congress is that this is yet another attempt by the BJP to divert attention from the Bharat Joro Yatra. Thank you very much, Pallavi. We'll leave it at that and also submit to a very short break. We'll be right back. lost him let's go to Ambar Zaidi uh, Ambar you know no one has a problem with what Mr. Ovesi said the problem is his own double standards when it comes to his own party everyone uh, you know has no problem with a hijab wearing woman becoming uh, a prime minister as long as he or she is capable as long as he or she gets elected uh, to public office in this country but in Mr. Ovesi's party despite his noble ideals and noble aspirations the national president is a man the different state presidents that they have in five or six states they're all men all MLAs that they have across five or six states where MIM has MLAs, they are all men. Uh, almost all of the spokespersons are men. So where is a woman, hijab wearing or otherwise, in Mr. Ovesi's party in any position of leadership? Absolutely right, uh, uh, Chika, because uh, as they say, Cherish is at home and whatever uh, Ovesi ji is preaching, he doesn't practice that. So he needs to practice whatever he is preaching to the entire nation. We need to, like, uh, in our country, if we talk about the Muslim women especially, their uh, literacy rate is so low, he doesn't care about the literacy rate of women, they, they, he doesn't care about the health care of Muslim women, he doesn't give that equal rights that uh, Muslim women as uh, Islam or Sharia as women, even uh, the con constitution for that matter, but they, they never talk about the equal right or basic human right the Muslim women should get, but he is just Teaching what is like uh, he should also like uh, he I mean I just want to ask one question to uh, OSAG uh, he should at, at least give up on his MPC from Hyderabad and nominate at least a woman from his party and he should give a chance to uh, become a prime minister from uh, a woman from his party at least and then he should he can uh, uh, he can come out and uh, yell out to, to the people what he's just trying to uh, uh, set up a narrative that. Uh, in India, Muslims are being targeted just because, because of their religious identities for hijab, for topi, for beef, or for for all these things, which is absolutely not right. He needs to be actually he needs to do, uh, do politics on the real issue, the work on ground. Okay, Amina Sherwani, you know I'm I'm taking ahead what the point that Ambar Zedi was making. That again, I have no quibble with Mr. Uh, Mr. Ovesi wanting to see in his lifetime a burqa clad or a hijab clad woman becoming the prime minister of this country. Surely if that person is capable, if that person has uh, electoral majority, the support of the majority of the people of this country, absolutely that person should go on to become prime minister. But in Mr. Ovesi's case, not just this leadership issue in his party, but more importantly, how do you get there? We're talking about Rishi Sunak. It's his capability. He went to the best schools uh, in England and the best universities in the world. 
uh, it is about his education as as an old man once said the greatest leveler that we have in this country is is quality education if you get a good education that is a sure shot route to success what has mr ovc's party done about uh, education and 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 for uh, and for women uh, who is the party who said agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education muslim girls getting an education nothing is more important than getting a good education and if a hijab is an impediment in that then the hijab should go not education absolutely and let me tell you about rishi sunak he even has african blood he's got an african grandmother from tanganyika so he is a punjabi khatri from gujranwala and as we know the khatris are of greek origin and they travel from europe and came this side he is truly a world citizen he did not hide himself in hijabs he got the best education in the world he has done businesses all over the world and yes if muslim girls will go out and travel africa india europe reach every country in the world and they will be educated they will certainly become prime ministers not just of india but of any country in the world that they choose to become so the world is our oyster and that is kerala based band taikudam bridge has accused the makers of kantara with plagiarism the brand has accused the makers of plagiarizing the 2017 song navrasa and pointed out similarities to kantara's varaha roopam song composed by music director ajneesh lokamath while the makers have not responded to the allegations the band has reportedly been approached by them but the band is planning to sue for infringement of copyright law kantara is the breakout hit of the year with a never ending box office run it is a film about uh, the rooted traditions of coastal karnataka Film producer Kamal Kishore Mishra has been accused of ramming his wife with his car. Based on the CCTV footage of the incident where his wife can be seen falling on the ground after Mishra hits her with his car, according to police, he rammed his wife with this car after his wife caught him with another woman. Case has been registered against him under sections 279. And 338 of the IPC at Amboli Police Station incident took place on October 19th in the parking area of a residential building in Andheri. Accused is on the run. Investigation underway. Those are the visuals on your screen. And it's extremely shocking. Uh, going across to my colleague Mihir Trivedi, who brings us these details. Mihir, how has a Kamal Kamal Kishore Mishra responded? And uh, from those visuals. uh it uh, it's not clear whether it was deliberate or it could have been accidental what to have, what is the police framing this as uh ashilpa at this point uh, the police has uh, registered a case uh, under section uh, 279 uh, 338 of ipc uh for now what we understand and this is through the visuals and that uh, uh, that based on the statement of the eyewitness is that uh, Kamal Kishore Mishra uh, lesser known film producer and actor uh, has uh, really uh, done something which is not uh, uh, you know seen as uh, rightful in in the eyes of law uh, we are seeing in those visuals that uh, he is uh, uh, his car is being approached by his uh, wife uh, apparently in those visuals and uh, they are having a, a conversation uh, suddenly something or uh, goes wrong and he just drives past uh, he does uh, uh, the driver in that car does witness uh, somebody falling inside the car and still uh, drives away and that uh, really alerted uh, onlookers around and they came for the rescue of this woman uh, now the woman who is the wife of uh, Kamal Kishore uh, Kishore Mishra has suffered head injuries is what we understanding and uh, 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 this uh, producer is on the run at this point police is looking out for him uh, uh, we will really uh, need to understand the motive uh, and the reason behind uh, uh, whether it was deliberate or whether it was uh, some sort of mistake uh, but that is something the police is investigating uh, and that clarity will only come once uh, the accused in this case is arrested Okay, so the accused on the run currently. Thank you very much for joining us for those details, Mihir. With that, it's a wrap from me on this bulletin. Joining you next, my colleague Toya. 
Shilpa, thank you. Good morning to all of our audiences. You're watching the news here at CNN News 18. My name is Toya Singh. It's a Thursday morning. We're watching the morning news, which means that across the next hour, we're going to bring you the top stories and breaking news stories that are coming in from across the country. Our first story takes us down south to Telangana. Telangana, remember, is a state that has elections coming up in just a few months from now. And next month, it has a particularly important bi poll coming up. It's the Munugoda bi poll. And within that, that the BJP is hoping to gain a psychological edge over the Telangana Rashtra Samiti, which, remember, has just changed their name to the Bharat Rashtra Samiti. Let's bring you more context, though, about what took place yesterday. Four TRS MLAs, P. Rohit Reddy, B. Ram Harshwardhan Reddy, P. Raga Kantharao and Govala Balaraju, all four of them. They've accused the BJP of having tried to poach them. It seems to be high political drama. The four MLAs were found in a farmhouse in Aziznagar where they were allegedly offered bribes by people who might have been linked to the BJP. The MLAs informed the Cyberabad police about it. The police have arrested three people accused of having links with the BJP. Meanwhile, the BJP is hit back, saying the TRS is doing dirty politics. They've said the BJP has no role to play in this case. Quickly, first let's go over to what the police commissioner had to say, then we'll move on. BJP is known for toppling state governments across India. But one thing is clear out today that KCRG's MLAs are not for sale. Using Swamiji's and many other political brokers, Bharatiya Janata Party leaders were caught red-handed today by pressurizing MLAs, four MLAs of TRS to shift sides to Bharatiya Janata Party offering hundreds of crores and contracts just before the Munugod by-election. KCRG's MLAs informed police that BJP has been pressurizing them and today police has caught them red-handed. My colleague Swastika is now with us to bring us more context on this story. Swastika, we played out for our audiences what the police had to say and what a TRS spokesperson had to say. Now, if you could just confirm in your own words exactly what took place. What do we know to have taken place as a fact? Well, at this juncture, uh, what we know is that yesterday, the Cyberabad police raided a farmhouse where four TRS MLAs were seen sitting with three of the accused. Now, who are these accused? We don't know yet. Can we dub them as a deep, as BJP agents? As of now, from an investigation perspective, perhaps no. Because the allegation that these are belonging to the BJP and are linked to certain union ministers is something that is being put forth by the TRC side. So far, we know that the identity of the accused includes Satish Sharma, Nand Kumar, and Simha. Nand Kumar is a Hyderabad-based businessman. Simha is a priest from Tirupati. And Satish Kumar is also somebody who is associated with religious activity and is from Faridabad in Haryana. These are the details that we have picked up from the police. Yesterday, when the raids were conducted at the farmhouse, there were bags of cash reportedly recovered. And we are learning that about 15 crores was recovered by the police there. However, there is no official confirmation on how much exactly was the cash recovered. The TRS on its part has alleged that these four MLAs were being uh, purchased allegedly uh, with a bribe of 100 crore each along with some government contracts and a promise to put them as ministers once the BJP comes to power in the state of Telangana in 2023. But mind you, Toya, all of these are right now allegations that are being put by the TRS's side. The TRS has also shared a set of pictures of some of these accused with Union Minister Kishan Reddy, who has, of course, come on record saying 
that all these allegations are baseless it's a fabricated story and okay, swastika just stay with us please because i want to take what you just said over to the bjp krishna sagar rao with us right now from the bjp good morning sir sir through yesterday we've watched the trs make multiple allegations that uh, the three accused who were found in the farmhouse were associated with your party they've now put out photos of those three accused standing with leaders from your party a tactic that the bjp has also employed in the past in controversies around the country so what's your response to this allegation see these are wild baseless allegations they don't have uh, any limbs to walk or crawl Uh, but this is a script being played out, both produced, directed, and released by TRS party and its leader KCR. Uh, this is a classic obfuscation politics leading up to uh, by poll in Munugodu in the next four days. We understand the plot, and we are a matured national party. We know how to give a return gift. Uh, we have nothing to do with these allegations, nor the people in this in the scene. They are neither party members nor have any connection with the party. if there are pictures being circulated with kishan reddy kishan reddy is the public uh, public figure and he is the central minister and he has been an mp he is an mp he has been an mla several times so he will meet lot of people he'll have pictures with them that doesn't make uh, that doesn't make any allegation real and there are so many pictures with the same individuals with trs leaders too so that doesn't cut ice what is happening actually is a, a plot to malign and defame bharatiya janata party just ahead of bipol elections and this is a band-aid solution for trs to win but uh, unfortunately it will be a big self goal all right so so thank you for your uh, own opinion on the story now very quickly i want to go back to my colleague swastika to ask her more uh, swastika we just heard from the bjp krishna sagar rao from the bjp saying that there was no real reason to believe that the bjp was behind this that the trs was simply building a ploy i want to ask you swastika in the evidence the police has put forward is there anything pointing towards the bjp well the police is extremely tight lipped so far what we know is that yesterday a farm house was raided that taken three persons into custody satish sharma uh, simha and nand kumar nand kumar from hyderabad simha is from tirupati and satish is from faridabad their questioning is still underway to a certain which organization uh, or political outfit do they belong to the police is of course acting on the complaint filed by the trs mlas here that they were being poached they were being horse trade and there was an attempt from the other side allegedly from the bjp side uh, to topple the state government here in telangana so just on the basis of that complaint the police is carrying out its investigation okay. like i said yesterday bags of cash were also recovered we don't know yet exactly what is the amount that was recovered but sources indicate that it was about 15 crores the allegation put forth by, by the trs side very briefly is that 100 crores was being offered to each of the mlas by these three individuals all of that yet to be proved okay swastika if i could actually ask you to stay with us for a second i want to come back to you in just a few minutes uh, first we have ravela sridhar reddy from the trs with us on the phone this morning thank you so much for joining us here uh, i'd like to ask you we just spoke to the bjp and the main point they're making is where is the proof one photo with a public leader after all any leader in the bjp is a public leader they are public facing individuals one photo is not enough proof what actual concrete proof is the trs offering how would you answer that see it's a clear conspiracy to topple the government they were they were trying to poach our mlas they were caught red handed and uh, you know people who were caught who are there in the videos and pictures are very close to bjp leaders even the indian ministers close aide was also there and the pictures have come out videos have come out even the past videos of them being very close have come out and what more evidence you need and the evidence is definitely whatever supposed to be uh, just you know provided police will come out with full information but the, you have to see the act here in the wake of uh, munugodu by election they wanted to prove a point that they are more stronger than what they are so if i also, if i could ask you a quick follow up question here uh, because you are yeah. from the trs i'm sure obviously you're in contact with your own mlas what reason did they give for even going to the farm house in the first place see do do see it, it was a, they understood that it's a ploy to destabilize our government and for the last so many days 
टीआर मतलब बीजेपी स्टेट प्रेसिडेंट देर एम एल एस देर यूनियन मिनिस्टर्स देर पार्लियामेंट्री बोर्ड मेंबर्स फॉर गिविंग स्टेटमेंट दट वी आर इन टच विथ टी आर एस पार्टी एम एल एस फ्यू एम एल एस आर गोइंग टू ज्वाइन बीजेपी पार्टी वी आर गोइंग टू ब्लास्ट द बॉम्ब दीज वर द कमेंट्स मेड बाई टेम एंड नाउ आर आर लीडर लीडर्स वर बोल्ड इनफ दे अंडरस्टूड दी प्लॉय दे अंडरस्टूड दी कॉन्स्पिरेसी एंड दे हैव इन्फॉर्म द पुलिस हेन्स दे वर कॉट The okay. whoever tried so, to post them, they were caught red-handed. So, so, and this is the integrity that our MLAs have shown. We are proud of them, rather. And BJP is doing such dirty politics, you know, murky politics in all other states. You have seen Ekras Shinde's in episode in you know uh, Maharashtra. You have seen Madhya Pradesh. You have seen Karnataka. Okay, sir. Let me just quickly summarize then for our audiences. You are essentially saying. Let me just summarize. You are essentially saying these four MLAs knew what they were getting into. They only did this so they could catch. these uh, apparently bjp associated uh, people red handed is that accurate that's what the, even the police commission is from the okay. same way right. the mlas have informed them hence they have read it it's it's clear that our guys our mlas they know it these guys are trying to topple they they had the conspiracy to destabilize our government this is a modus operandi bjp have chosen okay rabul ravi thank them. you so much for joining us this morning all right for our audiences to bring you more context on this story take a look at some more reactions that have come in on this very same story the alleged uh, poaching of mlas by few individuals in a farm house and wherein rupees 15 crores is supposed to have been seized the bharatiya janata party has nothing to do with this bharatiya janata party need not even poach a single mla those who are coming to us they are being poached by trs in fact these people who have been caught belongs to trs leader the money belongs to trs this is a dirty game politics of the trs why is it that your party is alleging bjp's hand in the entire uh, nexus that has been busted by the cyberbath police then who will uh, are the responsible it is the central government headed by bjp and their people own people are their ramchandra bharti somaya azlu they are the bjp supporters and they are the actual on the back end they are only operating the all the money and other things from the bjp and and the third person is also nandu is the follower of the central minister kishan reddy all these these people working and they offered 100 crores for an each mla they wanted to top the government in similar line to the maharashtra hmm. and definitely they on behalf of bjp they approached our mlas our mlas actually after receiving the information they telephoned they also actually invited them for the particular location then which was informed to the police Hmm. so the, those are the people responsible they are doing all these things let's go back to my colleague swastika who's been bringing us the report on this entire story swastika i want to ask you we just spoke to the trs and essentially they were alleging that this was their mla's plan their mla's wanted to go in there to talk to those individuals and catch those individuals red handed in their poaching attempts Uh, so Swasti I want to ask you because you're obviously a ground reporter in the region are you buying this uh, this angle that the TRS is presenting well was what police also said remember if Ravindra who is uh, Ravindra who is the CP of Cyberabad police commissionerate yesterday said that they had received a tip off from four of these MLAs that there was an attempt to poach them and they were at a farmhouse in Moinabad acting on that tip off the police went to the outskirts of hyderabad went to this park, particular farmhouse in moinabad and they were in fact witness to the fact that there were three the three of these individuals holding dialogues with the four trs mlas um prime of city what the bjp is alleging is that all of this is a witch hunt all of this was a pre planned sting operation that was carried out by uh, the telangana government itself with the police in its nexus oh. this is the allegation coming in from the bjp side and to add more weightage to this is the fact that media was also present um, at the time when the sting operation was busted so obviously uh, from a journalist perspective there was some information leakage that came either from the police side or uh, from uh, the party side as well because 
when the police was at the spot, we are also learning that there were a lot of regional channels who were already present on the ground. Then using this context, the BJP has been alleging that the whole thing a, is a plot to, con to defame the party because so far the police has not said that the three accused, Satish Sharma, Simha and Nanda Kumar, belong to the Bharatiya Janta Party. Their identities are yet to be ascertained, their political links are yet to be ascertained. So, yeah. Swastika, thank you so much for bringing us that context. Remember, Telangana state headed into elections in just a few months from now. Just a, a few days away from a very important bipol set to take place in early November in the state. That's why we're seeing so much political drama out of the state. Right now, though, we're shifting focus to the neighboring state of Kerala, where the drama, the face-off we've been seeing between the Kerala government and the governor very much continues. In the latest version of uh, the sparring that we've seen between the Governor Arif Mohammed, who is in the middle of your screens, and the Kerala Chief Minister, Pinaray Vijayan, uh, you've seen the Governor, again in the centre of your screens, ask for action to be taken against the Finance Minister, who you're seeing on the left side, K.N. Balagopal. The Governor alleged that Balagopal delivered a speech on October 19th According to the governor, Palagopal tried to stoke a fire of, quote, regionalism and provincialism, undermining the unity of India. That's what he said in a letter to the chief minister. The chief minister then wrote back. He said to the governor that there was nothing democratically and constitutionally wrong in what Balagopal had said. Without mincing words, the chief minister said that he won't be taking any action against the finance minister. Remember, as we told you, this is simply the latest version of multiple controversies we've seen coming out of Kerala between the governor and the chief minister. Take a look first at this first reaction. Nema Virdamai, UGC Chatangal Langichundana, Kerala Tele Sarvagala Shalagal, Vice Chancellor Marane Mikanada, other party Kariana Name Mikanada, Kanur University Nakaparana or CP of Gundana, Vice Chancellor Noran. Hanganella Gundagal and Namikan, or party official naming attendant and Sarvagala Shal Namikan. The tensions between the governor and left government in Kerala has been mounting over the last two months. The governor seems to be getting in the habit of picking up every small thing, raising it in the public. Normally there is um, a certain um, methods by which a dialogue takes place between government and the governor. Kerala government, I think, has been very circumspect. Um, giving him all the respect due, and even in the provocation, not answering back. But now all these uh, niceties are given up, um, because governor's acts have crossed all limits. The Congress and CPM is misleading the people, and also they are misinterpreting the letter written by Honorable Governor. They want to create chaos, confusion, indifference among the people and taking political advantage out of it. So the, the, the uh, real aim of the parties, CPM and Congress, is to defame the governor. Okay, for more context on the story, my colleague Neetu Regukmar is with us live this morning. Neetu, good morning. We haven't yet told our audiences what the finance minister said that the governor's taken umbrage to. Could you shed some light on that? There are multiple uh, speech as well as what he has spoken to the media. So, in one of the speeches, uh, uh, the finance minister, Mr. Kane Balagopal, without uh, taking the name of the governor, had said that some people from coming from Uttar Pradesh don't know how the universities function over here. He also went on to say that in the Hindu Banaras University, the vice chancellor has to move around with heavy security. That is not the condition here. So, the, these are things which the governor has taken objection to uh, and says that is talking regionalism. Now, the chief minister, uh, after he received the letter, said that he has looked into this and he, he found that there is nothing wrong with it for the governor to uh, not have pleasure in the minister anymore and that uh, uh, CM has complete trust on his finance minister and uh, he also went on to say that uh, the governor will accept, uh, hope that the governor will accept that there is no need for any further action in this. Now, uh, th there's also one possibility in this whole scenario 
scenario that has erupted right now uh, if somebody goes to court uh, saying that the governor has uh, the governor has lost pleasure in one minister and he should be uh, removed uh, from the cabinet and the cm is not acting so if someone takes this to the court then this entire controversy will again end up in court uh, the, the, the constitutional issues all that will be taken up in court also so uh, we understand that that is uh, uh, what uh, uh, it might be uh, one of the uh, scenarios which will happen in the coming days uh, so far as uh, the raj bhavan is concerned what we understand is that at this moment there will not uh, be any more action on this the governor has written and the chief minister has written back in this issue Uh, Nitu, uh, could you also give us more context here? What do legal experts have to say? Because the Kerala government's accusation over the last few weeks is that the governor is extending his brief; that most of the statements the governor is making are beyond his purview. But what do legal experts have to say on this? See what we uh, see when when we look at it. The gov- though governor is the one uh, who uh, ta- gives the oath, and uh, it's basically uh, uh, what the, the governor has to work on the advice of the cabinet. So he has communicated it back to the CM that he has lost pleasure in one of the ministers. But uh, 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 what uh, uh, more than that? What can he do? Because it's ultimately the CM and his cabinet that has uh, the CM decides on this, and then uh, he uh, tells the. the governor that uh, who would be the minister so uh, this is a quite an unprecedented scenario and uh, uh, this is uh, as far as uh, the government is concerned they are saying that the go- the governor has overstepped his uh, uh, reach basically he uh, his constitutional responsibility is to act on the advice of uh, uh, the the govern uh, the govern uh, the government uh, the chief minister and his cabinet and now he is overstepping his reach uh, we know that last week the issue was with the university vice chancellor where he had sent showcase notice to 11 university vice chancellors and uh, nine of them have time till november 3rd and two of them have time till november 4th that controversy is also brewing up so what uh, will really happen in these uh, two situations Okay, Neetu, thank you for that context. We are now heading into a short break. On the other side, we of course return with the morning news and more of the country's top stories. We'll see you in a few minutes. For ten years, from 2004 to 2014, secular governments all through, why they could not get a Muslim pr- prime minister is elected. No, and so why in Punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a Hindu, le- or in Jammu Kashmir where minority can be uh, can be chief minister. So this hypocrisy of entire gang is so funny. Le- and Sunak did not become prime minister because he was a Hindu. He became a prime minister because he worked hard. He worked through the party. He rose to the top, and we must compliment him for that. Yeah no no I absolutely agree with you I think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because Suman Singh Raman Mr Rishi Sunak got chosen not because he's a Hindu or because of his Indian heritage he got chosen for two things number one uh, to fix the british economy and he has a proven record of that as chancellor of the exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking so on and so forth so he's capable his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked and the other reason is England as is India a parliamentary democracy whoever has the support of majority legislators majority parliamentarians goes on to become the leader of that party it is not a a post of tokenism the prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority so tomorrow and nothing stops a hijab wearing woman the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab wearing woman if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India to go ahead and become prime minister so this whole debate around sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are first of all uh, zaka um, uh, should mr chidambaram or uh, mr uh, vc have the do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties the answer is no that is a, a different issue i don't think that they are actually saying that mr rishi sunak did not get where he was because he had the merit to get the job i don't think that that is their point at all their point is there the atmosphere in the country 
is such that it accepts a person belonging to a minority community, belonging to a minority faith in his country, to become the prime minister of the country. I think that that's the point that's being made. Should OYC be making that point? Uh, is he having, uh, uh, you know, uh, the the same freedom to the uh, to the um, women and other groups in his own party? Yeah. All that, of course, is 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 comp is definitely a valid point. But and I think that this is important. See, we have to understand that this applies to all political parties. Look, we have not had a Muslim chief minister of a state in 40 years, from uh, from the uh, mm. early 80s onwards. And I think the last one was Anwar Taimur uh, in Assam. After that, I, I don't really think we've had a Muslim chief minister. So where is this issue of a society that is being open enough to embrace every different ethnic group within it? We are not. And the rise of the BJP has meant that even political parties which quote-unquote claim to be secular are now running scared seeing the electoral success of the BJP with their hard Hindutva line. And they are running scared. You see Mr. Kejriwal's statement today. Yeah. You have to put uh, 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 Lord Ganesha and Lord Lakshmi, uh, Goddess Lakshmi on the notes. You know, so every now it is now a question of who is more Hindu than the other. No, no, so, so much, so much. I, I, fair seems enough. To I'm, be I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not uh, arguing against that. But the fact is also that uh, electability and winnability has become now the bottom line uh, for political success, whether it's in the BJP or any other party. Uh, the same Ahmadmi party you refer to has an Amanatullah Khan. They have a Tahir Hussain who used to be an MLC. But yes. I, I want to get. of a suicide bomber uh, because he makes his intention clear the way he was driving that vehicle the nature of the incident everything points out to the fact that this guy is a very radicalized youth Our next story of the day, we're taking you down to Tamil Nadu, where the Tamil Nadu government has decided to recommend the transfer of the Coimbatore cylinder blast case to the National Investigative Agency. We'll tell you in a second exactly what that is. Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has said that the decision to hand over the investigation to the central agency was taken at a meeting considering the incident's possible dimensions and connections beyond the state. The BJP's Tamil Nadu chief, K. Anamalai, has over the last few days repeatedly accused the sitting DMK government of going slow on the probe in the blast. Remember, let's talk about the incident itself. One person was charred to death after an LPG cylinder inside a vehicle that he was driving exploded near a temple on October 23rd. Five people had been arrested so far. The UAPA had been invoked as police were investigating whether or not it was a pre-planned incident. Breaking news coming in in this story. We told you five arrests had taken place. I believe a sixth arrest has now taken place in the car blast case. A relative, a relative of Jamisha Mubin. Jamisha Mubin is, remember, the man who was within the car who charred to death. A relative of his has been arrested by the special team. Uh, the arrest comes after searches at the relative's home by the special team. Yesterday, he was in police custody. The relative was in police custody for the last two days. Remember, after the investigation has taken place, multiple angles have been investigated, including whether the person who died in the blast was involved in its planning or not. Multiple angles are, as we speak, being investigated. My colleague Purnima is with us live this morning to bring us more details on this entire story. Purnima, what are police alleging is the relative's link to the entire story? Do we have details? Well, in fact, uh, he's the sixth uh, person who's been arrested in the case and he's a relative of uh, the deceased Mubin. 
police sources say that the car that was used uh, the car where uh, uh, we've seen five of them transport materials before as before the explosion took place uh, that car in fact belonged to a relative of mubin and that's why the sixth person has been arrested it was his car that exploded on sunday morning at 4 am and uh, after uh, interrogation police uh, think that he also is linked uh, to uh, 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 to uh, the fact that yes they've bought materials they were planning for an attack whether it was on the same day or whether it was for a future attack that was being uh, that was being investigated by the police and uh, three days later the fourth uh, the sixth accused has been arrested in this case all right purnima if you could now walk us through what police have revealed in their investigation so far well police have confirmed that there were explosive materials found at the residence of uh, mobin and uh, the cctv footage clearly shows that they have transported huge volumes of explosive materials including ammonium nitrate and these materials were bought by them uh, through amazon and flipkart that's the latest information that the police have revealed that they have in fact purchased all the explosive materials via online uh, sites and that's uh, the new investigation uh, what really happened was the deceased had a whatsapp uh, status okay uh, on the 21st of october saying that if he dies he should be forgiven and he had a phrase in tamil which meant that he perhaps uh, all uh, right uh, we are punima very quickly we are going to have to shift focus we're going to have to go to political reactions and police reactions that have come in first take a look at what the police had to say the cctv footages from uh, the cameras located in and around the scene of crime or uh, being collected and uh, once it's a huge volume huge volume of uh, uh, cct uh, footage so uh, we will uh, examine and come back rend cylinder lpg cylinder adavara or moonu can adha drum chinna drum adile enna porulkal irundhadu abingiradha thadaiyavial report ku anupirukrom sikram vandrom some of the uh, investigation done so far uh, indicates that he has bought uh, uh, many items through amazon uh, and courier service uh, the investigation is basically going to um, all the angles okay those were reports in coimbatore now we're shifting focus and coming back north right here to the capital On Wednesday, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal had appealed to the Union Government and the Prime Minister to print images of Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Ganesh on new currency notes. His argument that it would help economic prosperity in the country. But it seems now that his advice of sorts has opened a Pandora's box. You've got leaders from various parties chipping in. After you had Manish Tiwari from the Congress uh, say, "Why not include B R Ambedkar?" You now it seems have a leader from the BJP. in maharashtra asking for chatrapati shivaji's images on the currency i'm i'm not sure exactly how he phrased it i do believe he put that image out uh, let's go over to my colleague vinaya deshpande to get more context vinaya give us more context over here is it fair to say that uh, in putting out this tweet rani is asking for chatrapati shivaji to be on the currency or is he making fun of kejriwal's appeal uh no not at all in fact uh, you know you saw a whirlwind of responses after arvind kejriwal statement yesterday and it is in this context that nitesh rane who is the bjp leader and the son of uh, union minister narayan rane he put out a tweet yesterday putting a picture of chatrapati shivaji maharaj on the currency note saying that this is perfect so in some sense he is also invoking regional pride and saying that apart from uh, you know the images of uh, made by dr ambedkar or the uh, other images about which there are debates going on uh, he says that chatrapati shivaji maharaj image should be on the currency note and that will sound more appropriate on the background of the uh, coming elections that 
several local body levels clearly this seems to be an attempt to not just jump into the controversy but also add a regional chauvinism angle to this whole uh, controversy back to you okay vinaya but what is interesting here is that yesterday when kejriwal made this statement we largely saw the bjp side stepping so you know what they largely did in their assault and their response yesterday to kejriwal is they pointed out that according to them the aam aadmi party didn't actually support the hindu population in the city with this is rani then encouraging the bjp itself especially in the center to make a stronger statement uh, well for uh, nitesh rani uh, to implore his own party to take a stance in center is uh, looks a bit too far fetched right mm, now but mm. clearly this is in respect of Uh, the regional aspirations and with respect to a response coming from within maharashtra now if you look at maharashtra if you look at the regional icons from the state um, you know chhatrapati shivaji maharaj is somebody uh, that the bjp has been trying to invoke for uh, at least the last few elections uh, with respect uh, to the kind of invocation that has been done by the shiv sena in the uh, in the past Uh, so you know it is also an attempt to claim chhatrapati shivaji maharaj so more than imploring his own party to take a different and a stronger stance it is more about emphasizing on the regional iconography and saying that uh, this should be emphasized so in some sense uh, okay. this is a regional stance Vinaya, if I could request you to actually stay with us, we're going to go over now to some political reactions we have coming in. First, we have Majid Memon. He's with us this morning on the phone. He's from the NCP in Maharashtra. Sir, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNN. Sir, I want to understand from you this tweet where you've had a BJP leader, Nitish Rane, put out this 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 note with Chhatrapati Shivaji on it. and his claim is chatrapati shivaji is a figure unanimously loved across the state by all parties let's make this change how is your party responding are they choosing to respond see these are all proposals for coming from different people the creation of different minds without even bothering as to whether it is practically possible because you see now Okay, we'll try to re-establish that connection with uh, Majid Memon. Let's go over back. Uh, we'll go also to my colleague Vinaya for more context. But before we do, uh, some context here. As my colleague Vinaya was pointing out, multiple parties in Maharashtra have had to stay, have tried to stake a claim to the legacy of Chhatrapati Shivaji. Remember, the strongest claim, perhaps a legacy that's been built over the years, is obviously that which the Shiv Sena has when it comes to those who stake their legacy and their claim in. Chhatrapati Shivaji's story but when it comes to other parties that are at play as my colleague Vinaya was just pointing out the BJP has recently tried also to increase their footprint in the state but let's go back to the controversy that actually started this the Aam Aadmi Party in their claim where they appealed to the center and asked uh, the center to make this change many believe experts believe this was them hoping to make a larger step footstep in gujarat remember gujarat is set to see elections and the aam aadmi party is hoping to have a significant victory now we're going to continue with the story right now though nitish rane the bjp leader who made this post he's with us on the phone right now sir hamare sath judne ke liye dhanyawad sir aapki ye jo mang hai iske bare mein aap hame aur batayenge please this is the thing that i have posted on my twitter yeah. is a very clear indication is chatrapati shivaji maharaj is well known to everyone right and he is he is an inspiration to everyone and that is why you know i suggested that if you going to make the changes on the uh, note notes yeah and the currency might as well do it someone who is accepted by everyone mm-hmm. it is not that i don't like with other suggestions or i don't approve of other suggestions this is something that i have suggested in my personal capacity right and that is why i have put forward that tweet okay so sir what i want to ask you here is a follow up then obviously you are from the bjp the bjp is in the center also they are the party in power how do you expect them to respond to this demand especially since you are obviously a party member in maharashtra i understand that but as i rightly said to you okay this i did this under my personal capacity obviously i'm going to speak to the seniors of uh, my party and asked them if you know my suggestion could have been accepted because chatrapati shivaji maharaj is someone who is respected by mm. everyone right as you said you have seen uh, 
uh, over and over again uh, the prime minister of the country showing great respect for chatrapati shivaji maharaj so i think so, that is a is, so sir let me just quickly let me just but i will see how it can be pushed within the government and the party great okay that's exactly what i wanted to check with you that you would be putting the full strength of your own persuasion behind this request sir just stay with us for a second we have majid memon from the ncp also with us uh, sir thank you for staying with us mr memon i believe our connection got cut in between you were saying this we are not undermining the uh, if, uh, position of uh, chatrapati shivaji for his great uh, national devotion but you see there are number of heroes in our country now why not x photo why not y photo why not z photo now why why have we thought of now uh, placing the photographs of of our uh, such, such great leaders on the currency notes you see currency notes are not supposed to acknowledge the uh is the contribution of uh, people in the past and there are a number of other ways by means by um, ways and means by which we can adore we can acknowledge we can appreciate the services to its nation towards the society hmm. you know by various heroes throughout the country hmm. okay jriwal wants the audiences to come there you think we are a secular country where we have a constitution which says that all religions are equal and people are Uh, to be treated equally irrespective of their caste religion etc we can't distinguish we can't now tomorrow somebody said that let a let other religion religion god also right. god also miss manan just stay with us i want to go back then and take this point over to nitish rane if he is with us still uh, yeah. mr rane thank you for staying i want to ask you this question here you know you've correctly said and i think we're hearing uh, mr memon from the ncp agree with you the chatrapati shivaji is a leader that is particularly important he has a huge footprint across maharashtra but i do want to ask you here sir obviously your party hails right now from maharashtra the you know your bjp maharashtra unit sir in a sense though haven't you made the job a lot more difficult for your own party in the center if every bjp state unit starts asking for their regional leaders to be on the note See, first of all, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj is not a regional leader. Sure, okay? but so my point you, still remains. My point internationally remains. also, internationally to all over India, every corner of the state in India appreciates and looks up to him. So he is not a regional leader. So sure. I would like to really correct you in whatever you said. A. Sure. And the second thing, as I rightly said, is it's under my personal capacity. I am not. Uh, it is just a suggestion that i gave as an individual and as a citizen of this country uh, and that is why i put forward that tweet obviously what, there is going to be a party stand and there is going to be a central government stand and we will uh, we will obviously you know, speak to our senior leaders and see what could be done about this hmm. but it is not the party stand it is my personal stand and We, no one is push, pushing any regional leaders here. Okay, are, Mr. Rani, I do want to ask you. Uh, I, I do want to ask you here. The point that Arvind Kejriwal was making yesterday, when he first made this demand, uh, was he said, "Why isn't the BJP directly addressing this?" You had the Aam Aadmi Party, multiple leaders from the party, come forward yesterday and say this. Why are they not directly addressing the demand of putting, for example, Lakshmi on the note? So why yeah, have we not yet like heard? Hmm. Again, again, I would like to say that these stands will be cleared by the party spokesperson, which will be coming up soon, to, and they will be speaking to your channel. Uh, speaking to me right now, someone who has tweeted this under his personal capacity, so I would not really uh, would be able to clear what the party stand is. I'm okay. sure they are. Uh, they will come ahead and clear the stand. And this, whatever I have treated, is under my personal capacity. Sure. So you know, okay. I will wait for the party stand to come ahead. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on CNN News 18. For our audiences, we will provide you more clarity on this story in just a few minutes. Right now, it's time for a short break. On the other side, more of the country's top stories. Rishi Sunak has become the prime minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that? Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, "You know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister?" Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story, or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing Diwali Eve uh, discussions, and are really enjoying all these discussions because. hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly first of all the hijab was never part of our dress in, for indian muslims there was no burqa it became prominent just last 20 years back back 
and hijab has been introduced as an arabic slavery sign only in recent years now whether they want hijab or burqa first point secondly would they support iranian iranian women to for the right of freedom who are burning hijab or they want the hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so so this patriarchy they have to clarify mm. if they say islam is what what the best part of islam is they, if they follow sharia we they continuously claim that sharia is ever constitution many debates then as per islam a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her if not a male at least a child so how can a woman, woman become a muslim woman can become a prime minister in uh, when the islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere and okay. the next if you say islamic nation next door to us in pakistan there was bamezdas e bhutto she lost her life she was not a hijab wearing politician in bangladesh we had two ladies who became head of the state prime ministers they they have they are all without hijab show me one country islamic or any other it is especially islamic where you have women becoming head of the state so this either you are you support sharia and islam or you say we are a secular country if you are a secular country then don't oppose triple talaq then if you are secular okay. then what did you do for 60 years 50 years prior to 90 2000 uh, year 1996 10 years from 2004 to 2014 secular government saw through why they could not get a muslim prime minister is elected no, and so why in punjab we cannot have a chief minister who is a hindu or in jammu kashmir where minority can be uh, can be chief minister so this hypocrisy of the entire gang is so funny Le- and sunat did not become prime minister because he was a hindu he became a prime minister because he worked hard he worked through the party he rose to the top and we was complimented for that Yeah Not no no I absolutely agree with you I think you've hit the nail on the head and this is where this debate gets completely sort of uh, fictitious because Suman Singh Raman Mr Rishi Sunak got chosen not because he's a Hindu or because of his Indian heritage he got chosen for two things number one uh to fix the british economy and he has a proven record of that as chancellor of the exchequer before and then of course his background in private investment banking so on and so forth so he's capable his capabilities are well tested and that's the number one reason that he got picked and the other reason is England as is India a parliamentary democracy whoever has the support of majority legislators majority parliamentarians goes on to become the leader of that party it is not a a post of tokenism the prime minister of a country like India or England is elected by majority so tomorrow and nothing stops a hijab wearing woman the constitution certainly does not stop a hijab wearing woman if she gets the support of a majority of the people of India to go ahead and become prime minister so this whole debate around sunak has been reduced to mere tokenism and not about what his capabilities are first of all uh, zaka um uh, should mr chidambaram or uh, mr uh, yc have the do they have the moral authority to say what they are saying within their parties the answer is no that is a very different issue Welcome back we're right here on the morning news on CNN news 18 our next story is right here in delhi a face off between the aam aadmi party and the bjp is in store over the chhat puja celebrations which are supposed to take place in just 3 days from now on october 30th the bjp stormed the claim of expenditure of 25 crores you essentially had the aam aadmi party claiming that they'd spent that amount on preparations for the uh, chhat puja The BJP is saying that those claims are misleading. They're saying that their leaders are going to expose these claims made by the Aam Aadmi Party government by visiting the Yamuna Ghat where the puja is supposed to take place. Uh, remember, over the last few days, we've also seen much drama over the Lieutenant Governor and the Lieutenant Governor's office, with them indicating that they're not happy with the alleged, according to them, misleading announcements by K. J. Wal around. what and where the puja can take place and what was done with the lg's approval this is happening at a time remember and this is perhaps a very important piece of information to understand the entire story that this is happening at a time when mcd elections are expected to be announced both parties the aam aadmi party and the bjp are eyeing that crucial 40% purvanchali vote bank in the national capital it's with that context that you should understand the story my colleague akash is with us this morning to bring us more on the story let's go over to him akash 
Good morning. If you could tell our audiences first a little more in terms of the history of Chhat Puja celebrations in the capital, where do they usually take place? Do we see this happen every year? Do we see parties play politics around it every year? Bring us that context and then tell us about this most recent controversy. Akash, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, Toya, Toya, go ahead. Akash, I was asking if you could bring our audience's context on the history of the Chhat Puja in Delhi. Which community celebrate it? Do we usually see such politics play out? Then if you could tell us about the most recent controversy. Right, so Toya, you see, whenever it is about the celebrations of Chhat Puja, so politics and Chhat go hand in hand in the national capital because, you know, you see, uh, so those who belong to UP, Bihar, Jharkhand and these states generally believe and celebrate Chhat Puja and we know that around 40% of the uh, population here in Delhi believes in this particular celebration and that's the reason why uh, it is uh, the vote bank of the uh, political parties and this time around we are seeing the regular politics. In fact, this is the annual politics that we generally see in the national capital because on one hand we have Aam Admi Party government which is claiming that they have made several arrangements. In fact, 1100 Chhat Ghats have been prepared by the Aam Admi Party with at least expenditure of 25 crore but on the other hand we have BJP which is clearly saying that just because we wrote a letter to Aam Admi Party and Arvind Kejriwal asking for the proper arrangements he came out in public and said that okay this time people who believe in Chhat and who celebrate Chhat can go ahead with the celebration because there is no such restriction like it was uh, in the previous year. Also, at this point in time, this is crucial to maintain, uh, mention that LG office is not very happy with the kind of developments that have been, uh, that have taken in the past a few days and in fact, you know, LG has said it categorically that uh, uh, Arvind Kejriwal is misleading people and he is involved in the fake advertisement. Also, while it is about the current time, so BJP is clearly uh, attacking Aam Aadmi Party saying that uh, they are only misleading people in the national capital because as far as Yamuna Ghat and Chhat Ghats are concerned, they are, they are not clean and uh, cleanliness is something which is the prominent issue for the political parties. In fact, Congress is attacking Aam Aadmi Party government saying that in case uh, they are very serious about this particular Tyohar, this particular festival, so they should go ahead with a day off on this particular day and also Kejriwal should come out in public and say that this is a dry day and this will be a dry day in the national capital. So we are seeing politics all around in the national capital over this particular issue and we are looking forward for this particular visit by the BJP leaders because they have claimed that they are going to uh, visit a Chhat Ghat in the national capital and will somewhere expose the Aam Admi Party government. With this, we are going for a short break and we'll be right back. country absolutely that person should go on to become prime minister but in mr Ovesi's case not just this leadership issue in his party but more importantly how do you get there we're talking about rishi sunak it's his capability he went to the best schools uh, in england and the best universities in the world uh, it is about his education as as an old man once said the greatest leveler that we have in this country is is quality education if you get a good education that is a sure shot route to success what has Mr. Ovesi's party done about uh, education and, 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 for, uh, and for women? Uh, who is the party who said, Agar hijab nahi to kitab nahi? Are they not becoming an impediment in the way of uh, girls getting an education, Muslim girls getting an education? Nothing is more important than getting Absolutely. a good education. And if a hijab is an impediment in that, then the hijab should go, not education. Absolutely. And let me tell you about Rishi Sunak. He even has African blood. He's got an African grandmother from Tanyanyika. So he is a Punjabi Khatri from Gujranwala. And as we know, the Khatris are of Greek origin and they travel from Europe and came this side. He is truly a world citizen. He did not hide himself in hijabs. He got the best education in the world. He has done businesses all over the world. And yes, if Muslim girls will go out and travel Africa, India, Europe, reach every country in the world and they will be educated, they will certainly become prime ministers, not just of India, but of any country in the world that they choose to become. 
So the world is our oyster and that is exactly what Islam and the Quran tells us to travel, to do business, to be educated. The word hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran does not tell the women to cover themselves up. So I don't know why Mr. Uwaisi keeps dreaming of Muslim women in hijabs. Now women are covering themselves to escape the male gaze and Mr. Uwaisi is seeing them in his dreams. I think he should stop dreaming about women in hijabs and he should stop staring at women in hijab and he should stop bothering about women and leave women alone. He needs to be stopped. Just stop being obsessed with us women. Leave us alone. We know what to do with our lives and we know how to become prime ministers. We know how to become presidents. We know how to become chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. We know how to join the Hague. We know how to go to the United Nations. We really don't need him to comment on us. He is a nobody and he should understand that. Uh, Ratan Shadha, let me start with you first. There are 1.5 million people of Indian descent, persons of Indian origin uh, in the UK. It's the largest ethnic minority in that country. And one among them, uh, a British Asian of the third generation, Rishi Sunak, has become the prime minister of that country. Shouldn't Indians and people of Indian heritage all over the world celebrate that Instead, you have Mr. Chidambaram and now Mr. Ovesi saying, you know, when will our country get a woman wearing a hijab as prime minister? Are they trying to poke holes in the Sunak story or are they trying to poke holes uh, in what's happening in the country right now? Actually, it's very amusing Diwali Eve uh, discussions and are really enjoying all these discussions because the hypocrisy of these people comes out so openly. First of all, the hijab was never part of our dress in, for Indian Muslims. There was no burqa. It became prominent just last 20 years back, back. And hijab has been introduced as an Arabic slavery sign only in recent years. Now, whether they want hijab or burqa, first point. Secondly, would they support Iranian, Iranian women to further the right of freedom who are burning hijab? Or they want hijab to be put on the head of the girls who are unwilling to do so? So this patriarchy, they have to clarify. Mm. If they say Islam is what, what the best part of Islam is, they, if they follow Sharia, if they continuously claim that Sharia is ever constitution, many debates, then as per Islam, a woman cannot even leave her house without a male accompanying her, if not a male, at least a child. So how can a woman, a Muslim woman can become a prime minister in uh, when the Islamic society forces her to carry a child or some boy with her going anywhere? And okay. the next, if it's the Islamic nation next door to us in Pakistan, Welcome back. You're watching the morning news right here on CNN News 18. Our next story takes you down to Karnataka, where as Prime Minister Narendra Modi is all set to unveil a statue of Nada Prabhu Kempegowda. He's, remember, the founder of Bengaluru. BJP, BJP's Voka Liga leaders have slipped, it seems, into a tussle over who was responsible for all of these efforts. Yesterday, three senior Voka Liga ministers held a meeting with district officials. It seemed as if that meeting it was held actually on Tuesday was held to quell suspicions that there was leadership and responsibility breakups and tussles taking place in the BJP. It seems discontent has been brewing for a while among the Voka Liga leaders of the BJP. You had the minister, Ashwat Narayan. He's been single-handedly, according to him, making arrangements and inviting Voka Liga stalwarts for the unveiling of the statue. Party